and welcome to Legal Bites. If you're new, hello and welcome to Legal Bites. If you're new here, my name is Alita. I'm a lawyer licensed in California in DC, and on this channel, we explain the law one bite at a time. We don't give legal advice, but we do talk about how the law works and try to look into our crystal ball to see how things might turn out. If you're enjoying this on YouTube, we'd love it if you could like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it with friends, all the great YouTube stuff. And if you want to listen while out and about, we're now offering our live streams in podcast form where you can leave a rating and review. Links are in the description below, as well as to our clips channel, where you can find some of the best clips taken from our live streams. Otherwise, if you want to catch me elsewhere, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so on Locals, Patreon, or by becoming a YouTube member, or by buying some really awesome Legal Bites merch. Again, all links are in the description below. And with that said, let's get into it. Welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. Who all is ready for day 17 of this trial? I'm ready. ready? Yes, yes, yes. Especially after yesterday's cross examination. Yes. That was amazing. Amazing. Who can believe that was only two hours? I know. It was a very effective two hours. I know, right? It really, it really was. Let's just really let's pe petition for Camille Vasquez to just run the entire case because we could do it in two weeks, you know, I, for both honestly, sides. Just run the entire case for both sides and conflicts of interest be damned. We'll be done. We'll be fine. <laughs> if you think about how long we spent on things like four hours of looking at surveillance video foundation compared to that two hours, the difference in actual usefulness to understanding the case is metric. Let me tell you. Johnny's getting his money worth out of Camille Vasquez. Mm -hmm. She is worth every single penny that they are paying her. Probably more. Probably, probably more. more. Probably more. more. She, she's an associate. Oh yeah. How many, how many? Oh my God. Did you guys? Were you guys getting any messages or um or so she's uh, or, billing or what DMs like three fifty four hundred or something? <laughs> Shit, dude. From from, <laughs> I've been I've been getting messages from other lawyers saying. Why, she needs to be partner. She needs to be my partner, right? Like to, partner. To, today would be good. Today, today? would be good. Maybe like yesterday? you want to have an emer maybe an emergency partnership meeting. Maybe we no, wait a minute. Like you know, how would you how like to be the, partner? Like right now, how are the partners going to pay for their concierge Walt Disney World visits and their island getaways? Okay, you know they, they can't just start paying associates what they're worth, Kurt. By billing out v Vasquez, <laughs> that's how they're going to afford those things. Because she's so uh, much social demand by keeping her she on brings, the payroll. How do you win bring inside bring in the record? Me. <laughs> well, I've, and I've got to say, I'm I'm today. I'm going a little more casual, but I had to wear a Marvel shirt in honor yes. of the goddess of thunder. Yes, <laughs> I had to. I had Excellent. to. Excellent. So I ditched the, the collar because my office was getting way too hot after 12 hours of my computer <laughs> running. So. Folks in the chat who loved the Goddess of Thunder's work yesterday, if you have access to emojis, let's get some lightning bolts in the chat. <laughs> let's do it. I want to see it. I want to see it. It was Speaking so good. People that are far too powerful. Alita wielding her chat with emojis and numbers and things. I, love, I tell you I what. <laughs> Let me see a cowboy hat. Let me see those uh, game controllers. <laughs> oh, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's oh my do it. Um, there we go. There we go. Lightning bolts. Starting I love with it. the morning right. That's damn straight. <laughs> um, yes, yes, exactly. That's that is how I'm feeling right now. It's like electric, even though I've only gotten a few hours of sleep. It's good. We're all good. Uh recap is out, by the way. It's pinned in the uh in the the chat right here. It's also all over all the social media platforms. So if you haven't had a chance to check it out, check it out. Um and um yeah. Then we can we can get into it. Or actually, before we get into it, let me get a couple of super chats that weren't captured on Streamyard yet. Um, yeah. Yesterday, at the very end of the live stream, like right after we we finished, we got one more super chat from no good no tax good tax who said that there is no statute of fraud with the IRS. Statute of limitations, um, I think he means. And uh, I think I think they mean statute of limitations, and I think it still is five years. They can only go back into your tax records for five years is what I thought, but I'm taxes, not, I'm not a tax is, person. I believe taxes is seven, but don't hold me to seven. It. Okay. Se seven might be it. Seven might be it. So, um, anyhow, uh, also Suk Madik says my one super chat for today, expect slightly more interference from Amber Heard's team today. Rhythm control against 
CV. Jury won't like it. Everyone hates a wet blanket. Also possible that AH sheds human skin on the stand. <laughs> And becomes, I mean, this is, this is, that's the end of the super chat, but like my thought is like becomes like the lizard person that people mm. expect her to be or something. <laughs> mm. I see. Okay. Appreciate you guiding uh, me through that one. Yeah. 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 Or, or like, or like, you know, men in black version, like from the, the first men in black with the, the, you know, wearing, wearing. Oh, the skin suit guy. Sure. The skin suit. Yes. Yes. Cause she's um, cold blooded like a reptile too. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I'm so, not getting the warm and fuzzies. I I don't think it would be. I, I'm not imagining getting a lot of warmth by curling up next to her at this point. Yeah. No, no, not really. Not really. No. Um. So thank you guys for joining me. First thing, bright and early. Um. This is great. I, I love I love having having discussion, like having folks to bounce bounce thoughts off of right away. Um. And I love seeing so many people in the chat. We've got a lot of emojis, a lot of excitement. We've got a lot of super chats coming in already. Um, but your guys thoughts, Big day. thoughts on yesterday, any, any other thoughts since, uh, we cl closed down the stream, you know, have you, have you had any chance to sleep slash think about it? <laughs> you got like five I hours did. in there somewhere. I did. I stopped talking about things and then I slept and then I started talking about things again. Uh, mm -hmm. so, you know, those are the, those are the days now. I, I think the question that I was asking on my stream this morning, uh, I want to ask you Alita, mm -hmm. which is so Camille, very successful two hours in court the first day. What, if any, change in tone would you expect from Ms. Vasquez uh, today or change in strategy or approach? Uh, your question is, what would what would they change? Well, I said, Camille's... what if any? I'm not trying to lead you, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if, what if any? What if any? What if any? <laughs> I, I don't know that I would necessarily change anything because <laughs> okay. she was so controlled in mm -hmm. her approach. It was exactly as a cross-examination should be. And... She makes it look so easy, but don't mm -hmm. be fooled, guys. What she did yesterday was very, very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, hey, Mike, how's it going? Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, Hi. people. Good yeah. morning, Mike. Good Sir, morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Um, so, so Rick just asked what, what, what if anything we would change I in what if anything. If uh, <laughs> what, what if anything would we change in Camille's approach today for cross examination going into day two? Um, possibly considering like now that now that Amber has some notice of like what to expect or whatever on, right. from her out on cross examination. Um, I don't I don't know that I would change anything because it was I was just saying it, it was a textbook cross examination. It mm -hmm. was perfectly effective, and even if Amber has notice of that kind of a cross examination. There's not much that she can do because she's impeaching her on all kinds of statements that she's already made. Yep. yep. I would I would finish it as soon as possible. It's fantastic. Yes. Let's not let's not have any opportunity to screw it up. Let's land the plane. Mm -hmm. I am guilty of this from the super chat. I do do that. That is that is my <laughs> response when one of the one of the panelists uh, says something. I do I do do the. <laughs> <laughs> That, that hey, is welcome, moment, Andrea. So I'm, I'm hey, Andrea. morning, everybody. Woo! The Woo! latest Woo! member of LawTube. She now <laughs> has her own YouTube channel. You guys, we're, we're going to link her YouTube channel in the description today so that you guys can go check it out. Go subscribe. Let's let's see if we could have a, have a Rob 2.0 here. Can yeah, we, let's get we, her 10K today. Can we today. up another new channel? 10K today. <laughs> Absolutely. Watch out. The Guardian's not going to like you now. I know, right? <laughs> oh, well... The Guardian has only barely gotten to know me, so. <laughs> That's not well, an important thing to get to know the person before you criticize them. Yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. <laughs> not required. Yeah, yeah. yeah of course. Oh, of course. I'm, I'm just saying they're, they're going to have a lot of reasons to <laughs> hate me if they think this was, uh, is just is just it's the beginning. You're, yeah. You're a traitor to the cause that is women or something like that, maybe. Yeah. Or, yeah. or just for, you know, just mainstream life in general, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Apparently by uh, thinking for myself, I embody misogyny. That's, that's not you. what a woman should do, thinking yeah. for themselves. <laughs> We're a monolith. We're all a monolith. Every woman. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I'm not sure listeners. what to think about that. Let me, let me put you on pause for a second and go ask my husband what I should think about that. <laughs> Oh, now the exactly. very good very well <laughs> exactly, done exactly exactly Gleister legal solicitors and advisors thank you so much for the very generous super chats has had to do actual lawyering today only partway through cross at kipper's office records um amazing skills from camille torn between watching live and finishing the disco bloodbath any specific right hooks that the panel were impressed by 
Well, I think, I think that she, she really, really nailed it when she got into, like, she got into a perfect rhythm going through the incident saying, okay, here's your allegations. Here's the photos you showed. Here's some other photos that show zero injuries showing you in a backless dress, you in a skimpy dress here at this public event, this, 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 and then saying, oh, and by the way, you have no medical records. Uh, you never sought medical treatment. You never sought medical treatment ever in your relationship with him for a mm -hmm. for a broken nose. You never sought anything for dental work. You never sought any kind of reconstructive work at all ever, for, you know, related to your relationship with Johnny. My yes. God. For, and Never from a woman who's got a nurse stitch. and doctor on retainer, just, just for at any moment that she can go to. Yeah, 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 yes. yeah, yeah. Who yes. apparently lies in their reports and says, "Oh yeah," it, during the physical exam. Apparently <laughs> lies and admits <laughs> massively important details uh, mm. for some reason. The thing there was. I really the, love that the explanation for why there was nothing in the medical record about her concussion and black eyes and broken nose yeah, was yeah, because yeah, yeah. of the typo that said male. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, that was a nice one. There was there was one moment in particular that caught my attention, and then one sort of like attitude issue throughout. So there was like one major unforced error I noticed, um, where she was asking about sending the text message to a friend with Johnny Depp, I think sleeping or something, and uh, Vasquez was asking something like. You weren't afraid of, you know, Johnny Depp seeing it. You know, you weren't fearful of it. And there was some like initial answers along the line. And then she asked the question, I think, for like a third time, slightly different. And Amber Heard just says, why would I be scared? Yes. And Vasquez did the absolutely perfect thing of just letting it sit for a second. And then she did what is maybe one of the hardest things she moved on <laughs> because yeah. she just lets it speak for itself. It's exactly right. It's. I, I don't know that I have the self-control to do it, So, but that that was an unforced error. The other thing that I thought was really notable about her testimony was just how she didn't seem bothered, uh, Amber Heard didn't seem bothered at all by the what appears to be contradictions, right? She She's being asked the questions about, you know, did you say all these things? Okay. Then she's shown the pictures, you in the backless dress, whatever, you don't see any things. And her answers are just very matter of fact and just like, yeah, he did hit me. Yeah. Yeah, that was that. It's like this is the day after you alleged that he hit you with the brings. He did hit me. And it's like, I mean, there's, I, I, I guess, I guess, call it shameless or well, I'm not what sure yeah, what the it, right it, description it is. Huge here. entitlement. It's yeah. it was just it was, it was strange. <laughs> I, I mean, it's not even gaslighting. I don't think because like normally in gaslighting you apply you expect a little bit more subtlety to it. I mean, this is like damn. <laughs> I mean, the whole point of gaslighting is that you just slowly turn down the gas like every day, slightly. So like on any given day, you can't really notice. It's just over time. And here she's just giving well, a blatant contradiction. It's, yeah. It may be a dim bulb, but. Uh... The thing that surprised <laughs> me, I, I did a little video on that last of, night because I was, I was on stream all day, so I didn't have any other material. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> I had to throw something on my channel. But the thing that shocked me is my viewers, I, I knew the panel would pick it up. When she said, I got a, um, a bruise kit, that was horrific to me, but I didn't think anybody else would pick up on it. I'm like, a bruise mm -hmm. kit is what you, you use to put a bruise on and make it up, which is exactly what I think happened here. Okay? I don't Poorly. know, but that's my guess. And and I thought, that's that's terrible from my perspective, but nobody else will notice that. I mean, I knew the panel would, but then other like casual observers wouldn't notice. Oh no, 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 no! Everybody's like, no. She yeah. she got a bruise kit because she knows how to make a bruise. Yeah, yeah. Andrew, you were you were saying something too. Oh, I was just saying that. Um, I I think that was the the reason why I call it gaslighty, even though I agree it's it's a very dim bulb from from which this is emanating. Um. It's, it's just like you, you describe it as um, the audacity, and, and I think that's that's correct and that's legitimate, but it's the effect that I think the jury is starting to see of this person who is looking them in the eye, perfectly comfortable telling them, yeah, I had a black nose and broken and, and, and uh, black eyes and a broken nose, um, and the only reason you can't see this is makeup. When mm -hmm. she's acknowledged yeah. already, and and just you have to because everybody is going to know you can't cover swelling with makeup, you can't cover you know displacement. Yeah. Um, there, there's just there's limitations to this that that are common sense, and so the fact that she is perfectly comfortable 
looking at this image of her absolutely impeccable, absolutely untouched in any way, and insisting that she does in fact have a broken nose, that is, I think, a chance for the, the jury to really be in Johnny Depp's shoes here and, and understand, my God, this is this is what this man has been living with. If she doesn't, if she doesn't see yeah. how ridiculous it is yep. to be yeah. telling us that there is yeah. a broken nose here, then I, I don't think there is any hope. Um, yeah, it's yeah. exactly you what mean, he predicted and what she predicted and 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 what uh, Dr. Curry predicted. And it's just a great example of that oh, yeah. playing out before your eyes. Dr. Yeah. Curry is going to have me, a field sorry. day on redirect. I'm going to I just realized I'm on Wi-Fi. Let me let me switch over to Ethernet in case you lose me for a second. I want to do it now before the trial stream actually. Starts. Excellent. So uh, give me one second. I might I might like freeze or something and then come back. OK. As we, so the, as we wait the, for legal bites to return. <laughs> well, yeah. So the thing yeah. that I like that I saw Camille doing, um, I just like the way she is asserting control over Amber. She's saying, yeah. no, Amber, you're going to answer my question. Hmm. No, Amber, there's no question yet. You can wait. She's making it absolutely crystal clear that she is going to be in charge of the cross-examination. And I think that more than maybe anything is what has the potential to really get un under Amber's skin because that's her whole game, that she's going to do what she wants. She doesn't care what the rules are. Yeah. Um, she doesn't care what the admonitions from the judge are. She doesn't care what the question is. And so Camille is not letting her get away with that. Um, and that's going to irritate her to be in that vulnerable position. And yeah. um, I just hope that she keeps that up and that we start to see that uh, kind of wear, kind of wear on Amber. Her tone, her tone control is also great because I mean, when she, her definite, her flustered is like so marginal compared to anyone else. It's like, it doesn't really bother you at all. It, she just says that wasn't my question. My question was, and she doesn't really get frustrated or angry yeah. or anything. And like, I can, I, I don't, I, I'm pretty sure I can't do that. Like somewhere around the third or fourth time, I'd be like. She's not answering the question. Opposing counsel, that's the fourth <laughs> time you made that objection. What is your problem? Ba, da, da. And uh, she's just, Vasquez is just showing me to shame uh, constantly. Well, I feel I feel she, judged. No, no, but 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 the thing is, the thing is, she she understands what the ultimate goal is. Yeah. So, you know, if you yeah. have if you yeah. have the, you know, the the that that in mind of what it is that you need out of this cross examination, it's not about you, it's not about looking yes. good, it's not about any of that. It's about ultimately what you are trying to take out of this witness and yeah. put in front of the jury. Um and she absolutely understands the assignment and she is doing an amazing job. She so understands far. it better than me. It's like I, I have other goals to achieve. <laughs> Well, yeah, she just yeah. has such a wealth of material to work yeah. with, and and that's why, too. you she know, does. for for months, I, I I have I've had such envy in my heart for Camille and the and the fun that we knew she was going to have with this yeah. process. Because when you when you have these many inconsistencies, these many stories to tell about this witness's dishonesty, dishonesty mm. in other contexts, dishonesty in the context of this of this court, these specific <laughs> accusations. Yeah. It's just a field day. She doesn't have to play Elaine's game of trying to scrape something out of the witness by, you know, proving ad nauseum yeah. that they don't know about makeup. She gets yeah. to choose the best pieces and just work with that. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if the crowd, how the crowd will be today. Maybe they'll be strongly supportive of him. Thank you. Heard this morning. Ladies, morning. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Is that boo or is it booers? Boo. Boo I hear boos. <laughs> I hear boos. Um, also, by the way, they, it flashed for a second inside the courtroom before I could pull it up. Camille's wearing all white today. She looks Beautiful. amazing. Amazing, Beautiful. amazing. I freaking love it. Okay. Um, okay. And then here goes here goes Johnny. White in the courtroom. That's an interesting choice. I think I love it. I love it. I mean, a guy can't get away with that unless you're like in the south or something maybe yeah I have a lot of relatives. you a can do like relatives. sean there though get that, that nice light too. taupe <laughs> you should be feeling pretty good today johnny depp you got a great lawyer there johnny depp people will talk they see us together again <laughs> 
Everybody Please adopt me, Vasquez. <clears throat> I, 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 I will work for you for cheap so I can Amazing. work. Amazing. Amazing. Um, also, Marion Peter says, I'd like to commission a dramatic reading from Alita. Uh, objection, Your Honor. I'm disinclined to acquiesce to your request. It means overruled. <laughs> I started good. doing impressions yesterday, so you yes. know, Andrea. Yes. Well, we're going to get a lot more of those. <laughs> we're probably going to get more of those. Um, <laughs> oh, by the way, guys, about the Super Chats, um, uh, if you guys want it, if you absolutely have a question that you, you want us to address, see, look at that. All white. I freaking love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Look at this Orange Fantastic. County attorney representing Orange County, California, just like I love it. I she love looks it. I great. love it. Um, yes. Why, why, why can she get away with that and guys can't get away with that? She looks fantastic. Uh Kurt, you can wear a white rules. suit into court if you want. I feel judged. No, I, it's like, oh. no, I can't. My she, she's are, a petite. My choices are blue and gray. Advice. She's a very petite woman. She has the coloring for it. I, I don't yeah. know that I would try to pull out, pull off this white um, mm -mm. because I'm quite a bit larger than Camille. Um, and and yeah. for me, because it's such a, it's such a contrasting color in this yeah. setting, it really, really stands out. You really notice her. Um, for me, I feel like that would be, it would be too much. Um, it would be too look at me, but for her, because she is a slight woman, she's got that beautiful dark hair. I just really yeah. think it works well for her. Yeah. We well, can Agreed. see she's tapping on her phone. She's getting her legal bite stream ready. <laughs> As you should. Yeah. yeah. She's dressed up like the angel in heaven that she is. Ah, there you go. Um, Nurse Liz, welcome, welcome. And guys, uh, just so that everybody I, in the chat knows, for Super Chats, if you guys absolutely want one to be read, so that uh, put question colon or Q colon, um, and then I will save it as opposed to flashing it on the screen. Otherwise, I'm probably going to end up flashing it on the screen. Um, we've got questions in the chat about Rob and Runkle and, and Larry. Only yeah. Larry got in today, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. There's been some some... Um, unfortunate business about uh, uh, about the line for today. Yeah, and we'll probably have them come in to talk yeah. about that. That's um, what I was going to say. Uh, yeah, on, on, a, on a break or whatever, they did appear, I did a stream because I'm a crazy person, uh, before this one started, um, and they popped in a couple of times when they thought they were in, when they aren't in. They, they talk about that a little bit, so you can check that out on my channel, Hogue Law. Yeah. Um, not now. We're going to start cross-examination. Don't leave. Uh, yeah. But um, that is over there for as it happens. You can get updates from Rob and Ian and Larry. And yes. Ian's yeah. going to go tonight. And I think he's looking for one person at least to hang out with him all night. Um, so the sign up, I'll send the link again. So okay. and that might give like, him a break. Yeah. And in okay. case people missed it, uh, Ian and uh, Rob didn't make it in because of line jumpers. So yeah, we had awesome people. Uh, wow. DUI guys there. there but, all uh, night. Yeah. 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 Nurse, Ugh. Nurse Liz and Emily and Alita and others did just bang up job. To nurse sure Alita. Had their, uh, had nurse had Alita. Liz. <laughs> nurse Liz, you did a fantastic job in coordinating that. You really deserve a yes. lot of praise. Yes. And I just oh want to make sure no. to acknowledge that because that was that was not inconsequential. It yeah. was seriously the people that showed up. Like, yeah. they're the, I feel bad. Well, they're the ones them. I feel the worst about getting That's burned. What I mean, on they the, went and did all of that. Yeah. yeah. And then they just rushed them. <laughs> Stupid. All right. That's yeah. My all one of them wanted to meet Ian. Um, I agree with you, Michael Gaunt. Uh, Michael Gaunt, thank you so much for the very generous super chat. I, again, I know you, you you toss a lot of these our way, and I really appreciate it every time. If men wear white suits, we either become Colonel Sanders or the man from Del Monte. It's not I a good look. Or, right. or yeah. Miami Vice. Miami Vice yeah. is also another another look that comes to mind. Um, I can do it. The, the, act, the actor from <laughs> To Kill a Mockingbird could pull it off. It's, 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 Henry, Henry it. Fonda could pull it off. The man that's lost it's a select all number of his people. topmost buttons can do it, says Lost. Right. With Mike. I, right. I, I never met this. a top button he enjoys. <laughs> 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 never met a top button he does like. Um, no, no, Leanne no. Hokulani says, 2.35 a.m. here in Hawaii, obsessed with your bridesmaids impression. Thank you. Uh, question, during the muffin pick, why did CB ask why J.D.? why jd's right hand is in his pocket um i don't remember why there's a notion that it's staged see it's, during oh, yeah. that portion of the photo yeah. she's, she's establishing that that amber's staging these photos that makes sense. yeah that was the Thank ice you. cream that spilled over in his lap yes. and so when she described this photo in the uk she said he's eating ice cream he falls asleep because he's so drugged and that's how she took the photo and so she didn't necessarily fill out those details here, but Camille is pointing out his hands in his pocket. He didn't just fall asleep in the middle of ice cream, eating ice cream because he would be holding a spoon. 
you gave him this ice cream just like just like he described this photo happening so that when he you know fell asleep um it just it just fell over and and then you got your photo opportunity yeah johnny depp's testimony on that photo is something like weird it doesn't look like i'm eating ice cream at all or participating in the ice cream parade does it yeah, yeah that's what he said yeah Exactly. That was a good impression. Uh, uh, Zachary, I'm Zachary not joining McPherson. you down this down, down that alley. <laughs> <laughs> Zachary McPherson <laughs> says, question, please enjoy this donation for $7 million. What, if anything, can Amber and her team do to save credibility today? Lol, good uh, luck. I, got a, I, I, I got a billion so, dollar pledge today. I'm so stoked. Yeah. A billion yeah, dollars. Yeah. Amazing. Richard, um, can I have uh, and, uh, 10 million of it? Ian, I'll pledge it to you, Kurt. Thank you very Ian, much. Ian, uh, Ian, Ian, hey. Um, let me answer this question really quick. Uh, basically on redirect because it is it is there, there is so much to clean up they've got to pick wisely they can't do everything because otherwise it makes it they just flag the fact that everything is a huge mess for them so um yeah on on redirect they've got to pick their battles on that one um ian how's it going i'm so sorry you guys didn't make it today yeah it was kind of interesting because uh you know uh, nurse liz fantastic thank you so much for getting uh you know, people in the line, uh, they had 70 and 71. And we got up there. We were 15 people away from getting an actual wristband when the line finished, which meant that there's about 45 line jumpers. God. So um, that's a thing. <laughs> that's, uh, I mean, I'm a little annoyed, but it is what it is. And uh, I'm going to be out there. Uh, out there later tonight and just trying to uh, camp it out and see what we can do. All right. Yeah, somebody Sounds there good. the whole time except for 10 to 1, Ian. Did you get some sleep? Uh, so, I did get some sleep. We Because fantastic. people were actually signing up for spots in sort of a rolling fashion, it was like I'd wake up, check, see how we're doing, and then go and get some more sleep. Um, so I was... Uh, we, I got to sleep at like 10 because it took a while for us to eat and wind down and so forth. And then it was, we knew we had people there until one. So okay. we woke up, it's, I sort of woke up at midnight, checked, okay, we're good until four. Okay. Another alarm, wake up, check, okay, we're good. And you know, get another couple hours. All right. Do we have any preliminary matters so, before we have the jury? To clarify, Ian, you guys, you guys have people signed up Should for tonight? Of course we do. Did yeah. she ask for preliminary? Yeah, that's matters? what I heard. Yeah, yeah, she just said, "Do we have preliminary?" Of course uh, we do. LA what do you think, Judge? Did you guys? Of course we do. That's yes, I have preliminary matters. My client got absolutely destroyed on the stand. I'd like to file charges. The bailiff. Was <laughs> here to uh, what is it? What's the liar? Liar yesterday? Objection, like, Your Honor. This is all devastating to my case. Yes, yeah. yes. Or, or Elaine is is coming up and she says, "Your Honor, I would like to report a murder of my client. <laughs> murder on the stand." This has been an absolute disco bloodbath. I think yes. that the witness is the whole world. I really like the male Christmas suit today. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It looks good. Me too. It's such a power suit. And the it thing is, too, is that on cross-examination, just... you want the attention on you. The fact that she sticks yes. out like that, it's all eyes on Camille. This is exactly what you want for a cross-examination. Uh, that is very I am... she, she does stick out in that, for sure. I'm so she's trying it. to make herself the star. She's doing it. She and is. Oh, I'm, you know, clothed in light and your, you know, your darkness today is, uh, yes. yes. You're yep. playing with some visual themes there. Yes, she is. She's, she's the goddess of thunder. I I'm, I'm all about it. I, I freaking love it. I love the fact that there was thunder and lightning yesterday during her cross examination, because I just, I don't, I don't, that, that is the nickname that I choose to ascribe to her now, wait a minute. forever now. Not only was there thunder and lightning, the storm rolls out and then hits her with a beam of light. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Disney yeah. would have rejected this script. Yeah. They, yeah, they would have yeah. absolutely. It's too cliche. <laughs> we would not have known about the thunder if it wasn't for Ian and Rob and Larry. True, true. It because we couldn't, we couldn't really point. hear it from the from here. Yeah, but in terms of like being there, the thunder was really quite loud. Like you couldn't miss us. Scared the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah, it, I actually <laughs> wow. was wondering if it might have been like a gunshot initially because oh wow, it was real loud, and I was thinking, did something just happen? Um, but no, it was, and then there was another flash of lightning, and then the thunder. It it almost got to the point where I mean, Camille couldn't make the joke, but I was just thinking like, okay, um, you know, whoever's up high, <laughs> wait your turn. You can testify next. Like, yeah. You know, we're cross-examining, but, you know, you could, there was a, uh, it was strange. Yes. Yes. 
Um, amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes for today. Uh, let, let's, let me get some, some super chats. So <laughs> Akash Singh says, this is my first time tuning in at the start. What time does the actual thing start? I know it officially starts in 25 minutes. So any, any time now, um, the jury is still waiting outside the courtroom. They are doing another round of a huddle between the two parties and with the judge for some preliminary matters. Everything is outside the presence of the jury. So, um, so yeah. It has started, but yeah. We'll see. The, we'll uh, see uh... One thing you won't realize is just how loud this courtroom is right now. Because oh. whenever they're doing these sidebars, they blast white noise. Oh, really? Okay. Like, it's quite loud. Yeah, and okay. So if you're sitting there, it doesn't matter if you're front row. You can't hear a, a thing that they're saying right now. They just yeah. wash that out. And the jury is sitting looks... right there. Like, the jury won't have been marched out. But they won't be able to hear anything. I don't think somebody would ask me if I thought that Amber could hear any of this. I don't think she can hear it. I don't think she can hear it. Maybe. But I yeah. think that when you actually see them leaning in over the bench sometimes to talk, I don't think that they're trying to make a point. I think that they're leaning in like that because that white noise is just uh, making it hard okay. to be overheard. Okay. I think okay. that's also why you see the court reporter has got her headphones on. Um, she is mm -hmm. taking down the sidebars. You can see her, you know, do, doing her transcription as they speak. And so it looks like she probably is tied into directly into the microphone feeds so that she isn't um, being blasted out by that white noise and mm -hmm. in can hear mm -hmm. the voices directly. Exactly. That makes sense. Yes. Did you guys check yes. out the live transcription that they have on their desks? No. The what? So they have live transcription on yeah. their desks. Like oh, awesome. they do, really. They have live transcripts. That's pretty badass. The, yeah. yeah. So the iPads, when you see that legal team hovering in over the desk on a sidebar, yeah. they're staring at an iPad with a scrolling transcription. Nice. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Cool. That is awesome. This is a high-tech courtroom. This really that is, is. This is way yeah. more high-tech than most courtrooms that you will oh, see in the United States. The technology that they've got there in terms of like when they're bringing up exhibits, mm -hmm. I've never seen that in a courtroom where I am. Um, hmm. Janet, we did not make it in. I am really sorry to say uh, we got jumped by line cutters. Um, yeah. I did get a message that you guys had to uh, had to step out. I'm going to be out there probably like 6 p.m. I'm going to roll out there again tonight. Okay. So um, come find me. I know you wanted to say hi. Um, Rob, unfortunately, today is, he's got like real work he's going to have to do, being an actual, you know, actual lawyer. So he's unfortunately not going to be able to be there today. He's doing important stuff. Um, so, but come say hi. I, I'm really sorry I missed you. And I'm really sorry that you guys, your guys' effort ended up being uh, basically stolen from, you know, because yeah. of people yeah. jumping the line. Because of terrible people, basically. Yeah. Um, Sheldon Aldridge says, question, don't you think the fact that Mr. Depp has a female lawyer who is strongly defending him works in his favor too? Yes. 100%. That's why her being the attack dog is the perfect person right now. Uh, Tiffany Byers says, good morning, Alita Curtin Hogue. Love all your coverage and streams. Hey, good morning. Thank you. Uh, Cypherian says, team, curious about medical records. Team, they both had medical folks, nurse slash doctor on their staff, could age, et cetera. Use that as a reason no records exist. Would they turn them over with a subpoena? Absolutely, they would They would turn them oh, over. They have turned them over. Um. Yeah, yeah, they, they have to. They have to because it's it's highly relevant to this case. And the, this is litigation is one of those times where when you have something that's highly relevant like that, um, you got to turn it over because it's it's something that is going to going to potentially lead to something that could be admissible at evidence. So uh, discovery is very, very broad. I'll, I've, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Um, Gia Rio, great to see you all again today. Great to see you. Uh, Gabby says, watching from Australia, I watch the stream every day, but I can finally watch live because I'm on night duty this week. I'm a nurse. Thanks for the hard work. Hey, thank you for your hard work. Absolutely. Um, uh, Lady Jemima says, please invite journalist Nick Wallace here. That's a great idea. That's a fantastic idea, actually. Um, another question about did LawTube get in the courtroom? No, unfortunately not. Um, I'm trying to find some. You guys in there. Um, if they, oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, I'm, I think he's up front row on Amber's side. Yeah. But when I was yeah. looking at it, the resolution wasn't great. But uh, we'll we'll take another look when we can. But he is in there. Yes. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Um, 
Uh, uh, so Brandon DeHaven says, would it be good to impeach AH at this point? She is impeaching her. She's, she's, she's impeaching she's, her every she's, single time. She's she brings being up very a prior impeached. Statement. Yes. Yes. So it's like anytime you see Camille bring up a prior statement that, that Amber made before that mm -hmm. is not consistent with what she's saying on the stand today, that's an impeachment. That's exactly what that is. Um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. I'm trying to bring up some questions here that I that I can't bring up when uh, when folks are are uh, are talking on the stand. Let's see. How about this one? Callista says, did anyone else notice that at one point when she took a picture of Johnny asleep, she said it was because of his medications, then covered it up with opioids? I didn't notice that divergence. Um, I think her position has also been that, you know, he that some of his medications are his opioids and that that's been a problem. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Ames says, question is age is makeup artist on the witness list. I think she is. Andrea, you know for sure, right? Who's you know, on the witness gonna, list? The makeup uh, artist? Heard makeup artist. I think she is, right? Melanie Iglesias is on the witness list. Um, okay. As a deposition oh. witness. So we'll we'll have to see. Yep. Yep. Sounds good. Uh, James Weibel says, AH lying about $7 million in print ammunition for op-ed. In print ammunition for op-ed. I'm not sure I understand fully this question. Lying about $7 million in print is it an, is it ammunition for like a different op-ed for someone else to write or sure. maybe, I, I'd say you guys is, reading the, this is the charity pledge lie is that useful for saying she'd be willing to lie in the washington post op-ed oh it's yeah. Yeah. that yes i would say yes because anytime you have any witness in the case or any party their honesty is always at issue so if they are lying about another big issue that's related to this that is uh one of those things uh and sean it, clark well, sorry go ahead there's flavors of lies. Like I Are lied to explain why I was late to work. Isn't going to get mm -hmm. you a whole lot. I lied in a public, you know, press thing. Oh, can we pop the captions? Better. Oh, that's yes. way better. As soon as they, they come up again, I'll, I'll move them. Uh, that's I was trying to lie. It's a damaging lie. Yes. Yes. Good point. Sean Clark says if JD wins and 50 million, uh, can he ask for AH accounts to be audited to show she has paid million legal fees? No. No, they're just they're just going to he's just going to try to try to secure the money in various ways. Alrighty. <laughs> Jennifer D says LawTube is a legit media organization now embedding reporters. What? All this covers no spin. Well done. Almost 1 million views on yesterday's stream. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we we've got we've got a lot of a lot of that. Um Anthony 2 1993 says is there any consequences for age lying under oath? consequences she loses her case right. because she's getting impeached well isn't she right. also being investigated for perjury in another jurisdiction i don't know i don't know if she is i mean it's australia she says they are yeah that's true for the perjury on the uh customs form yeah and the uk I mean, has incentive to look but i have they haven't announced anything that there could be some on, but she won't Good face morning. any for this unless she just other than losing Yep. Your relationship with Mr. Depp began in October of 2011, right? That's correct. And you previously testified multiple times under oath that the first year of your relationship with Mr. Depp was the best of times, right, Ms. Heard? That is correct. You testified that as far as you could tell, Mr. Depp was sober that first year. That is correct. That's what I used to believe. And that the first year was, quote, magic. Yes, I always uh, estimated it was about a year. But now you've told this jury that Mr. Depp was being violent with you throughout 2012. Haven't you, Ms. Hurd? No, he took a break in the middle of 2012 when he was sober. Okay. You told them that he was hitting you in 2012, though. Is that right? He was hitting me in 2012. He just took a break in the middle. That doesn't make sense. He was smashing uh, things around you, right? He did. Oh, yeah, I'm going to turn this down. And you told them that Mr. Depp yeah. was in and out of sobriety in 2012. That is correct. You told this jury that in, two, quote, in 2012, I was in the beginning stages so that I can of this, your volume. just learning these patterns. I was learning that drinking kind of correlated with the violence, end quote. Is that right? That is correct. So it was during these cycles of violence in 2012 that you gave Mr. Depp a knife as a gift. I gave him a knife, um, <laughs> I think, for a birthday present early in our relationship. I believe it was around 2012, but I'm not certain. We've seen a picture of that knife, but I think we should bring out the real thing. Oh, 
Bring out the real knife. You have the knife? Master I Deputy. love it. Uh, I bet they do have it. Master Deputy. Cutter Sheriff Camille. Metaphor. Oh, they have the real knife. Bring it out. Bring, Bring me the it knife. It Put it in her hand while you're at it. That'd be good. I want to see how big yeah. this thing is. <laughs> yes. Look at that's that. Yes. Shiny that's object. a big one. That's that was a knife you gave to the man who was hitting you, right, Mr. I wasn't worried he was going to stab me with it when I gave it to him. That's for certain. But you gave it to him while he was abusing you, allegedly. I gave it to him that year. <laughs> Master Deputy <laughs> Sheriff, okay. Lisa, will you please show the knife to the jury? Yes, present it yes. to the jury. Yes. Show them really show close. Tell. Show and tell. Show and well tell. Well played. Tell. Oh, man, I wish I could see their reactions. I am so cheesed right now. <laughs> okay. You got to get Larry. Knife. You got to get Larry on that. This is the knife you gave to the man who would get drunk and violent with you, right? This is the same knife that I gave him as a present in 2012, yes. Now, Ms. Hurd, I'm going to need to talk to you about what happened in Australia in March of 2015. You've testified that at some point during the incident you described, you witnessed Mr. Depp bashing a phone against a wall, right? That is correct. You testified that the phone was breaking into pieces. I was watching it disappear. And Mr. Depp smashed it, I think your word was smithereens. Yes, that is correct. And according to your testimony, this was a wall-mounted phone in the bar area. That is correct. Let's take a look at Defendant's Exhibit 1820. I thought they'd start maybe a little slower. I believe this has Wing already it. been admitted into evidence. No, if we could have it no, published. push the pace the from, the, from, the, from the time the bell rings. That's what I like. Yeah. Oh, she's hitting hard. Yeah. 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 I'm she awake. Stopped. She was going in order yesterday. I'm she real awake. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. You saw this photo during your direct examination, right? That is correct. And you testified that the wall-mounted phone that you saw Mr. Depp smash is on the wall on the left. That's correct. So if you were looking at this picture, the wall, the wall-mounted phone would have been behind you on the left-hand side of your shoulder. Oh, but it's not depicted depicted in this photo, correct? Whoever took this photo standing right in front of where that um, mounted phone was. That's convenient. Um, the pieces of the <laughs> phone Mr. Depp smashed aren't in this Objection. picture either, right? Yeah. You don't see it because it's whoever took this photo standing in front of that. Whoever sure. took this photo, it's Mr. Ben King, correct? That's what I believe. Yeah. Mr. King testified under oath in this trial, right? That is correct. And he testified that there was no wall-mounted phone smashed to smithereens that he had to replace, correct? I didn't hear him testify to that, no. He did. Your counsel elicited it. I disagree with that representation. You also okay. saw this picture. Actually, can we please bring up Defendant's Exhibit 1821, which is also admitted into evidence? You also saw this picture during your direct examination, correct? That is correct. And so this is the bar area to the right of the wall-mounted phone you just described. If you were facing in that direction, if you're facing this direction, it would be behind you. This phone on the counter isn't the phone that got smashed to smithereens, is it? No, they brought that out um, during my testimony in the UK as well. And I said this in the UK trial as well, that that is not the phone, uh, obviously, because that one's not smashed and it's not wall-mounted. So there are two phones in the bar area. There, there was a wall-mounted phone. I don't know if it was decorative or what, but it was white, like it looked antique, large and antique. Now there are two and, phones. And what, the large and antique one that's not depicted in any photograph, including ones you took, is the one that Mr. Depp damaged, correct? That is correct. I only took pictures of the mirrors. So there's no picture of that damaged phone? I didn't take a picture of it, no. So back to the phone smashing. You watched Mr. Depp smash the phone, right? That's correct, I watched it. And you testified that you were, quote, watching the phone every single time he pulled his hand back, end quote. That's correct. And according to you, this is when Mr. Depp lost the tip of his finger, right? It is my best guess. I didn't notice his finger come off, obviously. I was um, watching him smash the phone and watching the pieces break while he was doing it. Well, it's not your best guess, Ms. Heard. That is my best guess, yes. Okay. Let's go back to my questions. You submitted a declaration under the penalty of perjury in this case. Do you remember that? That is correct. Okay, let's look at that declaration. Oh man, 
This is really fiery. Yes. I assume she didn't say best guess in the declaration. No. Yes, ma'am. Look at the thickness of that. <laughs> AH threw her attorneys under the bus yesterday. How will that affect the relationship? If we could at all, direct your attention, Ms. Heard, to the or Findlay. page uh, 14. I the think they might be a little salty about it. I would be a little bit. I don't think they're going to be uh, hanging out for drinks after this. No, I don't think so. don't think so. This is we not still have to represent her ad adequately yeah. and zealously, though. So it doesn't affect that. Is that your signature? Yes, it is. And your signature appears right under the statement, quote, I declare under penalty of perjury, under the laws of the state of Virginia, that the foregoing is true and correct. That is correct. Damn. And this is dated April 10th, 2019. Correct. Now let's look at paragraph 16, which is on page five. Sorry, none of this is uh, going to be allowed because it's a commonwealth. Very sorry. <laughs> Specifically line 10. Quote. You write, testify under oath. While he was smashing the phone, Johnny severely injured his finger, cutting off the top of it, end quote. Did I read that correctly? Yes, that's correct. So you testified in this courtroom that after Mr. Depp smashed the phone, he held you down on the countertop by the neck. Do you remember that? I'm not quite sure of the exact sequence of things, but yes, both of those things happened. We'll get to We're not sequence. quite clear either. And this is when Mr. Depp supposedly assaulted you with a bottle, right? On the countertop, he assaulted me. So Mr. Depp was able to get you on the counter, right? He held me down by my neck. And hold you down by your neck. That is correct. And he grabbed a bottle, according to you, while holding you down by the neck, correct? I'm sorry, can you clarify what you're asking? <laughs> while Mr. Depp is holding you by the neck against the countertop, he grabs a bottle. That's your testimony. No, those two things didn't happen at the exact same time, no. While he, so he's holding the bottle, is that your testimony? He While holding, holding my... you down by the neck? Sorry, what was your question? She literally just the asked testimony it. is misheard. I'm sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting either frustrated. He has the bottle <laughs> it's before fine. or after he's holding so you by the neck on the counter. Is that your testimony? He held me by the neck on the counter. Where's the bottle? And about the bottle, Amber? He's at what point? While holding you he's down. He's holding you down by the neck. That's for you and to he answer, was Amber. Assaulting me with the bottle it was in his hand. She just asked you that was like five times. Hand, I don't know what you're talking about. That's not true. I was being held down while he assaulted me with the bottle. She thinks she's doing well. The jury so was he had not the bottle first. Last night. Does he have the bottle in his hand? Yes or no? As I have always said, I don't remember exactly what happened first, or I don't remember the sequence. I just remember being aware that I was being assaulted by a bottle while I was on the countertop. So he with penetrates you with this back. bottle. So but you don't know how he got the bottle, right? That is correct. And he did that right after he lost the tip of his right middle finger. Again, I don't remember the exact sequence. Of those months. We'll get to the sequence. And while he was on eight to 10 MDMA pills, pills right? Yes. <laughs> talk about the sequence this is the sequence of events you testified to in this courtroom that he smashed the phone to smithereens and then assaulted you lost the tip of his finger and then assaulted you with a bottle yes that's the sequence of events that you testified to in this to be, courtroom to be clear you're putting it in order when you say words like then i have never claimed that i can remember the exact sequence of these things this was a, a multi-day assault that took place over that's not my question. My question isn't about the three day assault allegedly that occurred. I'm just talking about the sexual assault that you now allege occurred. Yes, okay? correct. Let's talk about the sequence. Nice. Good job. <laughs> so you testified. I think Elaine just asked for a sidebar. Could be. <clears throat> Is Camilla allowed to ask Amber if she spoke to her lawyers or the break says Dizin, Dizo, Dizero, Dizero, Entropy? Sorry, I totally butchered the name. I wouldn't ask that she, question even she if I could. She is, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't. There's DUI guy. Yeah. DUI guy. I know the no. answer. 
Look at the don't jury. Know the answer. Yeah, don't ask the question. Exactly so. Yeah. Exactly yep. so. Copy of day 16 in front of you. She's killing it. Uh, day 16. Yes. Oh, she's going to read her testimony from no, of yesterday. The court transcript from this trial. Oh, yes. Oh, I, I didn't know. Next to yeah. David. Okay. Yep. Let's look at the transcript. So you testified Whoa. on page, I'm getting there, 4506. They're getting immediate transcripts. This must cost a fortune. Uh, yeah, but worth every penny. If yeah. I had the money on every file to do it, I'd be doing it on every file. You just yeah. grab the money. I'm going to call David during lunch. <laughs> All right. Okay. And it, the reason that we need to go through this, Ms. Hurd, is because we understand that these are very serious allegations that you're making, right? It was horrible what happened to me, yes. Okay, so let's go through them. <laughs> Page 4506, line two through three. That was on I sit that here now. <clears throat> You testified on page 4506. This all started when Mr. Depp took eight or 10 pills of MDMA, right? That is correct. Okay. Then, directing your attention to page 4518, line 19. You talk about Mr. Depp smashing a wall mounted phone, correct? That is correct. Then on page 4519, at line three, she's got all her You testified that while Mr. Depp is smashing the phone, he's screaming, quote, I fucking hate you, end quote. Right? Yes, he, he was screaming that, among other things. <laughs> Further down on page 4519, same page, why, why lines 12 through 19. You talk about how you watched Mr. Depp smash the phone to smithereens, right? That is correct. Then, continuing on, on the same page, 4519, line 20, you say something really important. Quote, at some point, he's on top of me. No phone, but screaming the same thing, end quote. Right? I just remember the sound, yes. But you remember, and you testify to the jury, he didn't have the phone in his hand anymore. When he was assaulting me with the bottle, right. he had the bottle in his hand. When he was punching the wall with the phone, he had the phone in his hand. When he was punching the wall next to my head, he had me by the throat. He did a lot of things that night. So you're acknowledging by this sequence, not my words, your words, Ms. Heard, that you testified to this jury that Mr. Depp smashed the phone to smithereens before he assaulted you. That's have, the way, that's the sequencing in which you testified, correct? I have never testified to a sequence. Uh, what? Whoa. You sure? Uh -huh. talking about okay. I know, it and sounds like a sequence to me. Five, two, one. Larry, eyes on jury. Starting at line three. Yeah. You testified to being bent over backwards on the bar, right? Okay. Some object objection, asking to approach. Yeah, I need to interrupt this because it's going to just kill this. Because this is <laughs> killing my client. Uh, Did you Jesus like says, how Camille said, I fucking hate you to yes. Amber? Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. 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 Well, I like that. Like I she think actually that does. Post it note that came across. Say it with was, feeling. Yeah. I think the post it note that came across was you're, you're sounding a little like you're attacking her and this is serious stuff. Do, do a, do an intervening question to, uh, to talk about how we understand that the allegations are serious. Because she gets yeah. that post note right before she asked that. Fair uh, point. Fair point. Shifty Giza says, do you think yesterday's takedown of age will impact her uh, cis decision whether to testify or not, or anyone else for that matter? What do you guys think? <clears throat> well, Whitney's the only live witness she has left, isn't she? I guess so. So everybody I mean, else is eligible. just by deposition. Yeah, Whitney. So they're all locked in. Okay. Yeah. Which is yeah, hilarious. I guess, so I yeah, so. I think just, use the depositions because it's as good as it's going to get. I also yeah, so. that's his decision if she's subpoenaed. I mean, I could say I, I would run if I was her. <laughs> yeah. Sage says her testimony is going to be a bunch of stuff that Amber told her. 
The, yeah. the thing that uh, yeah. was just addressed as well about that question of you understand that this is serious, um, that's something you do in litigation a lot because it amps up the consequences of lying. Yes. You know, it's not just you, you're Correcting lying. Your attention is heard to page 4521, starting at line three. One objection. You testified to being bent over backwards on the bar, right? That is correct. And then feeling pressure on your pubic bone like Mr. Depp was punching you. Yes? That's what I thought. And then further down on page 4521 and on to 4522, you testified that you were concerned Mr. Depp was using a broken bottle on you. Yes? That was my fear. Okay. That's what I remember feeling. Mr. Hurd, I'm going to show you defendant's exhibit 1816. has already been admitted. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You saw this picture during your direct examination, right? I did. And you testified that this is a picture of the bottles that were next to Mr. Depp on a desk when you found him drinking in the morning, right? That's correct. And this was the morning after Mr. Depp had allegedly sexually assaulted you, right? It was the morning after he did assault me, yes. And if I understood your testimony correctly, you testified that this is the maker's mark bottle that Mr. Depp sexually assaulted you with. I was never sure it was, but it was definitely that shape, felt like that shape. She so you said testified she... in this courtroom that you had not seen this bottle until Ben King provided these photographs, correct? Not in the course of the trial. I hadn't seen the photograph. Uh, Bring the impeaching statement. Not in the course of the trial. You claim you had trial. serious injuries after this alleged incident, right, Ms. Heard? Depends on what you would call serious for me. Um, you know, having a sore jaw and some bruises uh, at the time in my relationship wasn't that serious. Um, okay. Let's testify. Relative. Let's focus on the testimony that you gave about the injuries. Mr. Depp, as you testified yesterday, wears rings on every finger, right? Sometimes. I mean, often. And certainly in the later part of our relationship, that was more normal than not. But if he's filming or something like that, of course, he's not going to have his own jewelry on. Your testimony in this trial was... Quote, I don't know if I've ever known Johnny not to wear rings. Correct? You need to put your microphone on, Ms. <laughs> Thank you. Objection, Your Honor. You. Improper impeachment. If she's going to ask her question, then she has to show where that was and then and I'll rule the objection. Go ahead. Thank you. T.M. Pinkerton, thank you very much for the generous super chat. Your testimony yesterday was, quote, I don't know if I've ever known Johnny not to wear rings. Right, Ms. Heard? That's what I testified to, yes. Okay. And he was wearing rings on every finger in Australia, Correct. Not all the time, not literally every single ring, every single day, but he often wears rings. Not often, Ms. Heard. Your words are, I've never known Johnny not to wear rings on every finger. That is what I testified to. Okay. And you testified that you bled as a result of this sexual assault, correct? That is correct. All right. And you testified that your forearms were cut. My forearms and my feet. And your feet were sliced up. That's correct. And you testified you had a bruise across your jaw. That is correct. And there is not a single medical record reflecting treatment for any of those injuries. Is there, Ms. Heard? I didn't seek treatment. And the day after you sustained all these injuries, Dr. David Kipper came to the house in Australia, right? Well, he came the third day uh, along with security. The day after you sustained these injuries, Ms. Dr. David Kipper came along with Nurse Debbie Lloyd, correct? Well, the that fight went into the morning, like early hour morning. So technically that last day. Oh, are we getting to the Australia? Dr. Audio? David Kipper, Mr. Depp's, or was Mr. Depp's uh, physician, right? I believe he still is. But yes. he was at the time. Yes, that's correct. And he was also your physician. He also saw me. No, not saw you. He was your physician, correct, Ms. Heard? Uh, Johnny was the client, but he also treated me. All right, let's please pull up. Do you remember giving testimony in this case in a deposition, Ms. Hurd? Yes, I do. I've given a couple. I like the strategy Please, of getting her to uh, fight. Last pull up the deposition transcript. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why she fights so much on this little stuff, because they're just going to bring up that she said that Dr. Kipper was also a doctor, um, right? 589 yeah. lines 6 through 8. May I approach? Yes, ma'am. Uh, 
Um, Your Honor, we're going to play Ms. Hurd's deposition for the jury, uh, line day two, page 540, line six through nine. If we have permission to publish it. Your Honor, give me Excuse me, I'm, I'm sorry, day two, page 589, line six through eight. All right, if you could just give us a minute to get of course. there. 589. I'm sorry, what were the lines? Page 589, line six through eight. Did you say 540 or 589? 589, uh -huh. lines six right. through eight. All right, thank okay. you. Thank you. I have no objection, Your Honor. And he was your doctor at this point, right? Yes, he was. Well, <laughs> sure. Debbie is, Lloyd also came to the house that day. There? Yes, she came with Kipper. Yeah. Miss Lloyd is a nurse, correct? That is correct. Malcolm Connolly also came to the house that day. Yes, that's correct. Mr. Connolly is one of the security guards, correct? That is correct. You had known Mr. Connolly for years at that point. Yes, that's correct. You flew back to Los Angeles the next day with Ben King. Is that right? I can't be certain if it was uh, the next day or the day after, but somewhere around there, yes. And the day you arrived back in Los Angeles, you saw Travis McGivern, correct? I don't recall seeing Travis, no. You don't recall Mr. McGivern picking you up from the airport with Ben King? I don't remember that, no. And the same day, you also saw your own nurse, Erin Baran Filotti that day, correct? The day you arrived in Los Angeles? I don't recall if I saw her that day. You saw Ms. Vladi's testimony in this case by a video deposition, correct? That is correct. And you heard her testify that she saw you the day you arrived back from Australia on March 9th, 2015. I believe she testified that she came to dinner where I was with friends. Yeah, I believe that. So she saw you that day? I believe that evening I saw her at dinner. Okay. And then you saw Aaron Baran Vladi again the next day for a private meeting, didn't you? I, I'm not sure if, if that if that's what she testified to. I'd have to just see the records to know. You heard her testify according to her notes. She met with you privately on March 10th, 2015. She met with me at some point upon my arrival, but I don't remember the exact date. And when you were in Australia, Ms. Heard, you didn't take any pictures of the injuries you claimed to have sustained, right? I did not take any pictures, no. But you did take two pictures. Of the mirrors. I took two pictures of the bathroom mirrors that... Um, was the master bathroom where I was. Let's please pull up defendant's exhibit 374, which is already in evidence. She's so needlessly evasive on some of this stuff. How did you stand in the mirror when you took the picture? You took yeah. this picture, right, Ms. Heard? Yes, that's correct. And this is a mirror in the bathroom in Australia? That's correct. And this black paint on the mirror is from Mr. Depp? That is correct. He wrote on the mirror in black paint after his finger was cut off, right? Uh, yes, uh, I only know that because there was blood in his wall as paint. So you took this picture after Mr. Depp had injured his fingers, correct? This was while I was packing, when I was leaving. That, that's, that's a yes, I took right? The photo. Heard? That's what's the question? I'm sorry. You took this picture after Mr. Depp had injured his finger. That's correct. And you took this picture after you had allegedly been assaulted by Mr. Depp, yes? That's correct. Yeah, you didn't capture yourself in the mirror, did you? I don't see myself in the mirror, no. Yes. Let's please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 375. Why wasn't it taken? Why'd you take it at the end? Uh, why wouldn't you? You took this picture as well, right, Ms. Hurd? That's correct. And this is from one of the bathroom mirrors in Australia? <clears throat> That's correct. So this is also a picture taken after Mr. Depp had injured his finger? That's correct. And this is also a picture taken after you had allegedly been assaulted by Mr. Depp? That's correct. You didn't capture yourself in the mirror in this picture either, did you? I do not see myself in the mirror in that picture. Is that because you didn't have any visible injuries on you? <laughs> it's because I was taking a picture of the writing. But not Let's doctor. talk about the writing on this mirror. Doesn't matter what her, what her answer so the was. The writing in black paint is from Mr. Depp, correct? I would have it's all from Mr. Depp. Why and it's your testimony under oath that you did not write the red text that says, quote, call Carly Simon, she said it better, babe, end that's, quote. That's correct. Have been able to call the stuff, really. Because if you did write that, it means that your husband was walking around the house bleeding from his amputated <laughs> finger and you're writing snarky messages to him on a mirror, right? <laughs> oh my uh, God. Uh, I don't know what the question to me is. I'm sorry. That was great. Ouch. Wow. I don't know how to respond to this. 
Let's please take a look at defendants exhibit 18230. Didn't even didn't even restate the question. It's like, no, I said what I needed to say. This picture is also David's parking, which means the jury's reacting to it. This is a picture of the same mirror, right? That's correct. But you didn't take this picture. No, I did not. This is the one that Ben King took. And I don't see him in the mirror either. He's, I don't believe he claimed he had injuries though. Is that right? I did not hear uh, Ben King talk about his injuries, no. Okay. So you would agree, Ms. Heard, that the block text on the mirror oh says, quote, she loves naked photos of herself. So modern, so hot. I had not read that yet. I mean, before, but yeah, that's what it says. But you were taking pictures of the text that you had not read that before? I haven't seen this. It didn't make sense to me at the time when I read it in person. Again, Mr. Depp wrote that. I don't know who else would have. So Ms. Heard, just to be clear, it's your testimony that Mr. Depp also wrote the message in red about Carly Simon saying it better, right? That's correct. You know Carly Simon saying the song, You're So Vain, right? I was told that. So it's your testimony that Mr. Depp was writing messages to himself in the mirror back and forth. The best I can describe it is it looked like a crazy conversation. It was on the walls. It was with on himself. You don't say. It was on cushions. Yeah. Your testimony, the co crazy conversation was with himself. That's what it looked like from the bloody messages I found. Mm. You would agree with me that in this photograph, the red text has been smudged with black wow. paint, right? Yes. Okay. Let's please pull up, if we can, defendants exhibit three, five, excuse me, 375 again. Box smudge isn't in this picture that you took, right? That's correct. So Mr. Depp must have not liked his own message to himself. I'm not quite sure what was happening when Ben took that the, his photograph, no. Okay. Let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 343, which is already in evidence, and play the portion from 15721 through 15854. It's a recording, Your Honor. It seems like such a clear lie. Give us so much Australia audio, Camille. Give it to us. We want it. In Australia, when we had the big fight where I lost the tip of my finger, at least five bathrooms and two bedrooms I went to. To, to, to avoid talking to me. To, to avoid escape, working out. That's to the escape problem. the fight. You don't escape the fight. You escape the solution. No. You escape the solution. No. You s escape figuring it out. We cannot work it out if you run away to the bathroom every time. Listen to me. Listen to me. A boxer can't go 12 rounds without a fucking minute break. I'm not not giving you a minute break. You do it at minute three at the beginning of an argument. No. There are rounds, man. And when it gets too fucking hairy, the ref splits him apart or whatever. But I'm, I'm, all I'm saying is you, 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 you can't have a solution if the argument just keeps mounting and mounting and mounting and mounting. I fucking go to the, into the bathroom and sit on the floor. Bam, bam, bam. Here you come. I come out. Fight, fight, fight. Crazy. Escalated. I go, I split again, I go to another fucking bathroom or a bedroom or something. Knock, 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 bang, bang, bang. You kept coming to get me. Every this is what really happened in Australia, isn't it, Miss Heard? Uh, I did knock on a bathroom door on the first night. Not a bathroom door, five bathroom doors and two bedrooms. Uh, is Johnny right? is not an accurate historian of what happened during Ms. Heard, that uh, Ms. period Heard, of time. I'll guarantee Ms. Heard, that. that's not my question. Five bathroom doors, two bedrooms. That's what you knocked on. I that's what there. actually happened in Australia, isn't it, Ms. Heard? I was there. So that's I remember it. I knocked on one bathroom door. I came on the first night after he decided to take the bag of MDMA. Ms. Heard, to check Ms. Heard on I'm going to move to strike everything after I knocked on one bathroom she door. She can't do that. She's answering the question. But not quite, so I will sustain the objection. <laughs> yes, this is beautiful. <clears throat> yes. Not quite, says the judge. And that's a proper way for her to object, the recording we just listened even to. though she's, that's exactly she's what doing the cross-examination because yes. she's moving to strike Mr. Depp it. lost the tip of his finger after you threw a bottle at him. That is not right. Yep. That is incorrect. You're the one who assaulted someone with a bottle in Australia. Isn't that right, Ms. Heard? 
I didn't assault Johnny in yeah. Australia. Yeah. I didn't assault Johnny ever. I couldn't. And then after he was injured, he had to hide from you, right? Yeah. That is incorrect. Five bathrooms, two bedrooms. He doesn't like that. That is incorrect. And you would pursue him. True. That is incorrect. Because he was avoiding talking to you, right? He did that first night when and he was I avoiding, tried to talk to him about the drugs. And he was avoiding working it out. No, he was uh, avoiding agreeing to not fight about the drugs. What? You weren't scared of him at all, what? were you? I have a, uh, a mixed relationship with Johnny and one in which I'm scared, one in which I love him very much. I'm not talking about your mixed relationship. That night in Australia, after you cut off his finger with a bottle, you weren't scared of him at all, were you? This is a man who tried Maybe. to kill me. Of course, it's scary. He's also <coughs> my husband. Ms. Hurd, I'm going to show you what's been marked as Defendant's Exhibit 371. Has she ever before said he tried to kill her? She said she, said she barely survived the relationship. She said she barely survived, and then she said, I don't think he tried to kill evidence. me, but he almost no. did, essentially. Okay. I don't have So she just said he, he tried to kill, kill me. He was going to kill me without knowing that he was killing me. Yes. Yeah. Scroll down, yeah. please. No. Yes, we know the evidence is on Fairfax County. Hoffman, if you don't have your microphone on, I cannot hear you. Yeah, you still don't have it. Being a boomer again. Yeah. Elaine, how many warnings do you need on the mic? I need to take a look at the unredacted for a minute. Your Honor. She keeps yeah. turning it off. So I'm not admitting it into evidence yet. Okay. I would like to just okay. talk yeah, to the witness about it. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Oh, man, I wish I was in that courtroom so bad. Hi. Sorry. Sir, I'm going to show you what's been marked as Defendant's Exhibit 371. Do you recognize these text messages between you and uh, Dr. Cowan? I don't recognize these, no. Who's Dr. Cowan? He was um, my therapist that uh, was recommended to me from Dr. Kipper. Uh, he and Dr. Kipper worked together. Who's if your I therapist play at the that time, bus, correct? Coming. That's correct. And you had been seeing him for almost a year in March of 2015? Uh, My guess would be about six months at that point. Your text messages are in gray, correct? Your Honor, I'm going, I'm going to ask that she show her the unredacted so that she can see the text exchange back and right, forth if, you if she wants to talk Absolutely. about All right, moving we'll the unredacted sure. later. Go ahead. Thank you. Pull it up. going well so far for for uh for johnny i think australia really looks like a mess for amber heard it does it is a mess they 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 are building up to See, the audio recorded messages from this australia the these are indeed communications between you and dr cowan i love her tone i love her pace yes oh good yes yes that's correct Doctor, your text messages are in gray, correct? Yes, that's correct. And Dr. Cowan's are in blue? That is correct. Okay. You see the text message at the bottom of the page from March 8th, 2015 at 8.29 p.m.? Yes, that's correct. March 8th is the day that you were allegedly sexually assaulted by Mr. Depp in Australia, correct? That is correct. Okay. So on March 8th, 2015, you were in Australia? That is correct. And Mr. Depp's finger had just been cut off, right? That is correct. And you write to Dr. Cowan, quote, I feel so lost. I can't talk. I don't know if I'll ever be able to change, end quote. Did I read that correctly? That's correct. You weren't able to change, were you, Ms. Heard? I very much wanted to leave the relationship I was in, but I didn't have the power. I didn't feel I had the power to leave. I knew I was in a very toxic relationship with Johnny and I knew I needed to change that. I knew it was at this point horrible for me. And I'm I talked to my to therapist often about that. Exhibit, defendant's exhibit 371 as redacted with just Ms. Hurd's messages. All right, Your Honor, I object because she has left out the next two lines from Ms. Hurd 
that clarify even further. And I also think Ms. that Brett Dr. Hawk, Collins, that's for, that's for redirect. Yeah, that's redirect. Yeah. Improper, yeah, Elaine. Elaine. Is really it's trying to work those speaking objections in front of the jury also. She yeah. is. She is. I mean, and, I, and I think, I think yesterday that that improper comment, I I saw yeah. some some audio from it. I think that that's what that was yesterday when Camille said, yeah. "Your Honor, yeah. this is improper." Yeah. Was because yeah. because she was basically speaking, doing doing one of those speaking objections. It was and explaining. It was, I remember it exactly. It was it was when they were asking about um, the donation thing, and she yeah. said, "It it's improper. You can't." What was she saying? Uh, she's confusing the witness. The witness has already testified that it was uh, it was pledged. She fed answer the word pledged. Yeah, fed, mm -hmm. fed answer, and that was when she was called out. But the only thing I didn't like from Vasquez there was she directly addressed dire uh, directly addressed Miss Bredahoff and turned and faced her. Miss Bredahoff, you got to address that to the court. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Felicia Norstead, will they bring in Kate Moss as a witness? Maybe. Hope so. I I hope so. I certainly hope so. Hey, can I address one of the super chats that came through real earlier that has yes. to do with Rocky Pennington? And yes, yes. To clarify Let me pull that 100%, up. it is not the MMA fighter Raquel Pennington, <laughs> which is so yes. confusing because I totally thought that at the very beginning myself, but this is a completely separate Rocky Pennington, not the MMA fighter. Yes. Oh, Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Um, I was saving that yeah. one to, uh, to talk about. I looked that up and thought it was too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, here's another one. Uh, B O three O F says, great panel. Go Kurt question. What do you guys make of the mail thing on the on the medical records? Also, do you think Camille will slow down today? <laughs> and that was just them trying to make an impact in two hours. Oh, she is not slowing down. No, she is lightning I, speed. The goddess I, of thunder is yeah. still at lightning speed today. <laughs> the mail thing, and the mail I mean, your honor, I'm going to move yeah. to admit defense yeah. exhibit 371 yeah. as redacted. All right. 371 in evidence as redacted. Over objection. Real easy typo or whatever. Else. Yeah. It's something that the may have been Thank copy you. pasted from something and then they just didn't fix that one. So you write, yeah. Ms. Heard, to Dr. Cowan, I feel so lost. I can't talk. I don't know if I'll ever be able to change. Right? And I said, I clearly can't figure this out, meaning the relationship. You didn't say that. You said, I did. Not the relationship. Your text messages, clearly, I can't figure this out. I feel so lost right now. What I was saying to him no, no, no. is, Ms. clearly, Heard, I can't Ms. Heard, figure this Ms. Heard, out. Ms. that's not my question. The text, just the text. That's exactly what, you what I'm saying. What you texted. Clearly, I can't figure this out. I feel so lost right now. That's, that's what, what I was saying. saying. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Heard, Ms. Heard, that's not my question. Your Honor, just for clarification, so, so those two next lines did come in. They are in the redacted Okay, copy. great. All right, thank you. Ms. Heard, you contend that there's another incident of abuse in March of 2015 after you and Mr. Depp returned from Australia. Is that correct? That's correct. And this is, incident took place on March 23rd, 2015? That's correct. And this supposedly occurred in the penthouse at the Eastern Columbia building? That's correct. You had found text messages between Mr. Depp and another woman, right? That is correct. So you confronted him about cheating on you? That's correct. And this was about two weeks after you had returned from Australia? That's correct. So this is shortly after Mr. Depp supposedly sexually assaulted you with a bottle, right? It was two weeks after he assaulted me, yes. And you decided to confront him about cheating on you? Um, I, I didn't decide to, I, 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 I wanted to. Mr. Depp's finger was freshly what? injured at this point, right? He had a cast on it. The top of his right finger had been cut off two weeks prior. That is correct. And he had a pin in his finger, true? I don't recall when the pin was placed. A skin graft? I'm not quite sure he had several different procedures and they were kind of spread out over a period of time. So I don't remember what happened and when One of those exactly. procedures was to treat the MRSA that got on his finger too, right? At some point I knew he had an infection and his right hand was in a bandage, right? It was casted. So it's your testimony that Mr. Depp was able to attack both you and your sister with his hand in that state, right? That is correct. He had a hard plaster cast on it. Debbie Lloyd was present in the penthouses when Mr. Depp supposedly attacked you. Isn't that correct? That's correct. In fact, you claim that Mr. Depp threw a Red Bull can at Miss Lloyd that evening. Yes, that's correct. 
And you put in a sworn statement to that effect in the UK case, right? That is correct. But that's not true, is it? That's what happened. You know what a deposition is, right, Ms. Heard? I've had several, yes. Yeah, so you know what it's when someone provides testimony under oath. That is correct. You're aware that Ms. Lloyd was deposed in connection with this case, correct? That's true. And Ms. Lloyd's deposition testimony was played earlier in this trial, right? I'm going to object, Your Honor, may we approach? All right. Elaine coming in a lot hotter with the objections this time. Yeah. I think she yep. realized that she can't let Camille run the field because Camille can just keep going. But Camille is doing some of, uh, there's some that Camille's coming in there where I would object is argumentative. Yeah. You, you can't keep reminding the witness that stuff that's said under truth is truthful. Like that's at some point in time that becomes argumentative and harassing. But you are allowed to say like, this is under oath. This is, you know, Um, Glacier Legal Solicitors and Advisor says Camille looks like Johnny's guardian angel clad in white. Thinks she's going for an example of epitome of what Amber purports to be. So in a deposition, Ms. Hurst, yeah, it's you know it's when someone cool. provides testimony under oath, yeah. right? That's correct. And you're aware that Ms. Lloyd was deposed in connection with this case. That's correct. And Ms. Lloyd's deposition testimony was played earlier in this trial. Yes. So you heard Ms. Lloyd testify under oath that Mr. Depp never threw a can of Red Bull at her. I can't remember uh, if she didn't rem if she didn't recall that or if she said it didn't happen. I don't remember. I vaguely sense she didn't recall anything. Amber Heard listens to social That's media. That's your testimony folks. that Miss Lloyd would forget that Mr. Depp, very famous patient of hers, threw a can of Red Bull that nearly missed her, according to your version of events. To be fair, I just don't remember if she said when she testified that she didn't recall that incident or if it didn't happen. I don't remember what she testified to, but I have a vague sense that she didn't recall much at all. She recalled and she testified in this courtroom that Mr. Depp never threw a can of Red Bull at her. That was her testimony, wasn't it? I don't recall what her testimony was with regards to that one incident, no. You actually filed a complaint against Ms. Lloyd's nursing license right before she was supposedly deposed in this case, mm. didn't you? Really? Uh, no, I don't, I don't believe I did. Are you aware that someone filed a complaint against Ms. Lloyd's nursing license in connection with her care of Mr. Depp for failing to report abuse? No, I had no idea. You're the first person to let me know about that. Is your testimony under oath that wasn't you? That is my testimony. I didn't even know about that until now. Travis McGivern was also present when Mr. Depp supposedly attacked you, correct? He walked in at some point. And you heard his testimony that it was actually you who punched Mr. Depp. Isn't that right? It's always been my own testimony that I hit Johnny. And, and you who was throwing things at Mr. Depp. I hit him in defense of my sister. I didn't have anything to throw at him. I never threw anything at him. I hit him when he attacked me and my sister, specifically when he moved for her. That's when I hit him. Since so your testimony under oath, you threw nothing at Mr. Depp. Mr. McGivern's lying. I have thrown things at Johnny. No, no, to no. Be clear, not, but not thrown that occasion. Things that evening. Not that occasion. Not not on that occasion. Since so your testimony, Mr. McGivern, imagined that you were throwing things at Mr. Depp from the mezzanine level down towards where Mr. Depp and Mr. McGivern were standing. Well, he certainly wasn't going to say it about his client. <coughs> whoa! 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 Ms. Heard, you and Mr. Depp kept a journal together, didn't you? Yes, we did. You wrote each other messages in that journal, right? That is true. If we could please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 91. I'm only gonna be showing certain portions of this, so if we could please call this Plaintiff's Exhibit 91A. This is the journal that you and Mr. Depp kept with each other in electronic form, correct? That is correct. And if you we could scroll through, these are all entries that you made in the journal, correct? So Debbie Lloyd gave her deposition under the shadow of a challenge to her license. Is yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. No wonder she didn't it's remember. Even more sense, 
Yeah, it I'm makes even more sense why she didn't recall anything. Exhibit 91A, and I've gone ahead and redacted Mr. Depp's writings as he, on hearsay grounds. I'm going to object to the review. Okay. And Heard says it wasn't her. How plausible do you think that is? Or not a, not maybe it all. wasn't her, maybe she just suggested it be done by one of her friends. The less plausible thing is this is the first I'm hearing of this today. Yeah. Like it almost doesn't matter because if it wasn't her, she's still just blaming it. There's always somebody else who is responsible for every bad thing that happens. Not a single thing is Amber. So it's just building that same pattern of denial on her part. Yeah. Well, so Andrea, to that point, I think a good strategy for Vasquez would be to basically say, so this is one more thing that you're not responsible yeah. for yeah. and to keep doing that and compound it. And at the very end, you have the argument, just like you said, so Again, all of those things you're not responsible for, you're not responsible for anything. Yeah. It's very hard to believe a lot of this stuff. She's one of the least credible witnesses I've ever seen, which doesn't mean necessarily untruthful, but untruthful is where I'm thinking. Well, she's just so highly defensive. She argues with stuff that she doesn't have to argue with. She can't accept her own incon inconsistency you know she has to accept that the first thing that she said is true and that the second thing she said that can't be reconciled with the first thing she said is start also with the first true page. it's a picture your honor I'm, it's a picture they haven't given me the pages yet <sighs> well interesting that that last super chat. maybe I, I didn't say that very well to respond to that last super chat guys i i, I didn't realize i was muted uh Dumb, dumb. Um, anyhow, but I, I will send the super chat or that that super chat screenshot to Rick. Uh, there was one for you, Rick, yesterday after you left. So I took oh, a, a screenshot you. of it. Yeah. So I said, what did I do? No, no, no. I apologize no, to all. To the jury. No, it was, it was a good question. <laughs> 91A in evidence. Thank you. Over objection. This is a picture that's on the inside cover of the love notebook, correct? That's correct. And this is a picture of you and Mr. Depp? That's correct. You're in Australia in this picture, aren't you? Yes, but that's much later once we returned. You can see that Mr. Depp's right hand is bandaged, right? Yes, that's correct. That was after it had recovered significantly. That's not what it looked like uh, during the incident we were just talking it about. It recovered in like two weeks? So this is a picture after the events in Australia in March of 2015, correct? Yeah, yes, that photograph was taken months later. We have the jury look at that photograph okay, again. months please. later. Well, I mean, we know they say Pirates was held for five weeks i think yeah yeah that's let's now turn to page three this is a note you wrote in the journal to mr depp correct that's what it looks like yes this is actually the first note you wrote to him in this journal i don't remember what the first note was she's actually got the date on this note is May 22nd, 2015, correct? That is correct. That was during our honeymoon period. So this is just a little bit over two months after the events in Australia in March of 2015, right? That's correct. We were back in a honeymoon phase. That was the period of sobriety I spoke about yesterday. When Mr. Yeah. Depp, after Mr. Depp had allegedly assaulted you with a bottle, right? It was after the stairs and it was after the Australia incident, yes. And nice. he got clean and sober, and we went back to Australia. So it's also to get, two months to get after. credit where it's owed. That's a lovely. You punched note. Mr. Depp because it you is. allegedly thought he was going to throw your sister. He's got great handwriting. So right? I hit him like when he days. swung at my sister, and this is written months later. Yes. You thought he was going to throw your sister down the stairs like he had thrown. I will say she has beautiful stairs, handwriting. Right? He swung at Whitney, and I had heard a rumor, a vague rumor about that, and so it's what I thought of. This first message to Mr. Depp in your journal, you write, quote, true love isn't about just the madness of passion or instead picking the safety of peace. No, it's about having both, falling madly in love with your friend. That is what has surprised me perhaps the most, that I have seen in you the true bones of friendship and respect. But of course, I still, perhaps more than ever, want to rip you apart devour you Whoa. and savor the taste. It gets more Fret than before, not, not more than ever. XX Slim. Yes, it's a love note. 
Did I read that correctly? Oh, how loving. Yes, you did. And you're slim, right? Ooh. That's correct. And devout. Sort of, I'm now taste. going to ask you to take a look at the very last okay. entry you wrote in this journal, which seems to be from April 8th. You know, I'm, I'm not going to shame people's, you know, romantic language. You know, Ooh. couples have all kinds of, way of ways of expressing that. But it does stand in contradiction with what she's alleging that about a lot of these other communications. Dear beloved, I um, I'm not quite sure. I don't see the yeah, year on there, and I don't recognize it yet. Paper, you wouldn't want to see a trial. We so April write your love notes. Couples, they might show up. Right? right? That's correct. Just to confirm, this is a note you wrote to Mr. Depp, right? That's what it looks like, yes. And on the second page of this note, you wrote the following. Quote, I'm sorry I can get crazy. I'm sorry I hurt you. Like you, I can get wicked when I am hurt, when I feel provoked, shattered. And last night I was. I felt abandoned about the Lily Rose thing, felt absolutely bewildered about your not coming home on my last night here and was heartbroken and angry after many attempts in vain on my part to rectify the situation and make amends on the last night of what was otherwise a gorgeous trip with you. I'm so sorry for my part. None of this is meant to be an excuse for hurting you because the truth is nothing is. There is never a reason good enough to hurt you. You are the last thing in the whole world who deserves it. Last person I ever meant to hurt. I love you, Steve. I am forever yours, Slim. Did I read that correctly? That's correct. It's the shoe on the other foot where but they sir, tried to introduce look at messages from Johnny apologizing for stuff. Which is already in evidence. This is a picture of you with what appears to be straight red marks on your arms, correct? Those are scars from the broken glass. And they're Those straight and scars. red, right? I um, I disagree with how you characterize that, um, but they are red, yes. And they're on your left arm? Yes, that's correct. And sir, do you have a history of cutting yourself, don't you? I do not. You cut your arm once as a teenager, isn't that right? No, I said I wanted to um, when I was put on birth control pills when I was a teenager. I got, I felt crazy, and I said I felt suicidal. So it's your testimony under oath that you didn't report to Dr. Hughes, your retained psychologist, that you had cut yourself as a teenager once? Mm. I said I had told my mom that I wanted to when I was a teenager. So even Dr. Hughes mm. is, is, is in on the conspiracy. Everyone around oh, heard, oh We heard God. some testimony you know, from you yeah. yesterday about a trip you and Mr. Depp took on a train in Southeast Asia. Do you recall that? Yes, that's correct. That was when you and Mr. Depp went on your honeymoon trip, correct? That's correct. And that was in July of 2015? Yes, that sounds right. Let's take a look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 162, which is already in evidence. Oh, my goodness. Yes. You were here in this courtroom, right, Ms. Heard, when Malcolm Connolly testified to taking this picture? That's correct. This is the picture. This picture shows an injury to Mr. Depp's face, doesn't it? I disagree. I've seen this, this is, picture. Uh, okay, Ms. Heard, I've seen I got this picture the answer. Thank before, you. and it, you he's disagree. not injured in it. He's not injured in this picture. Mm -hmm. That's your testimony. Fine. This one is uh, Photoshop. Ms. Heard, uh, I have your answer. What? Thank you. This is the only photograph from our honeymoon that you shows know about someone Photoshop, with injury, Amber? correct? That's not true. We haven't seen any photos of injuries to your face from that train trip, have we? I don't believe my face was injured on that trip. Take a look at Exhibit 91A at page 46, going back to the Love Journal. This is a note from you to Mr. Depp, right? That is correct. This is a note you wrote on July 22nd, 2015. That is correct. And it starts off with the words, my husband, happy honeymoon, right? That's correct. Ms. Heard, please take a look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 91A at page 67.
This is another note from you to Mr. Depp in your journal, right? That is correct. And this one is dated August 1st, 2015. That's correct. And you write, that's enough. You've held this book hostage long enough. Although I can't wait to read my note, I also couldn't wait to tell you how much I adore you. What a beautiful, extraordinary, magical, memorable, wonderful, stunning, surprisingly evolving and impulsive adventure. I couldn't have imagined a more gorgeous honeymoon. I love you more and more every passing day. XX Slim. Did I read that right? That is correct. Let's take a look at the journal entry starting on page 68. That looked like the Carly Simon note. FYI. Yep. Yeah. Her handwriting there. This is another entry from you writing to Mr. Depp, right? That is correct. And this one's dated August 2nd. That is correct, yes. And this one is a longer one, so let's go to where it ends on page 70 of the journal. This shows that she's very adept at creating a certain type of handwriting in various styles, which yeah. really calls into question that, that whole Carly Simon note, especially write, that last note quote, that we just saw. I hope that things said in anger and pain were just that and that you miss and love me too. And that is what matters most to you. You may say you stand by everything you said and did and that there is nothing you can learn from this, but I don't feel that way. And it's important for me that you know that. I love you and I'm sorry. I miss my warm, loving husband, XX Slim. That is correct. And oh, sad, oh, the word yeah. sad is crossed out. That is true. Next, we have a journal entry from you on page 89. This one's, this is another note from you to Mr. Depp. That is correct. The whole book is love notes. Mm -hmm. So this is dated August 15th. That correct? doesn't help you, Amber. That is correct. And here you write, quote, my love, why do we fight ever? Why? I love you more than anything else. Are we that uncomfortable with being vulnerable? Were we scared or is it something else? I don't know, but I'm sure of one thing. And if it's that I can't imagine living that I can't imagine my life without you. I love you. I will do better. I am sorry. X Slim. Did I read that correctly? That is correct. You continue to read them correctly, Ms. Vasquez. The testimony, this was a love <laughs> journal. That is correct. It was primarily love notes and, and you know, apology open. notes from you to Mr. Depp. The book was more of a love notebook, um, and part of that communication, obviously, since we fought so much, uh, it was important for me to um you know, try to nurture as much peace as we possibly could. And when things were good, they were really good. And it was also an opportunity for you to apologize to Mr. Depp for your behavior, isn't it? I think it's important in every relationship to apologize when you're trying to move past fights. Let's look at an entry from August 17, 2015, starting on page 90. <clears throat> Here you write, quote, I'm sorry I shook the wheels so hard. I'm sorry we've tested the shocks and brakes to this point. God damn, I love you, Johnny. I love you. I am tied to you forever, you know that? So I'm tasked with making this work for that reason and many others, of which there are many. Let me try to fix this. Let me try to patch this. Let me try to make your heart better. You deserve it. Hell, maybe even I do. I need you. We need each other. You're my cornerstone, my heart, my all. You are my life. I hate it when we fight. I hate having you hurt. I hate that you're hurting. I love you more than anything. Let me prove it. I need you. I love you, Slim. Did I read that correctly? Yeah, another example of me trying to fix it. I was always trying to fix it. Fix it by apologizing for your bad behavior? I tried everything. I tried apologizing. I tried reading. I tried therapists. I tried everything to fix but it. But yet you couldn't change like you told Dr. Cowan, right? I couldn't change my relationship. <laughs> Man, she is like, Camille is 
so on it and she's Let's talk listening. about December 15th. She's retaining the previous again. responses, bringing stuff up again. Erin Filotti, your personal nurse, saw you two days after the incident on December 15th, 2015. Isn't that right? She did not see me as in a medical visit. She just dropped off meds in the late at night. She I saw you, with you personally, though. Right? She physically saw me, but did yeah. not see me in a medical sense, the way a doctor might see a patient. She did not see me in that way. Okay. Sure. She was your personal nurse, right? She was a nurse assigned to me. I didn't hire her. John she used to wear special glasses to, to look at someone so like she a nurse. see you, it would be physically in person, in your home, and traveling, correct? She would sometimes see me as like a medical professional would. And then other times she would just drop off meds and physically see me like as in with her eyes. You testified that during the incident on December 15th, 2015, Mr. Depp broke the bed, correct? That is correct. And more specifically, you described that he broke Rob, the bed for Rob, get in here, Rob. while trying to get purchase. Is that yes. correct? Yes, that's broke correct. The bed, broke the bed. Let's take a look at defendant's exhibit 509, which is already in evidence. Come on, you little lying snake. To the jury. Thank you. Is this a video that you have seen that's around right, YouTube? This is a picture that you indicated depicts the broken bed, right? That's exactly it. And it's your testimony that Mr. Depp causes damage to the bed with his boot, right? He did. Is that a pocket knife on the bed there? There you go. <laughs> I cannot tell what's on the bed. Did you use that to damage the bed? God, I love it. Uh, I did not damage the bed. Johnny's boot did oh, when God, he was punching me. Bed. I could feel him slipping. Mr. Do you also testify that there was blood all over the pillows on the bed, correct? On the pillow top, yes. That's correct. But you didn't take a picture of that, though, did you? I did not take a picture of this. Of the blood About on a the week bed. after the December 15th, 2015 incident, you went with Mr. Depp and his children to the island of the Bahamas. Is that correct? To celebrate See, Christmas? It, uh, the, the incident was on the 15th, and we went on the 23rd, I believe. While you were there, you did a photo shoot with Greg Williams, correct? Uh, a few days later, I think the photo shoot was about two weeks after this assault. Let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 99. Michael Gaunt, thank you so much for the very generous super chat. And yes, Michael, this is a photograph of you on Mr. Depp's oh. Island shortly after December 15, 2015, yeah. correct? Uh, no, this was taken weeks later. Dude, that would just be amazing. <laughs> on the island, on that trip? It was taken on the island. On, on that, that trip. trip? Yes. Weeks later. Weeks later. December 15th, you traveled to the island December 23rd. That's your testimony? It's my recollection that this picture was taken on New Year's Eve or... And this is the photo shoot with Greg Williams, correct? That is correct. I'm gonna to move to admit and publish. No objection. All right, 99. Andrea, she said the name was Greg Williams? Yes, Greg Williams, the photographer. Yeah, just wanna make sure. Are these the Aussie photos? Mm -hmm. No, these are Bahamas. Um, oh, Bahamas, sorry. Bahamas photos. After the December 15th incident. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Broken ribs, broken nose, two black eyes, bruises all over my body, hair pulled out of my head. Let's please That's pull up Plankton's yep. Exhibit 100. I'm going to move to admit and publish. No objection. All right, 100 in evidence. You can publish. Ms. Heard, this is another picture of you from that photo shoot, correct? Yes, this is the same photo shoot that you asked me about earlier, and this is um, several weeks later. Right. If we could zoom in on Ms. Heard's face. Thank you, Tom. Let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 101. And I'm going to move to admit and publish. Any objection? Uh, can we just have the foundation photos, please? This is a picture from the photo shoot, Ms. Heard, that was taken on the island. This is the same photo shoot, yes. Then no objection, Your Honor. All right, 101 in evidence, can publish. Could 
please scroll. Zoom in, excuse me, Tom, on Ms. Heard's face. Zoom in. Oh Your my testimony, Ms. Heard, that you were wearing makeup for this photo shoot? That is correct. It's a photo shoot. We can please in pull the water, up Camille. exhibit 102. Uh, Ms. Heard, is this another picture from the photo shoot? I can't exactly tell from the background. It looks like it's a, the same thing, but I can't really tell without it being this zoomed a, out. This is a picture of you though, right? It is a picture of me, yes. I'm gonna move to admit and publish. All right, any objection? I'm not gonna object because she identified herself. I just, if she could identify uh, when it was taken, that would be helpful. But I'm not gonna is, object. I'm not no, gonna object. No objection. No object. Okay, there we go. 102 in evidence, you published. That last photo, she had some dark circles under her eyes. But if she testified that she was wearing makeup, yeah, and she previously was, testified she was wearing makeup. Uh, let's please pull up plaintiff's exhibit. It should look three. the same as before. She can't hide the dark circles, but she can hide a broken nose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's got the weirdest. Yes, makeup her, this is yet another um, picture of you from that Greg Williams photo shoot. Correct. That is correct. This is from the same shoot. I'm gonna move to admit and publish. No objection. All right. 103 in evidence. Publish. I'm pissed that we didn't get to see that last photo. That and again, if we could zoom in on Ms. Hurd's face. I like the up the nose angle because you, if it was broken. And finally, if, if we could please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 104. Peter, thank you very much for the generous Ms. Heard, chat. This is a picture of you from that photo shoot, correct? Again, this is the same photo oh, shoot weeks oh, later. Speculate. Thank you, Peter. Uh, I'm going to move to admit and publish. No objection, Your Honor. All right, 104 in evidence. Thank you. Look at her smirking. The smirk has come out. Mm -hmm. Again, if we could zoom in on Ms. Hurd's face. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Is that how shocked you, you are? You testified that you and Mr. Depp got into a fight while on the island in December of 2015, correct? That's correct. And this all started because you perceived Mr. Depp as nodding off during the trip, right? I thought he was passing out again in a similar fashion to what he had done um, the previous year. And, and when he nodded off, he spilled wine on you, correct? Yeah, two, three times in a row. You testified that Mr. Depp's son, Jack, was there when this happened, right? At the beginning, he was there. He, he was there when Mr. Depp allegedly spilled wine on you two or three times, right? He was there for that because he offered me help. You also testified that Mr. Depp then sexually assaulted you in the bathroom, correct? That's correct. And you testified that after this, you needed to get away from him, right? That is correct. So you ran out of the house? That's correct. And you admit you threw something at him, right? I did throw something in at him to get away. You sat in this courtroom when Tara Roberts testified, right, Ms. Hurd? I did. She's Mr. Depp's manager on the island. Yes, that's correct. You heard her testify that she witnessed an argument between you and Mr. Depp on the island in December of 2015, right? I, yes, that's correct, yes. And you heard her testify that Mr. Depp was trying to escape you, right? I don't know if, she, I don't know if she characterized it like that, but that was the gist of it. She, she kind of misrepresented then, it to seem like that, yes. She misrepresented. <laughs> she misrepresented, of course. Correct. Okay, and then you kept apologizing to Mr. Depp, right? That's what no, that's Ms. Not Roberts correct. said? begging him to come back to the house with you. That's not correct. Clawing at him, she used those words. That's not correct. When she interrupted us, Johnny had me by the hair. Yelling at him. We were screaming, both of us, but uh, I don't know what she um, would have heard. And that you, she observed an injury on Mr. Depp's nose from something that you threw at him, right? I don't know what she observed. You also heard Miss Roberts testify that she included all this information in a sworn statement in the UK in May of 2020. Isn't that right? That is correct. You put in a witness statement in response to Ms. Roberts' statement in June of 2020. Isn't that correct in the UK? Um, I made several, I did several, I think seven witness statements and each one contained different information as per recent filings. That's what counsel has you do in that. In and in response to case. previous findings, correct? Including testimony from people that contradict your story? Sort of. So what you have to do is your counsel asks you to respond to things and you put it in a declaration of sorts. And that happens 
back and forth over the course of preparing to go to trial in that country. And that's what I did. So that was your fifth witness statement submitted in the UK. I don't recall which one I was asked to comment on Taylor Let's, Roberts' testimony. I'll remind you. Um, if we could have Ms. Hurd's fifth witness statement from the UK. Nurse Liz, this comment is so great. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So good. So good. All right. Thank you. How many other people filed seven witness statements, Amber? Man, oh man. Everyone else is a liar. According yep, and to I'm Amber. totally unbothered by this questioning to that's happening. Page six of your mm -hmm. fifth witness statement. It's here that you describe the December 2015 incident, correct, on the island? Uh, I haven't read through the statement. I just don't know if I had commented on it before in a previous witness statement. As I said, there were several. But starting on page six, Ms. Heard, you describe the incident that took place on the island, correct? That's correct. But what I'm trying to say is I'm not sure if I'd describe it in full okay. in this statement. Okay. I'm going to show you your confidential schedule to the fifth witness statement that mm. accompanied the fifth witness statement in the UK. Yes, ma'am. We get to see this, Camille. We're dying to see it. Get it into evidence. In the confidential schedule to your fifth witness statement. Paragraph one on page 21. You describe Mr. Depp sexually assaulting you in the Bahamas of December 2015, right? That is correct. And that's the first time you ever claimed that Mr. Depp had sexually assaulted you in the Bahamas. That is incorrect. You only submitted the confidential schedule in the UK claiming Mr. Depp had sexually assaulted you after Ms. Roberts had said that she saw you on the island chasing, clawing at Mr. Depp. Isn't that correct? That is incorrect. If we could please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 394. Nicole, you've got Your some Honor, very funny um, super this chats is here. Recording, I can represent to the court. This only contains Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd's voices. Um, I'm going to move to admit the entire recording. I'm only going to play from 11744 through 12002. All right. Any objection? Um, which which plaintiff exhibit your honor? Three nine four. Three nine four. I, I think I have no objection. All right. Your Honor. I'll go with that. All right. 394 in evidence. Thank you, Your Honor. There's no way she can feel good about this trial. <laughs> That's what I think. What things have you been doing? Hence, screaming when I spilled wine accidentally on you for falling asleep and screaming in front of my kids and freaking Jack out. And that's trying. That fucked him up, you know. No, it, it weirded him out. It never... You didn't fuck my kids up, but... 
it was pretty fucking it was pretty fucking weird for him, you know. I don't need your uh, no, like, like your clever uh, comebacks. Yeah, so no, you're, you think you're, you're controlling your, yourself? Your you is, think you're controlling your yourself? Your character has become so clear, especially when you lose them. It's embarrassing for you. I'm gonna walk away now because you're actually making it, making me see you even with words. And believe me, I'm not going to be calling you at 3 o'clock in the morning after I've been Ambien and think, oh, I'm going to just fucking forget and move on. Trust me. It is gross. I didn't use any hands. I've done nothing. Put me up in a, in a good way. And you take that for granted, fine. All right. You're right. Meet a woman who will not jump up and scream if she if you things go wrong three times in a row. And I hope, I hope you're happy with whoever that is, because that would be a special kind of fucking person. Okay. It's you and Mr. Depp in that recording, right? That's correct. And you're discussing what happened in the Bahamas in December of 2015, right? Uh, no, that's not correct. We were discussing a part of it. You're discussing <laughs> okay. when you screamed at Mr. Depp in front of his children, correct? Uh, no, we were talking about a part of that argument. Including when you screamed at Mr. Why are Dad's you fighting on this? Children. That's not a fair characterization of what happened. Mr. Dapp says you screamed at him when he accidentally spilled wine on you, correct? I realize that's what Johnny said. Yeah, and Mr. Depp tells you that this freaked out his son, Jack. Johnny often used other people to back him up in our arguments. Don't seem too concerned about that, do you? I had a lot of concerns. You don't seem, you don't mention Mr. Depp sexually assaulting you in this recording, do you? That was not the point of that conversation. If I had gotten into the details of what happened to me with him, it would have been another fight. You just accused Mr. Depp of, quote, using his kids, right? In that recording. You would often Mr. use other people, yes. And you challenge him to find a woman who will not, quote, jump up and scream if she has been spilled on three times in a row. Row. That is correct. Not a woman who would put up with sexual abuse, right? I was pointing out uh, the ridiculous nature of him expecting me not to react to something that basic. Your Honor, would this be a good time for a break? I'm... All right, we can do that. That's Thank fine. you, Your Honor. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take our morning recess for 15 minutes. Do not discuss the case with anybody. Don't do any outside research. We'll see you in 15 minutes. Okay. Main Journal News, thank you so much for the very generous super chat. I've worked in the legal field for over 20 years, though I'm too nice to be a lawyer. I really appreciate Legal Bites and the entire panel's knowledge. Thank you. Very, we can very be nice. We're nice. I, <clears throat> um, California style is a bit nicer than other places, is what I have noticed, having worked now, wait a minute. both East Coast well, and West Coast. I know you're Midwest. You're this? Midwest. That's also a nice, a generally <laughs> we'll nice area. 47, then? All right. All right, no, we're not. <laughs> We try not to be um, huge assholes up in Washington. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sometimes yeah, you yeah. just do what you got to do. Yeah, no, I've, I've. The East that, Coast that was is a, brash and in your face. The West Coast is brash and passive aggressive. The Midwest is is the chill, <laughs> the chill part of the country, except for Mike. <laughs> no, but that that was that was one of the one of the only like, I guess, or one of the critiques that I would get on the way that I would lawyer in D.C. was, um, I remember my my boss would be like, "You're too nice." You're too nice. You've got to, you've got to get, you got to get angry about stuff. And I was like, I can't, like, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't respond well with anger. <laughs> it's not an emotion that I usually do well with, <laughs> um, or at least like not one that I like, that I can usually grasp very strongly. Um, but anyhow, so yeah, I personally it is think possible it's a skill to be, a nice to be litigator. able to do this type of, uh, this type of work, um, without having to, uh, be, be an asshole about it, you know, how, how to confront somebody effectively without ha having to get in their face, just using the facts to tell the story. You don't, you don't need exactly. to get upset about facts. Nobody needs to get upset about facts. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so that last, that last part, um, Camille asking, you know, in that audio, you're, you're arguing with him over spilled wine. You're not arguing with him over SA. 
And at first I was like, okay, but you know, the absence of, of that in this conversation doesn't necessarily prove anything. You know, you could have someone who is abused that could be not talking about that specific thing in the next conversation. But then I thought about it and I was like, well, but what she's pointing out is that she's very combative with Johnny on this. She's yes. not coming across as somebody who's afraid of him. Like she is, she's like very being, being pretty verbally aggressive with him. And it doesn't really fit along with the narrative of someone who is afraid of someone who's afraid of rocking the boat, who's afraid of poking the monster. Right. Um, yeah, I, I I do you guys have any other thoughts on this? I, I didn't see where they, I didn't see where we're going with it. I'm like, yeah, okay, it's all right, but it's it's not clean enough to to be effective. And then and then she actually surprised me with the oh you 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 know you complain about wine but not abuse. And I thought, yeah. oh, that's a pretty good argument. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe unless she is afraid of him, right? Like I I thought I'd actually be more contrarian on this uh, because I I thought Camille's very strong, still good at cross X. I I thought it was fairly boring for large portions of time here. I did not like the love journal section. I didn't like it when they tried to do it to Johnny in reverse. I, I don't find that compelling. I, yeah. you know, anytime you can get her to say everybody else is lying, I think is useful. Um, yeah. But I, I did not. And maybe this is just the length of time kind of approach. I did not find most of this to be terribly interesting slash compelling. Um, yeah. And I thought that more time was spent than needed on certain aspects of the questioning. Again, yeah. that is not to say I don't think that Camille's doing an effective job. I think she is. But just in terms of overall strategy, keeping a juror's attention, I thought this meandered uh, significantly more than yesterday. Uh, maybe that's the nature of the thing. Uh, but I, yeah, yeah, I, I could have done I, without I'll seven months. I'll push back a little bit, though. I'll yeah, push back a little bit, though, because I think that that – um, what they're doing here is basically balancing that scale with what they did with Johnny saying, you know, you were apologizing, you were apologizing, you were apologizing, and then bringing it back to Amber and showing that she was apologizing, apologizing, apologizing. So he's not to the only one that's you, apologizing here. To me, if you equate Amber with Johnny, it's very easy to say, okay, they're both abusive. Well, uh, there was something I did find compelling, which I, maybe I missed earlier in the trial. So maybe it's just personal to me, but I didn't. I, the, I think the, the sort of bit where where she was chasing him in the bathroom and knocking on doors really makes her look like the aggressor. And then also when she she's she writes that that uh, stuff in the red on the mirror. And I don't know, but it it, it appears for all the world that she wrote it. And then she yeah. lies about it. Yeah. And then she says, we're having a conversation on the mirror. Well, who's we? You're saying that Johnny did all this. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that really came across uh, well for, for Johnny's side. I think she's lying yeah. about Australia. No question. Yep. Yeah. 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 And, I, and I think that there are two points about the, about the journal that I took from it. Number one um, is that um, – number one is that handwriting. She, she has shown that she has a penchant – for some very good detailed handwriting. She knows how to craft her handwriting in very particularized and beautiful ways, which means she can also write that stuff about Carly Simon on that mirror with a lipstick uh, a tube. You know, like, like that, that is on that. I, I literally completely within her skills. So there's that. And then, and then on top of that, there's, there's this like effusive language about love, 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 love. And then also even like, almost like, like violent kind of, language that she's using to describe and express her love for him again it, it helps kind of balance out his language that that sounds kind of sorry that sounds kind of violent in some ways you know like as we're reading his text messages and stuff like that to be like this is how they talk to each other when right. they are when they are being lovey-dovey you know and on top of that she's not talking about complaints she's not talking about you know you did this to me, you did that to me, you pulled my, pulled me by, 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 by my hair, you, you know, used a bottle. She's not saying any of that kind of stuff. So, you know, it, it just goes to show like, here was an opportunity for you to express to him how you really feel. And this is how you chose to express yourself. Not to say that, that someone who is abused, I don't know, wouldn't express themselves from time to time that in that way, but it just, it just shows another example of like, okay, here's another one. Another one, another one, you know, it wasn't yeah. having that effect for me. It was not adding to the mountain. You did your job mm -hmm. talking to me about the events themselves. Th those books are, you know, whatever they are, that's, that's how love notes read. Um, and again, I, my, if I'm rehabilitating, I say, well, you wouldn't bring up these things in that context. Um, if you're scared of him, would you, I mean, I like that's, that's what I would say in, in that respect. So I, I just look, 
I, I get exactly what you're saying. And I understand that they wanted to basically highlight all the times she says, I'm sorry. We know Johnny does the same thing. We know Johnny argues that he's placating. We know that we just saw Amber argue that she's placating. Um, so again, I think if I'm Johnny Depp's team, I'm trying to avoid, we don't know who's gaslighting who. And um, yes, she's lying about it, Australia, but Johnny's probably underselling X and get out of here, ce celebrities, right? Like I'm trying to avoid that. Uh, so yeah, I didn't like I didn't like today's section on all of that. I, that might just be me. I'm fully willing to cop to that, but that's where I sit on it. I'm not going to disagree too hard because I think we are in the middle rounds now. Everybody has kind of gotten comfortable with what they're bringing to this uh, exchange, and yeah. so Camille is continuing to deploy the same weapons she has, which is all of this extrinsic evidence and forcing Amber to have to account for it. And so while the evidence itself may not be the most, you know, it's, it's, it's not a smoking gun. We certainly haven't seen a smoking gun in any of this. But the value of it is drawing out Amber's attempts to explain away these things in front of the jury. Because they're really demonstrating how defensive she is, how uh, unable to accept any type of responsibility for it. And so just... To illustrate um, where I would disagree about the, the last section with the Bahamas audio, I agree that audio itself isn't necessarily all that damning. Yes, there could be reasons why she wasn't talking about a sexual assault, but I think what you got out of it was her explanation that, well, if I did bring it up, that would cause a fight. But listen to her on the audio. She's the one that's already escalating this conversation to a fight, to the fight. So yeah. her explanation is what stands in contrast to what the yeah. jury can hear with their own ears. That's exactly. what I think is is effective and why I think Camille is still continuing to win these rounds, even though they aren't as flashy and exciting as the ones agreed. we saw yesterday. Agreed, agreed. And and the way that she, uh, what was it that I that really struck me during this line of questioning was, um, oh yeah, the, the straight red marks on your arm. And she's like, I disagree with the way that you're characterizing yeah. it. It's like- yeah. You disagree with my eyeballs? Like everyone right. can see this. Like you're disagreeing with that. And like, and it doesn't look yes. good. That's not a good way. That's not a good, a good place to disagree. Well, like it's I, just well, not because it, it makes it look up. like you live in a different reality. <laughs> yes, we have the image up and it confirms my characterization of these comments. <laughs> and, like in real time as you're talking. Exactly. Ugh. Exactly. Here's what I think. I think Amber Heard is at least somewhat intelligent. I know that's going to already draw ire from the chat, but I think she's smart enough to think that she can sense a lawyer's trap. And so what Camille is doing so effectively is getting her to fight about BS stuff because she's trying to avoid a lawyer's trap because she felt all those traps come down on her yesterday. And so she's fighting over everything. She's fighting over every characterization, every word used by Camille, and it looks terrible. And on an umbrella level, I think that Camille's doing a great job with that, regardless of the substance. Like you can just say, hey, look, this is what a conversation with Amber Heard looks like and, and feel yeah. Johnny yes. Depp, right? Like mm -hmm. you, can, you can say, okay, if this is what it's like to talk to her, mm -hmm. I get that a little bit more. Uh, but as for the substance itself, I, I just would prefer more focus. That, that's, that's where I'm at. Sure. Sparkly Cupcake, thank you so much for the very generous super chat. I feel there were a couple times when even Camille was stunned at the blatant gaslighting. AH can't help herself. It does. Uh, yeah, it's it's there's a there's a there's a lot here, right? Um, and uh, uh, so and before before we before we continue, let me just remind everybody that we have a bunch of wonderful panelists on here today with us that and have us been too. donating their time. They're donating their time. So so everyone is linked in the description below, including Andrea. We wanna we wanna see how much we can we can pump up her subscriber count, right? Like, like come on, we, we did it with Rob. Let's do it again with Andrea. Andrea are you she just created content? a new channel. Have you created content she for your channel she, yet? She's I already have. thrown up a few a few videos okay. on there. She's she's been she's been awesome. already working hard on that. And I know, so we, we can't we can't claim like, oh yeah, we got you, you know, you five thousand subscribers, subscribers hey, without content. content. Lift my but, ship. Lift my <laughs> ship. I'm here for the ride. That's part of the reason why um, I got sucked into this community. I discovered the thing about LawTube is that you can't really wade <laughs> in the in the ocean yeah. of legal commentary without um, catching the riptide <laughs> that yeah. is LawTube. I have been sucked in. And yeah. uh, that's, that's a big part of the reason why. I just love the attitude and the support that everybody has shown. Um, yes. it, it is very much a rising tide lifts all boats 
um, perspective that, that I've encountered. Yeah. And so I just want to thank you all for being so welcoming and so supportive. Of course. And, uh, and, and I, I, I see that she, last I checked, she has about 3.35 thousand subscribers. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can get her to 10 K today. Can we well, get her to 10 K? Let's, let's do it. No, let's do it. Sure. Let's do Speaking it. I mean, numbers. we've got 53,000 people in here. Come on guys. <laughs> Subscribe to everybody on this channel because they are add, all doing wonderful well, I commentary. I was going to say, you've got 53,000 people in here and you, you you could get a lot more likes on this channel. So if you do like yes. this content, if you like Alita and you like Legal Bites, we're on a break right now. Now is the perfect time to give it an old stretch, the old morning break stretch. Also, <laughs> during sidebars, you just go and hit that subscribe button, you hit that like button. 53,000 people watching this and at least 52,000 disagreeing with the takes I just gave. You can let me hear it on that. The best way to tell me I'm wrong is to like Alita in Legal Bites. Because remember, she's disagreeing with me on this. So a like for Alita is telling me off. So if you want to tell me off, if you want to put a like in for Legal Bites right now, subscribe to the channel, and uh, that'll, that'll, that'll show me. Thank I'm you, impressed. Rick. I've been on this panel almost every day this trial, and Rick does this every day, okay? Puppy. And he's got a new angle. Like, he, he's like, I don't know if he works it out at night, but he's like, I got a new angle for, for the uh, like pitch today, you know? Yeah. I can always tell people to tell me off. <laughs> if there's right. something to work on the internet, it's like, hey, do you think I'm a moron? And if you yeah. want to tell me off, a great way to do it is also liking Alita. <laughs> so, hey. Show her some love and she'll, uh, she'll chastise me more. No, I'm, just teasing. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. No, anyways, no, I'm sorry for disappearing. Uh, I had someone, you know, trying to fix some stuff in my apartment. Sure. So obviously there was a lot of noise. So I apologize, but I was listening to you guys and listening to the trial the whole time. And I, I largely agree, uh, with the overall sentiments. Um, you know, it just, I think it's just by comparison of yesterday really is, is mm -hmm. sort of why at least in my mind, why I would be agreeing with some of your comments. Like yesterday was just so flawless that like, you know, <laughs> delivering delivering slightly less than perfection, right? But I still think she's incredibly solid. Like I would have yeah, been happy good. with this performance yesterday, no, at least nice. in my mind. Yes. I'm, I'm happy with it's her performance well, today. Well. You know, I'm not, I'm not quite, you know, ready to start s seeing auras from the mountaintop. <laughs> but th <laughs> that being said, like I still think she's doing a great job. She has good witness control. She's making points. Um, she's not getting too lost in the weeds, um, especially like compared to like Elaine or something like that. So, you know, overall, maybe yesterday was a hundred and maybe, maybe today it's like somewhere in the nineties, but I think she's still pretty awesome. I think she's doing very well. I, yeah, my criticism is, is by comparison to yesterday yes. and also, uh, you know, yeah, I, every time she gets to, so this person's lying about this too. Oh, so you're using the kids too. Uh, every time you arrive at those portions camille's mm -hmm. dead on uh mm -hmm. she is still camille from yesterday i i just i was not as convinced by some of the longer sections of like the love journal etc yeah but even that's if you were to script that out and say okay well well our a material is here and our b material is here that's the way you would do it hit mm -hmm. her hard in the beginning let everyone mm -hmm. sleep on it and then say well we do have more material it's not quite as good but but we'll continue with that the next day i think well, and then you end with fireworks all again. bangers man yes mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, by the way, Andrea, what is your doggo's name? This is Buffy. Oh, Buffy. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> <laughs> Buffy that was whining. She's uh, she. It's time for her breakfast, but I'm gonna wait until the uh, until the trial starts back up, and then I'll let Aww. my husband take mm -hmm. care of it. What a cute pupper. She looks like a total sweetheart. She's an angel. <laughs> Aww. Um, Lyric 80 says, question, why don't more of you join other streams? Kurt, Runkle, and Nate always support others on LawTube, but they don't get the same respect. Runkle should have had more of you on his stream after yesterday. Wait well, a we are I went on his stream yesterday. And I went yeah. on his stream. I've been on like seven streams. <laughs> I, I have a law firm. Yeah. There's a lot there's yeah. a lot of things going on. I mean, I'm always happy yeah. for people to join my streams. Uh, you know, I because because in my case i'm doing an after stream it's a little bit hard for me to announce it in advance because i don't know exactly what time it's going to be so right. i'm a little dependent on whoever happens to be available at that moment yeah um, as opposed to most people who announce it you know with some notice uh but you know i i think you know we all support each other i'm always grateful for people who want to appear on my tree uh, yeah. stream lita's been on my stream many times richard's been on my stream 
Uh, I think the other tunes should be on my stream too. We can all have great yeah. chats. Yeah, we, everyone we, should be on my stream. Streams for rest all. Assured, we're doing our best. We have man. a we have a major DM thread. Which I mean, Andrea, yeah, now yeah, that you're officially yeah. in law too, we've got to add you to it. Now. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Awesome. Now, now, get, to, gotta, now you get the behind you the, the scenes. The, it's the opening of Raiders of Lost Ark territory. Andrea. You know, <laughs> it's just a lot of stream yard behind links being posted by people. This is. But this is this is like we are all sharing our, our content and opportunities with one another to hop onto our streams. And right now there's a lot going on. Everyone is is trying to support one another and also putting content on their own channels at the same time. We're all trying to balance all of that. Yeah. And and you know, and and because you know, I've I've I was one of the first ones yeah. to have a stream, you know, it, it's kind of become one of the locations that people will go yeah, to go and so people base. have an interest in coming here and i also try to in the off sure. times yeah, also like go to other channels. Times, i also only got to do sleep her last daily night doing a recap like as well. she's doing this stuff. <laughs> so you know keep in mind that there are only so many hours in the day and we also are trying to balance everything with one another we yeah. all love one another so much we all support one another absolutely 100 percent. keep that in mind <laughs> um one more, I guess, while the jury's coming in. Meowser, I love that name, says, question, can't Depp's legal team argue that Amber damaged her own career based off the article statements she made and her own behavior? Yeah, they probably, well, I would expect them to say something along those lines in their closing argument. Mm. Uh, Steve Deacon says, Nurse Liz is a master of healthcare. What could she do to resuscitate Amber's case? <laughs> I'm sorry, she's not here. I'll try to save this one and, and see if uh, if she can come back later for it. But also, you no know, methods of medical technology are always improving, and but I don't think that method has been invented yet. Maybe someday. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Bernhardt says Nurse Liz could could an MRI in or validate that AG it. had a broken nose and damaged tissue Next at question. some point. I'll, I'll try to keep that for her. There's a there's a few of these for a, Nurse Liz. A, a note in her medical file that said, yeah. "Hmm, her nose appears to be bruised." Would have been helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sir, you've testified repeatedly that you were concerned about Mr. Depp's substance use during your relationship, right? Yes, that's correct. And, but you weren't concerned enough to stop using drugs and alcohol yourself, were you? Nice. I oh. did not use drugs when I was with Johnny, like in his presence, aside from the times I testified about with you. So you weren't concerned enough to stop using drugs and alcohol the times you've testified to in front of the jury, right? As I testified to earlier, I took drugs um, in Johnny's presence on those two occasions um, early in our relationship in 2013. Were you so you on never drugs changed your own behavior otherwise. to support Mr. Depp and his sobriety, did you? I did a lot of changing to support his sobriety. I tried everything that I could possibly think of. But you drank <laughs> wine around Mr. Depp on a regular basis, correct? I did drink wine. And you took Mr. Depp to Hicksville to do, quote, laffy drugs like mushrooms, end quote, right? That's correct. And you testified that despite what supposedly happened in Hicksville, you decided to take MDMA with Mr. Depp on a plane to Russia in June of 2013, correct? As I mentioned, those are the two occasions. You testified that this was the last time you would make that mistake, right? That is correct. And when asked if you would ask Mr. Depp to get you MDMA in Australia, you said that was, quote, ridiculous, right? That is correct. Because you had learned your lesson the hard way on the plane to Russia. Russia, yes, that's correct. Uh, yours and Mr. Depp's wedding in the Bahamas was in February of 2015, right? That is correct. So that would have been after the Russia flight. Yes, when I did- You um, can feel this trap coming, can't you? When we had mushrooms on the island for my hen party, my wet bridal party before. Yeah. We were not with Johnny. I was not with Johnny at the time was your wedding with Mr. Depp on the island, right? To be clear, we were both on the same island. We just weren't around each other that evening. We had kind of set During your parties, wedding. Bridal party and a groom's party. And, and your Ryan, wedding this would be was for a closing before Australia, to answer your correct? Super chat. In closing only. That is correct. And you arranged to have drugs at your wedding, correct? Uh, like I said, we had mushrooms um, for my bridal party beforehand. <laughs> on the island for your wedding? Before the wedding. <laughs> on the island? On the island, yes. Okay. Can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1262? Uh, now, I, I did note the one potential discrepancy. She says, says, I never took him in his presence. The question, next question might be, was he, were you ever on he the drugs on in his February presence? 1st, mm. Maybe she doesn't know the answer, but there is a difference there. That is correct. Uh, yes, that's correct. I'm going to move to admit and publish Plaintiff's Exhibit 1262. 
Any objection? Sure. She took drugs to James Franco during the marriage. She we have she to get in London then. To the Australia audio where she says all I was popping was Xanax, Adderall, hallucinogens, and something else. Ecstasy. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, who's counting? Those aren't really drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Those are nicknames for different foods. <laughs> But get the explanation out. That's the point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love chocolate. I have an ecstasy chocolate I really love. <laughs> ecstasy brand chocolate. Yeah, yeah. Folks in the chat asking for us to not give commentary. I'm sorry. We're going to give commentary during this trial because part of there the reason. There are a lot of streams you can go to without us. Honest to God. There are a <laughs> plethora of live streams that you can go without commentary. People, people are here for the you know the, the the legal guidance that we're giving sometimes for the jokes bad really, jokes we don't know why you're here but we appreciate it <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so you know just just want to just want to let y'all know um it's not going to stop also because the more we comment the more uh the better an argument we have for fair use if someone tries to say that this is copyrightable which is not which but, is lame yeah um but anyhow oh hey i matched the court tv girl today Oh, there you go. <laughs> more impressions. You're going to get more. Send me, send me some quotes. <laughs> send me some quotes. <laughs> Anything from Bridesmaids is fair game. A lot of Kristen Wiig quotes. <laughs> um, One of the lessons yeah. I, I'm still learning about YouTubing is trying to ignore <laughs> some of the criticism from my chat because you can't make out. everyone happy. Ms. Ferg's uh -huh. email published to the jury. All right, 1262 in evidence. I haven't figured it out yet, though. All right, what do we got? We got drugs here. Yeah, there's Larry right there. This is a schedule for your <laughs> wedding, right, Mr. Ferg? No, it's not. It's a proposed draft of a schedule. It ended oh, up being quite different. Oh, proposed draft. Do you yeah. see where it says 7 p.m. rehearsal dinner? Yes, I see that. And the next oh, my God, it literally was on the quote, agenda. After yes. dance party. Well, and these are rough ideas. End quote, right? That is correct. <laughs> so you plan to have drugs? Oh my God. It was literally on the agenda. I didn't guy. think he was, was literally talking. To be fair, we were going to have separate parties, as I mentioned. So a bridal party before this, the schedule ended up changing quite a bit. And this is a draft clearly that was sent before there were a lot of changes made. What does that even mean? The bridal so party. Your original it doesn't idea matter. Was heard, your original idea was to have a rehearsal dinner with your husband, the drug addict, the monster, um, and then do drugs with your girlfriends on the island after your rehearsal dinner. I realize that's what the email suggests, but that wasn't No, a plan. it's not what it suggests, Ms. Hurd. That's just what, what, it, what says. it says. In that email. Now, right, but yeah. What I'm trying to say is that the schedule ended up changing. We ended up doing the little- So your original idea was to do drugs. drugs. Yeah, your idea, original Jeez, idea target. was to do drugs on an island after your rehearsal dinner to the drug fueled monster that you were about to marry, right? The, the, as the email suggests, there were, it there says. was going to be weed on the island. This does not yeah. reference the cuddle puddle that I just referenced to you. You I, like to I do still, drugs on special occasions, right, Ms. Hurd? I have before. And, and you did drugs again for your 30th birthday, right? That is correct. That was a huge mistake. The 30th birthday dinner was on April 21st, 2016. Yes, it was the day before my birthday, correct. And you testified that Mr. Depp was running late to the celebration, correct? That is correct. And you asked Mr. Depp to bring you alcohol when he arrived, is that right? So the utility closet where we kept the wine was right by the elevators. And I also told him he could bring in a joint. I wouldn't bite his head off if he did. So that's a yes? That's correct. I, I told him I wouldn't be angry. Let's look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 1263. Rick, look at the super chat. Your Honor, I'm going to ask to show, first of all, this one hasn't been produced. This has not, it's a brand new trial exhibit, so I don't have it. I'd like an unredacted copy, and then I'd like an unredacted copy to be shown to the witness. Sorry, do you have an unredacted copy? We can, we can make one, Your Honor. Okay. Your Honor, may we approach about all this? Right. I love that with the thing it suggests. Uh, oh my god i just says. i just can't believe it. it was literally on the agenda yeah, yeah. that's pretty hilarious yes. 
Because like and, here I was thinking, this is Johnny speaking metaphorically, poetically, like, oh, like this is like, you know, everyone understood, you know, that this was what we were going to do. But like, no, it literally <laughs> was in an email after the rehearsal dinner, which was at 7 p.m. Dance party and, with drugs. It was just and remember this. The schedule changed substantially over the course of what, 14 days leading up to this wedding? Uh, no, that was the I February how you 1st. The arrangements on that. That was a February 1st email for a February 4th rehearsal dinner. Was that what that said? It was three days before. Oh, Jesus. Was it? Yeah, I mean, that's what the... I, look, I'm only just <laughs> reading it. That's what it suggests. Yeah. I mean, when I get married, we're definitely going to have uh, drugs at my wedding. So you guys can look forward to that. <laughs> yeah. No, it was just it was just Motrin's. You know, you just don't want anybody yeah. with headaches on the day. We're going to have like the... It's we're the pre hangover drugs. Yeah. We're going to the RSVP, except with dinner selections, like chicken, beef, seafood. It's going to be MDMA, cocaine. Just, uh, you know, some inoculations. I, you know, we're, we're, we're reading it wrong. Yeah. Of course. Select one. We are the ones who are, who are misreading it. <laughs> Don't believe your eyeballs, jury. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> oh, my goodness. Um, let me let me get another question then. Uh, da, 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 not the nurse Liz ones. Okay, Brittany H says, can they add the photos Amber said existed but weren't in evidence? They're, no. No, not really. No. If they're not in evidence, they can't. They can't. No. The perfect no, time to answer that would have been point, when she you mentioned you can't it. Can't now respond to photos that you weren't produced prior to trial and you didn't oh, get okay. to prepare for. Yeah. No way. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Dakota Walker says, question, can jurors ask questions during testimony if they don't understand or miss something or just too bad, so sad? Jurors in some jurisdictions can ask questions. Not This is not one of them. Yes. They Very can in Washington, usually. but it's extremely rare that it ever happens. It's it's highly discouraged, I think, even in states where it, it is technically allowed. Okay. Uh, Aaron Skies says, in light of age cross X going so well, do you think age teams choice to bring age so early is good or bad for jd would it be more effective later i don't think it's about i don't think it matters you're you're asking about yeah. how much lipstick to put on a pig mm. <laughs> or a mirror <laughs> or mm. a mirror <laughs> do we do we know who's next the next witness not yet not yet she's the same pink water seen. bottles yesterday she yeah. likes that whatever it is well, it's a standard water. It's it's like a. I assume it's some kind of powder she's putting in the water. Yeah, I wonder what flavor of crystal like light she likes. Mm -hmm. I, I think that would be pertinent. We could. Uh, I think so too. We could share. I'm going to. Show I'd ask the question just for the hell of it. The unredacted what you, messages. Uh, heard, what are you drinking? Um, Council has heard on the laptop because I don't have a Is hard that copy. Answers? It's interesting. Depp's team wasn't prepared for Elaine to start asking for unredacted versions of these docs because they're giving the workstation again, like they did yesterday. They might be prepared. Elaine might just might be stalling and trying to break flow. Yeah, that's fine. But I mean, Depp's team literally doesn't have the hard copy, so they they weren't prepared even after what they saw yesterday. Hmm. I'm not saying they should have had to have prepared for it, just that they aren't. <laughs> And Ben Chu's working on his screenplay. Um, Here we go. Okay. So, Ms. Heard, I'm only going to. Your Honor, I'm going to object to asking questions while I'm looking. Uh, if you could give her a moment, please. Sure. Thank you. Happy to. Um, all right, let's see if I can maybe ask another <laughs> one here. Query, I think Camille is opening, uh, I think Camille opening the query regarding why JD won't look at Amber Heard brings back the attention to her zealous advocacy for a client and she backed it up with audio too. Do you think Curry helped her strategize the query? Says Z Seltzer. I don't know if, if Dr. Curry helped her with that. Maybe, maybe the information that she gave about her personality disorder and various, you know, inclinations that Amber has probably could have helped her. Um, but she also has seen some deposition testimony and she has also seen how she's responded to that kind of stuff. So um, 
Absolutely. It certainly helped that she was able to back it up um, with that audio for sure. Yeah, Spidey. I think that you don't need hey, Dr. Spidey. Curry to tell you that theatricality no. is going to be effective here. Right. Okay. Thank yeah. you. And All also, right. thank Michael Gaunt, thank you so much for the very generous super chat again. I'm guessing normally you won't want to repeat the accusations back you're trying to disproof. So the ages are so opposite to everything. As redacted. No, no, so as far, time, Spidey, as it helps almost everything. Your comments on Camille Vasquez's body language. It, this her directing this attention to, to the yes. plaintiff's exhibit Whoa. 1263. And this is a text yeah. message that you sent to Mr. Depp, correct? That is correct. And, and you sent this message to Mr. Depp the day you had your 30th birthday dinner, right? That is correct. And you write, quote, hey, baby, bring up something to drink and or a joint. I'm in if you are. See you in a minute. Question mark. XX. Did I read that right? Is it going to be weed that doesn't correct. count? And then the next day you went to Coachella and consumed MDMA and mushrooms, right, Ms. Heard? I did. Johnny was not there for that. Let's talk a little bit more about your 30th birthday. You testified about this incident multiple times, haven't you? That is correct. But yesterday you told this jury that you were not called upon to provide a detailed accounting of all physical and sexual abuse by Mr. Depp until February, 2020. Is that correct? I testified that I had not been able to do so until February 2020 in uh, uh, outside of the context of a cold deposition. Actually, I, I misspoke. February 2022, this year. Right, sorry, I, I did the same thing you did. Okay. Three months and you ago. Did some, you did that in something called an interrogatory. Is that correct? The interrogatory response was the first time that I could do that outside of the context of being asked certain questions in the deposition. And, and you testified about your 30th birthday in this interrogatory, correct? I believe so, yes, yeah. Nonetheless, you testified to a new detail about your 30th birthday for the first time in this courtroom, didn't you? No, uh, no that's incorrect. A sexual assault, no less. I had just not placed when that happened. I was, nev I was never sure if that was the same time that he did that on the night of my birthday. And I maintained that as well in my deposition. You told you the, the, order of the evening of your 30th birthday dinner, Mr. Depp, quote, grabbed you by the pubic bone, pubic area, end quote, end quote, pushed you down, right? That is correct. This detail isn't in your interrogatory response, is it, Ms. Heard? Wow. That detail is in my interrogatory response, yes. Uh, Ooh, sure? bring it out, bring it out, bring it out. We could please Let's look for the up. detail. Because that was stunning show us the detail. Mm-hmm. I think that's where you got your screen caps of me with my mouth open. May I approach your honor? Yes, ma'am. If she didn't put that in her earlier. Thank you. Any kind of, this is why people were asking, well, what if she elaborates her story? What if she yep. makes things seem worse? It's bad for her because this happens. This is exactly why you don't want to elaborate your story later on down the line. She couldn't have possibly invented that story between those two time periods, could she? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're Look surprised? Look at how prepared she is. Post. Shock Pikachu emoji. <laughs> oh, I, I would be literally, I, I would literally be shocked. Okay. I mean, I would. Responses at page 57. Well, I think you're about to see it. These are so assignment get penalty your Pikachu perjury, face correct? ready. That is correct. <laughs> and you testified again to this jury that this was the first time you were given an opportunity to write down everything and include all your evidence, right? That is correct. Okay. So let's go to page 57. People are asking me in chat. I just don't think she would have invented it between the interrogatory for this case and yesterday. In three months. At the top of page 57, Johnny and I were not in a good place. I begged him to make my birthday dinner. Do you see that? That is correct. Okay. So starting on page 57, you start describing your birthday dinner, correct? That is correct. Okay. Just ask her, show me. Show me where it is in this interrogatory that you uh, yep. talked about the sexual assault. I'll wait. On page 59 of your interrogatory response, you write, fourth paragraph down, Johnny grabbed me while holding me down, and I remember him asking me if I thought I was so tough. He asked me three, four times up close to my face, you're so tough. Are you such a tough guy, huh? 
You think you're so tough. What are you gonna do now? I stood up at some point after getting off the ground. You see that? That is correct. And then you write after. I remember crying. I remember feeling exhausted and frustrated. And it hit me, meaning the realization of how sad it was that I was going to wake up tomorrow on my birthday without him. That's correct. Where in this interrogatory response, Ms. Heard, you describe Mr. Depp, quote, grabbing you by the pubic bone, pubic area, and pushing you down. On page 64. All right. Okay. All right. Where? Page 64, uh, one, two, three paragraphs down. Johnny grabbed me once, did this taunting thing on the side of the bed in penthouse three. He grabbed my vagina and held me there, asked me if I was so tough. You're not describing what happened after your 30th birthday? I am. I just had not prescribed it to that date with the limited evidence I had at the time. Only in the course of looking at the evidence, preparing for this case, have I put those two pieces together. But I've always said what happened. I'm going to give that to Amber. That's not the island. Okay. You were upset that Mr. Depp was late to your 30th birthday, weren't you? I was. You knew Mr. Depp had a scheduled business meeting or a money meeting that evening, right? No, I knew he said he did. I didn't know if he had one. Addicts lie all the time. So you didn't trust him? I took it with a big grain of addict salt. And Mr. Depp texted you that evening to let you know he'd be late, correct? Yes, he did text me at some point. It was a big deal to you that Mr. Depp was late to your birthday dinner, wasn't it? Yeah, it, yeah, it did matter to me. And you were upset he was late. I was. I was hurt. And when he finally did arrive, you felt, quote, invisible to him, right? I did. The day after your birthday dinner, you and your friends went to Coachella to celebrate your birthday. Is that correct? That is correct. You made a video driving to Coachella with your friends, didn't you? That is correct. I'd like to pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1264. And for the record, Your Honor, this only has um, music without any words on it. Mm -hmm. And again, it's a new one, so I'd like a copy of it. Let it's going it. to be played. There, There is no sound other than a song. Yes, sir. It's Amber's own time. Instagram post, so I really don't know how they can get away with declaring surprise on this one. <laughs> yeah. Was that the objection? Um, she hasn't seen oh. it. She needs to see the whole thing. Well, ask also, Amber for it then, Elaine. Andrea, we got a question about the breed of your dog earlier. Oh, she's a Vishla. Oh, nice. Vishla. Nice, nice. I've never heard of that one. Beautiful dog. Thank you. Might jurors be weirded out by her constant looks? I mean, if I yeah. were sitting there on that jury panel watching this woman try to peer into my soul with her dark, empty eyes, um, yeah, I'd be, I'd be fucking creeped out. I would be changing so, my locks. <laughs> I, I retweeted DUI guy's tweet, which he, he said he's in the courtroom, and so he stepped out to, to tweet. He said Amber, Amber Heard stating JD tried to kill her, but he also he's also my husband. Juror number five is extremely skeptical. Raised eyebrows for the first right. time in two days' testimony. Publish this to the jury. An hour in, jurors four, five, eight, and nine barely look at Amber Heard when she talks. Locked on oh. Vasquez. So that's pretty telling. Wow. Here comes the claim, Alita. Yeah, here's the copyright claim, right? It's evidence. It's all evidence. Let's talk over it a little bit. <laughs> See if maybe that works. This is a video uh, you made when you drove to Coachella with your friends for your 30th birthday, right? What was that's I correct. To I'm not there. quite sure which one of us made the video, but that's correct. You're featured in that video, driving. That's correct. And it's set to the song Miss You by the Rolling Stones. Is that right? That's correct. And that was a message for Mr. Depp, wasn't it? No, that's ridiculous. <laughs> you consumed drugs at Coachella, didn't you? Yes, I did. And you took MDMA and mushrooms at the same time. I, I did, yes. And it made you feel sick, right? I felt horrible, yes. So you left Coachella? Yes, that's correct. You testified yesterday that, yesterday that when you left Coachella, you left with, quote, your entire group. That is correct. 
and you were, quote, never alone with Starling, right? That is correct. You weren't anywhere near him? Not alone, no. You sat here when Starling Jenkins testified that he collected you from Coachella when you were sick, right? He picked up my entire group. And Mr. Jenkins testified, quote, I collected her, got her in the vehicle. She didn't want anyone else to know that she was sick. Take her back to the Parker, which I assume was in reference to the hotel, alone. I took her to 7-Eleven where I retrieved hydrating fluids, Advil, and let her have those. Got her back up to the Parker, got her in the suite, and then went back to pick up everyone else. You were there when Mr. Jenkins testified, right? Yes, he was wrong. So it's your testimony that Mr. Jenkins is lying. He's just wrong. I don't know what his intentions are. He was just wrong about that. We were a big group of us. I wasn't alone with him. Isn't it possible that you don't remember correctly because you were sick from taking MDMA and mushrooms at the no. same time? Uh, I Not remember possible. everything about that night. Okay. I'd like to play for you plaintiff's exhibit 1229, which is already in evidence at 1720 through 2128. Yeah, we're we're uh, we're giving you our thoughts, uh, NC seventy seven. She's definitely killing it. No, you're We're on the road. That's what I came to figure out. We're not going to call you Just stop the process. Don't call me We're not going to do that. You know, you know, you know, you know, you I don't want a divorce. You don't? Call me which one? No, I don't want which one. I don't want a divorce. I never wanted a fucking divorce. Really? I never wanted a divorce. I didn't want you. Fucking go to Coachella really? without fucking talking what? to me because I left you because you, you were yeah. fucking you fucking hangmakered me, man. You came around the bed and fucking start punching on me. Why? That's what really happened the evening of your 30th birthday, isn't it, Ms. Hurd? No, Ms. that's incorrect. Mr. Depp was in bed, and then you came around the bed and started punching him. That's incorrect. You don't deny that in the recording, do you, Ms. Hurd? I'm not having that conversation with Johnny. I'm not denying no. anything. I'm not saying anything. I'm not having that conversation with Johnny. I was trying to get out of that hotel room. Uh, that was a mediation attempt. That was the recording you just heard. It was us meeting in a hotel. But you're talking about your 30th birthday. No, we're not. You're not talking about going to Coachella and... Johnny's talking about that. I am not arguing with him about any of that. All right. You don't deny anything, do you? I'm not talking to him about that. Okay. I'm going to um, publish... Don't believe your exhibit, ears. ...or ask that the witness be shown exhibit 1265. Okay. This is you and your friends at Coachella, correct? That is correct. I'm going to move to admit plaintiffs 1265 and publish it. No objection. All right, 1265 in evidence. You can publish it. There's no injuries to you. Are there, Ms. Heard, visible in this picture? You cannot see any visible injury, no. Thank you, Tom. Ms. Heard, you remember during Mr. Depp's examination, a number of recordings were played, correct? That's correct. And in one of those recordings, you told Mr. Depp, quote, I hope to God Jack's stepfather teaches him more about being a man than your fucking, your fucking left nut, end quote. Do you remember that? 
I do not remember what exactly I could hear of that recording. I remember I heard, heard myself make a mention of uh, Jack's new stepfather or potential stepfather, I can't recall. Jack is Mr. Depp's son, right? That is correct. And I believe that the, I was referencing a marriage that his ex-partner was going to have or getting into, I suppose. You were referencing that uh, Jack's new stepfather would teach him how to be a man because Mr. Depp couldn't. I right. don't recall exactly what I said, but it was something to that effect. Let's listen to some of what happened before you said that uh, to Mr. Depp. Um, if we could please play Plaintiff's Exhibit 397, which is already in evidence. And for the record, it's at 3504 through 3547. And then the next clip is 3635 through 4308. Very good but, tip, James Walsh. Mm -hmm. Everything's fine until it doesn't go your way. And when it doesn't go Doc. your way, I'm in trouble. And you know what? Doc. I don't need you. I don't want your kind of woman. I don't want your kind of woman. Doc, I don't want your kind of woman. Doc, I hey. don't my have. So if I think you need mistake. I wish I had fucking had. Oh, yeah. I wish I fucking had. I wish I fucking hadn't bought into any of your fucking lies, your bullshit, your sober fucking presence, your fucking goodness, your sweetness, all the lies. I wish I hadn't bought into the months of you being you. I wish I hadn't bought I into I promises. Bought I wish I hadn't fucking thought I could have kids with bought. you. You're a fucking kid yourself. I wish I hadn't bought into any of the lies you sold. Talk about fake bill of goods. You're the biggest fucking You're the biggest fucking, fucking, producer you're producer the biggest fucking seller of fake fucking bill of goods. Let's Talk about something. presenting yourself as something I did myself as a fake Suck seller my of goods. I fucking you uh, you you've left nothing and I've left suck everything. Right. So suck, suck your right. dick. Yeah. Which is probably your next suck. move because it's what you fucking move. No, I don't want to suck your dick. I don't want nothing to do with your fucking oh, what really need something from you anymore. Well go get it, man. Because I don't need something from you anymore. Huh? Fucking fuck you. No shit I know. Not really true, Amber. Actually, it kind of is. It kind of is. What? Well, well, some of it is. You know, it's not true. Uh huh. Oh, is it? What is it? No, I'm sure uh, Rochelle's in there. Call her up. I'm sure know. she's in there. <laughs> Maybe she is. But... I'm sure she is. We'll see. I'm sure she is. I'll let you know. Oh, I'm sure she is. I'm so glad. <laughs> That fake laugh, that fake oh, laugh is too much to take. No, I'm sure she's... That fake laugh is so, <laughs> so disgusting. I'm sure she's great. I'm sure she's great. I'm thinking that you've been giving me some no. of the best performances. In no, the no, no you're crazy. right, I don't. It's all about performance. It's about performance. <laughs> oh, I'm right. I don't regret. I don't regret. Oh, what else? What else are you doing? Oh, come on. What else? What else other things do you want to add? Yeah, you fucking lying piece of shit. Oh, no, I want to know. Yeah, I want to know. Get out of your Uber driver. I'm going to wait. Go get it. Yeah, wait, is there no other place that you're running your 15 other houses to go run? Come on, go be a real married man. Go deal with your shit the way that a man does. Go run to the next house. Man Every man does. does. Yeah. Go. Run right away. I know it's hard to look at yourself. Your fucking ridiculous clown. Your hard. panicked fucking clown. It's hard. It's hard. Screwing everybody else Poor over. Thing. Get You're right. Fucking, I try. That's what, what I do. <laughs> You're the most spoiled fucking brat. Yeah. And you got everybody out here almost full, oh, but it don't right. last long. You're right. I'm been sorry. Here a lot longer you're than right. Me. You got to figure it out. You don't yeah. have to figure out what you have to offer <laughs> as opposed to going out and getting your kicked out. You're right. That's what I do. Well, yeah. <laughs>
Excellent choice. Back to that. Well, I wonder what we else. <laughs> I wonder what else we can reach for the last six weeks. <laughs> Oh no, it was four years ago. You're right. Yeah, I'm just those other things. You can laugh. No, I'm not laughing. Oh, uh, no, matter of fact, I'm laughing. not laughing. I'm not. It's oh. serious. I'm sure you can find other things. Oh. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm stripping. Yeah. Well, there's always no. that. You can You're always right. Go back you can write a book. You another, can write a book. I know, minutes. you can write a book. Oh, is this going to be good for your book? Oh. Should I sign an ADA for your book? Yeah, your right. book. Is this gonna be good for your book? Is this gonna be good for your book? Hey. I'll write hey. Oh, I'll write I have a good idea. I'll write I'll be somewhere of your journal. Yeah. You know, I was gonna say, listen. does anyone else have like serious Harley oh, Quinn vibes right now? Wait. Hey. Hey, you know, no, hey, you're not you what? No, out. no, you're not selling you out. Out. No. Magic, no. Yeah, I mean, no one does. Just 21 drug street when they're in their 20s. No, you're right. That's not selling you out. No. When you're in your 20s, you should really know what you want. Like I selling your journals. I don't <laughs> if, you didn't, if you didn't know what the fuck I can't even with this laugh. It is it is straight up <laughs> scary. Or um sorry, 50. Six. Two. 51. I don't know. It doesn't matter at this point. No. I don't think so. I don't really think so. But you're right. I mean, hey, at least I didn't do like a TV show where I was heartthrob in my twenties. God, that would be like embarrassing. <laughs> if only I was with someone in their fifties that could point that out to me. Imagine us surviving in a play and non-sexualized objects. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. You're right. You got me. You got me. I'll put you down. I don't yeah, even know what movies I've done. You haven't like, even taken an interest. If only I could be you know, like. If only I could be like. I had to watch your fucking, like, had to watch your <laughs> fucking direct, and you trying to like. You're so. You're you are so. Fucking you're so. Oh, you're so. You're so. Yeah, I'm the joke in the industry, Amber. <laughs> I'm the joke. I'm the joke I'm in the industry. I'm sorry. I can't really hear you. I'm sorry. <laughs> The reruns of all my bullshit are playing too loud for me to hear you. I'm gonna just go and pedal my way back. Sorry. I can't hear you. Aquaman. Oh, it's 21 or whatever it was. I was I don't remember like, anymore. I was 20. No one cares. <laughs> you can't find your Wash that piece of shit. Right, did you see that just now? Wash that, that little, piece of shit. Little, like, Silent laugh to himself and shaking his head. <laughs> You're jealous. He's like so the world tragic. now sees what I've been doing. You're jealous. Years. so tragic. I think he's trying okay. not to smile. Okay. Thinking that I'm going he's on like, he's like, I, yeah, I can't believe I went through this. That's what it looks like to me. You told Mr. Dip to, to suck your dick multiple times, didn't you? Yes, I did. You tell him to go run to his 15 other houses, right? That's correct. Because that's what he would do when you behave like this, isn't it? Eventually, he would go and stay in one of the other houses. You call him a sellout, don't you? I was expressing frustration uh, about his criticism of my career and how many problems that caused within the dynamic of our relationship, yes. So you call him a sellout and a joke? I called him horrible, ugly things, as you can hear. Sellout. We, we spoke to each other in a really horrible way. Pretty sure we just heard you speak to him in a really horrible way. You called him a sellout. I just disagree. Right, Heard. Um, you oh, called I, him a sellout, right, Miss Heard? I called him a lot of ugly things. And a joke. I called him a lot of ugly things. You called him a joke on that recording. You called him a washed up piece of shit. I think we both called each other that on that uh, occasion, yes. Mr. Depp mentions Aquaman, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Mr. Depp got you that role in Aquaman, didn't he? Excuse me? Mr. Depp got you that role in Aquaman, didn't he? No, Miss Vasquez, I got myself that role by auditioning. <laughs> That's Mr. Depp says, you get the audition? your jealousy is so tragic. I heard him say that, yes. You were the jealous one in this relationship, weren't you, Miss Heard? I think he was indicating I was jealous of his career. But now you've twisted it to say it was Mr. Depp. That's the jealous one. Johnny's always been very jealous when I worked, when I did anything, friends. Yes, he's always been very jealous. 
concern, I'm going to ask you to take a look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 120E. This is a series of text messages uh, between you and Mr. Depp. That is correct. Um, I'm going to move to admit and publish these text messages. Um, Mr. Depp's messages have been redacted. All right, any objection? No, Your Honor. All right, 120E and Evans, you can publish. Starts with a text message from you to Mr. Depp on September 26, 2015, right? That is correct. And you write, Monster is back. This is him. Did I read that right? That is correct. And then in the next message, you write, quote, ran away, first sign of trouble. This is not the man you promised you would be. Did I read that correctly? That is correct. Then in the next one down, you write, promise, swore to me you would be. That is right? correct. The non-monster. Ms. Heard, you're talking about Mr. Depp running away from you at the first sign of trouble, aren't you? No, I'm, um, I'm recognizing the clues at this point when he would run away at the first sign of trouble. Often that was a clue for me to know that he was back using again and that we were about to enter yes. the next phase yes. of the cycle. Yes. So yes, and you basically. describe his running away from you as the monster, right? That wasn't what was a monster. The monster was the man who beat me up. The running away was just a, attached to that. It was a sign, a signal to me as a clue. Beat me up, but don't run away. How dare you? Clues um, that we were entering into, into that phase. In these messages, Ms. Heard, exactly. monster isn't Mr. Depp doing drugs, is it? It was always um, the man who did drugs and beat me up. Yes, that's always been the monster. But that's not what you're saying in these messages. That is exactly what I'm saying in the messages. I'm looking at them. Violent, you? <laughs> what is happening? I do not describe that. Gaslighting is message, happening. No. So it's a cowardly monster this time. No. <laughs> I'm going down the page. Need, you write a long series of text messages to I Mr. Depp that don't get a response. Is that correct? That is correct. You write, come groan, face the shit, and we can do anything. You go on a little later to say, please come home. Let's apologize to each together. And continuing on page 77, you write, not go to bed mad. And then you say, sound okay? Sound like the priority in the long run? Come home. Don't be the monster. Be the man, please. Please call me, please. Continuing on page 78. You write, I don't want the monster. I need my man. I need to talk to you. Please, Johnny, don't force me to be something else to you. Oof. This is taking me for granted and I can never stop before this turns into something far darker. Whoa. Describing Jeez. yourself in that text message, right? The exact opposite. I'm trying to interrupt him starting a new cycle where he starts using again. He's I'm not responding to you, to... Ms. Heard. Yeah, that's why I'm trying yeah. to desperately stop him. That's Please not answer what that the phone says. And say, Doesn't this mean anything to you? And it goes on. And I won't read all these messages, but you're saying, please answer over and over again. Right? It was very important to me. I was running out of time and I was trying desperately to stop him. He wasn't with you, Ms. Heard. Exactly, which is how I knew it was about to get a lot worse. He would leave, use, and come back way worse, with way less reality, with more delusions. He'd be more drunk. He'd I'm going to move to strike everything after. I was trying to stop the answer that. to her question. No. Your Honor, she was responding. I'll, I'll, I'll overrule the objection. That's fine. Thank you, Your Honor. This is a situation where you were trying to get Mr. Depp to pay attention to you. Isn't that right? No, I was trying to stop him from using. And because he ran away from you at the first sign of trouble, you call him a monster. Right? I was trying to stop him from turning into the monster. The drugs are the, are the key that opened the door. Who was the real monster in this relationship, Ms. Heard? Cool. Lives in Johnny, <laughs> half of Johnny. It's not all of Johnny. The other half of him is wonderful and beautiful and the man I love. Like Lots of our uncle didn't make it. He's been popping in now. Love or love? I missed it. I'm sorry. 
No, it's fine. I, I thought you said the man I love, yeah. but it could have been love. There's another set of text messages between you and Mr. Depp. Is that head. correct? Yep. Yes, that's correct. I'm going to move to admit and publish. Any objections? Good love. No, you're on. All right, 120 F in evidence. You can publish. <laughs> This is a set of text messages and it's from October, 2015. Do you see that? Yes, I do. In fact, you sent all these messages to Mr. Depp on October 22nd, 2015. Isn't that right? Exactly. The same thing was happening here. I mean, this again, looks like she I'm won't let him disengage, all, like period. You start off again by trying to get Mr. Depp's attention, right? You write, please come home. I was trying to stop another bender. You write, please come home, right? That is correct. Please answer. Don't break us up. Please answer, please. And continuing on page 97, you write, give me some piece of your heart. Please, no fight, I promise. Please, no fights. Please just pick up. Please give me two minutes. I'm dying, please. And continuing on page 98, you write, please come home. Please come home, Baba. I am so sorry. Actually, you didn't say Baba, you said baby, apologies. And it goes on. Did I read those correctly? That is correct. That was another time I'm trying to stop another twist off. This is what would happen when Mr. Depp would try to take some space from you, right? No, this is what would happen when Johnny had moved into the next phase of the cycle, decided to use, no, and our lives Heard, were getting a lot worse at that Ms. point. Ms. Heard, I'm talking about your actions. This is what you would do to Mr. Depp when he would leave you. You would harangue I would, him. I would try Isn't that to, correct? You would, I would harangue try, him. Your Honor, at least let her answer the question. Can you interrupt? <laughs> That's fine. Go ahead and answer the question. Uh, I... Do not think uh, I would characterize my behavior that way. I was trying to stop him from using. You were texting him incessantly. Isn't that correct, Ms. Heard? It was imperative for my life. Ms. It Heard, was very important to me. My question is me. much more simple. You were texting him incessantly. I would yes try or no. everything to Ms. get Heard? a hold of him and so to stop yes. the cycle. That's a yes, right? I would try everything to stop the cycle. It was that important to me. And he's the monster for not responding to you. That's not what made him the monster. For no. needing space from you. The monster was not the guy who needed space. The not monster was who drugs. he was when he came back. Not for doing drugs, Ms. Heard. Not for being violent. Just for needing space. That's when you called Mr. Depp the monster. Incorrect. Let's listen to Defendant's Exhibit 598C, uh, which is already in evidence. Okay. Just don't read the text and then Amber's correct. <laughs> See, by comparison, that was wildly effective to me. I'm really, really, really sick of this argument. Stop. I'm sorry. Okay, so let me go and you go and I'll speak to you in a couple hours. Okay? Okay? Stop. Okay. Why are you saying stop? Because May I so, go? Please, it causes me so much stress when you when you walk away from me with that. It's like you're you don't understand how much worse you're making this. I can't believe this. Please, this might be the end of a cross. Okay, I'm sorry for you. Please, I'm only trying to tell you so that you know you're causing immense stress right now when you walk away like that. There's no reason to be mad. Well, then say goodbye. I haven't walked away. You're not saying goodbye. You won't let me fucking leave. Ms. Heard, does this sound to you like a pathological fear of abandonment? Let me leave. Oh <laughs> Stop rushing me. Stop pushing me in the corner and then poking me with a stick and then saying, why are you saying the words you want me to say? Stop poking me. Stop rushing me. Stop throwing me against the wall. I'm going, what? You don't like that wall? You don't like the fucking wall? Stop pushing me. I'm not pushing you. I'm rushing you. I said... I need space. I don't want this conversation anymore right now. I need space. And I will take my space, whether you like it or not. I will take it. And you will take your space. But if you keep halting this and continuing I'm not continuing, I'm, not continuing it. I'm begging you to stop. I don't, okay, stop. I'm just. I'm stop. Stop. Now I have to go, okay? So we will speak to each other in a couple of hours, okay? I hope you have a, some kind of revelation that makes you feel better, you know? 
I hope I do too. But uh, we'll just see when I get home. We'll just talk or we won't talk or we, you know, we'll finish this or we won't finish it. But this is not love. Well, this is not happiness. Please this is stop. not. This Please is, stop doing this. Please, you're causing so much fucking stress. I'm gonna die at this age. I'm gonna fucking die. You're causing me so much stress. Please stop. Please, I, I feel like I have a heart attack almost every day. Please stop. Please and, and stop doing, doing it. Please stop. He's so fucking mean. Why are you fucking with me? Bully. Stop. Please stop. I've been begging you not to fight. I just said, can we please have a normal argument? Just even a normal conversation, like a normal argument. And for the last hour, I've been begging you to please just leave it at that. Let's just go on with our night. I would have been able to come in with you. We would have been able to let it go in a few minutes. It would have been fine. It would just if we allowed ourselves to have fucking normal arguments. Please, you're killing me with this. You're killing me. You're fucking killing me. <laughs> Fuck. Sean, could you, uh, please, I want you to just go, I want you to take your medicine or whatever. I'm sorry that I've upset you. Yeah, I think, thank you, Sean. I'm ready to go. Thank you so much. I'm really sorry. I'm really ready. Thank you. Yeah. That's you and Mr. Depp in the recording, correct, Ms. Heard? That's correct. You just won't let him go, will you? That's not true. We were outside of his studio and he wanted to go and use. It was a pretext. The, the, the claim that he was upset with me was a pretext so that he would go and go that's on a bender. I knew an that pattern by the time this recording happened. Uh, anyone Your testimony that? now that you were outside Mr. Depp's studio? I believe that the he was recording gonna go was... Use? Excuse me? He was going to go use drugs? That's your testimony now? We were outside his studio, his man cave house, if you will, in the car, I believe, during that recording. And he was going to go inside and use. That was the pattern. And as you can hear from my voice, I'm very, very, very scared of entering into the next cycle under under what I had been conditioned to understand we were at at that point in our relationship. That's not true, is it, Ms. Heard? Mr. That's Depp was I trying heard. to go inside his house to see his daughter, Lily Rose. She might have been over that day, but that's so not your what he was getting now. out of the car to do, and that's not what I was stopping him from doing. Let's play the beginning part of that recording where Mr. Depp tells you <laughs> that he wants to go inside to see his daughter. I can't do this again. And let's not do this anymore, because I'm really getting frustrated, and I'm really, really, really sick of this argument Stop. I'm sorry. okay so let me go and you go and i'll speak to you in a couple hours okay okay stop. okay why are you saying stop because may i so go we'll circle back to this but it's your testimony that you were outside mr depp's studio we were in the car you were in the car outside mm -hmm. of mr depp's studio that's correct and he wasn't telling you, please let me go inside my house to see my daughter. He was indicating to you that he wanted to go inside to do drugs. That's your testimony. I know my testimony is that I knew what he was going inside to go do. I okay. knew what stage of the cycle we were in. I knew the patterns by then. And I was desperately out of time trying to interrupt that cycle. Let's go to May of 2016. Uh, yesterday, Ms. Heard, uh, Ms. Bredehoff, your attorney, showed you certain pictures um, from May 21, 2016. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. If we could please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 710, which has already been admitted in, into evidence. Ms. Heard, you testified yesterday that this is a photograph taken of you on May 21st, 2016. Do you recall? Yes, that's correct. And keeping this exhibit up. We could please do a split screen, Tom, and also pull up Defendant's Exhibit 714, which has already been admitted with redactions. Ms. Heard, you testified yesterday that this is a photograph that was also taken on May 21st, 2016, correct? Yes, although the one to the right might have been taken the next uh, day. I can't be sure. The reason I say that is because there's light in the background, so. 
it looks like it was taken in the daytime, which means maybe it was the next day. Didn't you testify that you uh, took different lighting pictures in different lightings that on is, May 21? That is correct. Yes. And, and you're wearing two thin necklaces in this picture on the right. Is that correct? That is correct. And you testified that these pictures were taken the same night. The one on the right looks like it was taken in the daytime because I can see the daylight behind me. But you testify that they were taken the same day. Uh, I don't know if I, I think I testified that they came from the same incident of the same day, not necessarily taken on the same day. Uh, Let's please pull up defendants. Yep, seven, lighting, one, two. Day. Which yeah. has already been admitted. Uh, you testified yesterday. This is another photograph of you on the night of May 21. That's correct. And keeping this exhibit up, can we please do a split screen and also pull up defendant 713, which has already been admitted? Ms. Heard, you testified yesterday. This is also a photograph of you from the same night, correct? That is correct. You testified same yesterday photo. that the only difference between these two photographs is that the light was turned on. That's what it appears to be, yes. The light is on in both of these pictures, though. Isn't that right? It looks to me like the one on the left has the vanity light, the makeup lights, you know, the more yellow hued ones that go around the mirror on. And then the one on the right looks like it doesn't have those. Isn't it true you just edited these photographs? No, I've never edited Ooh, a photograph. Yeah. Did you just enhance exactly the saturation the for one of these photos to make your face look more red? Uh, no, that's incorrect. I didn't touch it. They look exactly the we same. We were sitting here in this courtroom when Mr. Isaac Barouche testified to see you, seeing you the week after May 21, 2016, correct? I was here. Mr. Barouche testified that he saw you on May 22nd while you were changing the locks of your penthouse. Do you recall that testimony? I do. I just don't know if he was right about the date, but I do remember him saying that. Testified it was his birthday, the day after his birthday. I believe it was. Mr. Baruch testified that he saw you repeatedly in the days following also, correct? That's correct. And Mr. Baruch testified that he saw no marks or injuries on your face, correct? That is what he's testified to. You were also here in this court when Mr. Sean Bett testified to seeing you on the evening of May 21, 2016. Is that right? Um, you were here. That's correct. Mr. Bett also testified that he saw no marks or injuries on your face that evening, correct? I realize that's what he said. You were sitting here in this courtroom when Officer Melissa Sines testified by deposition about being called to the East Columbia building on May 21st, 2016, right? I saw her testimony, yes. And you heard Officer Sines testify that she did not see any injuries on you that night, correct? I heard her testify she did not consider this injured. No. Ms. Officer Sines testified that she met with you and she did not see any injuries on your face. Isn't that correct? She did not consider this injury. Ms. Heard, my question is a bit more nuanced. So is my answer. Yeah, right. So Benchu is my stoked. answer? <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. Ben Chu is very happy. Yeah. Hey. I feel very dirty. Hi. Someone from Lithuania. Sorry, I had to. I had to respond. Sorry. No, not at all. <laughs> um, yeah. This is a, this is an interesting part right now. What are you guys thinking? I, I hate everything. I um, I think Amber needs help. That's, That's what, what it feels about. like. It feels like That's she's in a, just a completely different reality. I, I, so um, I texted with the UI guy during the break. Yeah. He is going to send me, or he's going to have James, the guy who's sitting next to him, who is the guy with the notepad. He's going to okay. have him give me a call during the lunch break. So I'll right. get his perception on how the jury's taking this because she's okay. really getting freaking snappy. Or um, if, if it's possible, you can also send them the, the StreamYard link that you have. Um, and they can they can pop right in. If, we'll if see. Possible. James, is, he gets nervous. He gets nervous. I have to like coach stuff out of him. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> You're allowed to text from the gallery, Rob, on break? No, no, no. It was during the break. You can't if you you can't touch your phone. He left and texted and came back. It was dur well during the break. He actually left the courtroom. Yeah, he left the courtroom, texted, came back in. All right. Uh, this is I, I I this is this is a bit much. I Camille's doing great work. This is um. Mm -hmm. 
This is a lot of stuff this afternoon. Uh, we're not even in afternoon. Neil's that's how great. that's how much it is. Yeah. Neil is confusing. absolutely doing great. Makes me feel embarrassed to call myself a lawyer. No. <laughs> My question no, is No, I mean nuanced. she's she's really she's good. Amazing. You sat in this courtroom while she's Officer Sainz testified job, yeah. that she saw you the night of May 21, 2016, face to face and didn't see any injuries on your face. Isn't that correct, Ms. Hurd? I believe she was testifying about these photographs and she said that I was not injured in them. Is it your testimony under oath now that Officer Signs testified that she saw injuries on you when she saw you in person on May 21? Sorry, let me clarify. I was testifying that I know that that's what Officer Signs said, that she didn't consider my red puffy face injured. That's what she said. Uh, red puffy face. That saying. was your counsel's question, correct? That was she her said, testimony in the UK. I That's incorrect. Saying. And you know that, Ms. Heard. I disagree. What? It's inconvenient for you that Officer Sainz sends the injuries on you on May 21, 2016. Isn't it doesn't that right? matter what's convenient for me. Right. Officer Tyler Haddon also testified by deposition about being called to the Eastern Columbia building on May 21, 2016. And he also testified no injuries on your face on May 21, 2016. Isn't that correct? They both said that they did not consider me injured. They did not see injuries on your face on May 21, 2016. Isn't that what their testimony was? What their testimony was is that they did not consider what my face looked like to be injury. They didn't consider what they walked on in the house damage that was. You were sitting Everybody here when Officer lies. William Gatlin testified by deposition about being called on May 21 to the Eastern Columbia building. And he also did not observe any injuries on you, did he? And he that's what he testified to. He didn't even know which one I was. No, I think we all saw on video camera, you identify yourself, isn't that correct? I had to because of how far away he was. He didn't even know, he didn't even know who he was. But after you see. identified yourself, he looked at you, isn't that correct? From a distance, yes. And he didn't see any visible injuries either, did he? I don't know what he saw. He testified that he didn't see any visible injuries, did I he? I would believe that he didn't, yes. You were also in this courtroom when Alejandro Romero, who worked at the front desk at the Eastern Columbia building, testified about seeing you on May 25th, 2016. Isn't that correct? That is correct. I think he said the 25th. Yeah. And Mr. Romero testified that he didn't see any swelling or bruises on your face when you were talking to him at the front desk. He wouldn't have. No, he wouldn't have, even though he had a habit, because his parents taught him correctly, to look into someone's eyes when speaking to them. Isn't that correct? I know that's what he testified to, yes. You testified kind of yesterday that, that you sought a temporary restraining order on May 27th, 2016, because you wanted to change your locks. Do you remember that testimony? Yes, I do. Those locks were to the penthouses at the Eastern Columbia building. Isn't that correct? That's correct. You changed the locks to the penthouses on May 22nd, 2016. I attempted to. You, uh, That's why you felt comfortable having James Franco over the evening of May 22nd, oh. 2016, Ms. Hurd? Oh. I do not know when, I do not know when James came over. Okay. But he Let's did come me. over. Can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 304, which is already in evidence, and play from 254 <gasps> through 439? Video of him. Video of him. Yep. In the elevator. The cuddles in the elevator. Mm -hmm. Spicy, spicy, Little spicy, spicy, spicy. Then within like oh, yeah. 48 hours, we'll get the Elaine, the Elon cuddles in the elevator. Yeah, yeah. Fix, fix yourself. Look good. Look good, Amber. Look good for him. <laughs> I wanted James Franco to make a cameo in No Way Home, but this might be better. For Amber, it's all the way home. <laughs> what was I supposed to see there? Oh, okay. We're, we're continuing. Yeah. Continuing. He has to go let James Franco in from the garage. Now, Spidey, when you see this body language, I want you to tell us if it's affectionate. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, you'll, you'll all be able to tell me. Uh, the slow... 
the slow let's, move let's to look each at the other shuffle, is the backward shuffle. Oh, yeah. He's backing up into the, him, okay. with the head down, the beep, slow. Beep. It's like yeah, it's like it's like a beep 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 back up. <laughs> And then like a like a slight magnet donk. Okay. Okay. Ooh, okay. Does that look into it? That's what that's what platonic friends do all the time, right? I don't know what this one does. That's you and Mr. Franco on May twenty second, two thousand sixteen, right, Miss Heard? That's correct. And you're taking him up to the penthouses, aren't you? That's where I live, yes. And it's past 11 p.m. at night, isn't that right? I'm not quite sure of the time it looked It looked like that. Why don't we pull that video back up? <laughs> She's, she is yes. letting her set her own traps. She really is. 2251. Almost midnight, right? It's, um, or, oh, excuse me, almost 11 o'clock at night. Exactly. You knew Mr. Depp was out of town the week of May 21, 2016, didn't you? I don't know what I knew of his schedule at the time. You knew Mr. Depp was out of town on May 27th when you went to get the domestic violence restraining order. Isn't that right? I don't know if I knew that at the time. You knew, you knew Mr. Depp was heading out on a European tour that week. Isn't that right? I'm not quite sure what I understood of his schedule at that time. You knew he wouldn't be back for weeks, right? No, that's incorrect. Let's uh, go back to that recording. Uh, defendants exhibit 598. Uh, so you testified that you and Mr. Depp were in the car outside of his studio. Is that right? Yes. And you were trying to prevent him from going into his studio to do drugs, right? Uh, yeah, to effectively start another cycle. Right. Not that Mr. Depp was just trying to go into his house to see his daughter, right? His daughter might be one of the people that was in the house at that time, but that's neither here nor there. That Your testimony is now Mr. From entering a cycle. Your testimony is now that Mr. Depp does drugs in front of his children. Well, first of all, I know he does. Um, second of all, it wouldn't have mattered. It wouldn't have stopped him from using with his friends, which is the problem, not whether or not his daughter was there. Um, let's play, please, defendants 598 at 4948 through 5035. 50, 35. I'm not, I'm itching. I don't want to be doing this. I, just, I want it just to, to do why don't either. you just say, okay, baby, I understand. I'll go home and you do your thing, hang out with your daughter, and then I'll see you in a couple of hours and we'll talk about it. Is it that difficult to say that? Or you just fucking hate me and you want to be shitty about it? Please. Just fucking, it's not that difficult. Okay? I don't want to stand here in a driveway and argue with you. Okay, well, I'll see you in a little bit, okay? Please? Please. Just let me know if you're going to go somewhere. Just let me know, please, so I know. And almost an hour later, you're still arguing with Mr. Depp outside, right? I don't know how long that argument lasted, no. Ms. Hurd, you testified about seeking a domestic violence restraining order against Mr. Depp, correct? Yes, I have. And how you wanted to do it discreetly? That's correct. That you wanted as much privacy as you could have? Yes, that's correct. And how you walked out to a sea of paparazzi and cameras and photographers, right? That is correct. And how this overwhelmed you? It was overwhelming, yes. Because you didn't want this attention on you? That is correct. If we could please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 800, which has already been admitted into evidence. This is a photograph of you taken inside the courthouse when you obtained the DVRO, correct? That's correct. And your friend Raquel Pennington took this photograph? Yes, that's correct. 
you needed to document your time at the courthouse getting a DVRO? She just took a picture of me. I, I, I'm assuming it was um, in relation to my divorce, yeah. If we could please pull up defendants. Why did you frown? One, which has already been admitted into evidence. Ms. Heard, this is another photograph of you taken inside the courthouse, isn't that right? That is correct. Are you having a photo shoot inside the courthouse while you were getting a DVRO? Oh my God. I would not characterize it that way, Ms. Vasquez. You have a mark on your face, right, Ms. Heard? Yes. You didn't use your bruise kit this time to cover it up? No, I was Why is she doing a pregnant belly cover? I out of my house without I, makeup I'm on. I'm thinking the same thing. Like, as if she has some unborn child bathroom, that she's protecting? Starting to put makeup on and told me not to. Here. Please pull up exhibit one. That's plaintiff's at one. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Yep. Apologies. I would have loved to have gotten the paparazzi photo with uh, Jody Gottlieb, her publicist, following, following her out of the courthouse. You wrote this op ed, right, Ms. Hurd? With the help of the ACLU, yes. And that's what you testified to in this courtroom, right? That is correct. And this was published on December 18th, 2018, correct? That is correct. Aquaman was released on December 21st, 2018, right? That, uh, yes, that sounds correct. And that was your first big blockbuster, big budget role, right? I, I disagree, but it was the first time I had like a, a leading role in a movie of that size, yes. So, yes. Well, second time, yes. Well, you were cut out of Justice time. League, stop the it. The first one was the mm -hmm. film I talked about before. I mean, yesterday, um, Justice League, it introduced the character. so. You know, technically, it was the second one. But you were the love interest in Aquaman, correct? That is correct. Now, at least parts of this op-ed are about Mr. Depp. Isn't that right? It's about what happened to me after. You sat here during opening statements when your attorney argued that the context of your statements in this op-ed matter, correct? That's correct. So let's go through some of that context. He wrote here, quote, friends and advisors told me I would never work again as an actress, that I would be blacklisted. That is You're correct. referring to your accusations of domestic violence against Mr. Depp in the statement, aren't you? Uh, can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. You're referring to your accusations of domestic violence against Mr. Depp in the statement, aren't you? I'm a, in general, I'm referring to being associated with domestic violence. And you're referring to what you claim happened after you got an ex-party domestic violence restraining order against Mr. Depp in May of 2016, right? Are you asking me if that's what I was writing about? That's what you're referring to, correct? Can you just give me the question again? I'm sorry. You're referring to what you claim happened after you got an ex-party restraining order against Mr. Depp in May of 2016. That's correct. Hey, you also wrote, quote, questions arose as to whether I would be able to keep my role of Mira in the films Justice League and Aquaman. This is also referring to your accusations of domestic violence against Mr. Depp, right? This is referring to what happened to me after I got my TRO, my restraining order. Against Mr. Depp, right? That is correct. These questions arose only after you accused Mr. Depp of domestic violence in May of 2016, allegedly, right? Yeah, from the time I got the TRO being associated with domestic violence. That's what it's in reference to, yes. You also wrote, quote, imagine a powerful man as a ship like the Titanic. That ship is a huge enterprise. When it strikes an iceberg, there are a lot of people on board desperate to patch up holes, not because they believe in or care about the ship, but because their own fates depend on the enterprise. In this op-ed, you're saying Mr. Depp is a ship, right? I'm making an analogy to a powerful man as a ship. The powerful man you're referring to in this analogy is Mr. Depp, right? Uh, I was talking about a bigger issue actually than just Johnny. I was talking about what we as a, um, as a country were talking about at the time of writing this, which is when powerful men in general do something horrible or something they shouldn't how there is a system in place to protect them, clean up after them, maintain them uh, afloat. You know, this is a reference to not just Johnny, it was about 
what was happening as a culture when we were addressing a lot of Me Too issues for the first time. The iceberg is you in this analogy, right, Ms. Hurd? Um, I would not say that. I had, that had not, that was not what I intended, no. So this is another reference to your accusations against Mr. Depp. Uh, no, this is about what happened to me once I left uh, that relationship and got a TRO and became associated with domestic violence. But it's your testimony that this op-ed isn't about Mr. Depp, right? It's about what happened to me after. That's it's correct. It's about your experience after obtaining a temporary restraining order against Mr. Depp, right? That is correct, among other things. But it's not about Mr. Depp. It is not about him. Mr. Depp is making it about Mr. Depp, right? Ironically. It's kind of like that Carly Simon song, right, Ms. Hurd? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> Snap. Let's talk about the defamatory <laughs> statements in the op-ed that you also claim are not about Mr. Depp. Then two years ago, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse, and I felt the full force of our culture's wrath for women who speak out. This is about Mr. Depp, isn't it? No. <laughs> you wrote this in 2018, right? Exactly. And two years prior was 2016, right? That's true. Okay. That's correct. So it's not about May Johnny. Two, it's Ms. about Heard, what happened to me Ms. after. Heard, my question was May of 2016 is two years prior to December of 2018. Correct? That's correct. All right. May 2016 is when you publicly accused Mr. Depp of domestic violence, right? I got my restraining order at that time. And you publicly accused Mr. Depp of domestic violence. Yes, that was in, attached to my restraining order. So yes. May of 2016 is when you sought a restraining order against Mr. Depp. That's correct. correct. And, and I had to May, provide testimony for that. Right. And May 2016 is when you walked into court with a mark on your face to obtain that restraining order. Yes or no? That was the day I walked into court with a bruise on my face. Yes. And you were photographed with that mark on your face, weren't you? I walked out to a bunch of photographers. Yes. May 2016 is when you told the world that Mr. Depp had physically abused you during your relationship. Isn't that right? That I had to provide testimony as part of my restraining order application, yes. And that's how you became a public figure representing domestic abuse, right, Ms. Hurd? From that point on, yes. That's when you claim you faced our culture's wrath, that's right? That's when it started, yes. But it's your testimony under oath that this statement is not about Mr. Depp. It is uh, not. It is about what happened to me afterwards. That's okay. the more interesting, was the more interesting thing for me to write about. The next statement. Of course, writing about reads, herself was the more interesting thing. I had the rare vantage point of seeing in real time how institutions protect men accused of abuse. This is also about Mr. Depp. Isn't that right? Not just about him, but he is included in that. Yes. He's the man you accused of abuse two years prior to this op-ed. Isn't that right, Ms. Hurd? Yes, but I wrote this op-ed in the context of many men at the time that were public figures or in this public eye being accused as well. No, that's, so that's not real time in general to a larger phenomenon, not just no, Johnny. No, no, not just Johnny, not just Johnny. Okay. No. Just Johnny. And then you write, I spoke up against sexual violence and face her culture's wrath. This one's also about Mr. Depp. I did not write that. Well, you've accused Mr. Depp of sexual violence in this very courtroom, haven't you? Yes, but I, I was intending to keep that private when this was published. I, I, I had not pub publicly ever accused him of that. I'm going to move to strike everything after the word yes. No, I'll overrule the objection. Go ahead. Nice. You may not have written this title, but you published it, didn't you? I did not publish a title. I, I retweeted the article that included the title in it because that was the article. Let's pull up, please, Plaintiff's Exhibit 3, which is already in evidence. This is a tweet from your Twitter account on December 19th, 2018, correct? That is correct. Your Honor, I'm, oh, it's already in evidence. It is in evidence. Yeah, they put it in themselves. Yes. Thank you. So on December 19th, 2018, you tweeted, quote, today I published this op-ed in the Washington Post. Did I read that right? That is correct. And the tweet includes a link to the op-ed we were just looking at, correct? That's correct. And you can see that the title of the op-ed in your tweet is, quote, opinion, Amber Heard, I spoke up against sexual violence, right? Yes, you don't get to change the title of an article you're retweeting. And yet you republished it anyway, yes? And that's the title yeah. that you put on your Twitter, correct? I did not put it on my Twitter, no. You linked it to your tweet. I, I retweeted the article. But 
you published it. I retweeted a link to an article that I wrote. And you published it on your <laughs> Twitter account. All right. I retweeted it. You testified yesterday that you didn't have any control over the title and just now of the op-ed when you retweeted it. Is that correct? That is correct. <laughs> this wasn't a retweet though, right? No, uh, it's not a retweet. A tweet? Perhaps not retweet. I don't, I'm not quite sure. It I was a it tweet. Was a tweet. I'm, I misspoke. Excuse me. Tweet. Not retweet. Times. You included a link to the electronic copy of the op-ed in your tweet, right? That's what I was trying to say earlier. Um, and I might have misspoke. It's like, I, I'm trying to attach it. Right. So you included a link, right? Yes, to the that's correct. Okay. That's correct. So you must have seen the title of the electronic version of the op-ed before you tweeted it, right? I may have. I just didn't notice it. Not very careful about what you publish, are you, Ms. Hurd? I just didn't notice the title. Oh, God help me. You're not very careful you about what to you publish. to the electronic version of the op-ed in your tweet, did you? How else would I have linked it? You could have just claimed it. Well, you didn't need to include the link to tell the world that today you had published this op-ed in the Washington Post about women who are challenging their rage and about violence and equality into political strength despite the price of coming forward, right? I couldn't attach it with a paper clip. No, but you didn't need to attach it at all to tell the world oh, that you had saying. published an op-ed. No, the goal was to, to tweet about it and to provide a link so that people could read it. The op-ed is in your name, right? That's correct. So if you had noticed the title of the electronic version of the op-ed before you included you it in your tweet, to that title, you could you? have asked the Washington Post to change it. Isn't that there right? You go. There you go. Uh, no, that's not. No? You didn't do that, right? You never asked the Washington Post to change the title. I didn't notice it, and I didn't ask them, nor do I think I needed to. At the bottom, do you see that there's another tweet from December 19th, 2018? Yes, I do. And in this one, it reads, I am honored to announce my role as an ACLU ambassador on women's rights. Did I read that right? That's correct. So you announced your ACLU ambassadorship the same day you posted the op-ed on your Twitter. Is I that think right? that was always the plan is to attach the article with the, uh, the announcement that I was an ambassador. Your Honor, if, if I may, uh, would this be a good time to stop for lunch? No, it's too no. early. Okay, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> we got to keep going at least till 1230. Okay. Oh, thank, you. thank you. 20 more minutes. Ms. Hurd, you testified yesterday about your counterclaim against Mr. Depp in this case. Do you remember that testimony? A tone shift. Uh, yes, I do. The your counterclaim is based on three statements made by Mr. Depp's attorneys, Adam Waldman. Is that right? Uh, that's correct. Okay. We looked at those three statements yesterday, right? <laughs> that's correct. And the first statement okay. was from an April 8th, 2020 article, right? That's correct. And that's Defendant's Exhibit 1245 that's been previously admitted. Please pull that up. Thank you. We could please publish that. Thank you. We can scroll down to the eighth page. Mr. Depp's, excuse me, Mr. Waldman's statement is buried on the eighth page of a 12 page article. Is that right, Ms. Hurd? I don't know how many pages are here. Well, let's, this is the eighth page. Let's go to the 12th. Let's pull up, please, Defendant's Exhibit 1246, which has already been admitted. Oh, I thought I was muted. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> and if we could please go to Mr. Waldman's statement on page 10. And go on to page 11 of a... That's Mr. Waldman's statement, right? That is correct. Uh, I think it's um, Mr. Waldman speaking on behalf of Johnny, yes. You don't have any evidence of that, do you, Ms. Hurd? This is Mr. Waldman's statement, right? I think it's included in the article as well. That this is Mr. Waldman's statement, correct? Uh, that a, a representative or an attorney, I don't know which word it says in the article, but it says it says very clearly that they're speaking on behalf of Johnny or representing Johnny. No, I just saw um, this yesterday. Can you please pull up 
Plaintiff's Exhibit 8818, 881A, excuse me. No, it does refer to him as Johnny Depp's lawyer. But yeah. That's all it does. If we could please go to page eight of this article. Sorry, Your Honor. May I just All approach? Right. Yes, ma'am. Hmm. Seems to be a technical All right. difficulty. Yeah, seems to be. Uh, Sugar Cookie says, question, I think her lawyers might be trying to push through evidence they didn't hand over. Is that possible? Nope. Nope. Not allowed. <laughs> Melissa says, each side given 60 hours total for both direct and cross? Yes. Johan Rosen says, any, did anyone cover what AH's lawyers shouted to CW in Cross yesterday? Uh, yeah, I, I retweeted it yesterday um, on my Twitter. Check we'll come back there. to this. Sorry, Ms. Heard. Okay. Sorry, Your Honor. Right. Um, let's go ahead and take this down, please. Thanks. You testified yesterday about how your reputation was before these three statements were made, correct? Uh, yes, I did. You testified that your career was going very well before. I think I said the trajectory was positive, yes. You testified you had a global campaign for L'Oreal, right? That is correct. You testified you were waiting on a schedule for Aquaman 2. That is correct. You testified you were scheduled to do a press tour for the TV show The Stand. Press obligations, yes. And then you testified that after the articles, you were no longer actively involved in the L'Oreal campaign. Isn't that right? They suspended using my uh, material and that you were no longer involved in the publicity surrounding the stand after the articles, right? That's correct. And you didn't hear anything about the schedule for Aquaman 2? Correct. Ms. Heard, you have no evidence that Mr. Waldman's three statements are the reason you are allegedly no longer active in the L'Oreal campaign, do you? Um, well, I mean, other than my awareness that they can't use me because of all of the online um, attention not generated. And you have no evidence that Mr. Woolman's three statements are the reason that the stand media opportunities allegedly stop, do you? Yeah, I know they couldn't attach my name to their promotional materials because of the online stuff. In fact, there was a lot of reasons why you were no longer active in these endeavors, isn't that right? Um, I disagree with that. Reasons that had absolutely nothing to do with Mr. Woolman's statements, isn't that right? Uh, I disagree with that. There was a lot of publicity about your relationship with Mr. Depp around the time Mr. Waldman made the three statements at issue, right? Uh, I do not recall. A lot of really negative publicity for you, Ms. Heard. Isn't that right? There's been an ongoing smear campaign, yes. An ongoing negative publicity campaign. It's an orchestrated smear campaign. You have no evidence of that, do you, Ms. Heard? Just look me up. You'll see. What? Let's take a look at some of that. Sure. <laughs> yes. Look me up. That's what we're doing here. Don't tell your cross examiner. Look me up. Oh, it kills her that the hate is organic. Yeah. I don't. No legal advice, but don't don't do that. You gonna bring in some articles? Probably. I think so. I think that's the plan. Probably. Uh, <clears throat> pulling another question then. 
Um, Illuminati says, question, since Amber throws her attorneys under the bus yesterday, do you think they are mad at her and can they remove her as a client this far in? They are probably mad at her. No, they cannot remove her as a client. They have to get permission from the court and there's absolutely no way that this judge is going to allow that at this time. So that would be, that would be, that would leave her in a really uh, a vulnerable position and there's professional responsibility rules at play there. Unless there is an actual conflict of interest dealing with their duties as uh, having a duty of candor to the tribunal that comes into conflict with their knowledge of Amber's testimony, that could Fair. create an unwaverable yeah. situation. But Fair point. Not sure but we're even, there yet. But yeah. Yeah, I think I think based on her throwing them under the bus, I don't think that that's co that's quite enough um, at yeah, this point. But that's I a fair agree. point, Andrea. Fair point. Uh, yeah, Arian Gerard Gerard says, "What question? What does the panel think about AH's lawyer team? Mm -hmm. On online opinion is that JD's team is better than AH's team. I honestly just feel bad for AH's team for having her as a client. I think they are doing the best that they can with the facts that they have." I think Amber um, Heard has very competent attorneys. I, I don't love Elaine's approach, but I think they're very competent. Yeah, and Amber Heard it seems like a trouble client. I, I don't feel I, bad for them at all. They are being paid handsomely. As you heard yesterday, $6 million she's paid yeah. in attorney fees. Elaine is rolling in it in order to accept Amber Heard throwing her under the bus. She struck a deal with the devil and she's getting the full bargain. Yeah. Yep. Fair <sighs> point. Well fair point. Fair point. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't think it means that they are incompetent, but you know, they've, they've also made some decisions that are questionable <laughs> along the way. <laughs> So. so has anyone else seen reporting? <clears throat> and I heard this yes, I heard this either today or yesterday, I can't remember from someone in the courtroom that um one of the deputies overheard a yelling match between Elaine and Amber Heard in the back room where Elaine would yeah. yell at uh Amber and basically said, If you don't like it, you can effing represent yourself. Wow. Uh, I I haven't heard anything like that. I hadn't I hadn't heard I hadn't heard about that either. Um, but there definitely was tension between them by the end of her direct examination. That was pretty palpable. I'm like like Elaine seemed that. like she was basically fed up with her. And maybe that's why she's kind of lashing out at, at, at opposing counsel and even at the judge in some instances. Like she's maybe dealing with some some communications with Amber behind the scenes that she's just like, I'm getting attacked on all sides. So sometimes that kind of comes out in these weird ways, maybe. I'm 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 speculating here, but I'm wondering all if, while, if maybe anybody all else like that possible. Although I like a guarantee Johnny Depp and Ben Chua are having dance parties and having some drinks afterwards. And high oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. hundred percent. They, they are like, they are like a, a full on team with like a huddle and, yes. you know, like go team go at the beginning of yes. and the end of the day, you know, uh, on Amber's team, it looks like they have to draw a straw to decide who gets the seat next to her at the table. Have you noticed how they've been trading out that role? <laughs> And otherwise, she's sitting next to the wall. <laughs> Only one person has to sit next to her. As far the from the jury as possible. <laughs> Go the corner. Yeah. Stone 808 says, did we find out what Elaine uh, inappropriately said? Uh, yeah, check check my Twitter. I retweeted it. There's a, there's a clip there that you, can, that you can see. But I think it had to do with her doing a sneaking objection in front of the jury and the way that she did it uh, was improper because she's kind of feeding, feeding some lines to Amber, basically, by doing it. I feel like anytime Camille like just pins something on Amber, Elaine in her head is suddenly like, "Yeah, way to go, Camille! You got that one." Like she's like secretly on Camille's side. <laughs> she's like whispering right now to her up there. She's like, "You're doing a real good job." <laughs> like, damn! I wish I had. I w I wish that I was I was in her position instead of mine. Yeah, like whispering. Like she's holding the paper. She's going, "You want to do lunch after this trial is over? I think we can talk about some stuff." Julie Zaleski says, can you please explain impeachment, the process, et cetera, because it seems like it doesn't really affect and Amber Heard just keeps talking. Well, it, the whole point is to is to put th this statement on the stand next to the prior inconsistent statement in front of the jury and to let them see so that they can just see this person is not being fully honest or accurate or maybe they're not remembering it. Basically, there is an inconsistency here. Consistency is, is, is currency when it comes to um, uh, witness testimony. You want them to be as consistent as possible. The more inconsistencies they have, the more that they kind of have to try to explain away. You know, like Amber's inconsistencies here, inconsistencies here are between herself and between everybody else. And her explanations every single time are everyone else is lying, which is yes. not a good 
explanation. Like you can say maybe one or two people, maybe, you know, write them off, but you can't write off literally every single witness that has come in front of this jury. That's not going to work. Exactly. So, so, so these, these impeachments are just designed to put that inconsistency in front of the jury so that, um, so that they can, they can kind of like make up their own mind about what it is that this person is really saying. That's, that's really what it is. I think, I think a lot of people are, are overcomplicating the idea of impeachment. It's a, it's a much simpler idea than what a lot of people are thinking. Uh, yeah, it's not a it. formal process. It's not like somebody is declared impeached by the judge or anything like right. that. It's just the description of how you show that a witness lacks credibility. And so the way yeah. Elaine is, or that Camille is doing it that's so effective is she's just using those facts. And so, yes, Amber gets an opportunity to explain the facts, but the jury is under no obligation whatsoever to accept her explanation. That's part yeah. of the point is evaluating how is she trying to reconcile these obvious conflicts with what she has to say in, in her testimony. That's how you mm -hmm. evaluate somebody's somebody's credibility. So that's yes. what the process is doing. Exactly. And Holly wants to know, are impeachments suggested or called out like objections? They are, they're, they're suggested just like, you know, what, what, um, Andrea was just saying. It's just, it's, it's part of a, part of a process there. Um, and then the objections that you would hear about impeachments are usually objection in proper impeachment. And that would be the person, the attorney that has done the, the direct examination of this witness will call out that was an improper impeachment, basically saying you didn't line up what they just said with an actual inconsistent statement. Like the thing that they said before wasn't actually inconsistent. It's just flagging it for the jury, really. And then seeing if the judge will agree with you or not. So we're going to roll this sidebar right into lunch, folks. Uh, it mm -hmm. seems like maybe. Uh, law School Grit wants to know if LawTube can sue the line jumpers uh, for loss of business opportunity. No. Not worth I, it. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Uh, Kelly Daniel says, what other impeachment are you hoping the defense goes after today? Love you guys. I mean, is, are there any other statements that you guys can think of that still have yet to be to be brought forward by Camille? I mean, we're, it seems like she's almost at the end. At this point. I wanted to see, and um, there's a couple things that I'm still hoping that we'll see. I did want to get more of the story of Amber's revisionism and how, especially in the UK trial that unfolded and how we saw her do that when she came back on her direct yesterday, she realizes she's made a mistake. And so she then goes back and, and corrects her testimony. That's the reason why she did. Oops. I think we're still down on Boston and we're still down on dog poop. What happened with the dog stepping on the bee? Did that come up again? The vet thing at all? Because I came in late. No. Did that come up? No, not on cross. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about the fact that Amber Heard just openly solicited the jury to seek outside information? And that should have been a cause for a, a sanctions motion right there. Why? Look, yeah. She told Camille to look her up. No, she was. She looked directly at the jury. Like that's, that is, that is the judge should have been given an admonishment or instruction at that point. That was horrible. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I wonder what they're talking about now. Um, ben Ong says, is Ben Chu lead counsel? If so, when can we see him in action? I think he is lead counsel. He appears so. We have, we saw him in the bigger half of the opening statement for Johnny's side. And then he also directed a couple uh, witnesses early on. He did the ACLU deposition. Yes. Uh, and the, he, he definitely I was think questioning Christy someone. Dombrowski too. Yeah. He, and he was definitely questioning someone where he had to say crimes of Grindelwald like a dozen times. Uh, so it was one of the agents. Um, yeah. yeah. So we've, we've, we've seen him around. Uh, Matt Bronsel says, I loved not seeing Johnny's eyes. Thoughts? Um, I mean, he's been holding pretty consistent consistency is key right johannes potter says is ah perjured has age perjured herself with the donation and pledge claim if so which party would be the one to prosecute that <laughs> what could be the consequences it's a it's a crime it's a I think crime it's up to the which... uk at this point i mean they're they're the court that she played like a chump um yes so they're, they're they're the ones that have to be interested in pursuing it yes yes um and also i have a thing in one of my asked and answered videos about perjury so be sure to check out the asked and answered videos um on that 
Um, on says, I've been in the courtroom early on and noticed two people to the left of the judge have computers and react to exhibits, but what exactly is their job? Two people to the left of the judge. You might be thinking of the clerks. She's got she's got at least one clerk in the courtroom. Um, and they are working, they're Thank doing all kinds of patients. research, they're doing all kinds all kinds of stuff. So, Ms. Hurd, my last question to you was that there was a lot of negative publicity for you around the time that Mr. Waldron made these statements. Isn't that correct? I believe that they were made. Uh, I mean, I believe that the statements kind of kept being attached to new defamatory or, you know, um, articles that were like smear campaign sort of attack articles is what it. Okay. Let's go through some of the yeah, articles. They did show that. That were out in the press. It was a nightmare. So plaintiff's exhibit 1267. You could just publish that just for the witness. That would be great. Thank you. This is an article published on February 2nd, 2020. And the title is hashtag justice for Johnny Depp trends after Amber Heard admits to hitting actor in audio clip. You see that? I see that. If we can go to... Plaintiff's Exhibit 1268. This one was published on February 3rd, 2020. It reads the title, Amber Heard admits to hitting Johnny Depp in recording. Yeah, that's that? when his lawyer leaked an edited tape. <laughs> Ms. Heard, do you see the title? Amber Heard admits to hitting Johnny Depp in recording. Do you see that? I see the title. Okay. We could please go to Plaintiff's Exhibit 1269. This one was published on March 17th, 2020. Amber Heard slammed door into Johnny Depp's head, reveals new audio. Do you see that? Yeah, these are more of the PR plants. Let's go to 1270. This one was published on March 31st, 2020. Amber heard to be sacked from Jason Momoa's Aquaman after Johnny Depp's controversy reports. Do you see that? I do. We can go to Plaintiff's Exhibit 1271. See the title that says Johnny Depp says ex-wife Amber Heard sliced his finger off and it quote erupted like the Vesuvius Vesuvius. I just don't know when that was. Um, I've never seen that article. You can go to 1272. This one was published on May 29th, 2020, and it says. When Amber Heard confessed to smashing a door into Johnny Depp's head, clocking him in the jaw. Do you see that? I see that. Going to 1275. This one was published on July 15th, 2020. Amber Heard stole my sexual assault story. Ex aide tells libel oh. trial. Do you see that? Oh. This Coming was Adam in. Waldman as well. It doesn't say Mr. Waldman. It actually says Kate James also says she often received abusive text messages from Johnny Depp's ex-wife, doesn't oh, it? Shit. I just know because he threw down the article. Miss Heard, isn't that what that Mr. Says? Waldman threw the newspaper Heard, at me afterwards. Miss Heard, that's not my question. That smile. My question, question is, sorry. the title of the article says, Amber Heard stole my sexual assault story, ex aide tells libel trial. Kate James also says, yeah, it's going to get an objection. By saying it was Adam Waldman. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Okay. Let's go to plaintiff's I'm exhibit sorry, what was the 1276. I'm having a hard time keeping track of what's going on at this point. Amber Heard she... admits to hitting fucking baby Johnny Depp in court audio. You see that, Ms. Heard? That's correct. Okay. Let's go to 1277. Mm -hmm. 
published July 28, 2020. Amber Heard's sister thought she was going to kill Johnny Depp, claims a witness. Do you see that, Ms. Heard? I see that. In 1278. Published on July 28, 2020. Johnny Depp was the victim of, a, of abuser Amber Heard, London's High Court told. Do you see that? I do see that. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Go ahead and take our, our lunch recess then. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and take our hour lunch recess at this point. Do not discuss the case with anybody and don't do any outside research. Okay, we'll see you in an hour. All righty, lunch recess. I know that there was a question that I just popped up on the screen about someone wanted to know if they're going to mention Kate Moss during Cross. I don't know if they will mention on Kate Moss, Kate Moss on Cross. I anticipate I wouldn't. I would just wait until bringing her on as a rebuttal witness. They mentioned her already, didn't they? Yeah, they did. They, they mentioned talked about the stair incident. Back at yeah. 135 then? Is that fine? All right, thank, thank you. Because right. Amber's response was, I heard that rumor. She, she, yes. she backed off. She used the spidey oh. language. Okay. Then I, I missed that detail. Maybe that was when I was um, yelling at Indy um, and forgetting to <laughs> mute myself. I'm sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Can someone explain what the big deal is about this tweet? I'm missing something. Like, what? What is it? Because she's yeah, super deceptive about Spidey. They have to establish that it seems like Depp's team is going to be unable to say that Amber Heard wrote it herself on a word processor. Both the ACLU and Amber Heard are saying that the Washington Post wrote it. So that's fine in and of itself. That would get her out of that defamation claim if that was all that ever happened. But. The Depp team is saying by retweeting it, by seeing the title, by knowing what she was retweeting, by saying, I published this, that she is republishing and taking ownership of everything that appears in that link. Yeah. And frankly, and even if she's, she's not taking she's ownership. Claiming, so, would it, so would it be defamation if she didn't write it, but she was sharing it? That's uh, the no. idea. She's, draw she's drawing eyes to it. She published it, caused yeah. other people to see it, caused other people to become aware of it. And if she knew that was not true, yes, that is defamatory. Well, to wow. be clear, no, there's a lot of issues with this particular issue because Twitter is going to be a platform under 230 and you're going to have some kind of motion that's going to talk and say, I'm not responsible for the writings of another through a technological medium. There are retweet cases about this. The difference is that yes. Amber Heard is claiming ownership of republication directly yes. in the tweet. That makes it different. Uh, so but the tweet is saying, I wrote this article, check it out. I am, I published this in the Washington Post. Here's the link. No reason to separate out title and article. Yeah. So then what the hell is she saying on the stand? Like, try, I retweeted. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. If you she can't She's say the words published or republished because those are legal trigger words. Yeah. Like yeah. that's why they keep trying to use those words. If she says I published or I republished, that's a legal yeah. trigger word. Yeah. So yeah. she will every do single every republication is word. itself. Every republication yeah. is itself an independent defamation count. Yeah. 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 yeah and, that's and, why and, she's and, again, and also again, on two thirty, if you retweet so if this proves to be defamatory and mm -hmm. you, Joe Bob in Iowa, retweeted that Washington Post article, you are not you did not defame Johnny Depp under two thirty. So don't you know, don't freak Nearly out. retweeting. Well, Nearly I don't know retweeting. that I don't know that I would I would completely agree with that, Rick. We could have a, a whole discussion on, on 230, but because you you still are liable for what you do yourself on 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 the internet, on these social media platforms. But the the the, the where that the way that 230 kind of separates from from the rest of, of of the world is that you're not responsible for how you moderate others on your mm -hmm. own platform and on your page. So you're that's not responsible for that's... somebody that's the second yeah, two, part. Two thirty is a yeah. two thirty is a bit of a, a but yeah. A red Twitter is issue. also not Twitter is also not liable for that definition that is liable. shared by somebody else on their platform. The issue with you retweeting it and and not being not being liable for yes. defamation is yes. the fact that you don't do it with actual malice. You don't have knowledge that what you're retweeting is false. And that's, that's why, what they're not going to be able to prove. You don't even get And that's why Camille also asked her when she that it was an interesting question that she said. Yes. So you you didn't pay attention to you don't pay attention to to what you're posting here. With the titles and stuff. I'll do it. Yeah, that is recklessness. She's throwing recklessness in. Yeah. 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 RF, by the way, thank you so much for this very generous super chat. 
So it's, le it's um, legal it's geekness is the answer, Spidey. Yeah, it's legal and, geekness. Well, that's also, wouldn't it that be true important. that if there is a Section 230 defense, that's going to be something they have to raise with the judge? They're yeah. not going to litigate yeah. that in front of yes. the jury. No. It would be a situation yes. where if the jury comes back and says, yes, she's liable for that particular statement, then she may potentially challenge it on those grounds. It seems to me that could have been done pre-trial if that is viable, but for whatever she reason, they, they didn't yeah, do she'll it. Lose, she'll lose the 230 argument. It's not a good yeah, argument Yeah, no, I think she her. lost it already, would be my guess. Yeah, she would lose it on appeal too, on the case. So what, so what is Amber like? Because, you know, to be very honest with you, I don't even know what Amber is trying to say most of the time because she's stuck mm -hmm. in this cyclone of like, you're not, I'm not lying, you're lying. No, 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 you're, you know, mm -hmm. when we get like it. Sorry. This that's not, with that's, not, that's not how I read this. <laughs> exactly. So stubborn people or narcissists, and I, I wouldn't, you know, I, I'm not going to diagnose her as a narcissist. You guys can make your own judgment on that. But extremely stubborn people, when they're backed into a corner, they go, they, they go to these useless appeals where they're just like, I'm not doing it. You're doing this. I, I didn't say, I never said that. So she's doing a lot of that. So I don't even know what she's alleging. What, I don't even know what, what that is. What is she alleging her relationship with that tweet slash article was? I mean, is she denying that she wrote it? She's no. denying she wrote the headline, and then yeah, she's the doing a bunch the, of other... Yeah, the article's not the problem; it's the headline. Yeah. Headline. It's the, okay, it's the headline. She's yeah. so she's denying well, and then she, she didn't write that headline, but when she, she then she threw in Louisa words written. because that's what she's been doing, right? We we haven't actually had her team present. Well, you wrote this, right? Yeah. Because she said I wrote this before yeah. in this case. You wrote this, right? Well, the ACLU wrote. It. It's like what? Yeah, okay, yeah. Amber, stop. Why don't they <laughs> she literally yeah. writes today. I published as the super chat just pointed yes. out. Yes. Yes. Like the, yes. the, the, the distinction between a tweet and super tweet, I'm not sure is super clear. In a this retweet. Context. Yes. You're right. Yeah, I, I stand corrected. Sure. It was not actually super a tweet. retweet. Super tweet's yeah. actually a thing now. I think uh, <sighs> the difference between a tweet and retweet on this issue, I, I don't think is particularly established. But where she says today I published, like that would yeah. doom her either way. I, yeah, I, I think that so... I think that if it was if it was just posting the link itself in a tweet, yeah. maybe not enough. But the I'm fact not that she that had would... that extra yeah. language that she yeah. like turned it into her own statement. I think that that is probably enough to to argue that she has now essentially uh, taken in that title and she yeah. hasn't yeah. objected to it in that she had opportunity to and she didn't. <laughs> it's it's uh, similar to the idea that you have this thing called an adoptive admission and it's that mm -hmm. you can adopt other people's statements if they are said in a situation where you would expect a person to um, reject that or contradict it if it's not true or if it's not your viewpoint. And so by choosing to add this editorial commentary about the article, but not calling it to question, you know, in any way, the, the headline that was attached to it, I think mm -hmm. that is a fairly good argument to make that she adopted that headline. I agree. Yeah. 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 So are we talking about 2.30 so we won't talk about the absolute horror show? Because I had to turn off the camera for a while because of the horror show. Which, uh, uh, which, it, which it aspect that, of it? It was the a lot of laughing. Uh, well, the, the, just the, I, I, I guess gaslighting for lack of a better description, I, I mm. bet it's so blatant. I don't know that gaslighting is even the technically correct label, but whatever it is, it's just like, oh, and the, and what she's doing on the tapes and like the, the emotional manipulation of it, like the oh. way she, she's it was sickening. acting and the way he's acting though, there's aspects of that, that ring true for me on a personal level obviously not to this degree but i see parts of myself in what johnny depp is doing i see parts mm -hmm. of past relationships and what amber heard mm -hmm. is doing like this is kicked up another not couple notches mm -hmm. so maybe that's yeah. why it's uncomfortable because it resonates with me on a personal level but I, it's like just just hearing this and hearing this manipulation it's like it's like i i don't know it's i i, I don't have the vocabulary for it yeah so where if I may, where, where I think he not goes wrong, but because he obviously in that moment cares about her emotions, where he enables her to keep going is that he validates her by saying something like, and we heard it where he goes like, what, you know, why are you saying that? Like, why, why are you making big deal? When he says like, I'm going to, I'm going to go now. He should just stick to that as opposed to just like, cause she goes, oh, you're doing this and you're doing that gaslight, gaslight, gaslight. And he's like, and he's giving into that by saying, why, why are you saying that? Why are you doing that? And that just feeds that monster. By the way, you guys, from a legal standpoint, said how great Camille is as a lawyer. She's also freaking amazing at dealing with gaslighting. Like anyone who deals with manipulators or gaslighters, the way she stays in the literal is the perfect response to that. Like anytime 
Amber tries to get this emotional thing going or her own sort of perspective, Camille just with a very firm foot goes, no, 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 listen, Amber, listen, or Miss Heard, listen, that's not what I asked. Like answer me literally to my literal question. So there's yeah. a lot of things that I talk about with gaslighters to where you could say things like, why do you say that? Or, or you know, what evidence do you have of that? And keeping them in literal, she is so good at that. And her tone often is like the tone of like a parent or a teacher when, when, a, when a kid is in trouble. You know, that's sort of like, listen to what I'm saying. Like that's sort of like, lis like listen to me. And just in tone, there's a, there's a really big dynamic there to where Camille is running this conversation and Amber is just dodging bullets. And but yeah, I agree with Kurt. In that recording, we're seeing a lot of really, ga I would say gaslighting coming from Amber to where it's like, you're killing me, Johnny. This is killing me. And that's great evidence that she takes his distance as physical pain. Yeah. And we've been saying that for a while now. Like, you know, I've been saying... Amber is describing what Johnny Depp is doing, not to her body, but to her ego. And we almost see that here. Like, he just wants to go. He just wants to distance himself. And she's saying, you're killing me. You're stressing me. These are physical responses to a non-physical action. I mean, it's physical mm -hmm. in the sense that he's walking away, but he's not physically hurting her. But that's how she interprets it. That's that's BPD. Anyways, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, that's I agree that... My I'm, understanding, too. Uh, no, I was, was going to say, say that's that my understanding that... from... <laughs> Go ahead, Alita. We're talking to Dr. Honda and Dr. Tracy. Okay, anyway, go on. <laughs> so as I was uh, saying, I, I agree that he's gaslighting her. Um, I guess I felt like it, the description of gaslighting wasn't sufficient for what was happening in the courtroom because the juxtaposition of what she's saying and what she's claiming in terms of like factual reality mm -hmm. is so far apart from the photos and so far apart from the tapes yeah. that... The, the whole thing about gaslighting in both the play and the, and the movie was that the guy was very gradually turning down the lamp like day after day. Like it was very, very subtle on any given day so that you wouldn't notice was kind of the idea. And then over time, it's like, no, it's no dimmer because on any given day, you couldn't tell the difference. So that would drive her insane. So this isn't is gaslighting. That. I don't know what this is. It's like the juxtaposition is so much. It's like, it's, I mean, I think gaslighting it's absolutely is jarring. That, that Star Trek episode where you're asked about the lights. I mean... Just yes, this is this is light territory. Uh, no, that was Chain of Command. Great episode. Yeah, Captain well, Jellico, but, recommended. But, but like, just adamantly refusing and rejecting the evidence as presented, mm -hmm. I think is a form. I I, I don't. I I, I the, yeah. the term is is ambiguous. I think it's 1984. And, uh, and, and it's I, it's I, 1984. I it's the, the entire last chapter of 1984 dealing with Room 101 and getting him to deny things that he know like the, if the party says two plus two is five you'll believe it and then like the the way the book ends is he's he's walking you know he's been released from his torture right he had this affair with this woman julia before he was captured they see each other like they feel nothing for each other and the last the last line is something like you know as the bullet went through his brain he truly believed two plus two was equal to five they, they actually had broken him and somehow they so, knew that and at that moment that's when they killed him it's like so, yeah this uh, is horrifying so I, I saw Dr. Tracy is, is in the chat. I sent her the stream yard link. I'm so sorry. I, I meant to send it to you right before uh, we got started today and, and I, I missed it. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that I saw you in the chat. Hopefully she can come in and, and talk a little bit about this stuff. Cause I mean, obviously she's, she's a, she's an, a, a perfect person to talk about BPD, to talk about gaslighting, talk about all of this kind of stuff. Um, also Diana Restinidi says, hi guys, I missed the morning. Is Camille still crushing? Is Amber allowed to answer the way she is? evasive and trying to provide clarity is it working on the jury do you think Ooh, let me take this one sure all sure. right camille is still crushing it um i was going to say earlier that when she shuts down amber the other part about that that we're not seeing in the courtroom is how much positivity that's going to give johnny depp when a client's sitting there at the witness table when they have someone testifying in opposition to them they are literally like screaming from the inside because they don't have a chance to actually say the words or get up and defend themselves or say that's a lie or cut them off or shut them down. But when Camille does it to have someone do it so effectively, that has to, it's, it, it's gotta be, I mean, when you see the zoomed in shots of him, look at his mood, look at his demeanor. He is, he's like at a hundred percent right now. So, and that also is kind of infectious to the jury. The jury is sitting right there staring at him, watching him react to her shutting Amber Heard down 
and forcing Amber Heard to answer questions she doesn't want to answer. Um, and then as far as what the jury is thinking, I'm getting notes. Uh, DUI guy is saying that juror number two, who was basically passed out during all of direct examination yesterday, is taking furious notes that Oof. when Amber Heard asked, um, uh, when Amber Heard asked uh, the Vasquez to what page of the depot it was on, there was an audible sigh in the gallery, like, oh, come on. Um, that there's a lot of tension going on and that juror number five, eight, and nine uh, pivoted their chairs, all shifted their chairs back to Vasquez, only giving side eye to Amber Heard during the entire cross. Oh, that's important. They and did they, that. They actually pivoted their chairs physically. They, they, I mean, they did that throughout the day yesterday a bit, um, not as much. And I am like desperate to do a video breaking this down. And Spidey, if you want input on that, I've got like 25 pages of notes of the jury reaction to all these different things. Oh, that's so dope. Ooh, inside scoop. Amazing, amazing. Um, uh, I, touch. I will say I did think she overreached on the deposition for the birthday. Um, I thought that was her big, her big uh, mark against her on this morning's testimony. I, I did give that one to Amber. Me. Uh, well, she said that Amber Heard uh, introduced the story of the really bad things on the birthday. Um, and Amber was able to say that she did uh, talk about that in the interrogatory. Yeah, but the interrogatory was the first time that it came up. What, that wasn't what, it, no, it, it was It was that it was new from the, that she didn't get it in the interrogatory. That was Camille's claim. Mm -hmm. um, and then Amber said it's on page 64 and then read the paragraph. So I did think Camille overreached there because it wasn't in this paragraph that they were looking at for okay. the sequence. And And I agree that, you know, Amber's got issues with the storytelling and I have issues with that story in particular, but, but Camille went for a kill shot on introducing it between the interrogatory and yesterday. Um, and she missed. Okay. Okay. Kurt, sorry, so really then quick. I, oh, sorry, I missed sorry, that sorry. little, that, that little, that little detail at the end there, because I think, yeah, yeah. I, I may have gotten a little bit distracted. So thank you for pointing that out because I, what I was seeing before that point was that she was saying like, she was, she was teeing it up to be like, all right, we're about to impeach you on these interrogatories, you know, that, that you had never previously brought this up. And then you didn't actually bring up this specific allegation. This is brand new for this courtroom. Um, but that's, that's fair. Okay. Fair criticism. A uh, really quick question. Kurt, did you say that in the recording you felt he was gaslighting her or she was gaslighting him or, or neither? Sorry, say again. In the recording of their, of mm -hmm. their arguments. Did you? Yeah. Because you said you know you relate to that. Did you feel like he was gaslighting her or she was gaslighting him? I miss. I no, miss she him. was gaslighting him. Okay, got it. Okay, because I, then I misheard something. I I, totally yeah, I thought I thought I I thought I saw. Yeah, I'm glad you asked because I, I thought I thought I saw you also say that, that he had gaslit her. But yeah, I, th I think he just. So, you know, and maybe I, I misspoke he, then. Yeah, yeah, good. I, I'm glad we agreed. I just wanted to clarify that because I'm, I'm definitely on on board with that. Um, yeah. Another. I, thing I feel I feel like almost like. I, I don't I don't even know how I feel. I feel like it's partially dead inside or something. Like part of my soul is like temporarily missing or something. And it's like I feel like I have some sort of desire to like just ran at a camera for three hours to try to purge it all out or something. Cause it's like I don't I don't quite know how to deal with these feelings. I'm not quite sure how to describe them. And maybe if I work through them or something, I don't know. It's just I feel sad question mark i don't even know what yeah. am i feeling spider you help me <laughs> I, listen, I don't know because even me like when she was going off on him like that there was a part of me going like that can't help but feel bad for her because i'm going what is happening in her head that she is this hurt over him just wanting to take a second that that like because in that moment i kind of believe her pain and and i feel like she she herself doesn't get what she's experiencing and this pain and why she feels this way. So I'm with you, Kurt. I don't know because there's a part of me just listening only to her words and her having this meltdown and going like, what is going on in your head that this is how you react to him just wanting to take a second and distance himself. And at this very same time, I think back to her in her testimony saying how during direct, 
how she was saying like she would want to put some distance there you know like i was trying to get away from him and he was holding me down i'm going no it's not likely we're hearing in these recordings that you don't like putting distance between the two of you you want to hash things out and it physically hurts you when he walks away to the point where you think you're dying and then I, and then i try to imagine him in this moment and kurt like you i've been in that position where this person in front of you is just going off like you're killing me you're hurting me and you're like i i don't what do i do i don't know what to do so yeah i do i think i think we both need to just sort of just hash it out for a sec kurt i don't yeah kurt i think what it is is honestly i think what it is is like you have such a great capacity of staying in the literal and you know analyzing things with a very sort of analytic brain and you're just having a hard time understanding her and i am too her just becoming so in overloaded by emotion that logic has just checked out whether it's in the courtroom whether it's in those recordings she's in a place where just logic isn't there anymore yeah, yeah i thought the, the, I thought the logic part of my brain here. is since cash uh, since uh checked out uh whatever analytical is in there is checked out yeah and uh perhaps because i'm weaker in the emotional domain it's like i don't know how to deal with this <laughs> Yeah. So it's like I don't. I'm, I'm with you, man. I don't have. I, I don't have like a this, framework to deal with this. I feel like this conversation Camille is having with Amber on the stand is like every conversation I've ever wanted to have with a stubborn person on social media that got yeah. overly emotional and kept trying to like tell me like, "Oh, you don't know what you're talking about." And I'm like, I wish I had a judge and jury and like millions of people watching here to kind of legally be able to keep you in the literal. Because Amber's trying those things that she tries with people in her life, like that sort of gaslighting answer, like. No, 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 that's not true. But, but it's like, but we have the evidence that that's true. So every time she tries that, it's like Camille is just pinning her to the wall and going like, no, 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 no. What you just said doesn't work because this. So it's beautiful that she can do that. I wish I could do that in my day-to-day life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I did think that there was a lot that was very, very effective. I thought that the sequence of just pages of showing Amber Heard pinging Johnny and it's like, okay, so she's telling her story, but if you imagine that Johnny's just trying to get space, how ridiculous that looks from that perspective, that this is a relationship where she just keeps hitting him with text messages. And it's like, I, you know, I think some days we, we, we've, we've all had uh, situations that go like that, thankfully not at this level. Um, but then you combine that, you, you hit right after that with the you're killing me, Johnny uh, tape. And, and I think that combination is like, oh, you, you've crafted a picture of what this can look like to be Johnny Depp um, in that situation. And that tape is so good for Johnny because that's the calmest I think he's been on any of the tapes we've heard. Um, and and he clearly isn't able to uh, dissuade uh, Amber Heard in that, in that particular scenario. So I thought th- those two were very, very effective for painting a picture that says, um, you know, I, I, sometimes I think Camille goes too far uh, she's cross, so she's you know she's against the, the other mm-hmm. person, but in terms of characterizing those things, um, and uh, that's when she she hits the you know you're you're haranguing him, I think that kind of yeah. thing, um, and uh, I think that's true. I, I don't know that I don't know that we needed the help from Camille to see that, uh, but um, yeah, I thought that was very very effective. Am I question for you guys? For slightly, but same idea. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's like same idea. Um. Question for you guys. Are you allowed to object in any way on the tonality used by opposing lawyer? Like, because Camille at times is like very condescending in the way. Yeah, argumentative. Condescending, but like argumentative, super, badgering. Like, snappy. Can you in any way as an opposing lawyer, like oppose the tonality being used? If it goes yeah. too far. The snide what comments. she's doing right now doesn't go too far. I, I would have objected to a couple of her snide comments. I would have. Yeah. Just, you know, uh, like, so you okay yeah you like yeah. to do this the, don't the you comments remember? that you are like comments not questions yeah those those you can object to but not the tonality she throws in that that well questions. that was convenient for you i'm like yeah come on bro or even there, yes, or there were a couple of those i also <laughs> thought it was interesting that when i'm like going through the horror show as i was watching i'm sure people on the stream noticed that i was laughing it's like to, i guess to relieve tension but it's like i wasn't because i found it funny but I guess, like, I, I don't know. I was kind of like smiling and laughing. I don't know, like, out of nervous energy or something. I thought that was a re- interesting reaction by me. Well, I, think I, I guess that's out, that's. I don't know if that's normal or not, but well, it was interesting right observing that. myself. Yeah, <laughs> I think we're all skipping the laughing tape, of course. <laughs> yeah, well, not because um, it was funny. 
Uh, no, that's why I separated from my body during that tape. That was really <laughs> yeah. Dr. Turn, Turn welcome. We've been we've been kind of going through some of the Hi. recent Hi. testimony that we got. Oh, we're getting a little bit of an echo here. I'm not sure who's who's. Somebody audio has a lead on, I think. A little bit. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's it's uh, we've been, we've been going through some of it, and maybe you can kind of help us out. I don't know how much of of that cross examination you just saw. Um, but we've been talking about gaslighting and some of the other stuff that it, it seems like, but obviously none of us are practitioners. So maybe, maybe you can help us out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I just, uh, watched it on point two point seven five speed to catch myself up and then jumped in here. So yeah, there's a lot I could comment on. And I, I actually did was listening to, uh, your, all of your commentary as well since the lunch. So good to be here. All right. All right. Yeah. So what are your, what are your thoughts? Uh, based on what you've seen? Well, <laughs> you know, as a practitioner, I obviously have to be careful with saying, I'll start off. I cannot diagnose Amber. I do not know her personally. And so many of the things I'm seeing are so indicative of borderline personality disorder. The, the, and I just heard you guys talking about like the- You hardly know any of us and you're already you can tell well. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the physical expression of pain as a result of him leaving is so indicative of borderline personality disorder. In the love letters, I felt abandoned. I felt abandoned. There's, there's so much rhetoric that makes me believe that there's no way that she doesn't have some insight into what causes her to become emotionally volatile. And that's what I think is missing from her side of the story. That's why it's hard to believe because there's obviously insight, but that insight isn't being shared. And I understand it's a court case. And so maybe that insight would make her believe that she's going to lose if she actually said that she understands why she does some of the things that she does. Right. Can right, I ask right, you a right, question? Right. Yeah. Do you believe that when she's having those episodes or like on the recordings where she's like going off on him, do you believe that in that moment she actually feels like she's a victim in that moment or is it just her like panicking and trying to get him to see her as a victim even if she herself doesn't feel like one she just wants to get her way and there's a manipulation or do you feel like she actually in that moment feels victimized by his gestures yeah i think that's part of what's so difficult is it could be both yeah what you were just mentioning was having her logic the logic part of her brain turn off absolutely possible. If she truly is feeling as if she's in physical pain, that she's dying, that he's doing something terrible to her, then the frontal cortex of her brain is going to be shut off. She's going to be in full amygdala mode and she's going to be believing what she's saying and actually be coming from a place of emotional and or psychosomatic physical pain. So it's very difficult because she might be not in the logical moment or living in reality, but to her, it is reality. So she may not be consciously trying to manipulate yet is being very manipulative and out of touch yeah and, and us possible. looking at it from a logical standpoint we can't really understand what it is she's experiencing and i think that's where kurt is is, is having a bit of a hard time because we're trying to rationalize something that in its nature is irrational yeah it is irrational and that's what i think is so difficult because we're in a court case right we're trying to mm -hmm. figure out what's what really happened yeah. and yeah. we're actually coming from a standpoint of two people who both are probably out of touch during many instances because they're activated they're arguing they're trying to hide their you know volatile relationship as like at least one of the most famous people in the world so it gets really tricky you know and and i like that one of you said um that camille is being a little bit harsh and i do and i'm glad that that's being stated just simply because from my personal experience, for those of you who didn't see me on this on the last time I was on here, I have borderline personality disorder. I've been. These tapes are pretty much, they could be my historical record from my early 20s, about 10 years ago. And it's just, it's it's so likely that 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 both sides are very tumultuous. It's likely that she did experience some of these things, but the fact that she isn't being fully honest and expressing her side of it makes it so unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And, and that's where, that's where it gets really sad for her. And, yeah. but, but I do think it's important to press because you're not giving your full truth and that's what you're supposed to be doing. 
Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, I think that she's really hurting herself by fighting on literally everything and especially the things that the jury can actually see for themselves. Like they have something in front of them and she says, no, Camille, you're mischaracterizing what this says, but everyone can read it for themselves. Um, right. And so it's, it's, it, it just starts to really turn down that trust meter that anybody has in her for the stuff that, that they can't see. Totally. I know. And I think that's one of her biggest, it's one of the biggest issues, especially just because, like I said, we can see that she has an understanding of her emotional issues. She writes right. them in love letters to Johnny. Yeah. And so she yeah. hasn't expressed any of that. Yeah, it's tough. Is there I a way to formulate? To... Sorry, sorry. I, I was just going to say, I can't quite decide whether or not I, I feel in the empathy for her in the sense of like, I, I hope that she can get some help at this point or whether or not I feel like uh, just burn the witch territory. She is she is a disease to the polis, and she must be excised from our from our like a cancer. I, I can't quite decide which way I want to go at this point. Yeah, is it possible though that we go past that point to pity? And and, and you know, if I'm the, from the jury point of view, not none of us is capable of pity. Of course, we're lawyers, but. <laughs> <laughs> from the point of view, if you if you're if you are the if you're Johnny's lawyer, are you not concerned at this point that if, if that she, you know, laps herself and goes from nasty bitch to nutty bitch to nutty human being to poor human who being. really shouldn't you know poor human being sick human being who and by the way this is coming from a guy who has been told by hundreds of people on Twitter in the last several days that mental illness can never justify racism, uh, which makes people kill people. I mean, we obviously know that there's a lot of misunderstanding and a lot of false nonsense about, and mis you know, about mental illness and how it, how it makes people act. The point is though, in this case, you know, would it make sense for her maybe to just just really crack up, you know, on the stand, you know, and just go for it? That, is, this, is that all she has to do? Given capable. the jury, the age demographics on this one, I think is kind of interesting. You have a jury that's substantially younger, like you've got 20s, early, early mid 20s and early 30s. You're not talking about an older generation of people who who view this stuff with a more critical eye mm -hmm. and aren't really as accepting of the mental health struggle. You're talking about the younger generation who could view this mental health struggle mm -hmm. and, as you're kind of describing it, use that to kind of write off some of her more extreme behaviors. I don't know, based on having watched them yesterday, whether they would do that, um, but I can see it cutting either way. Yeah. I think if it was victimless, we'd feel more sorry for her. I think where a lot of people are like on the Amber attack is because Johnny Depp is suffering due to her delusions. If we just saw her doing this, you know, to herself, like going crazy, like this is hurting me, I'm dying from this. And there was no victim to that. I think a lot of people would feel more sympathy and look at that and go, this poor thing, what is happening? But because that is affecting someone that is so loved by the public, I feel like a lot of people are going on the Amber attack because Johnny is suffering due to this delusion. Well, and I think I think that more than that, though, I think people could still have have empathy for her in that moment for harming other people if she would connect with the reality of what it was that she was doing. I think right. you know because if she would at least like recognize this is hurting me, this is hurting someone else. I have hurt myself and someone else, which is hard to do in a trial because you also you know you've got legal representation that's telling you don't admit to wrongdoing because that can be an admission of liability. So it's, 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 she's in a very difficult place. I will, I will very much acknowledge that. Dr. Tracy, is there a way to formulate questions in, in such a way that she would, she would see the reality that we see? Like, is there a way to formulate this or to approach it to where she would see this from our angle and be like, Oh, wait a second. Yeah. That, that didn't happen the way I remember it or the way I perceived it emotionally. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely ways to do that. I think that's part of what any how any therapist would, you know, ask questions to somebody with BPD or any personality disorder for that matter in a session. So I think a lawyer could definitely do that. The thing is, is 
is it's not a therapy session, it's a courtroom. And so even if you word the questions in a certain way, they may not be answered in the way that they would be answered in a therapeutic matter. I really think what it comes down to though is exactly what you guys are just talking about. It's like, she had a part, like that's the biggest issue is she had a part and that's what this case is about. It's about defamation. It's about her representing a movement of people who have been victimized by specific behaviors while she's also been an instigator of said behaviors allegedly in the evidence that we see. And that's the biggest issue. That's why her, uh, you know, inaccurate or not thorough responses, or I don't agree with that, or I don't recall, or, you know, all these very subtle ways of just avoiding what she may know to be the truth are so apparent because it's, that's what the case is about to begin with. It's you, you are hiding as if you're a victim of behavior that you may also have enacted. And that's where people are like, this is not okay. Dr. Tracy, I wanted to ask you, because you said that you dealt with this experience in, in your own life in the past. I'm, I'm curious if your reaction to her is different than your reaction to your past self, because you see like yourself in it. Like, do you, uh, what do you, what do you feel for? Do you feel like, because you know you're reformed is what do you feel like she's reformable because you're reformed or do, do you feel differently how's it approach you love this question i am getting like extremely frustrated watching her on the stand um i see a lot of myself in in denial um but but it's hard because she's on the stand, you know? I just think like that's what's really difficult is how would she actually be acting if somebody was just having a conversation with her about it, you know? I it would be much better. Yeah, I mean, it's really hard to tell, right? Because where I'm, where I'm from, from my standpoint, you know, 10 years roughly past this behavior, it's like I, I, I just knew enough about my side. I would never go and write, make an article like this, completely mm. excusing myself of any behavior that was either, that either instigated it or, you know, was a result of it. It just feels very, hmm. um, it feels false. It feels spun and it feels like there was some limelight desired. And that's just, that's my personal perspective, not my professional in, in, input. But it sounds I, very I professional, though. Why? Like, I can't it's, seem to answer in my head why somebody would go and be the face of something that they also did. But, it, but well, but if you thought you could gaslight the world, hmm. like you, you, I have no insight into this particular mental health issue. But I imagine there's a lot of a lot of uh, unhappiness and a lot of anguish and churning. And all of us know that when we're feeling those kinds of feelings, what we, one of the things we really love best besides chocolate is love. And if she was convinced that everyone would love her again if she wrote this article and got lots of sympathy and became part of, of what was at the time, this great nationwide movement, I don't find it hard to understand at all. Right. Doesn't it make a lot of sense? I mean, you say, you say, you say you can't imagine yourself doing it, but I, I have, I think you're taking for granted just how much more self-aware and intelligent you are than most people and probably this person. Yeah. yeah. That, I think that that makes sense. It's difficult. And, I mean, yeah, or go ahead. I was gonna, I was gonna, well, uh, re respond, and then I was gonna ask you about the super chat, um, if there is any any relation to it. But uh, re respond first. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think there's just uh, personality disorders or all, all mental health disorders show up differently, and so I think you have to look at this not only through the context of mental illness or mental health issues, because I've met a lot of people with borderline personality disorder and treated them and have it myself, and we would never some of us never be rude to waiters, never come out with an article like this. Like there's just, there's other issues going on. And I think particularly the language of, you know, one of the most known statements here, which is say Johnny Depp, I, Johnny Depp, a man is a victim of domestic violence. Like that's not, a, that's not a personality disorder issue. That's not a mental health issue. That's like a gender bias where you are using that. This is a male. Like it just isn't, 
it doesn't, I don't think it has anything to do with potential symptoms. I think they could play a role in it, but I think it's also just who is the person and what are the values and morals outside of that. True. True. Good point. Dr. Tracy, I'm, I'm sorry, Alita, you wanted to ask her about the super chat. Oh, yeah. Is, is there any relationship between a tendency to gaslight and BPD? Uh, yeah, I, mean, I think chat? that there can be. There can be in, in any mental health issue, but it, it really comes down to, to reality. Can you be gaslighting somebody if you actually believe what you're saying is true? Mm -hmm. Right? Like if you, yeah. you it, it really, you don't know, you know, and I think using the word delusion or using the word paranoia or, or whatever words people want to use, they can be used in an actual clinical way that, or they can be used to kind of just be kind of bagging on somebody. I mean, it's just the con cons himself, right? It's the gaslighter gaslights themselves. They start yeah. believing yeah. their own lies. And so it becomes yeah, so, truth so them. That's a great lead into my question, Dr. Tracy. When we look at a lot of her testimony during the direct where she was talking about the abuse, there was times where you know, stress was really high and I could tell that there was fabrication. She was leaving things out. But there were times where it it seemed like, even if it's unlikely, even if it could be disproven in fact, it kind of seemed like she actually believed physical abuse took place. Do you believe that her BBD can cause her to misremember emotional abuse as actual physical abuse? Can it get to that point where she could fabricate a memory that doesn't exist? I think that would be really difficult to do. Um, I think that would be hard, but what, you know, I think the thing that keeps coming up for me in those instances is, was she just completely sober too? Like, I feel like there isn't really much said. It's like, he was on this, he was on that, he was acting like this. And that's where I get frustrated because when I've been in these situations, I could say all those things about my partner and I could leave out all the things about me and the things that I was on and the ways that I was acting. And it's just, and that's what I, I'm sitting, I'm like laying in my bed and I'm going, what the hell? Like, that you are only giving one side of this story. What is the other side? Because we have no idea whether or not this is fabricated because there's so much missing information. So could she, could somebody perceive something happening that didn't happen? Yeah, I mean, it happens all the time that the human brain can do that, but yeah. it's what would lead to that. Did that really happen? We have no idea, right? We don't, I don't, we don't even know what substances she was on at the time. Yeah, because I'm thinking of all the studies on like memory fabrication, like, you know, the hot air balloon thing I'm sure you're familiar with where they had people just look at pictures that were photoshopped of them as a kid being in a hot air balloon. And all of a sudden they're retelling stories of that day and what they did. And then there's same thing with Disneyland. They've done a bunch of studies where and this happens in false confessions all the time in uh, police lineups where they misidentify someone only because the memory was after they saw it. So I'm wondering if throughout the years it started with her sort of saying like, you know, just to like, maybe she's telling the story to a friend and she's like, we were really arguing. He's really yelling at me. And then guess what? He pushed me like just to sort of get that in there. And then in her own head, she, the memory just completely transforms over the years because she felt really abused. She's now physically yeah. representing that in her own memory. Just wondering if you think there's a possibility there. Cause, cause otherwise like she went on and on about him beating the heck out of her. And you know, so it was all yeah. fabrication, like all of it. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. It's just, it's so crazy. I mean, when we are emotionally distraught, we are more sensitive and there's proof for that as well. So yeah. Yeah. how hard was she pushed is one thing. And what did it feel like is something else It yeah. can be yeah. the same. It can be different, but, but it's our interpretation that, that really makes how we explain it. And that's why there's always two sides to every story. Right. right. That's right. A, actually a really great point. So maybe it's yeah. not entirely a fabrication, but a push is being described as a throw and a, and a nudge is being described as a slap and a, yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Could be. Um, also Leanne G wants to know, Dr. Tracy, do you think her daughter is safe? We've gotten a lot of questions about people with BPD mm -hmm. and having their children taken away. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. you can speak to that a little bit. <laughs> I would love to. I have a three and a half year old toddler. I have yeah, never even yeah. yelled at him one time in my life, ever yes, yes. once. Yes, and yes, I've yes, done yes, a lot yes. of hard work to get to that point. That being said, a lot of children are not safe with their parents and their parents do not have personality disorders. I think something that's really important is all mental health disorders show up differently. Personality disorders, what I have noticed is on the path towards healing, the most struggle comes from somebody who has harmed you in the past. So you can like repair your interpersonal issues, but if someone has seriously harmed you in the past, 
those types of people are going to be the most difficult to change your behaviors towards. And there's people with borderline personality disorder at minimum, also other personality disorders, truly want to be loved and truly can love, but it's mixed with either violence or neglect or whatever based on their childhood. When a child is born, if the mother or father, any human being with an issue is working on recovery, that can be the last place where any of those symptoms are going to pop up. But any human I'm, being can harm a child. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, I, thank I, you yeah. so much for, for pointing that out because we've, we've gotten some questions about this before. And I've tried to point out, like, just because someone has some diagnosis of something does not mean that automatically their children will be taken away. Because, I mean, how many people have all kinds of diagnoses? No one would have kids. Or at least, you know, maybe not no one, but. But certainly once they have kids. <laughs> yeah. 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 Dr. I've Tracy, seen a lot what... of questions. I'm sorry. No, please, please. I've seen a lot of questions about um, narcissism. Narcissism. And I, I do think a, a number of you made really important points. Remember, we're talking about a professional movie actress. Even the, people who are in that business are even more small n, not narcissistic personality disorder, but presumptively, and if only because that's how they make a living Mm -hmm. are more narcissistic than even social media influencers, if you can imagine that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a really important, you know, it's a really important point. We're not talking about baseline. We're not talking about your mom and my dad and regular people and human, you know, or, <laughs> we're talking and not even regular lawyers or even litigators. These people are on a really high level of self-regard and self-centeredness and and much of it is rational, but what happens, of course, is that it becomes, I think, in, in many, many cases, it, it, it goes beyond the rational level of, of, of narcissism to something that, you know, we, we, we hear a lot about people from Hollywood who are successful, who, who become impossible human beings. Now, that isn't in of itself a, a personality disorder. It's a personality. Yeah, yeah. Um... And also, Ron, uh, Shadow88 wants to know what you think about JD's chances to win, Johnny Depp's chances here. I don't know if you've been watching enough to, to come to a conclusion. But... I have been either watching or hearing enough. To, I mean, I just think, as, as I've mentioned to you before, to a couple of you guys, I think that Amber Heard's case is being handled so poorly from the lawyering point of view. Uh, and I and I'm, I've liked what I've seen from the, from the Johnny Depp point of view, and uh, and looking again at at her at Amber Heard's descent into lower and lower levels of credibility. My only question has been for all the litigation in what sounds very much like a contest of who is the worst per, worst person is Johnny Depp carrying his burden of proof on the question of defamation and i think kurt really answered that very well for me yesterday i think i think it really comes out that the answer is yes so i, th I think johnny wins does anyone not and this group, still I mean, there's still technical wins for amber yeah like such the, as, the most i'm willing to do is 85 percent. there's still technical wins that's for amber. <laughs> those are not too many of us would, would be shy about going to a jury on 85 percent. nope what, but what, I'm curious what kind of technical, I don't want to, I don't want to derail, um, yeah. you know, where the panel's going, but what kind of technical issues do you think are still out there? Well, okay. So, all right. So the, the terms, the question we have to decide among other terms is what sexual violence and what domestic abuse mean, because we're not in a DV case. So the question is, what do those terms mean? And what would they mean to the ordinary person reading them? In this case, the ordinary person is the jury. They're the ordinary person, the man off the street. That's kind of the idea. So the question really becomes, what does the jury think those terms mean? And so, like, at least her lawyers did a good job when Johnny Depp was on the stand uh, and uh, from, his, from his psychiatrist as well, getting the idea that emotional abuse can be as bad, if not worse, than physical abuse. And we've heard things on tapes in Johnny De Depp acting in ways that could be perceived as emotionally abusive. Like, these are all questions of fact, but it's possible. 
right? These are things that are possible. So it's like, okay, so if we're trying to prove domestic abuse, depending on how wide we understand that term, and we can see like one instance of emotional, verbal domestic abuse, or even one instance of physical abuse, like on a very technical sense, we can get there. Then even even with sexual violence, I mean, we could we can play with it, although it's a little bit harder to stretch that much wide open. But like, the question becomes like, do you? I mean, same fundamental question. I mean, on just a baseline level, she says it happened to her. I mean, that is evidence, right? She says that she was penetrated with a liquor bottle. So I mean, that is evidence a jury could consider to conclude it it happened. So. There are technical ways to get there because, yeah, I mean, the overwhelming way the evidence suggests against the sexual violence, but in a very technical sense, Mike, yeah, okay. Yeah, just because of those those loose definitions that are kind of up for grabs in this case that are not normally in a normal yeah. TV case, that's really the, the wild card in this case for, for Amber Heard that she could potentially seize upon if the jury decides to see it that way. Based on what we've been hearing about the jury's reactions to Amber Heard on direct versus on cross-examination, I don't know that they're going to be willing to run the ball mm. in her direction. Um, but it, it, that is one of those unknowns to all of us on the panel. I think um, every lawyer has been before yeah. a jury at least once where they thought one outcome was going to occur and the exact opposite occurred. So, like, I, I don't necessarily know that uh, our ability to read the jury is necessarily indicative of anything, particularly when they get back in that room. Again, because, like, if if there's one strong person on there who who thinks it's possible... And they, you know, they really drive the panel through, you know, then they, in a panel of seven, it's, I mean, it's possible. Yeah, it's possible. And I was, I mean, I was saying yesterday, I've, looking at this jury, they, they give you almost nothing, literally almost nothing. You, it is so hard to read them. You are trying to read the most micro movements of the chair swiveling or someone gets comfortable where they're rocking back and forth much harder to read a jury or an appellate panel what do you guys think i i I tell you is it 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 really shows the fact is all the results and everyone if you have if your career is long enough you realize you really don't know these are people they, you know, they're signaling, they're not signaling. I, I, I hate when the jury, the, the one moment I feel that I can read the jury is when it doesn't do me any good, which is when they're coming back in to read the verdict. <laughs> and they won't, if they won't make <laughs> eye contact great. with me. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, I want to look. Moxie Therapy and wants Rob, to know, Rob Dr. Tracy not- and Spidey, uh, have you guys seen the HG Tutor YouTube videos on narcissism, AH, and more? Very helpful to understand why AH won't admit wrongdoing. I mean, the um, question, the que- I haven't seen the video. I haven't seen the video, but the question, the, the quest, the answer to the question is within the question itself. Like, and I, I don't know if Dr. Tracy will agree, but yeah, there is a correlation between narcissism and, um, stubbornness you know and, and like just just not wanting to concede to having been wrong or or being wrong so and the, they escalate the, answer to the questions within the question yeah they escalate when they have arguments when you put two narcissistic people in the room together they both minimize each other and that triggers the other narcissistic fuel yeah. and it, it you get a fight that goes like could go like this and it just becomes and at some point, there's no logic left. It's just entirely emotional. Like, I don't know. You're right. I didn't say that. I never said you said that. I mean, what, are you, what, what, is he, what are we even listening to here? <laughs> yeah. 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 I think I, I, I would agree. But I, I also feel like I feel like some of the stuff, just because a lot of people might find it unbelievable, and I don't, I don't find a lot of what she's saying unbelievable to happen with substances and their relationship and all the things that have been shown. The issue is she created a dichotomy. She created an, I did nothing wrong. He did everything wrong. And now the only way that this is going to work out is if the opposite is true. And so she can't come out and say she did things. And so there's not only that, not only did I do something wrong, he did something wrong, but he did something grossly egregiously wrong. Cause it's like, this is also the problem for the jury on technical levels because Amber heard it a lot to sabotage that argument. Because if she had come in with, you know, he grabbed me by the arm and he had slapped me and pushed me or something, yeah. that's a di- radically different idea than what we heard. So she's, she's by her own words, having to put Johnny Box in such a monster category and yeah. nothing lines up with it. I mean, even on the tapes, he's never, 
He's he's nothing close to anything like that. Yeah. Of what you would expect. And she's not acting like you would expect a domestic violence person to act. She's not afraid. She's not cowering. She's not concerned. She's she's instigating. You see her on the tape when even on the tape where where he's slamming the cabinets and slamming the things in the in the uh, in the uh, kitchen. I, I would imagine, although I wouldn't know for sure, but I would imagine if you're a victim of domestic violence you're and running. you see your significant other come into the kitchen and start slamming all the cabinets and all the things. I would think that you would think the next thing that's going to happen is he's going to come after me. You might be a little bit concerned about your safety at that point, but apparently not so much. So like, you know, it's like, it doesn't jive. Yeah. Even what we heard earlier, she was like cackling mischievously, like laughing and stuff and like poking and poking and poking. Listen, I, yeah. And did anyone happen to catch um, when she was, there was a bit of truth to the testimony of, I took these pictures to show him the next day. Mm -hmm. I believe that she did to start mm -hmm. a fight and to sure. minimize anything Look, that was happening. Look I mean, what you do to me. Look what you do to right me. Right there. That is right in line with that personality and what that would, it's just. Yeah. Also, Dr. Tracy, I, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I just, I want to, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. I think it's really important. Yeah, let's do it. I've been in these situations and I've acted like that. Sometimes mental health disorders lead you to thrive in chaos. They lead you to boost your ego so much to the point where you have to be unaffected by what's happening to you in order for your ego to not be completely crushed. So, and, and in, and in substance use, which is my specialization where I got my doctorate and opened up my treatment center, it happens all the time. You're, my husband used to take photos of me when I was 20 years old and I used to pass out underneath cars in college. Not, not to be mean, to tell me and show me what I wasn't going to remember the next day. Mm. It's totally possible that what she's saying is true. And there's a lot more to it. Maybe she was trying to be manipulative and embarrass him the next day. And maybe, and maybe that was the after effect when she thought it would go well. And instead he was acting the same. And so she's like, fine, I'm just going to use it against you instead. Like, I love you. I hate you. I love you. I hate you. And I think mm. we have to remember that there might be love there. It's just not the type of love that most people would identify as healthy love. And so I that just think that's really important. important. Awesome. And I think that there's been, this is like a lot of the hashtag Me Too movement is a lot of people are watching this. And I think it's important that we have to put the other side on there, that there are people that are victims of domestic violence who do act like nothing's wrong, who do wake up the next morning, who do fawn. It's a very real traumatic response. And that's why I think that I, that's why I believe that some of what she's saying is true, but it's not the whole truth because, and that's the issue is she came in with, I'm the victim. And there's so much more to the story than just that. And so, but I think it's easy to disregard that what she's saying could be true because it's illogical to people who haven't lived in that world and who don't have that mindset. And so I just think we have to keep the door open and we can't close it out because there's so many people affected by this on both sides all the time. And just some of it can be, can be valid. Doesn't mean it is, but for the people that are listening who do have that experience, it's that's important. gotta come out of closing. I mean, that, that's, that, that is the absolute bottom line in closing. She's done so much damage to herself yeah. mm -hmm. that, you know, Johnny's, Johnny's team has to make it clear. We're not, we're not, a, we're not a favor for abuse. We're not in favor of domestic violence right. and we're not denying the range of possible behavioral reactions that a person can have. But ladies and gentlemen, you've been exposed to the evidence here and the evidence here does not support these claims. claims. Mm -hmm. You could even say, don't, don't look at this woman in anguish. Don't judge her. We're not here for that. Right. We're here to talk about a what the evidence about. shows you. Well, we kind of are. <laughs> and I and I see I see I see people in the in the chat getting getting a little bit upset about about that saying, you know, Sorry. then why why send it to why send it to her friends? This is different. That's not love. She's sending it to her friends, but that's exactly what Dr. Tracy is saying is that it's it's kind of a it's a it's a it's a complicated unhealthy version of what yeah. we all would be expecting. Yeah. Not to say that it is correct, not to say that it is right, but that this is an unhealthy version of what otherwise could be a loving relationship 
and that is being twisted by someone's unhealthy yeah. thoughts, unhealthy mind, mm -hmm. essentially. And that this is just something that that looks particularly complicated um, or could look particularly complicated. I think, honestly, it, it's a lot better to take a look at this and take apart the nuance instead of just yeah. writing it off right. entirely. Um, yeah. I think it's a, it's I, don't, a I don't know point. if I and can live that in that much is, nuance It absolutely <laughs> is, still, is still wrong to, to mm -hmm. send it to friends to, yeah. to, to punish yeah. him with that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah, I applaud. I applaud Dr. Tracy a million percent because like any time somebody is a little bit sort of not even playing devil's advocate, but saying in certain situations, right. something like this might happen, we're getting crucified. And honestly, right. Dr. Tracy, thank you so much for like, you're zero. I didn't interpret that even 1% as her saying Amber did this and it's okay. She's not saying that yeah, at all. She's saying, no. In certain cases with someone with that condition, this might happen this way, not, not happening now. It might happen. Yeah. And honestly, Good for you for bringing that up because there are people in the chat that are misrepresented because they have gone through this kind of thing and they feel like complete monsters because if I did, if I took a picture, am I a monster like Amber Heard? No, you're not. It's right. all she's saying is actions like that can happen. It's the intent that makes it different. And I think yeah. we're at a point, and I, I don't know if you guys are going to agree with me or not, but we're at a point in this trial where it's not about did Amber Heard lie or tell the truth? It's about did Amber Heard lie or did Amber Heard lie about absolutely everything? I think that's what yeah. the trial is about. Right. Yeah. One of the things I, 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 I normally like to live in, in, in a place of nuance, but like part of me doesn't want to. And it reminds me of a, a line from the West Wing uh, when they were debating the assassination of a foreign leader. And the chief of staff says to the president, you know, um, about why they should. It says, you know, this is a person who's hurt people. He'll hurt other people again, so we have to end him. Then he says, the village idiot comes to that conclusion before the Nobel laureate. And I, th I was thinking about that line. It's like, there's a large part of me that's like, no, I just want to simplify this and just call her, the, just call her evil. It's like, I, I don't know if that's a good impulse or a bad impulse, but it's like, I... I, I don't know how deep my sympathy for the devil can go at this point. I, I would or not know where that should it that, that I should. But the, are you talking about you? You mean you personally? Yes, you me talking, personally. You talking about to you know six or seven people on it, but standing in front of the jury? Never, never. You never. You can't. Well, do no. That. I mean, as an advocate, obviously, obviously, as an advocate, I'm just talking like how I should judge it as a hypothetical juror, or even as like mm -hmm. a hypothetical person in the world. Oh. Who might oh, have to deal with this? Like, how should I come to evaluate this kind of people? How should I come to evaluate someone like Dr. Tracy 10 years ago? How should I evaluate that? Yeah. Like, is it is it wrong for me on some level to be like just simplistic and judging? Or is it like, I just, it's, I don't think I it's don't, wrong. I don't, I don't know how to feel. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's wrong. I think that that's what the human mind does, you know? We, we want simplicity. We want black or white. We want to categorize things. If we didn't do that, we'd have way too much information to process yep, every yep. moment. Like that's how yep, we evolved. Yep. So it doesn't make you wrong. It doesn't make the people in the comments that are saying I'm a fake doctor and don't have a degree because I provided nuance. Like people tend to do that. We all tend to say whatever. I get that. I get that on my channel whatever. with the law stuff okay, too. I, so I, yeah, got, I understand. I got called not a like, real lawyer on Twitter yet. Better. Yet, so. but I think the biggest issue is even me trying to bring in a slight amount of nuance. The issue is the nuance, like that's what this case is about, is that this article came out without the nuance. It came like she didn't bring it in the first place. Yeah. And so that's what makes it so difficult that, that, that now that's her argument. Yeah. And it just doesn't really, it, can't, it doesn't really play out like that. It just doesn't, it's just not going to go well. Very nice point. That's a very nice <laughs> yes. point. Yes. Um, well, folks, uh, uh, since uh, chat's worried about me, I, I do want to do what makes me the happiest every day. Uh, which is, I'm told that Alita and Legal Bites is at 197,000 subscribers. Um, and there are 58,000 people watching right now. So it would do me a great honor if you could put 3,000 new subscriptions on Alita's cha <laughs> at channel right now at lunch, heading into the third half of Amber Heard's cross examination because 200,000 subscribers is just a ridiculous milestone that is well deserved by Alita and Legal Bites. And if you want me to not look like a sad clown for the rest of the day, I think I could get a smile out for you since I saw a lot of people asking for a smile if we got to 200,000 subscribers. Until then, no smiles. 
that. You know what? Joe, Joe from Good Logic, Joe from Good Logic right now gets a shout out because he's the one that predicted that Alita would be over 200,000 by the end of this trial. Sure did. I, I didn't see that coming. I was way under. So I, I, I didn't like I didn't I didn't see it coming either. I, I my, my upper I was bound like... was 120. Look at look at me now. Jeez, what do I know about the future? <laughs> yes, it's a I uh, no, that's that's third insane. That insane. Um, thank you, guys. Thank I you. Rick. Um, and also <laughs> be sure to subscribe to everyone on this panel because we are getting we are getting, you know, fantastic, uh, fantastic commentary from everybody. Folks are just popping in because they want to because they're having fun. Um, they don't really get anything out of it. The best way to reward them is to go to their channels, go into the description below. Everyone is tagged. Um, everyone so far that has shown up today is tagged in there. And go to their channels and check them out. Subscribe to their channels. Um, watch their wrong. Stuff, I will like get personal stuff. satisfaction if you get her to 200,000 subscribers. Yeah. Right yeah. Now. Don't bother. Don't right bother now. with me. Subscribe here. Tell your friends to subscribe oh here. Gosh. Take that time limited that it would take to go to my channel. My personal take satisfaction is limited time only. <laughs> Yeah. Time only. Yeah, it's a oh, limited man. time offer to be part of the first hundred twenty thousand. So when Alita becomes <laughs> two million, you can be like, I was part of the first ten percent. And don't pledge. Don't pledge your subscription. Actually, subscribe. Actually, oh, donate your good. subscription. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that oh, was you're really not going to smile so until there's two hundred thousand. I know you, you can do so it. Funny. I know. Um, that also, we can get two hundred thousand before we continue with the court case today. And I'm the, not, not going to smile until she's in the pits of hell burning. That's where I am. Oh. How are you doing, Ian? Yeah. Let me get some super chats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah did you take a nap, Ian? <laughs> I did. Uh, oh, you look very well rested. Figured, I'm probably going to be out there at about 6 p.m. So okay. I might as well be rested because it's still going to suck. Yeah. <laughs> Here, here. Um, let me get some super chats here because we've got some some more for for Dr. Tracy and also for for Spidey, I think. Um, so let's let's get through these in so that before they before they have to dip out, I don't know how long you guys. One hundred ninety eight thousand. Oh my god. You know what to do. Oh my gosh, you guys. Let's pull up that um, live counter. Yeah, Alita has to pull up the live counter. I don't even know how Nate grabbed her live counter. I don't know how that. Happened. I don't. On, I don't know how he did that either. That may have been on. Oh, I don't know. I'm I not think sure. Nate's but, um, YouTube the other servers. One. But let's get let's get some super chats here. Green Thumb says, if you've been gaslighted for years by a partner or spouse, can you then develop a, per, a personality disorder as a reaction from the abuse you've lived you live or have lived through? This is a question definitely for Dr. Tracy here. Yeah, I mean, personality disorders usually develop in childhood because that's when your sense of self, your person, is developing. But you can't develop symptoms. I mean, all personality disorders are are pervasive human behaviors. And so there can be various behaviors that somebody can develop as a result of these situations for sure. But I would say like deeply ingrained personality disorder, very difficult to change, maybe over decades, would usually occur in childhood. I have maybe a 30 year relationship could result in something like that, but that would again be like very developmental because it'd be so much of someone's life. Right, right. Apparently that the court's sense. back or something else. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah I've, got us, I've got us up, it's a sidebar. Um, so I'll, I'll just, I'll pay attention. I'll pull this on the screen here so that we can, we can see everybody, but I'm, I'm, I'm paying attention guys. Also, Mineski, thank you so much for the very generous super chat says, I think what people in the end can see is that she has a choice. She has the financial backup and support to be able to get the treatment she needs because sadly it needs to start with her choosing to help herself. Just my opinion though. Thanks for a great panel. I completely agree. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Wendy's Cafe says, question for Dr. Tracy. Um, have you compared what she did to JD and the characters similar to her in Gone Girl? We've gotten a lot of a lot of talk about Gone Girl. Do you think that she planned this out since she did actually use the word plan several times? Um, I think that'd be I'd really be speculating there. Um, I haven't I haven't seen Gone Girl. Um, but I do know that people who have a point to make or want their side to be seen can plan. I mean, that sounds like they were talking about divorce before she filed. And so it could be, cause they, like, you hear that on the tapes. I have he this, I have that, he you know, divorce first. Yeah. And then she says like, well, I have this and I have that and I can show this. And so that's where I'm like, maybe she was doing it to be helpful, but like, you can turn spiteful so, so quickly and start using it against him, which we've seen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, fantastic. And I think I, I may have lost my spot here to bring up some more. Oh, Dr. Tracy, what about the drugs? Uh, can Amber Heard's custody come into play when it comes to drugs? 
I don't know if that that might be another speculative yeah. kind of question. Yeah, I mean, that's hard to, t I mean, that's just something totally different, right? I mean, people can use substances and not be around their children at all. She could have care for her children. She could, I, I don't know, you know, I have no idea how she acts or doesn't act around her child. And I would need that information to answer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Salim I'm going to bail guys. Okay. Have a good Thanks, Ron. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Salim says to Dr. Tracy, I'm neuroatypical and have ADHD, not a PD per se, but could also hear a lot of myself in those tapes and cross. Is mm -hmm. there any connection to PDs? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, personality disorders, the brain's going to function a certain way and ADHD, the brain's going to function a certain way. There's different levels of self-respect of impulsivity of memory of attention of interpersonal conversations of impulse control and so there is a relationship between bpd specifically and adhd sometimes people are misdiagnosed with one when it should be the other yeah yeah um and then we've got some super chats that are some some thanks for for dr tracy for coming on um and uh and do you have your... a twitter or something because i'd like to send you a dm I, dr I, tracy I, 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 I tagged her in it. I tagged all of you Excellent. guys in it too. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> so <Hang on. laughs> check your own Twitter. Um, Alice Rose is Dr. T. I'm starting to see a lot of myself in Amber and I'm scared. What should I do? Oh, I'm so glad I found this one. A reach out to a therapist. I think reach out to a therapist. I think that's part of the big issue here is, you know, I, and I was reading through all of the records, you know, and it's like, I don't think she's being treated or this is, it's difficult to say, right? Cause I have a license. I'm like, I don't want to get in trouble, but I think right. she needs to be treated for the right thing. And so I think that's one really important thing as well as when you are starting to go get help for whatever issues that you're having is, is please be as specific as you can be and don't hold anything back. I think that might be part of the issue here that we're not seeing. And so, yeah, just reach out for help. You can get better, but you really have to want to, and, 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 and it can, it's going to be rough. A little, so but you can, um, and I'm proud of Thank you. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, thank you so much for that response. And for Hell H, uh, Dr. Tracy, what's the explanation for sending the, the pictures to her friends? I think we covered that one. Um, and then one more. Hopefully, we can get yeah, one sorry. more question in. Rhiannon Adams says, question to doctor, taking photo and also sending it to friends could be her seeking love and attention from others, equating love and just receiving attention. What yeah. would be your thoughts on that? Yeah. It yeah, could be. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Oh, I've got a comment here. Dr. Tracy's perspective is so important here. Dealing with an addict is extremely hard, especially if you have a mental health disorder, mental disorder yourself. I think JD is in the right here, but age is not pure evil. I completely agree. Um, reading. Do, 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 do. Let's see if I'm trying well, to like scour through here there. for any more. <laughs> oh. Thank you. You'll be seated. All right. Your next question. Uh, Tom, may I please have you put up uh, plaintiff's exhibit 881A? Ms. Hurd, I'm going to ask you to take a look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 881A. Um, this is one of the articles containing the counterclaim statements by Adam Waldman. Is that correct? I haven't seen the article yet. Okay. Why don't we go to page eight of this article? I'm going to take a walk. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Adam Waldman's right. ex-lawyer said afterwards, quote, Amber Heard and her friends in the media use fake sexual violence allegations as both a sword and shield, depending on their needs. They have selected some of her sexual violence hoax facts as a sword, inflicting them on the public and Mr. Depp. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Is that one of the statements that you allege are defamatory? It's defamatory? That's, that's correct. Um, can we please go to Plaintiff's Exhibit 881B? And if we could go to page 10 and 11.
in exhibit plaintiff's exhibit 881B, Depp's lawyer Adam Walden said the various discrepancies prove that nothing heard in her friends said about the events of May 21, 2016 could be considered credible. Quite simply, this was an ambush, a hoax. They set Mr. Depp up by calling the cops. That the first attempt didn't do the trick, he told the dailymail.com. The officers came to the penthouses, thoroughly searched and interviewed, and left after seeing no damage to face or property. So Amber and her friends spilled a little wine and roughed the place up, got their story straight under the direction of a lawyer and publicist, and then placed a second call to 911. But even this didn't have, oh, apologize. You're fine. Okay. Dr. Tracy, do you think that Amber believes what she's saying? According, asking from the super chat. Oh, does the doctor believe she believes? I mean, maybe some. Yeah, I mean, it's you just that's very. I, it's hard to tell. Is it possible? Yeah, to believe some and 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 then just say lies that you don't believe. Totally. Yeah, and it gets more confusing when. You're trying to make a point, you know, yeah. and hide some of the truth. I don't know. It's very tricky. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I hear you. It, I would imagine it's very difficult to figure out if somebody actually truly believes what they're saying without reading their brain. <laughs> right. Did you guys notice how hard it appeared for Johnny when they were going through the uh, uh, the Australia incident earlier? He looked like he I'm was sorry. having a rough time. Sorry, one, one more time? Uh, Depp looked like he was having a real tough time when they were going through some of the uh, some of the allegations of violence earlier. Um, he kind of had his head down. He was, you know, breathing a little heavily. It looked like. I thought that was a, a hard moment for him just hearing that again. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Um, there were, there were a couple points where it looked like he was having a hard time listening. Oh, it was, it was when she had that. It sounded like it was almost like a manic laugh. And a lot of us were really kind of disturbed by it. Seeing the, 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 the camera go to him. It looked like he was in pain, kind of like sort of laughing through discomfort, maybe. A little bit sort of like he had his, his hand in front of his mouth and just almost like, yeah, I can't believe I went through this. It's very psychologically damaging. I feel like to ha to hear, to hear that somebody coming at you like that and to, and the way that it seems just so very unhinged, it makes sense that, I don't know, you know, lots of things can cause people to act in many ways. And so it just, I'm sure that it was difficult for him to sit there when it was happening even and just, yeah. you know, regardless of who else was around or that he was trying to stay controlled because he has the history of child abuse. He likely has the, the neuronal pathway of you can be physically violent. And, and he's talked about that, like intentionally not wanting to put his hands on someone because of what he's been through. And so to sit there and have somebody berating you like that psychologically I'm sure it's extremely overwhelming in the moment. And then to be surrounded in a courtroom where you're the one being accused of being a domestic abuser yeah. and then yeah. listening to that being repeated yeah. to you while you have to sit there again and still remain calm is, yeah, very overwhelming. So yeah. I, I noticed yeah. that as well. And hopefully we can we can get some stories. And if we can please in a uh, bit. pull up plaintiff's exhibit <laughs> I'll save the super chat for later, hopefully. and go to page 11. This is another article, Ms. Heard, where you argue that uh, Mr. Waldman's statements are defamatory, correct? I don't know if this is taken from that article because I can't see the article in full. It's page 11 of the article. And the statement reads,
We have reached the beginning of the end of Ms. Hurd's abuse host against Mr. Depp. Is that correct? Is that one of the defam what you claim is one of the defamatory statements said by Mr. Waldman? I believe so. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Hurd, you're not aware of any career opportunities that you lost as a result of Mr. Waldman's statements, are you? Well, it's kind of hard to point to the jobs you're not offered, right. to the gigs you don't get. You were not replaced in Aquaman 2, were you? They released me from my contract and I fought to stay in it and they kept me in it. I just don't know how much I'm in actually of the final cut. And you testified yesterday that L'Oreal actually extended your contract in April of 2020. Is that correct? In part, they extended and it and held me. And you testified yesterday that L'Oreal extended your contract again in November of 2021, correct? Not exactly. They extended it because it couldn't use me or any of the materials uh, for me. And that extension was for 20 months, right? That's correct. Ms. Hurd, you testified yesterday how Mr. Waldman's statements, quote, torture you every day. Do you recall that testimony? I do. And then, um, and that you look at them every day. I look at the um, online attacks, the media, you can't avoid it, to be honest, that those statements are often attached to. I don't look at his statements every day. And you testified that you just want to move on with your life, right? I do very much want to move on with my life. But you've gone out of your way to engage with Mr. Waldman on social media, haven't you? Uh, I have made a comment, I believe, once. I did not, I would not characterize that as engaging with him. Let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1266. I, you, you, right your microphone. Your microphone. I, I don't have this yet, so I'm asking for it it's to right be there. given to okay. me before. It's a photograph. I think it's just a. Mm -hmm. This is your tweet, right, Ms. Hurd? That is correct. I'm going to move to admit and publish this tweet. Relevance? Objection. I'm sorry. Is it, what's the objection? I'm sorry. Relevance. All right. I'll overrule the objection. Eight eight one C in evidence. <laughs> she didn't even have to defend the relevance. Yeah. No. It's it's obvious at this point. Uh, Can we please have it published to the jury? I'm sorry. One two six six. I apologize. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> okay. This is from March 26, 2021, right? That's what it looks like, yes. And this is after he made the statement you claim, the statements you claim are defamatory, right, Ms. Hurd? 21, yes. Ms. Hurd, you tweeted at Adam Waldman, quote, yes, Mr. Waldman, I may be wearing makeup on this occasion, but on every occasion you will still be short. Did I read that right? Yes. This feels very Churchill-esque. <laughs> well, yeah, Churchill said it better. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Ms. Hurd, since your relationship with Mr. Depp ended, you have completed your level three sommelier training, haven't you? Okay, I haven't I have completed it questions. yet. You're I just on stopped. level two? No, I'm on level three. You also have had a baby, right? I have. And you enjoy being a mother? More than anything. You still love to cook? I do. And you love to hike? I've taken a break on hiking for a minute. You have friends, right? I do have friends. And you spend time with those friends? Occasionally, when I can. And you exercise regularly? Every day. You just filmed a movie in March of 2022, isn't that right? Yes, the one I just shot in Guatemala that I spoke of earlier. And you have, um, you had a major role in a major film that's scheduled to be released soon, is that correct? Aquaman 2? As I said, I don't know if I will even be in the final cut or how much I will be. It was difficult to stay in the movie. You struck Mr. Depp multiple times during your relationship, didn't you, Ms. Heard? There were many times I had to use my body to defend myself, and that included swinging wherever I could. If it meant I could get away, absolutely. If it meant a, a difference between a sore face and a broken nose, you bet I would. You so bet. it's your testimony under oath that you never struck Mr. Depp as the initial aggressor? Well, I, he was holding me against the wall by my neck. You know, I might be the first person to have been the, the, the first one to slap 
which happened in Australia, you know, and he was choking me, but I wouldn't say I was the initial aggressor in that situation. You got physical with Mr. Depp often during your relationship, didn't you? I had to defend myself as best I could. Um, didn't seem to make much of a difference. You just couldn't control yourself, could you, Miss Heard? I tried to defend myself when I could, um, but it was after years of not defending myself. Can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 356? And Your Honor, portions of the ex exhibit were entered into evidence yesterday, but we moved to admit the entire recording. All right, and wait. I can confirm that there's no other voices besides Ms. Hurd's and Mr. Depp's. And I intend to play um, from 129.27 to 130.07. So I have 356A in evidence. Is any objection to the, the entire 356 coming into evidence? Oh, if you may, if I may. Okay. Hold on just for sure. a moment, Your Honor. I have to check on something. Which one? I love that super chat. Yeah, this is great. Sir, <laughs> for now, and we'll double check our notes on that because there was one that had something in that that we couldn't go, and I just can't right. find my notes on that. Oh, right we'll now. just call it three five six B for now. That's fine. And Thank then, you, Your Honor. Could you just give me the the times again? Yes, of course. Sure. One two nine twenty seven to one three zero zero seven. And told them Answer we already have a B, so we have to be 356C. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. I can't promise you that I'll be perfect. I can't promise you I won't get physical again. God, I fucking sometimes get so mad. I lose it. Mm. I can fucking promise you I'm going to do everything to change. I promise you. I'm not going to go around the boys. I will not say divorce unless I leave you. Unless it's it. And then I hope you leave me. I'm not going to. And me too. I will leave you. It's fair. I can't do it. You know? And I think, honestly, if we hold each other accountable to that, it's fair. Ms. Heard, that's you and Mr. Depp on that recording, correct? That's correct. And you told Mr. Depp, quote, I can't promise you that I won't get physical. End quote. Correct? That, that's correct. He was accusing me of instigating something in the situation I explained yesterday. And you also told Mr. Depp that sometimes you get so mad you lose it. Correct? That's correct. I also explained the context of that fight yesterday. Isn't that exactly what you told Ben King on your way back from Australia? That you get so mad you lose it? Absolutely not. I know that that's what Ben King testified to, but I never had that conversation with Ben King. If we could no, please no, play. Meantime, I'm sorry. Um, I checked list. and I have no objection to the entirety of 356 right. coming so in. So 356 in its entirety will be in evidence. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. If we could please play from what's now been admitted, Plaintiff's Exhibit 356 in its entirety from 705 to 743. I'm not going to be in a physical fucking altercation don't. with you. Then don't. You fucking hit me. Last night, you fucking. Or all the other times you split. Hey, come on, you cannot act like that. It's about that. It's well, not. Well, on a plane, I can't split. No, and you hit back, so don't act like you don't fucking participate. I pushed. Mm. I'm not gonna get into the details of that fight. You and I both know that you split when there is no physical violence and that you do it at me, like at the very beginning of fights these days. And if you split and you go into a different room and you don't actually leave that house, it does nothing but perpetuate the fight. And you don't actually do it respectfully. You don't. Ms. <laughs> Heard, is that you and Mr. Depp on this recording? Yes, it is. Can we please uh, pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 343? And I believe that one's been admitted already into evidence. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And just for the record, um, we're playing from 24601 to 24720. I said to Travis, I said, Good. no, I said to you, hey, okay. tell Travis what just happened. Oh, you told Travis. me to do it. You yeah. told me to. You said, go do that. I said, no, tell, tell him what just happened. And I lied. And that you punched me in You're the right. fucking thing. And you, you figured it all out. And you said, no, fuck that. No, I didn't. What the fuck are you talking about? And I, I watched you lie. You. And then I, I didn't punch you, by the way. You, I'm sorry that I didn't uh, uh, hit you 
across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. It was not punching you. Babe, you're not punched. Don't tell me what it feels like to be punched. You it? know, even a lot of fights have been around a long time. I don't know. Yeah, oh, I, when you fucking have a close You face. didn't get punched. You got hit. I'm sorry I hit you like this, but I did not punch you. I did not fucking deck you. I fucking was hitting you. I don't know what the motion of my actual hand was, but you're fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. How are you? How, what am I supposed to do? Do this? I, I'm not sitting here bitching about it, am I? You are. That's the difference between me and you. You're a fucking baby. Mm. You are such a baby. Grow the fuck up, Tony. I did start a physical fight. Yeah, you did, so I had because, to get the fuck out of there. Yes, you did. So you did the right thing, the big thing. The, you know what? You are admirable. That's you and Mr. Depp on that recording, right, Mr. That's correct. And you said you hit Mr. Depp, right? Yeah, I had to hit his body to get Ms. him Heard, out of the door. My question was, you said on that recording that you hit Mr. Depp, right? Yes, I did. And you accused him of being a baby for not wanting to be in a physical fight with you, right? Incorrect. I accused him of being a baby for complaining about me hitting him when he was trying to get through the door. I was trying to barricade. Can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 368? And again, Your Honor, this is a recording of just Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd. Um, I'm going to move for the ex entire exhibit to be moved into evidence. All right. Any objection to 368? Uh, I don't think so. No, Your Honor. All right. No objection. 368 in evidence in its entirety. Okay. This is a shitty lot. Any, anyway, I opened the bathroom door when you were knocking on it. After a few times, I opened. And, you know, you just commit, you just kept going. You just kept going, kept going. I tried to close the door three times, you know. These, these, just you know, and then wait, and then, then I, 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 I accidentally, I swear, when I was trying to close the door, I guess it scraped your toes. I, I didn't, I, you know, I didn't mean to do that. And I bent down, and you either pushed or you kicked. I think you kicked the door open. I mean, the door, yeah, more open. So that it would I hit me. And it hit no, me. I, wait, I didn't mean wait. to. I didn't know it that. It hit me in the fucking head. But I did not mean to do that. I, I don't know what I was about. bent down behind the door. I did not do anything to her. I did not kick a, a door or push a door so that it would hit you. I did not. I, I swear. That I, I don't even. That did not. It was not my intention. I, I think I remember when the door scraped my toes. I, um, I, I reacted, but this whole, the door thing, I, I remember, I, I never did that. That wasn't on purpose. I might've done it on accident. Okay. But so let's say that was an accident. I then stood up. I don't even know if I said, I mean, I might've said like, what the fuck, what, you know, whatever. Cause I just been hit in the head with the fucking corner of a door. I'm so sorry. I did not. I'm sorry. About and then I stood up. And then you fucking clocked me. I, I remember hitting you as a response to the door thing. Mm. Mm. And I'm really sorry about hitting you with the door I was, or hitting your head. I did not mean to, nor... You didn't uh, mean to hit me in the head with the door, but you meant to I didn't punch mean, me in the jaw. I meant to hit you, and I... I I did not do this thing with the door. I, I do remember. I did mean to hit you. So that you didn't yeah. mean? The door? No, God, no, I didn't. I'm, but punching me in the, in the jaw. I didn't. Did. Okay, I'm sorry I hit you. I did mean to hit you, but it was in, a res, in response. I just reacted in response to my foot. I just reacted. And I'm sorry, it's below me. Your foot? Well, that was why you punched me. Yeah. But... But I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I. Again, that's you and Mr. Depp on that recording, right? That's correct. And Mr. Depp was hiding from you in the bathroom. Incorrect. Isn't that right, Ms. Heard? Incorrect. Well, Mr. Depp said on that recording, I opened the bathroom door when you were knocking on it. Does he? he? I don't know if he said that. And I, I didn't hear that. And Mr. Detail. Depp said, when I was trying to close the door, I guess it scraped your toes. 
He says that, doesn't he? Correct. And then you kicked the bathroom door into his head, didn't you? No, I didn't. And, and I then you punched him in the jaw. Defended myself in that audio. You can hear it for yourself. Right. And then you punched him in the jaw. I also did not do that. I tried to make that clear on the audio tape too. So, in futility. So mm. Mr. Depp said, you meant to punch me in the jaw, right? Are you asking me what he said right. on, the, yeah. on the recording? Yes, he said that. And then you respond, I meant to hit you, didn't you? I, as I explained yesterday, I was trying to get him off the door. And you said, I remember, I did mean to hit you. Meaning the door. The door was on my feet. Well, I reacted this, instinctively to that. Now you've heard this audio before, haven't you, Ms. Hurd? Yeah, we've already had this trial before. Yeah, you've played, it was played for you when you were deposed in 2016 in connection with your divorce from Mr. Depp, wasn't it? That's one of the times I've heard it, yes. Okay. So you've had plenty of time to think about how to respond to this recording, haven't you? Mm -hmm. I don't know what you mean by that. Well, let's take a look at how you responded to it the first time. Can we please pull up what yes. we marked Plaintiff's Exhibit 1261? Her pacing is like a freight train. The next thing that I'm going to play to you as a cue. Oh, do you want to come? All right. Got some more questions here. Ben Chu's jaw dropped during that when she denied some of the stuff that was clearly on the audio. Yeah. His jaw mm -hmm. literally dropped. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Tracy, secondary trauma regarding watching this trial. Do you think, I think this is uh, asking about maybe Johnny Depp having secondary trauma. What do you, what do you think? Is that possible? Yeah. I mean, absolutely. It, it, this isn't just discussing what's happening. This is literally hearing exactly what happened in the moment. And so our body and brain remember when things absolutely. like this happen. So, Yeah. And then Robert Napierski uh, says to Dr. Tracy, what is the best way to separate yourself from someone like Amber Heard, even when you walk away and stay away and they still pursue you? Mm. Yeah, I mean, well, one, I think it's really important that you should walk away if you need to. I think that that often when people have borderline personality disorder or anything, it's like sometimes it's good to have distance. And I feel like sometimes that's not said. And, and I know I've said this before. My husband needed better boundaries when we were in our early 20s. And so if it really gets that bad, then you need to start telling people around you that you're trying mm -hmm. to set space and that you're not getting it. And if you have to take it to a legal standpoint, then you have to take it to a legal standpoint. And that's for anybody that you're trying to protect yourself from. Yeah. And that's related to this question the, from the Adam Project. Uh, please speak to the chat about what we can do if we are in a situation like this personally. I'm not, but BTDT feel for both sides. What's, I mean, what's, that, that basically is probably maybe same answer or similar answer. <laughs> what's BTDT? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure okay. exactly. Yeah, so I'm not sure, so I don't know how to answer. Yeah. Um, been there, so, done that. Um, been there, been done there. that. I will. Oh. Okay. So, Your Honor, for reference, and I will provide a copy of the deposition, Ms. Hurd's deposition in the divorce. It's uh, page 372, lines starting at line 5 through 377, line 12. All right, thank you. Okay. Yes, yes. Dr. Tracy, could the use of magic mushrooms and MDMA change Amber Heard's symptomology and reactivity after prolonged use? Yeah, I think it would change any, anybody's, anybody's behavior after prolonged use, for sure. Your Honor, with permission, may we please Makes play? Sense. We just get to that page, make sure everybody's up, please. Oh, could you, could you say the page number again? Yes, please? absolutely. Sorry, Your Honor, I handed it to them. Page 372, <laughs> lines 5 to 377, line 1 is what I have. 12, that line right? 12. If we could have a moment, Your Honor, to read it before. Here's another question. Age described herself as not an angry person, but definitely seems so. I have SPD and would say I'm very angry, but nobody in my life would agree. Is it common for PDs to distort P, uh, uh, POV like this? Point of view, I guess. It can be. I mean, I can see it as I'm not an angry person. I'm a defensive person, but it's also kind of similar to like, oh, I pledged and then I donated. Mm. Yeah. You know, like mm. what's yeah. the definition of angry? And so yeah. if you change the definition, then you could say you're not. Yeah. 
Yeah. Mm. The words have meaning. Right. Yeah. Mm. Right. And then, yeah. and then 2012 Jameson. Yeah. 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 Uh, Dr. Right. Tracy, if do you think that if AH doctor testified after AH, she could undo some of the damage from Cross? It looks like Dr. Curry is spot on. I think that they'd just make her work. They'd make uh, Hughes work. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. I think so. I read some articles saying Depp might go back on the stand. Is that a possibility? Is that a thing? Is that going to happen? It could. It could. It could. Redirect. A rebuttal. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Uncivil's doing fine. He's just he's just getting some air. It's been a long day of streaming. <laughs> Sometimes you need to step away for a minute. Yeah, and he was he was on with me before all this started. So yeah. Thank you, Your Honor. If we can please have it published to the jury in the gallery. The next thing that I'm going to play to you uh, is Hugh. Would you listen to this, please? Oh, they're actually able to play it. Yeah, great. Uh, Finally. The buffet. You see the friends in this. the back? Let's do approach. Oh, Why'd she do that in the middle of the video? I mean, this is. Yeah. 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 Elaine's gonna yeah. try to stall for three hours. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we've got some more question dr tracy thoughts on likelihood of jd taking eight to ten tabs of ecstasy and being okay it's possible really okay yeah, it's possible wow i would have i would have thought that that's just an insane amount yeah <laughs> it is oh it absolutely is um but tolerance is a thing balancing out of substances is a, is a thing if it was mdma or ecstasy the ecstasy was laced with an upper and he was also drinking which is a depressant and that can level out and there's ways that there's wow. ways that people who have in essence unlimited amounts of substances learn how to intake as many of them as possible and and not die for example so and i, I come with this tone because it is actually really common in 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 hollywood and i've treated a lot of people wow backspace unbelievable um, and then also question Dr. T, um, how would combo of drugs Amber Heard takes RXT maybe react with yeah. BPD? I mean, because she's... I mean, she's it's going to affect drugs. her brain. It's going to affect Can we please uh, start it over? In many yeah. ways. Yeah. And that is the right move to start it over. Yep. Yep. Agreed. Camille Wright Move Vasquez. The next thing that I'm going to play to you uh, as Hugh. Would you listen to this, please? You want to hit the minimize button? Yes. Or they have to block out those, the transcript part? Is that what they agreed to? I guess, yeah. yeah. And that's fair. We can have the live transcripts up. So you told him in that 
uh, uh, excerpt that you hit him with the door, but did not intend to hit him, correct? Did you say that? I, I said whatever I said in that recording. I okay. don't, um, when you play it for me, it's hard for me to remember every single And that's a recording marked as exhibit the punch uh, Q. Was Q. Just Q. Would you continue to listen to exhibit Q? <clears throat> Are these from the same day? Uh, I, I reacted that this whole the door thing. I, I, I never did that. That was in purpose. I had done an accident. So nonchalant. Yeah. The food. The food during the deposition. Eating, snacking, casually, like very strange. Shifty eyes like crazy. Smiling. So different from her demeanor now in court. Very different. And this is the this is the real value of this. It doesn't really matter what she says, it's her demeanor. Yeah. And as time progresses, we become less emotional about things, not more. So it's weird that now in court, she's all like sobby and crying and broken. Whereas six years ago, she was this. She got her rolling her eyes. So on the tape, you tell Johnny Depp that you did mean to hit him. And it also misrepresents misrepresents that what actually happened, which is him trying to get into a room. I'm trying to keep him out of And then he runs the door over my toes, trying to get into the room. I try to push him out of it, which is what the hit is referred to. And Johnny, whenever he was injured or touched at all, was referred to it in these ways of punching or clocked or whatever. And whether you discussed it with him or not, the last thing you do in, in talking to him afterwards or trying to reconcile with him is to get into what the definition of those words mean to him. Never, I never even addressed it. He would, if he was ever pushed, it was, it was a quote. He called it a, a cold clock. I mean, it's just very dramatic. Isn't it him. true? <laughs> That's nasty. You're smiling as that audio recording is being played in your deposition, aren't you, Mr. Not smiling because of the audio. I'm smiling because of what's happening around me. You even roll your eyes at one point, don't you? I was sitting opposite a whole table full of lawyers who were snickering, laughing, and rolling their eyes at me while I was talking. Is there something amusing about kicking a door into your husband's head? No, I was rolling my eyes and commenting on what I was experiencing at that time in yeah. recounting the story. Is there something amusing to you about punching your husband in the jaw? Yeah. That is not what I was smiling about. And no, I do not think it's amusing. Oh, Camille. Mr. You testified yesterday that all you want to do is move on. Do you remember that testimony? Yes, I do. Yeah, and your exact words were, quote, I just want him to leave me alone. I want to move on with my life and he won't let me. Do you remember that? Yes, that is correct. But that's not true, is it, Ms. Hurd? It is very true. You just haven't been able to move on with your life, have you? From Mr. Depp. I'm here, aren't I? In fact, on October 11th, 2018, you actually commenced an arbitration action against Mr. Depp for defamation, didn't you? Oh. Um, I don't recall that, no. Your Honor, may I approach? May we approach? Ooh. Got some more questions here. I'm surprised they're allowed to use the video and audio from the previous deposition, but man, <laughs> it was I'm can because it's so brutal I love yeah. it. it's for the facial expressions that's it the words were basically the same i think that she can say your demeanor is totally different there than it was here and that and yeah. since witnesses can judge demeanor they can impeach her on that yeah i see i got demoted on the list no it was only because i didn't no, no, want I this know. to be I'm blocking just, people I'm just, at I'm the just bottom teasing. I'm just teasing. <laughs> uh Rorm, i can leave you come three, back nine. if you want to be a little bit higher no no no, no I'm, I'm i'm switching people around you're fine. <laughs> Just the um, contrast in demeanor is sure huge to me. Please read to yourself. Yeah. Yes. The first page of Exhibit Two One Nine. All right. Yeah, absolutely. 
I think my senses have just stopped completely at this point. <laughs> nice. I want that suit. I want it. <laughs> and if you can also read to yourself the second page of Exhibit 219. And if you can scroll down, Tom, Thank again, you, sort of just to oh, that's so sweet. look at that page. For objections, down to there's no the time against pages. either party. Gotten a couple questions on that. Oh, I didn't know that. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. This whole time limit thing is very new to me. <sighs> yeah. It's like a chess on game with page. the clocks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Folks are still concerned about Rick and Kurt being sad. How are you guys feeling? Uh, that I need 1,200 more subscribers. Well, that's what I'm saying. Uh, Hope you. Clearly oh, explain. Thank you guys. Get over to Hoag's channel and subscribe. Thank you very no, much. No, no, not my channel. Oh, no, that's great. That's lovely. No, no. We're at 198,800 subs for Alita. So 1,200 more and I'll be I'll be enlightening your life. But oh, I need 1,200 more. Oh, my gosh. Refresh your recollection. This I feel distressed. Fact, oh, in October of 2018, two months before you published the op-ed. Now I'm at 199. Case, it's the subject of this case. At least you initiated an arbitration against Mr. You guys are Depp for amazing. defamation. It's not my understanding I initiated an arbitration. I, it's my understanding that our lawyers sent a lawyer, I mean, a letter to his lawyers after he called me a liar again, effectively, in an interview. And that's two months before your op-ed that was published in December of 2018, right? That is correct. And that's six months before Mr. Depp filed a case this case against you, correct? That's correct. So you fired the first shot, not Mr. Depp. That's I disagree. Fine. We sent a letter. That's fine. In the first shot. Roberta, there was line hopping. That's what happened. It sucks. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Steve. Oh, yeah. Mr. Hurd, isn't it true that you once filled out a customs form falsely so that you could get the dogs? The dogs? Yeah. I, I, like I, she, at the, at the, she probably could. She probably could ask that, but it it, it wouldn't be a very impactful cross examination question. Yeah. Is this about the teacup Yorkies again? It sounds like she's about to get into it. That's yeah. what when 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 she talked about the dog in Australia stepping on a bee. Um, ben Chu lit up during um, direct, and there was something there that even now he's there's some he likes he's a little this animated. Topic. Yeah, he likes this topic for some reason. There's something about the dog that gets Ben Chu excited. He just loves doggos. You know, there's just something about him. Thinking about him. Oh, I'm like there has to be something there. He gets so perked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And he yes. did when he came up, when she said that, he mm. turned to John, he said something and he mouth blocked, like he really wants, there it is, that's the same mouth block. There's, he, he wants to yeah. say something. It's that exact same gesture. Here's what I want to say. Given my vast medical training, I've diagnosed Amber Heard with rabies and I think she has to be put down. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Mm, no, I think, uh, this is... Are you talking about the super chat? Were you about to react to it? I'm excited to see. I, oh, I hope... Jordy says that the UK courts are terrible. Somebody get me in touch with a UK lawyer. Yeah, no, I, I've been, I've been asking. I, I want, I want a UK, um, some kind of a, a, a UK lawyer to come in yeah. so that we can talk about the UK trial. Because I, I wouldn't say that UK courts in general are terrible. I don't have enough information I don't personally know. to be able to. Say I don't that. know. It's different. It's different to me. But if you, if you get there first, could you invite me on? If I get there first, I'll invite oh, you on. Yeah. Because yeah, I really 100%. think it's very fascinating. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, sidebars happening this often. Uh, well, 
kind of, yeah. sort of. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you've got you got a lot of a lot of conversations that have to happen outside the presence of the jury. Mm -hmm. And and either what you do is you either have this kind of a sidebar like this, or you excuse the jury um, for a period of time so you can discuss things in open court. Look at her, look at her staring at the jury. I know she looks away, but she was like staring at them cold for a while. There she goes back. This is definitely a lot from Elaine in the last half hour, but I think she's trying to gum up the works at minimum. Well, you know, and I think she's definitely changed with the speaking objections, which were just terrible. They were infuriating me earlier today. So at least mm -hmm. she's asking to approach. She's going to interrupt. That's just what she's going to do. But she has at least stopped the speaking objections. And I'm wondering if the judges admonished her and, and made her stop at this point. Mm. That's great advice, Deborah. Yeah. Congratulations, Norway. Yeah. A little better, Marie, or I'm Marie. Yeah, I'm glad that we've been able to. Uh, glad we've been able to entertain you. Sorry that you have the flu, though. I hope you feel better. Okay. Let's go. Here it is. Email me, Grixie. I saw that comment. Email me. Sir, you testified yesterday that when you left the courthouse after obtaining the domestic violence restraining order against Mr. Depp, you walked out to quote a sea of uh, paparazzi and cameras, right? You skipped That's the correct. dog question. You testified that you were surprised to see the sea it's of cameras. Allowed. That's correct. Because it was quiet when you went into the courthouse that morning. And the divorce had remained under the radar up to that point. You testified that no one knew about your divorce, so you thought it was going to stay that way, right? Mm -hmm. No, I always figured it would come out. I just trying to buy time. You knew the media had been alerted that you were filing for divorce, right, Ms. Heard? No, I just knew that it was impossible to do Not that privately. Idea. So you could just hope it was a matter of time. You, you knew they were going to be there, didn't you? No, I did not. I mean, I assume, I assume since it's a public building that there is that likelihood or not likelihood, but possibility. But um, I was, you know, I was, I was shocked. Your publicist, Jody Gottlieb, was there at the courthouse with you, wasn't she? Ooh. Yes, she was. So you anticipated that you might need your publicist? I thought the filing might make, um, well, I was told the filing was public, that it would be impossible. There's no way for you to do a, a, fi a private filing. And then the so second that I filed for the TRO, it would be public news. I didn't expect all these photographers and cameras to show up at the courthouse in real time, but they did. We could please uh, pull up plaintiff's exhibit uh, 1280, which is uh, a clip from a divorce deposition. And you have at uh, page, if I can alert you, you have the transcript there, page 74, lines 22. You said 74. 74. Line 22 through 75, line 13. We'll answer this question later, Lost Sandwich. I'm sorry, Chris. 72 line. 74, <laughs> line 22. Thank you, Nicholas. <laughs> 375, line 13. <laughs> I suspect the ACLU may want to drop her as a spokesperson after, you know, this PR. Otherwise, they might be passing around to a lot of people and getting pledges for donations and very few actual donations. Okay. They'll have to wait for a reasonable amount of time, and then I think so that they will break up. Do you yeah. guys think that? Yeah. Do you guys quietly do it? Do you think the question about the dogs was dropped because she has a perjury trial in Australia pertaining to that? So they can't. Is that no, what they happened? Can, they can they can ask about the facts of it. They can ask about these these different things if it's if it's re, if it's related to the case. If it's if it's relevant. So what happened? Um, objection they, brought it up and they approached and then they it, she came back and asked a different question yeah it's because they lost the objection they weren't allowed to ask it yeah um i don't know what the reason was for it that's what i'm saying yeah but, um prejudice. zen master wants to know from dr tracy is it possible prejudice. that if addicts quit they can sometimes die shortly after like that was the glue holding them together yeah, I mean, that's definitely possible. It can also happen if someone quits cold turkey, right? It can be a physical, actual reaction, but it can be wow. emotional too. A lot of the times substances are used to numb emotional pain. And not only that, but when you come off of long-term substance use, it causes emotional dysregulation in itself. 
So doubling down on the emotional upset can, can lead people to want to take their life. Definitely. Wow. Mm. Crazy. Thank you for that. I would not have been able to provide that kind of an answer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Like just like yeah. just die because you're not doing drugs. Yeah, oh, and Wendy's Cafe, we talked about this a minute ago. If we could please play and display to the jury Plaintiff's Exhibit 1280. Ms. Hurd, did you send a text message to Jerry Judge on May 24, 2016, telling Jerry Judge, quote, I'm desperately trying to reach Johnny. It's extremely important. Please tell him. I remember sending the text message that is in front of me right now to Jerry. Uh, and I would like, I remember sending this because I wanted to tell Johnny or have him told by Jerry or someone who knew him or was close to him. Basically, I didn't want him to find out online that I had or was about to file or I had already filed for divorce. I wanted him to know verbally. So I was trying to reach him through a third party to tell him. When I say reach, I'm specifically saying I would like him to know information coming from me or coming from Jerry for me so that he finds out about the divorce filing or my intention to do so from some other source other than TMZ, which was alerted. Hmm. You slipped up there, didn't you, Miss Heard? Weird. You let it slip out that TMZ had been alerted to your filing <gasps> of the domestic violence. Yeah, was oh. I disagree. That's not what I'm talking about. TMZ is the same oh, show yeah. that you released the video of Mr. Depp attacking the kitchen cabinets the day before the deposition <gasps> was taken. Oh, I didn't do that. I don't TMZ know how owns to do that. The copyright to that video now doesn't. It? Do what? I have oh. no idea what TMZ. Did they owns. pay you for that? Oh shit! I never got paid for it because I had nothing to do with that. So TMZ was just lucky in getting the inside scoop to your divorce from Mr. Depp, huh? Oh, I have no idea. It oh, is shit. Not, that's not my area of ex expertise. Oh. I wouldn't even know how to do that. No. I wouldn't even know how to and do also, that. And also, what does that get me? If I wanted to leak things about Johnny, Look at I could you, have done that in a much more successful way, in a bigger way. Let her for battle. years. Not for when years. you were extorting him for $7 million. Oh. I had a fraction of what I was entitled oh, to in the state God. of California, by the way. What extortion? Tossa Van Ree is your ex-wife, right? <gasps> That's right. There she goes. Ruined her. She's the one that told, that you told this jury Mr. Depp was jealous of, right? And opened the door. That's yeah, well, that, that was uh, 2013 fights uh, around March, yes. You testified that he tried to burn one of her paintings, right? That's correct. You testified he tried to burn um, one of your favorite paintings that she did, right? I don't know if it was one of my favorites. <laughs> You committed domestic violence against Miss Van Ree during your relationship, didn't you? Yes. No, I did not. You assaulted her at a Seattle airport in 2009, didn't you? No, I did not. And people wow. saw that. That's not true. And it was covered in the press. Isn't that true? It was, a, it was planted in the press by Johnny's team two days oh. after I got the TRO. Uh, not coincidentally. Can you please pull up plaintiff's exhibit 1279? Oh Get her. Get her. Yeah. Did she say it, it doesn't make the press until 2016? Lying liar who lies. Here we go. She sits on a throne of lies. This is what that <laughs> this sidebar. This is very elf. Oh, uh, that lengthy sidebar before Cross started? Yeah. yeah. I think that's, I think that's they knew what this was. was. Yeah. I think they that's lost that objection. It was. Yeah, I think they did. Mm -hmm. Major oh, well, we saw Elaine's face afterwards. She definitely lost. And Ben Chu was winking at his team. He gave him a couple of uh, really good points. We could please have that article displayed for the witness. Oh, yeah. This is an article from two years ago. Correct, Ms. Heard? I don't know when this May was. May of 2020. Man, they're crapping. That's not when it came out, no. This story started getting planted in, after I got a TRO, after I got a restraining order against Johnny. So the Still news though. The headline says Amber Heard Objection, allegedly Your struck. Objection, Your Honor. I, I don't think Your Honor ruled she can't say that. If you approach it. Whoa. 
approach, oh, approach, yeah, approach. Well, approach. Oh, did you see that little smirk that Amber just threw? Mm-hmm. Your honor ruled that she can't say She's that. Lying. Yeah. She's lying. Is she trying to get to the police report through the article? That would be great. It's yeah. funny how Kurt earlier said that, like, Camille makes him feel inadequate as a lawyer. And, like, Amber Tyler makes Amber Heard feel allegedly grabbed, useless. struck her ex girlfriend at the airport. Oh, she won that one too. Camille won. There it is. Yep. Yes. And that's not true. May we approach you for defamation? Okay. Let's go back to the sidebar. This is going interestingly. Um, I wonder if, if, this, if the source they cite in that article is the police report. Ask them, did you sue them for defamation? No? Yeah. Why not? Ooh. Yeah. Johnny for well, defamation. Oh, that's a great question. I mean, they're also ostensibly using this for damages for the counterclaim, right? Like we saw them establishing there's a whole bunch of other things going on besides the Waldman testimony. So that's the other way that this is getting in. Core TV, move faster. I want to see the sidebar. No. <laughs> Let's see the animation of the, oh, the hand somebody, gestures and stuff. There's that shaking hair. Yeah, <sighs> she's mad. Oh, oh she's so oh, she's animated. Look at that. She's arguing with the judge. Oh, yeah. you're arguing. She does this oh, interesting. Oh, oh and that's ask that, that. By the way, if you don't know ask karate, that's her frustrated when she does the head shake thing. Yeah. So the article, the title is Amber Heard allegedly struck her ex girlfriend. Already... Oh, boom, boom, oh, oh, three in a row. Thank you. If I may start over. Oh, Amber oh. Heard allegedly struck her ex-girlfriend Tossa Van Rie at the airport in 2009. Did I read that right? Yes. This is another example of the smear campaign. For sure. So Mr. Depp is not the only domestic partner you've assaulted, is he, Ms. Heard? I've never assaulted Mr. Depp or anyone else that I've been romantically linked to, ever. Okay. No further questions, Your Honor. All right. No Whoa. further questions. I'm sorry, oh. Wow. 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 Van Rie come out. After that article came in to make a public statement, it was false. Of course. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. Your Honor, I should be at least be overruled. Thank you. Of course she did. Okay. Now, let's talk about the TMZ alerted. Explain to the jury what you meant by the TMZ was alerted. Uh, so when you make these kind of filings, meaning divorce, uh, marriage, things like that, they are public record. And so when we file for divorce, when I file for divorce, I ask my team to file in the most discreet way, literally to put it under a stack of papers and file it at the end of day. So kind of had more of a shot of being missed by the paparazzi and by TMZ and those sorts of publicity outlets. I believe that we had been remarkably lucky following the divorce that it wasn't picked up and that it gave me a, a precious few days um, of, of, of peace at that really fragile time. When I found out that they were going to run the story or that they had the information, I was trying to get a hold of Johnny to clarify that I did not do this in a punitive way. I didn't want him to be mad at me. I didn't, you know, I didn't want him to find out in that sort of context online. And who had connections to TMZ? Objection calls for speculation. Uh, do you know? I do know. Johnny and I spoke about it. Your Honor, it. calls for speculation. The objection. Did Mr. Depp tell you about who had connections with, Ms. with TMZ? Yes, we talked about it. His lawyer, Laura Wasser. Okay. Now, I'm going to start at the very beginning here. Um, you were asked by Ms. Vasquez about why Mr. Depp won't or can't look you in the eye. And she read out, or she played a tape in which Mr. Depp said, you will not see my eyes again. Do you recall that? Ah, Did she do that voice? was during yeah. the yeah. process. Johnny's amused. Correct? That was Objection the leading. First one. Sustained. Okay. Leading. When was this? That was in July of 2016. That was the first mediation attempt. Mm -hmm. We met after that, and Johnny very much looked me in the eye. Please tell the jury about the next meeting after he said, you will not see my eyes again. We met in the lawyer's office. They gave us a moment. Johnny kissed me again, held me. I cried, he cried. And then we had a short exchange and he put a note in my pocket that said, I'll love you dead or alive, my Slim, with his new phone number on it. I'd like to bring up, Michelle, if you can, Defendant's Exhibit 1. 
L. Is it that note? Alita, Elaine needs impression lessons from you. <laughs> well, I could do an Elaine impression. <laughs> Can't wait to hear it. Did you see any amica cream on that article? <laughs> do you recognize this? Sorry. Abstraction, Your Honor. Can we approach? I'm sorry. I don't know if that's petty. It's probably petty. It's, uh, I'm terrible. I'm a horrible person. Oh, but I, I got to tell you, I, I got to tell you, that impression of Johnny in that context from an officer of the court was bullshit. Yeah, no, that Ridiculous. is. It makes me feel a little bit better about doing an impression of her. Ridiculous the way she. Like, and it even like she was like, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, do that yeah, in, in open court. Yeah. How is that rehabilitating your witness that is being accused of being mean and vindictive to Johnny Depp? What are you doing, right. Elaine? Right. Well, and the other thing, you're not, you're supposed to be there just asking questions and so forth in this questioning period. Like just doing a mocking voice? That's not yeah, working. Yeah. That's not anything. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. some of those people believe that he is a victim of abuse. I was included. just gonna say you and are just what alienating you're doing those people. You're mocking the victim and you are you are making those people mad. So good luck um, with real, your jury. Good, good call. Real quick announcement. Exactly. Alita, you're at one nine nine three nine two. So just a couple more what people. The Can we subscribe? Was that he slipped into oh my your gosh. pocket. What it said. Thank you. He said, I love you forever, my slim, dead or alive. And what, if anything, did it have in addition? His new phone number. And, and to be, just so we're clear, on how many occasions in that second mediation did Mr. Depp look you in the eye? Um, DUI guy. Many. Okay. And what a waste of time. When Ms. Vasquez asked Camille you just made if you yeah. knew why well, Mr. Yeah, Depp look me in the eye wouldn't thing. look no you in the eye here or in the UK, you said, yes, you know. Why? So Please tell the about. jury why. <clears throat> because he's guilty. He's, he's, he knows he's lying. Wow. Otherwise, why can't he look at me? He, I survived. Sure. Yeah, I survived that man, and I'm here, and I'm able to look at him. <laughs> okay. Wow. Yep. You well, were asked I mean, about a bruise that was on your arm uh, from March 15, 2013. Do you recall how long before the picture you had sustained that bruise? I do. How long? Two weeks. You were asked a number of times by Ms. Vasquez if you took pictures from your incidents earlier in the relationship. Yes. Why didn't you? It was something I started doing only kind of incidentally. You know, I was commenting to my best friend. I was looking for support from my mom, things like that. I, you know, there, there was, I'm ashamed to say, never a thought that, that this would happen. I mean, not until December and my best friend taking pictures of me to capture it. Did that even... That wasn't even a thing. I don't even care what she has to it say It has anymore. been suggested by Ms. Vasquez to you in your questions that you didn't tell anyone about the abuse until the TRO. Is that true? Objection, Your Honor. Leading. All right. What if any... All right. <laughs> Who did you tell about she, the abuse what during the time it was happening? Objection, Your Honor. Leading. That's not offered to... It's, and it's, hearsay. It's, Sustained. Your Honor, it's prior it's consistent statement. It's leading. Stop. It's sustained. Next question. Okay. <clears throat> misleading. Sustained. What if anything? You got the judge saying it's misleading. About the abuse. Objection, Your Honor. Is... Hearsay. Sustained. Your Honor, Your Honor, may I approach yeah. That's fine. I think you should, Elaine. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe, maybe you should. Brutal. It's a long time. You know, I would love to compare the number of times she said, I don't remember and I don't recall to Camille versus saying it to her own. To, to Elaine, all of a sudden her memory is restored. That happens that all the time. That works great in closing. Yeah, that works great in closing. People hate that. Yeah. So, well, um, <laughs> yeah, Rick, go ahead. Go ahead. In case we all forgot what Elaine uh, doing questioning sounds like because Camille got much fewer objections, that's been quite the opening 10 minutes for uh, Miss Britta Hoff. Um, I continue to dislike her approach. Me too. Hundred uh, percent. Not a fan. So you know, we'll we'll see. I 
it's going to be so hard to rehabilitate Amber Heard. But she's not working on rehabilitating nope. on the things that matter. She's rehabilitating no. on whether or not he's looking yeah. you in the eye, which yeah, is no, a if you're, for the media, not the jury. Well, and yeah. if you think four-dimensional chess, I mean, it, it, you could have planned it out where Camille puts out this pointless, dramatic opening, and they're, they're spending 15 minutes on this. It doesn't matter at all. It doesn't matter at all. They, they made it matter just now. Yeah. Remember how earlier I said that, you know, a, a redirect, when you have a lot that comes out in cross-examination that's really damaging, you can't clean up everything on redirect. Like, nope. you have to be very judicious yeah. about what it is that that you are trying to clean up because otherwise you're signaling to the jury just how bad that cross-examination was yeah. for your client. Yeah. You're so, it in. Well, and the other she, thing is she's, you have she's scrambling on all of this stuff that doesn't matter. And right. it makes it look like she's trying to clean up the little stuff when there's a lot of big stuff. And it's like, ugh, you got like, and it's not working. She's not doing this right. It. There's no way they can remember half of the things that she was impeached on. Yeah. She's making them remember it. Yeah. The longer she takes, the more she reminds them there's more to defend. This is one of the real dangers of a redirect is that you basically point out all the places that you think you're vulnerable. And this yep. wasn't one Mr. of them to go after. How Nobody many cares. people have you shared the fact of abuse prior to 2015? Objection, Your Honor. Leading. How Calls for hearsay. How many? Overruled. How many people? Assumes, was there going to yeah, be a the judge has to let them ask this in some fashion? And Elaine can't get around it herself. I think roughly about heard. ten. Can you name them? Yes. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. Uh, she, I think she can. It's not offered. It's just showed that she had that she informed people before. They're suggesting. Objection, Your Honor. Can we approach? Sorry. This is again inappropriate. Inappropriate. It's again, inappropriate. Get her. Again, Elaine is triggered. And Elaine is emotional. Elaine's voice is shaking. Well, she, she keeps My doing God. this. She's putting her objection oh in front of the yes. jury. Yes. And she shouldn't be. Well, she wants to use the fact that she told people as bolstering of her case, yeah. which is a form of hearsay that Camille is objecting to, mm -hmm. even Comfort. if she doesn't have to tell what she said. Yeah. And uh, here's another question for Dr. Tracy. Sorry if I missed the answer. Question, can, uh, can uh, prolonged use of psychedelics now, like MDMA or magic mushrooms change someone with PPD symptomology? Um, whether yes, you had consulted you a medical doctor about any oh, problems Elaine just stopped. with nose, correct? That's correct. And Move you indicated that you, in one. fact, had after yeah. the divorce, Section correct? Section leading. I, I, did, did, you, did you or did you not consult uh, a, a, a e ENT after the divorce. Objection leading. Uh, the definition of leading. Did you produce medical records to leading. the defendants relating to this? Objection leading. Right. I'll sustain the objection. Thank you. And, and next question. Your Honor, if we could, right. yeah, the witness could be instructed not to answer until I right. lodge my objection. Wait, wait, wait. Can we bring up defendants exhibit 1077? Yes. Another smirk. God, man. Get it, Camille. My, my screen is black. Camille is taking control of the situation hard. Mm -hmm. yes, I, I really do. hate to say this because of the allegations, but That's could you the, find someone uh, with a more punchable face right now? My ENT, the ears, nose, and throat doctor um, told me oh. was Objection, my, Your Honor. Here's the damage. All right. I'll, when there's objection, please stop talking. Thank you. All right. I'll sustain the objection. Yeah, as stop talking. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm... Uh, What Did Elaine hit buffer mode? You were asked if you had, it, it was suggested that you had not produced this in discovery. Is that true? Objection, Your Honor, leading. Your Honor, she, and, she absolutely so did it's, that. It's leading. It is leading question. And, 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 Thank you, Your Honor. Right, right in but front of the jury. Thing, did you to right produce the jury, yeah. medical records to the defendant, to the uh, plaintiff in this case? I turned over all of my devices and they had a, um, the, Johnny's team had a third party or someone they selected as a third party go and pull all relevant documents from those devices, which I handed over. Do you know how many you handed over? I, I, no, hundreds of thousands, I believe. Maybe, maybe. Objection, Your Honor. Lack of foundation. Okay. All right. I'll sustain the objection. Next nice. Question. 
And the research you, team just what, that if way. any, kind of did cafe. you produce you. to the plaintiff in connection with your consultation with an ENT specialist relating to your nose? Objection, leading, what, I foundation, said, what anything, hearsay. What, she's already sustained. What maybe. It's not the cure off. It's just, just throw out just all the, the objections. This what? is what? just did you, everything. Did you, just hear, did you hear Judge Eskarate? She goes, what no, what anything? Said, it's not the cure all. Yeah. When did you see an ENT specialist? Ooh, she's done with it, maybe. 2017 uh, or 2016 or 17. And as a result of that consultation, what did you learn about your nose? Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Objection, hearsay. I'm not asking her to tell what you're Eating, too. Yes, she is. Foundation. Thank what you. Try again. Nose straight up All the day. objections. You can't ask a question. Look at her. She never Look could. At her. The judge is getting tired of it. She's done. Oh, like, yeah. She's fed up. What if any the judge is over it? did you make to the plaintiffs of your medical records objection. with the ENT? Objection, objection Your Honor. Lady. Lack of foundation. Look at Ben, too. No, that won't Shake work. Shake his head. If you only have foundation. One. Do you know yeah, should have been whether the records, medical records, uh, from your EMT were produced in discovery. Objection, in Your Honor. Lack of foundation calls for speculation. And leading, she knows. I'm overruled if she knows. It's leading. Sure. Yes. Don't let her ask anything. <laughs> and tell her to sit down. Do Is that a rule? Do you recall? Yeah. You're done. I'm trying. I'm trying. Well, this is I'm your fault. Try harder. Yeah, I'm, try harder honey. I'm so sorry. If anything. <laughs> Did the medical records reflect about your nose? Objection, Your Honor, oh, hearsay. hearsay. And hearsay. The lawyer next to Camille. Do you have the medical records? Do you the have lawyer them? next to Camille to is nose. concealing excitement. Yes. Please describe those to the jury. Th there that's you go. it. I have um, I'm gonna a bunch of scar to the, tissue. I'm going to object to the extent it calls for hearsay and lack of foundation. Oh, over oh, 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 you know. An improper expert told. opinion. There you yeah. go. There that's you go. the one. Please. She can certainly Good job, girl. To... We'll, we'll see where it goes. Go ahead. Okay. We'll see I'm in where a better mood now. But you tee it up for the judge. I have um, a significant amount of scar tissue in my nose. Objection, Your Honor. That's, that's, no, that's scar lack tissue. Of pit, lack of She's expertise. Staying. She's staying. What if any difficulty do you have breathing? Objection, leading. So leading. What, what if anything? And that leading. does cure oh, on that. Oh, my God. Blame. I'll overrule the objection. Thank you. Ah, oh, she overruled it. I have a significant amount of trouble breathing at night, and I... I've been putting off having surgery for it. You know what else does that? Coke. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Coming from the criminal defense attorney here. About December 15, 2015. And Ms. Vasquez suggested that you did not report the abuse or the injuries. Elaine is showing you question. Objection, Your Honor. Leading. Yes. Yes. I'm entitled to go into what Ms. Vasquez no, asked. Is objection is leading. Vasquez, I'll sustain the objection. Is anyone else getting no, you're not. She's she's Vasquez. Vasquez. You're not. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Report. It's Ken. It's it's Loki, right? Yes. What Vasquez. if anything did you report to Aaron Filotti about the abuse you sustained on 12 15 2015? Objection That's leading and yeah. hearsay. <laughs> What did you report? Yeah. Oh my you know what? God! It's funny. If she, had, if she had question. stopped, it's because Elaine, Elaine, I don't know how yeah. to ask the question. You're, it's because if Elaine she, doesn't trust Amber Heard to stay within the rails. Yeah. yeah. If she had stopped and said, right. "What if? What did you report to blank and blank?" That's not leading. But, but if that's when you Rob. Say, what did you report about? Rob, this is yes. a complete yes, breakdown yes, yes. of this relationship between yeah. the lawyer and the witness. Yes. She does not trust Zero Amber Heard, right? so she's Zero trying trust. to get her as far as possible to the water that she needs to drink from. And that's why you're seeing this, because Elaine's oh, gone yeah. down the road of just leaving her with a narrative answer, and Amber Heard goes off to the moon. She doesn't yeah. trust her own client. You're so right. She doesn't trust and, her. And she doesn't wow. hang, on, let me, hang on, let me narrate yep. this. Let me narrate the sidebar. Judge, I'm okay. trying to get this introduced. What question? How do I phrase the question? Look at this document. I need to get it introduced. How do I phrase the question in order that you're not going to say it's leading? I'm trying not to lead the witness, but I keep saying, what if anything? Is there something better I should do? <laughs> yeah, what are the right words? I can't do your job for you, counsel. Thank you. Counsel, <laughs> at your big, big age, I cannot do your job for you. <laughs> I said, what if anything? And that, she, did you hear her say, that does cure hearsay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. not, well, she, that she is 
she, she didn't did enable this entire trial with the what if anything that does yeah. not cure hearsay. It no, that's not what I read the rules that's, of evidence. I read it as a hearsay leading, right? exception, the what if anything <laughs> exception. What if anything is supposed to cure her leading, right? That's what right. she's also using. last time. Last time I tried to win an argument in front of a judge, the last thing I did was try the whole like, you are wrong. Don't yeah. you're not gonna win. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. The judge actually saying in front of the jury, well, that is leading. Yeah. He's <laughs> yeah. quite, he's quite Plus something. Her client sucks. Maybe, and this really may not be Elaine's that. problem. It's probably the client's problem. It. She can't uh, trust her to get well, the right answer. Uh, her client sucks. Yeah. It might uh, be Elaine's problem, but I'm just I'm, I'm, showing yeah, a little mercy. I think it's a combination of two. I think it's a combination of the two, honestly. I am sure Elaine yeah. could be doing this better, but I think it's a foundational lack of trust with her witness. Yeah. Yeah. I, no, I, I think agree. You're right. Here's the thing Elaine's been at this for a long time. I don't think she's a bad lawyer. And there are lots of moments where we see Elaine's work and she does really good work. She's just trying to make, you know, make bricks out of grumpies. It's, <laughs> That's the thing you can do, I think. Anything to work with. And, I like a grumpy. Yeah. Like if your client is this bad, this is all she can. I mean, all she can the do. The worst, one of the worst things though is the frustrating part for me is that the jury's right there, but we can't see how the jury's responding to these objections and the arguments I over know. them. Yeah. These types of object objections and the aggressive nature of the objections can be very off-putting to a jury, yep. where they can yeah, see as they can see him as an attack, or they can see him as aggressive, or like you're trying to hide something. Or like I don't think yes, they can, but I think I think Vasquez is getting away with it. Well, Camille looked very condescending, especially in that second half. But I think she probably, I, in my opinion, it feels like she earned it. Uh, yeah. But yeah. like she was, she had a, in, she in had other a ramp context, up to that moment. She was very dismissive while she's giving those sighing objections. Well, and I think I, it, it, it might have been coming across in the best case scenario as I'm tired of having to do this now. Yeah. You know, I don't want to have to do this, but you're just going overboard at this point There's in time. Absolutely. And then the judge getting frustrated, I think, would help the jury to pick it up that way. Absolutely. And so many sustains, so, right? What am I yeah. supposed to do as a lawyer? Like, I, I don't want to have to throw the flag on every play here. Nobody's here for that. But this is what's happening. So look at it. Look at Amber. What, what she's doing right now is what she did yesterday during th that I found very off-putting. During these sidebars, she glances over and looks at the jury. It's a yeah. really weird thing. Like she actually makes eye contact with individual jurors when she's not speaking about anything, when she's not doing anything like that right there. Well, she's the looking at specific jurors. Earlier, yeah. And the it's jurors really were uncomfortable. avoiding her eye contact. So there were jurors who were paying attention to her and then she'd do that and look over and they'd look down. Interesting. Oh. Well, not it's sure. Weird. <laughs> it's and I'm betting she also shot a look at DUI guy in there. Um, wow! Look how look how many people are smiling in the audience. <laughs> hey, Larry, oh, wave at us. <laughs> There's DUI there guy and James. There he is. Wrong time to pick your teeth, dude. Uh, he doesn't know. Poor guy. He doesn't know. <laughs> Poor guy. DUI guy is like, can I just ask these stupid questions? Like, can you please just sit down? Like, yeah. I'll help. I'm licensed. Let me pitch it. <laughs> pitch it. <laughs> I'm available. I'll help. I got your back, Elaine. <laughs> Which one of these a holes in the courtroom are the reason I'm not in there? People right are now? laughing. Like, it's it's a pleasant vibe in the in the in the audience. Well, yeah, I will if be honest. In so terms of go ahead. Elaine not being up there, and and regardless of how it is or why it is or whether she's good at her job or whatever. I think she tends to be competent, but you could feel like she just didn't know how to save that at all. And yeah. I, I do have I do have empathy for like you could see her melting. Yeah. Well, but I mean part of this too is is that she had to know that there was a chance that that the Tosta Van Re questions would come up. And so, you know, of course she didn't have a break to come in to to plan for for what her questions were going to be coming into redirect and she just kind of like flew right in and started asking questions like right away. Um, but this also kind of goes into trial preparation in general. Like, yeah. you know, you, you've got to be kind of have to be prepared for all kinds of contingencies, right? Yeah. Or, or, yeah. Am I, or am I being too issue. harsh on her? Look at the uh, difference in the ending or the early ending though. Camille Vasquez, she got handed two hours of time and mm -hmm. she made gold out of it. She just yes. went out. Did you yeah. tell oh, Nurse Falati on 12-16-2015 okay. about the injuries you sustained 
from the 12, 15, 2000. Wow, that's leading three different yeah. ways. Wow. I did. I believe I sent her pictures too. Really? Um, I think they just agreed to allow that one. That one. Text with Nurse Filati on 12, 16, 2015 about the injuries that you had suffered as a result of Mr. Depp's attack on you on 12, 15. Yes, yes, she guided me through a concussion check. Bleeding as hell. So bleeding. And did you tell Connell Cowan about Call. the injuries you sustained? Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. Yes. It's prior consistent statements. Did, that's not well, the exception. Did she just say it's, it's prior, prior inconsistent statement, statement moron. Yeah. She did, did she just say it's a prior That's literally what you're saying. Call Dr. Laura Holy shit. find that she saw <laughs> two black eyes. Objection, Your Honor, leading. I'm sorry, I was she defending her leading. earlier. I feel Holy bad about that. Shit. What, if anything, do you recall from Laurel Anderson's testimony in this case about what she observed will be. on 12-17-2015? <laughs> Objection, Your Honor. This is outside the scope of cross examination. Nice. Prior consistent statement. Oh, that's not the right answer. That's not the right answer. Sustain the objection. Christ. Next question. Prior yeah. consistent statement. Yeah. Shut hearsay. up and sit down. Yes. 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 Yes.
Can you <laughs> tell the jury what the context of that particular tape recording was? Why are you? I would call it a jackal. Really recall a whole lot about what was going on. I know we had been fighting kind of ad nauseum and in this sort of loop, if you will. And I'm doing my best to um, not show my pain. That's what I was trying to do. Just trying to be tough. You only show your pain. Trying to be tough. I don't believe you. Nope. Now, Ms. Vasquez asked you about how you got your role in Guys, Aquaman. if there's a lag, Could just you refresh to the your page. And how you got your solve role it. Yes. in Aquaman. Speaking of refreshing and leading I you auditioned. Refresh your number soon. Not Johnny. I auditioned. I worked really hard and I went to where we were filming the, the first movie, Justice League. I went, I think, five or five and a half months early before filming commenced when I heard that they wanted to fire me. And so I put myself in the job. Objection, gym. Your Honor, hearsay. Yep. Keep they it away with really hard. Hard. <laughs> I worked really hard on that and Why your had to prove so myself. Suck? And I did that for, even though I was only filming for Who six days, I was coach? there for six months. Okay. Just worked my butt off. That's what if why. You're not a good actor? What if any role did Mr. Depp play in your getting Aquaman? He tried to have me fired from it. Objection, Your Honor. Speculation. speculation. All right, I'll sustain yep. his speculation. There How do you know that he tried to have you fired? Objection, Your Honor. <laughs> the foundation okay. is on speculation. speculation and foundation, speculation. Lots of foundation. foundation. There you go. I'm trying to lay a foundation. All right, if you lay yeah, foundation. but you didn't get there. I saw it. I saw the emails. I saw the text. I'll sustain okay, objection. Okay, that's say. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. Give it a you shot. Your foundation about strike Isaac it. Baruch and strike that. Isaac and, and that he saw no marks. What is your recollection of your interaction with Isaac Baruch during the week of May 22nd? I saw Isaac when I was coming or going, meaning I was leaving or arriving to the building. I saw him at a distance. We did not have a, a in-depth conversation, nor would we. Um, and I told him actually right after it happened what his friend Objection, had done. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Yep. Mm. I, I don't think it's offered to prove the truth of the matter. It's so, definitely offered for um, some. Why else are you trying to say it? Stay away from what was said. Can you just tell us what, what interaction you had with him and, and his opportunity to observe you, you with absolutely no makeup? Objection, Your Honor, leading. leading. Sustain the objections, leading. Please describe wow. for the jury your interaction with Isaac Baruch during the week of May 22nd. There you well, go. Not only did I have makeup on, there you but go. I, I did describe. attempt to kind of that's perfect. Let him know what happened. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. But you <laughs> you can't were asked some what questions said. about Officer Melissa Science's testimony. What, if anything, do you recall relating to Officer Melissa Science's testimony? Alita, can you pull up your live subscriber your count? Injuries. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. Your Honor said I could screen. redirect after the cross examination. Where am I at? You have to do it properly. You can redirect. You just have to right, do just, direct. Right. You have to ask non-leading questions. Who, what, when, where, yeah. why. You, you can't suggest the answer. The witness. Absolutely. You know what? Do I you forget that. the rules of direct? I'm going to ask that my client be declared a verse. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, you know, I'm half tempted. As the judge, I'd be Ms. like, Heard, no, how no. many times did you Oops. confirm what you said previously to someone else? Yeah, folks. At the uh, at this sidebar, we don't have Alita's back end statistics, but publicly we can see she's twenty one subscribers short of two hundred thousand. So close. So I think I think we're going to oh celebrate goodness. in the next twenty seconds. I feel oh like my god! Uh, liver problems just because of the amount of champagne she's had to be drinking over this. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you guys are too kind. Way too kind. Not me, um, subscribers. Oh, they're, they're the ones liking what you're putting out. Oh, my gosh. Well, Does you guys are, are having a lot to do with that as well. The fact that I have so many great people coming onto this panel to talk about this stuff has also been very, very helpful for that. I could not have done this by myself for sure. Um, but and thank you for also inviting me. There we go. 200, they say. <laughs> what, if anything, do you recall of Officer Says Science's testimony in this case relating to your injuries and the property yeah, I see 996, but yep. 997. I recall her saying that she didn't feel that my 
the state I was in um, was oh, enough of an injury to her, or wasn't injury like seeming to her. It just took a hundred people off. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, and what about the property, property damage? Just she thought. claims she did not see any property damage, but I walked with her over broken glass. So I i don't know why so she's saying that. Where's the cuff in your feet? What, if any, interactions did you have with Alejandro Romero during the week of May 22? I spoke to him briefly. Objection, Your Honor, to the extent it calls for hearsay. Uh, overruled at this point. You spoke to him. I, I just, I spoke to him briefly in passing as I was entering, maybe when, when I was exiting the building. But always when I was on my way out or in from being outside, meaning makeup. I had makeup on always, as I do. Why did James why did James Franco visit you on the evening of 522 2016? Thank you, Wendy's Cafe. Objection very, calls for speculation. You, thank Do you. you know? Yes. Please tell us. What's he the was my of friend knowledge? and he lived next door, quite literally next door. And I had frankly exhausted my support network with my usual friends and was happy to welcome as much friendship at that time as I could possibly get. Tired of your Where did you welcome now, him? The video showed uh, him laying his head on your shoulder. Can you describe for the jury what the interaction was without saying what was said, what the interaction was that led to that? He, uh, after seeing my face, put his Objection head Honor, on my calls shoulder. calls for speculation. That doesn't No, she's describing what she saw. She That's fine. He sees her. He, he touched no. the side of my I'll face, too. The objection. And, and really? Okay, again, Your Honor, if we can instruct the witness. If to you could wait till after the objection, please. All right. Next what question, 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 what did Mr. One. Franco do? Uh, on the elevator before laying his head on your shoulder. He kind of touched the side of my face and responded to what he saw. So surely he'll testify on your behalf. Yeah, right. We talked about the, uh, you were shown a Laura bunch Smart, of thank uh, you. newspaper very, very generous headlines, thank you. and there was one in particular referring to sexual violence uh, what, if anything, did Mr. Waldman do to you relating to that article? Objection, Your Honor. What did he do to you? Lack of foundation calls for speculation. Ambiguous? <laughs> what did he do to her? Unintelligible? I, I, I don't understand. <laughs> no! <laughs> yeah, Camille. Uh, he was carrying the paper that had that headline on it that he leaked and threw it at me at the UK trial. We were unfortunately sat kind of actually literally next to one another with COVID spacing in between us. And he threw the paper down at me as he sat down with that on the cover. And where was that? In the UK at the UK trial. Objection, Your Honor. This is beyond the scope. That's not beyond the no, scope. Overruled. Yeah, this Thank is well beyond the scope. Overruled. Why did you tweet about the makeup and Mr. Waldman? Because he was calling me a liar and a hoaxer and that this was an elaborate hoax just to get Johnny. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. Yep. There you Sustain go. The objection. Next question. Wow. Next question. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> that was great. I don't have any more questions, Your Honor. Right. We're done. Yeah, we can. Oh, we that's it. Next You're done on redirect? Oh. You're done. What? Oh, no. Oh, no. She gave up. Questions. That was up. terrible. Look at look at Camille. Look at this. She just threw a little smile up. Yeah. Uh, Camille, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take our afternoon recess then for 15 minutes. <laughs> not discuss the recess. case with anybody and don't do any outside research. Okay. Wow. Oh my God. Is that it? Is well, redirect my done? Mood is picked right up. Redirect is finished. And it's a sunny go. day here. Ooh. Ooh. Is stepping out. She is. Settle to her attorneys and walk out the building. Uh, Are I'm we at sorry, can you yet? Oh. I can't believe this. I cannot yeah. believe. Then that was it. Right. Yeah, no, I there was so much more that is they your needed. next witness a live witness, remote witness, or deposition? Deposition. All right, so we'll get the TV set up. Oh, for we can that. Into the video land. at 3 30, okay? All right. Uh, so only people who want to line jump. Later. Are we at 200,000 subscribers yet? Alita yes. wow. is a 200,000 subscription Ooh! channel. This is crazy. <laughs> and in, in honor of 200,000, Elaine helps you with a mic drop moment to celebrate. I know. I still have Throw my clappers from 100,000. That was one for you. 
Oh man. Ah, oh, thank you guys. Thank you. But you know what? I, 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 I'm very serious that I could not have, have reached this number by myself. Like the fact that I have so many great people that are coming onto the panel, um, and helping out and giving their commentary is just so incredibly helpful. Um, so guys, I, I thank you so much. I love everyone for, for subscribing, for watching, for liking the video. You know, it helps to get this in front of all the people out on YouTube. Um, and, um, and I hope I'm capturing all of these super chats because I know that the chat is just flying, flying right now. Um, yeah. So, um, and, but please do go into the description below and subscribe to everyone, everyone, everyone that has been lending their brain and their voice um, to this channel because it, it really, seriously, I could not have done it without all of these wonderful, wonderful people. So, Oh yeah, no, I'm done hyping you. I'm hyping myself now from now yes. on. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Let's do it. I mean, we, we've got to hype everybody else. I, I want, I want everybody else to get to a hundred thousand <laughs> and beyond note, and 200,000 and 300,000. Let's do it. On that note, I need to rewatch all of the cross for my video that I'm filming tomorrow. And there's only okay. so much I can take of this trial. I need a break. I just need to go like, be happy for an hour, you know. Yep, so yeah. I hear that. <laughs> love you all. It's been an honor, uh, Dr. Tracy. So freaking great to get your perspective on this. Yes, and, and all the rest of you as well. Always, always a pleasure. Good luck. Uh, I'll, I'll catch you guys later. Thank you. Yes. See you, Spidey. Goodbye. Thank you. Yeah. I just like how she didn't want to talk to her lawyers at all. She just right out it. the door. Because usually yeah. after that you want to go and say like, hey, you know, how, thanks, you know, especially when you've just had a redirect. You want to be going, you know, I felt like that helped, you know, that she was just like, I'm, I'm super upset. I'm and that, that relationship. I thought those rumors were BS when you were guys no, talking about it earlier today. It is shattered. Yeah. That relationship they're, is shattered. Rob yes. and I both noticed it uh, when we were there. There were some times when there were glances shot between the two. It was pretty clear that there's some tension. I can't, Can I, you tell I, me like what it is that you observed and why? So, like, Elaine would ask a question, and what was happening quite often is there'd be an objection as to hearsay or something along those lines, and it'd be sustained, so Elaine would then come back and be like, so, um, and Amber would just lean hard into the objection, like, oh, it was hearsay? Well, it's, you know, the reason why I know this is because so-and-so told me, and it would be annihilated, and every time you'd see Elaine look over, and sort of make a face and then amber heard would make a face back and there was clear they weren't getting along on that and wow. i sort of got the sense that it was like we talked about this like we talked about what you can say like what we can get in and what we can't get in yeah and for some of this evidence i suspect that there was ways we could have gotten it in if amber would just you know trust say her, her attorney there's a lot of points yeah. where I get the that feeling sure to room with it. in the office and another thing in the courtroom. If I had sat here and told you at the end of Amber Heard's direct that Camille's cross and Elaine's redirect would go like that, would, would, would you have even believed me or, or said that that's even a remote possibility? That went better for Camille than I thought. I mean, that was just really well done. That yeah, was, it was extremely well done. I didn't think the platter. redirect would be that bad. I yeah, no, I, I wouldn't have predicted. I wouldn't have predicted Elaine being that bad. I agree. It was, the problem is it's horrible. She, she could not bad get it. because she can't trust. Like normally on redirect, what I want to do is I want to bring a witness up and say, you know, let's go back over this evidence. Can we get some more context? You know, just let's talk about what you said next. Let's yeah. talk about you know, and those kinds of things. Because if I'm putting you know a client up on the stand in a criminal trial, or when you've got a witness who you've who you're calling normally you expect that witness is going to say good things for you but she can't rely on that from her so she's trying to box her into this line and of course that you can't do that so that's wow. the problem she's got is that if she just gives her you know leash she's going to run up a tree and hang herself with it and yeah, that's the yeah. concern yeah she's so an unruly she, client unruly that's what it is yeah it's such a problem and I mean, we heard a lot before about, you know, Amber's mental health issues and so forth, and that plays yeah. into it. She's not somebody who, uh, 
who can even like keep this straight. And so we get to this point where she's accusing her lawyers of not disclosing things. She's accusing her own psychiatrist of uh, giving us bad information. Yeah. You just can't let her keep doing that. So that's where why they were so badly constrained, I think, on the redirect. What else can you do? And ku- yeah. kudos to Vasquez for getting the instruct the witness. Can you instruct the witness without sounding like an a-hole? Like it was Major that win. obvious at that point in time. Yes. Major yeah. win. Well, yes. I thought she had a good tone for essentially the almost apologetic objections towards towards the end of Elaine's redirect objection leading you know the rest yeah. I mean it was it was that kind of tone yeah. um and uh yeah I, that was that was an implosion I I never ever would have guessed that and yeah, I just because- have a message for the line jumpers for tomorrow um we've already covered the interesting parts like Amber Heard's testimony is done there's going to be a lot of deposition stuff stay home it's going to be a lot of you're watching a video that is going to be boring. So mm, I want to get in there. Try to take me in seat. Yeah. So Amber is calling her sister and Rocky. Maybe I, I'm hoping are those the next live witnesses? Because I yeah. I heard I heard Io till it right might be the next one. That is by I think I saw somebody in in the chat or in a super chat earlier say that um, that it it would be by by video deposition. Um, also. Uh, Dejan Del, Pon- Del Ponte, um, or Dejan Del Ponte, thank you so much for your very generous super chat. Congratulations on 200K. Thank you for all the entertainment. 200, thank you, 000. all of you. Oh, wow. Thank you, you to everyone. 000. Nice. Well, yes. Hit 200 Nate, I heard, I heard, when did, when did you, when did you get 200,000? I think you, you got 200,000 recently too, right? Yeah, I, I, I literally just crossed it today. <laughs> oh, hey. Okay, so you're talking. Hey, You've hey, overcome Nate. <laughs> You've overcome Nate the Lord. That's good. Dude. Double party. That's amazing. The rest of us look on with envious eyes. No, no, no. We need, to, we need to just pull everybody with us. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, yeah. Everybody, cause Nick, Nick is about the to world. cross 400k Come today, on. too. It's like we're, we're all like today is the, is the day because Nick is going over 400. We both went over 200. This is like the day. Yes. Yeah. I, I'm yes. trying to. Anyone who wants to push me over 100 yeah. today, I'm just saying I'm available. It's, it's no <laughs> worse, but you know, it's Kurt, a real thing. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> More of the world's references, people. Kurt, where are you at? Yeah. Uh, I'm somewhere in 73, I think. Oh, I only need our 27,000 subscribers. We could, we could easily, we could easily get him to 75. I, I mean, that's that's easy peasy, right? We've yeah, got, yeah. got 58,000 people Alita's in here. mad with 200,000 subscriber power now. That's I'll right. Tell you what. <laughs> that's right. No, I, I think I think definitely. And and Rick, where are you at? 86. 86. Can we get him Woo! to 90? 90. Can we get him to ninety? He's oh, so close to a hundred thousand. So Come on, guys, get it, no. get in there while it's hot. <laughs> Brother, can I spare it? Can I borrow a dime? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Runkle, how about you? Where are you at? Um, I think I'm at eighty-two point nine. Eighty-two point nine. Yeah. We could. I feel like we could. We could at the very least get him to eighty-five. Let's get him to ninety. Let's get him up there yeah. too. One hundred, um, mad yeah. with power. She's gonna start saying one hundred thousand subscribers. <laughs> that that <laughs> uh, good times. Um, and uh, Natalie, where, what number are you at? I am at I think eighty five point two, something like oh, that. Oh my gosh, mm-hmm. also close to ninety. I feel like yeah. I feel like all of you guys, we can we can get don't, you guys to a hundred thousand. No, too. don't do it. Don't do it because then yeah. uh, my last trial, we were the judge was worried that we were going to run out of jurors if they knew who I was. So please, no. <laughs> 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 don't subscribe. Just for that, people are going to go and subscribe to do now. Job. Don't you know, Natalie, to do you ever, see, Natalie understands the internet. You tell them don't subscribe, she's going to go over two million. Yeah. I'm just shocked at how bad that was, and I think she knew. I like I, Amber that. knew, Elaine knew. Camille had that big grin on her face right now. <laughs> yeah. Like it's well, just, I, yeah. Can you? I just. I feel bad for Elaine right now because now she's got to keep calling witnesses and keep running the rest of this trial and no, trying now to she... take this. Like this is trying to pull a dead moose out of a ditch. No, now what she has to do now is she has to she has to fix that relationship enough that they can walk back out, sit next to each other, and look like yeah. they don't want to kill each other. That this is this next 10 minutes is a screaming match between attorney and client where the client is rightfully yelling at her attorney for not asking questions that can actually lead to an effective redirect. Well, and the attorney is rightfully yelling at the client for being impossible to ask those questions. I mean, yeah. both of them are gonna have legitimate Everybody's rights. Everybody's a winner. Yeah. 
But Rob's exactly correct. For optics alone, they have to mm-hmm. they have to get back together because that yeah. looked awful. Amber walking off <laughs> into the into the hallway. Well, and do you think the ju- like that was before the jury left? That was before the jury left. Oh, oh, jury- oh that's right. She stormed oh, out. Shit. Normally, she waits for the jury to leave before. I she didn't even leaves. think about that. She leaves. She stormed out in the jury's presence. So oh, that's got to go over real well with Which the jury. Which is the most disrespectful thing you can do. That's like, got to oh, go no, over no, that, real super well. No, that with the was jury. after the jury left because that was before the judge said the next witness is a live witness or a depo. Okay. No, they no. It was, I, it was maybe after. I'm getting this wrong, Rob. I but it, but as she leaves, you get that clip. And then everybody rises. I suppose that could have been the judge leaving, but I thought that was the jury leaving. No, it wasn't the judge leaving because then the judge asked the question afterwards. I think she left before the jury, which is completely unheard of for a party. It's not like she's any witness. She's a party to the case. You have to go back to the table, sit down, and wait for the jury and stand up and and look at the jury as they're leaving to to respect them. I think she gets off and everybody stands up. That's what I saw. It's not so much to respect the jury thing. Like the jury, okay, sure, the jury's gonna have to. If the jury's seeing that this that disgruntled lawyer client relationship, that yeah. is gonna be. If people if they, are saying in chat that she left lawyer. before the jury, she did. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what we thought. I mean, I'm trying to. It's, I'm trying. To I, I agree with inside. Natalie. It's it's basically unheard of, yeah. and I've never you're, seen it. We've we've often commented that like your character is. Well, we use sometimes say everything, which is which is an overstatement, but you know that's it's, it's important. Rewind. And rewind what to show rewind. that level of disrespect to the jury because they're used to like you know being the first ones to leave and like everyone standing for them. They're used to that, and it's it, it's professional courtesy. And for you to leave and storm out, I mean, I mean, how can you? How can Johnny Depp not win? Is now the question in my mind. It's like forget all the technical shit. Holy God. It's like, how yeah. high do I want to raise the probability numbers is the only question I'm raising in my mind. This is a point where the law, like the jury is going to sort of hear the legal, here's what the legal test is. And I suspect they're going to be going, okay, that's nice, but we hate her. Yeah. yeah. No rehabilitation of this, this, this was a lie. 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 Who are you going to believe? They didn't, she, Elaine didn't even get to anything. That's what, I, that's what I can't believe. I cannot believe she didn't go through each of the things that Elaine brought, uh, that um Camille brought up where she said, oh, you said this before, but now you're saying this now where you said this and then there's no injuries. I, I just can't believe she didn't get to each of those things. She just let them go. I, I'm in disbelief. Well, and there's points where she was asking, like saying, we need additional context on these texts. You need to read the next two texts. And that never did it. They never did it. We didn't get they got those two texts right. entered. She did, but you'd still want to touch on that and have them oh, read it. Is this the clip? Is this Inception? Yeah, we're watching it again, I guess. I don't know what I'm muted. Uh, yes, um, I, I, I rewound a little bit to see if we could, if we could, if we could pick it out. Uh, Peter, thank you very much for your very generous super chat um, for for Ian, for Ian's <laughs> very Canadian statement. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so let's see if, if we can if we can glean something from I, this. I suppose I could have made Shall it more Canadian by pull a moose from the a hockey stick, but <laughs> wow. let's see here. Sorry, it's it's uh, oh, come on, why are you pausing? I mean, you're live streaming while you work with a uh, live stream. My computer would explode. I know it's it's live stream section. Yeah, okay. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> hey, Mike. That was great. Hello. I don't have any more questions. You're all right. We're done. Okay. Oh, oh that's, that's it. it. Hello. You're done on redirect. Oh, you're done. What? Oh, she, oh we're hearing her. Oh, no. Okay. So Elaine leaves. And oh no, she gave up. Questions. She gave have a seat next to her. She says, "Look at look at Camille. Look at this. She just threw a little smile up." Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Amber leaves. Yeah. She walks. She's in front of the jury. Oh, right out. The direct is finished. Did you guys? Wow. Did you guys catch Camille's expression there as Heard starts walking out? She looks over to the jury and then makes the face like. She makes a yeah. solid cringe yeah. face at that, and I'm going, "Yep, that is that is the what? face to make." Are you out of your effing mind? Whatever you don't juror, do that. 
you don't was, do that. Was she also just disobeyed the order of the judge. She just told her to go sit next to her counsel. She just disobeyed the order of the judge, too, on top I of it all. Like that meeting that they're having, Elaine and Amber, is probably like Elaine taking off a, <laughs> a shouting match, loading it with ball bearings and going in there to chat with her client. So <laughs> there's there's a video going viral of um of Camille's response and the Dep team response to that cross, like they all there's this big group hug they're all hugging each other like crazy after it like yeah I need to I see all it. the memes on this one I will tell you what well because that was I mean Who there's places they could have further explored because there's so much bad in Amber but they basically uh, republication however here when I see additional content that could yes. constitute. Oh. Yeah. Uh, republication in this matter. So there is evidence of ownership and additional content uh, that the jury oh, could find constitute the, republication. The and that is a factual mm -hmm. question that does su survive a motion to strike. Therefore, the motion the to strike is denied as to count one. Thank you. Right. Wait, is, wait, wait, is Amber back right. in the courtroom for that? Or did she literally not sit right. around for the ruling on that motion? Uh, uh, Amber right. abandoned she, did her, she did her legal research to double check and she's now going to give the decision from the motion to strike, which was at this point, what, 13 days ago or something? But OK. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was denied. She had to wait for the tweet to come in. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, just yeah, finished yeah, yeah. cross. You know what? I I bet the judge was pissed that she walked out of court. Of I bet she's that's, pissed, too. That's huge she specifically for that specifically reminded her to go sit, well, ordered her, you specifically ordered her to go sit next to counsel. And she defied the judge's order, made her look like a chump, defied the jury. It's you're so a defendant. Bad. You're a defendant. You have to be present for every single moment of the trial, unless your yeah. presence is specifically waived. You can't do that. You can't do that. Yeah. Um, Emma Rain, thank you so much for this very generous super chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amber Heard is like the whole definition right now of that meme where the person sticks the stick in their own bike bicycle spokes. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, your next witness. Yes. It does feel that way, huh? Our right, next witness is Mr. Io Tillett Wright, okay. and it starts with counsel for Mr. Depp asking questions, and then we'll switch okay. over to me. All right, thank okay. you. So, video depot. Get yeah, ready, guys. Have some coffee. Uh, good morning, Working for extrinsic have evidence. Have you had any communication? Oh, it's a depot. Okay. All, yeah. Text or emails or otherwise in connection with your preparation for this deposition. No. Have you had any? When's the last time you spoke to her? April of last year. April or May. Almost a year ago. Uh, Mr. Wright, Wright, when did you first uh, meet Ms. Hurst? I met Amber in the end of 2011. And where did you meet her? In Los Angeles. And what were the circumstances of the meeting? A friend was introducing us to each other um, so that I could photograph her for a large portrait series that I was doing at the time. And what was your profession in 2011? I was a photographer and I worked for the New York Times, I think. I don't recall exactly everything, but... In 2011, you were both a photographer and separately worked for the New York Times as a freelancer. I worked for the New York Times as a journalist and photographer. And what was, what is your profession today? I'm a writer and a producer. Save this one. And between 2011 and through the present, have you had any other professions other than photographer, writer, or producer? Yes. And what are those? I've hosted a television show or two. I made some podcasts. I... wrote two other books, uh, two books, three books, three books. I've written three books. Um, a number of things. I don't know. There are more things, but I, yeah, I've always been a multi-hyphenate person. 
to the best of my recollection, uh, we initially met at a mutual friend's house, which I think I already stated. Um, that friend is also an actor and had met Amber at the children's hospital while they were both volunteering and knew that Amber had done quite a bit of LGBT activism and uh, mentioned my project to her and then invited her over to, uh, the other friend invited Amber to her house so that we could all meet. And um, Amber and I discovered that we liked the same books and we liked psychology and, and just, you know, laughed and had fun that night. And then I asked her if she would participate in the photo project, I think, or somebody did. And she said, yes. Um, a couple of days later, I went to the house that she was staying at and I photographed her for the project. And then thereafter, I went back to New York where I lived. And I remember her texting me and saying that she was shooting a movie in New York and did I want to get lunch? Um, so we got lunch and we became friends. Okay, please walk me through that. We met in 2011. We started becoming friends soon thereafter. Um, in 20, very early in 2013, um, I came to LA to spend a couple of months with my then, I don't know if she was my girlfriend or my fiance at that point, but the person that I was in a relationship with, um, in a very serious relationship with. And um, during the time that I was in LA, I spent more time with Amber. We both spent more time with Amber. Um, and I was introduced to Johnny. And uh, the summer of 2013, I ended up moving to LA during which Amber and Johnny and I got even closer, very, very close. And then, um, we remained close, the three of us, for two-ish years. And then all of this happened, this nightmare, and, uh, and Johnny and I stopped being friends and Amber and I stayed friends. Um, and then Amber and I were friends up until the date that I told you that we last spoke. And at some point in time, uh, did you live on the same property as Johnny Depp and Amber Heard? Yes. And when was that? It was August 2013 until um, I believe June 1st of 2014. I moved into my own house, so nine months. And um, why is it that you uh, left that property, left living there? Because I didn't want to live for free in someone's property and I wanted to have my own house and support myself. And for how long after that did you uh, stay close with both Johnny and Amber? I stayed close with both of them um, I don't remember it it was a hmm. I sometime in 2015 I think late 2015, maybe, um, Johnny and I were no longer, I think the period when I really stopped considering Johnny a friend of mine was December of 2015. Okay. Well, let me ask you this way. Um, you never saw Mr. Depp assault or beat Ms. Heard on any occasion, correct? That's correct. I just would like to clarify, Mr. Preciado, that's a question you already asked me. So you're asking me the same question again about whether or not I witnessed Mr. Depp assault Ms. Heard? That's right. No, I have not witnessed that. Let me ask mm -hmm. it this way then. Have you ever personally seen Mr. Depp assault or beat Ms. Heard on any occasion? No. Now, back to this same paragraph where it says, my experience of Johnny during 
the time that he that we were close from 2013 through 2015 uh, was that he could be incredibly kind, generous, and loyal. Um, can you give me examples of his kindness, generosity, and loyalty during that per period of time? Johnny, when sober, was lovely and magical and very funny. Um, Johnny, when sober, was incredibly lucid and um, imaginative and I felt a kindred connection with him and a, a shared perspective on the world that I've shared with very few people in my life. Um, Johnny, when sober, understood how much influence he had over people and he was very um, kind to them about it and generous with talking to them about whatever came up and he was also when sober very um you know he made time for people's nervousness around him which i witnessed on a number of occasions he also um he had his his number of houses on that street and there was a constant rotation of different people coming to town who could all afford to live somewhere else or stay somewhere else who um, he would let and enjoyed having in those houses, which I find to be um, generous. In the next paragraph, paragraph six, you refer to uh, Mr. Depp's uh, struggles with respect to Oxycontin. You say that in late 2013, after dental surgery, he became hooked on Oxycontin. Did you ever experience him while he was on Oxycontin? Yes. And while he was on Oxycontin, did you ever experience uh, him to be mean or vicious? I can't answer that with any accuracy because I don't know whether or not the times that I did see him be mean or vicious, he was also on Oxycontin. In paragraph five, where you say that um, he could he could be incredibly mean and vicious, especially when he was drunk or high. When you refer to drunk or high, what substances are you referring to? The substances that I saw him ingest with my own eyes were cocaine and hard liquor, um, marijuana, uh, ecstasy, mushrooms, uh, wine, I, probably some other things, but those are the immediate ones that jump to mind. Um, cocaine and any kind of alcohol would bring out a very, very ugly side of him, um, very misogynistic and cruel and other things. And um, when he would take any kind of psychedelic, like ecstasy or, or, or uh, MDMA, he would become paranoid. When he would drink alcohol, he would become paranoid. Um, yeah. I think that I answered your question. You mentioned that uh, you witnessed him having had cocaine. Did you ever have cocaine with him? No. Were there any drugs or, or substances that you uh, took with him? I don't smoke marijuana. I don't do cocaine for the entire period that I knew Johnny and thereafter, I did not drink alcohol. There was a, I think one week period um, during the peak of my breakup during which Johnny offered me um, some pain pills to get through the intensity of that situation. Um, and that was the only time that I took any substances for three and a half years. 
No, that's not true. That was the only time that I took any um, substances with Johnny. And uh, yeah, yeah. All, all the other things that I had stated previously about what I do and don't do are also accurate. So I'm sorry, just to, to summarize that, is your testimony that um, when you witnessed Mr. Depp drunk and high, you were not also either drunk or high? Is that your testimony? My testimony is that during the entire period that I knew Mr. Depp, I was never drunk or drinking or consuming alcohol at all. My testimony is that for a one, maybe two week, possibly two and a half week, I don't remember, period, um, on a sporadic occasion, I took some pain pills that Mr. Depp offered me for to get through an extreme emotional pain situation. Um, when I witnessed Johnny doing cocaine, I was not drunk or high. Other occasions that I witnessed Johnny drinking, I was not drunk or high. Um, there was a very narrow window during which I was taking some non uh, mind altering pain pills for a very brief period during which I witnessed Johnny drunk and high. Did you ever witness her drunk or high? Yes. And did you ever witness her drink alcohol? Yes. Did you ever witness her um, ingesting cocaine? Are you, are you asking like ever in the history of time have I ever witnessed Amber ingest cocaine? That's the first question, yes. The answer is right. no. Amber was vehemently against cocaine. That's an interesting qualifier. Did you ever you uh, witness no her mm -hmm. uh, smoke marijuana? Strange. No. Marijuana is not her drug. What is her drug? I haven't spoken to Amber in a year, but as far as I know and have known her for the last 11 or 12 years, Amber doesn't have a narcotic of choice. Have you seen her ingest ecstasy? Yes, I believe so. Yes. How many times have you seen her ingest ecstasy? I can think of one instance in particular when she took it um, for her birthday, like a celebration. Uh, wasn't Do you recall what year that was? I'm an event. Other than the uh, narcotics and alcohol uh, that I mentioned, did you ever witness Ms. Heard uh, ingest any other uh, drugs? Are you asking me if other than, what did you ask me about? Cocaine, ecstasy, and mushrooms. I've witnessed Amber taking any other illegal narcotics, or are you asking me about prescription medications? Can you clarify? Uh, narcotics other than prescription narcotics. I don't know, but I don't actually think so, no. Okay. Amber drinks red wine um, when she's not training, or let me rephrase that. Amber, when I knew her, drank red wine in the evenings uh, fairly regularly, with the exception of when she was training for an acting role. Uh, have Have you ever witnessed uh, Mr. M I'm sorry, Miss Heard um, intoxicated? Yes. Sure. And how often would you estimate that you witnessed Miss Heard uh, intoxicated? I, I don't know how to quantify intoxicated. If you're asking me how often I witnessed her drunk, is that your question? Yes. Amber's um, strangely immune to getting drunk unless she's really drunk a lot. So I didn't see her drunk very often. I saw her um, drinking often, but I didn't see her um, out of her faculties very often. Like, you know, I saw that a handful of times in the 11 years that I knew her. And how would you describe um, how alcohol affects Ms. Hurd's personality based on your experience? You know, it depends on the circumstance. If it was during a moment when she was celebrating, it would make her 
loose. Like if we were salsa dancing, then, you know, she would have fun and be fun and, and at a party and, you know, inebriated and dancing and having fun. If she was in a stressful situation, fun and um, at a party and I think it would just you know, kind of inebriated and dance exacerbate whatever the, the feeling of the moment was. I'm going to uh, ask you to state your name for the record. Nobody has yet. <clears throat> this is me. <laughs> Elaine, Elaine telling the court that Elaine has taken over. All right, good. <laughs> Let's bring up uh, Deb exhibit number one again, please. Mr. Tillett Wright, you were asked some questions by Mr. Presidio. And I'm going to take you back up to the first page where you were asked some questions. Um, and he, he started out with, I, I'm just going to draw, draw your attention to paragraph four. And you indicated you met Johnny Depp through Amber. Uh, and you hit it off immediately. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Okay, and then you explained to Mr. Presidio that you considered Johnny to be a close friend and you cared very much about Mr. Depp. Is that correct? He became a close friend and I did care very much about him. I still care very much about him. All right. Could you please describe that relationship that you had with Mr. Depp up until I think you said December of 2015? Sure. Um, okay, Mr. Depp and I first met, Amber invited me over to his house with my then partner, girlfriend. I don't know if she was my fiance yet or not. Um, in I think February of 2013, right at the beginning of 2013. Um, <clears throat> and we all hung out, the four of us hung out in his house um in his living room and just kind of talked and got to know each other and it was sweet i was mostly hanging out with amber and kind of meeting this person it was a trip to meet someone like that you know and see his house and he was very friendly and very welcoming and very kind um and then the next time we saw each other was at um amber and i both like to do what we call family dinners so we invite people over and cook for them and, and have a dinner party. And um, Amber did an elaborate family dinner at her house and Johnny and I and my ex and Amber, and I believe Whitney were there. I don't know if anyone else was there. I'm sure somebody, other people were there. I don't remember. Um, and Johnny and I really connected at that dinner. We we're sitting either opposite each other or just catty corner from each other. And um, I left feeling a really intense connection to him. And I was like, well, yeah, sure. Everybody probably feels an intense connection to him because of who he is. I'll forget it. It's ridiculous. And then a couple of days later, um, Amber had another dinner, some such, such a dinner at her house. And uh, Johnny and I had another really good time and, and felt very connected and really laughed a lot and whatever. And um, at the end of the dinner, as I was standing to leave with my ex, Johnny came up to me and said, um, I, I don't really know how to say this because it doesn't happen to me very often, but I think I love you. <laughs> and I felt strange because I felt the same way and I said that's funny because I had that same experience after the last dinner party too and then we joked about how crazy and ridiculous that felt um and we exchanged phone numbers and then he he texted me wanting to talk about Amber a couple of times and I felt that it was like kind of violating her privacy so I said that I was happy to be friendly with him and happy to, um, I don't remember exactly what I said, but something to the effect of like, you know, I, I'm happy to be, to give advice or to, to help you guys 
stay in concert with each other, but I don't want to um, violate anybody's privacy with the other one. And he, I think he really respected that and really liked that because he also values his privacy greatly. Um, and then, yeah, I was in LA for a couple more months and I don't know, I think maybe we hung out more during that period. I'm not sure. Um, I don't remember if they came to New York during the next stretch of time or what happened, but um, basically by the summer, I came back to LA to write um, and had a very bad breakup with that fiance and was going through some things personally that Johnny, um, you know, he was like, I recognize what's happening for you. Uh, it was like particularly bad anxiety related, trauma related things. Um, and he, I, I didn't expect him to offer me any support around that stuff, but he just was like, wait, I see what you're going through. Um, you know, this is my experience of it. I have the same thing and let's talk about it. And like, if you need anything, I'm here. And I was like, thank you so much. You know, I didn't really expect that. Um, and I went back to New York for, to be with my family for a couple of days or maybe a week or something. And um, it was very painful to be there. And he had said, if it's painful to be there, you know, just let me know and come back and stay here. And so I did. And I came back and I originally was going to stay at Amber's house because um, she kept her apartment for a number of years while they were together, even though she stayed at his house a lot um, that she paid for, et cetera. And I, she was, you know, the person that I'd known longer. So I felt more comfortable being at her house. And then um, the consensus was that I should be closer to them. And so he said, oh, there's this house that's just sitting empty at the end of the street. Just stay there. I was very hesitant because I didn't want to take advantage of him. Um, and he was insistent and he was very kind about it. And, and he said that he understood fully what having PTSD and anxiety could do and that he wanted to help. Um, so I, I went and I stayed there and then that was, I'm guessing in August of 2013 and then in September, I think Amber went to England to shoot a movie. Um, so I was there and Johnny and I would hang out on our own and Johnny doesn't have a ton of friends, um, because he can't and, um, I would go up and hang out with him. You know, we really enjoyed each other. We really liked each other. And so we would just hang out, you know, on a daily basis, eat dinner or, or watch movies. And I'd hang out with his kids and got, you know, very like into like a very sweet uncle, niece, nephew relationship with his kids. And they called me uncle Io. And, um, Mr. Tiller, right. Uh, did you ever call Mr. Depp brother or your brother refer to him as your brother? Yes, I did. Now, I'm going to take you to paragraph five of Deb exhibit number one. And uh, Mr. Presidio asked you about this paragraph as well. And at the end of it, you had said, and he could be incredibly mean and vicious, especially when he was drunk or high. What did you mean by that? What I meant by that was <sighs> on a number of occasions, um, I saw, you know, Amber or he, I think also would ask me to come and help. He and I had more of a like mano a mano kind of relationship. And she and I had a, I, I was kind of like the only person that would check either of them um, for a while. And so they would both ask me to do that with each other. Um, so I saw him sounding pretty self-important. For example, I remember there was a time when um, but he's it was not very late at night. Really I was down the hill. So I went witness. up the hill and he was yeah. outside by the pool. We're going to talk about the 21st eventually, but once he says, I didn't see anything she personally. She was inside I'm crying. Um, Weird. I'm very upset in the kitchen, I think. And then I went outside and talked to him for a long time. Um, 
such a situations nickel. like that or um <coughs> and he would say things he said something to me that night that i i thought that night by the pool where i thought jesus christ you know um things like she's gonna you know all she's got is her looks and you know she has no talent and when her tits start to sag um and her face gets wrinkly nobody is going to be interested in her um, <laughs> i mean that's what she's so she, so she you know better like to figure out another way to survive and shit like that sorry pardon me things like that and um i not a lie also witnessed him um when Amber was in England, Marilyn Manson and Paul Bettany came oh, over at one ding, point. Ding, ding, ding. Was <laughs> bingo! Marilyn Manson bingo! I witnessed them doing together. Um, I'm I don't glad we can amuse ourselves. Specifically, Alita. recall if Mr. Bettany mm-hmm, did or mm-hmm. did not partake in the cocaine. Got the boogeyman again. Um, or really much of anything except things that I think he that's said. That's the second time he's come up today. Personality, but um, Mr. Oh, Manson and every day. Mr. Mm-hmm. Depp partook in a lot of cocaine. What, if anything, what did Mr. Any? Depp tell you about mm-hmm. his struggles with drugs and alcohol? And um, we sat on the couch and he told me a number of things. He told me about his childhood. He told me about growing up in Kentucky. He told me about growing up in, very poor and how his mom was verbally and physically abusive. He told me that when he was very, very young, like 13 or something, he started drinking and taking drugs, I think, or at least drinking quite heavily. And he was even kind of like, yeah, it's crazy, I know, but I've been doing it my whole life and built like a tank. And so that was kind of the nature of the conversation. Um, And he told me that he had struggled with ever not drinking or ever not doing drugs and he also told me that he didn't particularly enjoy being sober um but that you know people around him were very concerned he was very very um concerned with his children and he would express shame or regret about times that he had been inebriated to the point of falling down or embarrassing himself, you know, urinating on himself, things like that, when his children were around and that he was very grateful to the people who had kind of shielded them and whisked them away. And he told me that um, in his relationships with previous women, uh, Thank you, and alcohol Very generous. Use had been we'll an issue, um, but that he just didn't really like life sober, and that it was too painful to be alive without um, imbibing or, or getting high. And sad. Um, he also told me that he uh, had experienced great bouts of jealousy in relationships that had that it also led to a lot of drinking and a lot of um, rage activities. Um, He told me that that happened with Winona. He told me that that happened with um, Kate and, sorry, Winona Ryder and Kate Moss. He told me that that had happened with Vanessa Parody. Mr. Tillett Wright, um, what, if any, observations did you make about Mr. Depp abusing OxyContin. Over the course of those two years, Mr. Depp told me verbatim that he was addicted to OxyContin. Um, And I have a text message from him where he expresses that um, it's extraordinarily hard to kick and that it... um, I don't remember exactly the words that he uses, but he 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 referred to it to me verbally many times as like the hardest thing that he's ever tried to kick, which he's tried to kick most things. He said it was harder than heroin. Um, 
So he, he was very um, open and verbose about OxyContin, having gotten addicted to OxyContin. So what, if any, observations did you make uh, about Mr. Depp smoking cigarettes and joints, marijuana? Mr. Depp, as far as I could see, always had a cigarette or joint in his mouth at all times to the point where I was confused about how he could function. He also showed me his marijuana closet that had, I don't know, tens and tens of pounds of weed in it. What, if any, observations did you make while you were staying at Sweetser? I think you said that was August 2013 through May of 2014 with respect to uh, the type of alcohol and the amount of alcohol that Mr. Depp was consuming. When I saw Mr. Depp drink, um, it was often hard liquor. I believe it was whiskey and gin and tequila, maybe. Um, could also be vodka. I don't know. He had a full bar in his, in 80, the house that they, with his recording studio in it, that they mostly stayed in. So, um, I know whiskey for sure. And there was also red wine, a lot of red wine. And when you talk about the whiskey and the red wine, how much did you observe Mr. Depp? consume on any given occasion of those? Uh, I don't know. The one occasion I know specifically was the one that I mentioned before during the argument where he suddenly had a glass of whiskey. And I remember it being like, I remember clock because I grew up counting people's drinks. I remember clocking that it was a very large pour in the glass of whiskey. If you recall those, I, I think my question was, you know, what if any observations did you make or did Mr. Depp ever tell you about him blacking out? Mr. Depp was very open with everyone that he was a heavy user. And um, He told me about, I know there was one instance where he had this very large house property. So if Sweetser Avenue goes like this, um, the house that I was staying at, 76 is down here, then there's 78, which is right here, and then up here is 80, and then across the street, I guess, is 82. And 82 is a very large compound. So he and I were staying, I was at 76 or up at 80, and then 82 they lived in for a brief period of time. Um, and he told me about like vanishing into 82, into the, like the property, into the, like, cause it was very lush and very, a lot of trees, um, and went up quite far up the hill. And he told me about kind of like blacking out and going in there on one instance. Um, he told me, I know that he told me that he, Australia. Um, he had blacked out. Um, but he also told me that he fucked up. So I don't know. In terms of specific blackouts, there were a number. There, uh, I think he said on the plane, he said that he didn't remember what had happened. What, if anything, did Mr. Depp say to you about whether he wanted to become sober and clean. Mr. Depp um, expressed to me that he wanted to get sober for Amber, that he didn't enjoy being sober, um, that it wasn't fun, and that it it was distressing and exhausting um, and very hard to do. He didn't, he really, really um, resented having to be sober. Um, yeah, he didn't, he didn't want to be. And what, if anything, did Mr. Depp say to you about his perception of Amber's role in him becoming sober and clean? 
he expressed a number of times that he felt like she was his leash and she's holding him back from doing what he wanted to do in terms of substances and alcohol. Um, oh, I just want to go back to another incident that I remember. He told me he blacked out, was on, on the island. He went to the Bahamas. There were two different instances. One was, um, I guess, like they had only recently met and he told me that he passed out face down in the sand while his kids were there and that um, the staff like whisked his kids away so that they didn't see it. Mr. Tiller, right? when you said that Mr. Depp uh, used the term monster, what do you recall him saying about that? And the language that ended up being kind of settled on was that there was a side of him that was the monster and that it was not who he was, but it was something that lived within him that he had to battle. And the language that he always used was that of um, battle and battling, battling the demon, battling the monster. Um, so that the monster, you know, he would say things like, the monster will not win. Um, I will not be that type of man, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to be that type of man or husband. I don't want to hurt. Uh, he would call her slim, he, I, our slim, our girl, referring to all of her friends and him and her and I. Yeah. For everyone what asking why he can testify you make about statements that Mr. Johnny Depp, made, it's an exception to hearsay. Physical as well as temperament when you perceived him as having too much to drink. Mr. Depp would drink and or take drugs. He would get very mean, very surly, very uh, paranoid, extremely paranoid. He would weave these elaborate situations in which Amber was having affairs with every man that she ever worked with and every woman she ever came in contact with. Um, <clears throat> He became very demeaning. Johnny is incredibly intelligent, incredibly smart and witty. And he would point his jokes at people, um, Amber's appearance, her talent, um, her lack of talent as he perceived it, um, why he thought that she was actually famous, which he always implied was just because of her looks. Um, and because he thought that everyone wanted to have sex with her, um, and he would insult his fans. Um, he called them, I remember he called them the Lamoras, which is a type of, um, sucker fish that attaches itself to the hull of a ship and puts a hole in it and then sinks it. Um, he called his fans he that? He would. Okay. I guess. I mean, I could see it. <laughs> Rail against his mother and his sister, um, sisters. I could see a celebrity getting frustrated much, with fans. You know, mm -hmm. Anyone Happy. that he felt had crossed him or could cross him, um, he became very nasty about. What, if anything, do you recall Mr. Depp saying <sighs> about his mother and comparing his mother to Amber? Mr. Depp told me that his mom was viciously cruel to him during his upbringing um, and that she was also viciously like violent um, with him and with his siblings and with his father. Um, he referred to her, pardon my language, as a bitch um, and a cunt a lot um, and he seemed to kind of compare them in the sense that he was he said at one point um, something to the effect it's right here actually uh, yeah I already have a mom who was a bitch to me I don't need another one in my life 
What if he read There it? was a fair bit of that kind of like, you know, my mom's been awful enough to me already. I don't need another woman who's gonna also be awful to me. What if any discussions did you have with Johnny about the fights he had with Amber? We had a lot of discussions about his fights with Amber. Um, <clears throat> what do you recall? In the very beginning, he expressed that she made him feel crazy, that he was so in love that it made him feel crazy. Um, the very first time that I mentioned, September of 2013, when he and I were alone together, uh, he expressed that he thought that she was cheating on him and sleeping with her co-stars in England on the films. And I said to him, or in the film, and I said to him, listen, you know, I know her, I think, pretty well. And I talk to her a lot. And I think, think if she was having an affair, I would be one of the very few people that she would tell about it. And oh, Lord. I don't hold secrets or lies for anybody. And I would, I would tell you if that was happening so you could make your own decisions. But um, as far as I know, that's really not the case. And I think that she's really in love with you. And I think that she also is worried that you are having affairs because both of you are used to being sex symbols on earth. And both of you need to just accept the fact that you're really in love with each other and lean in and be together and love each other. Um, and he told me that sometimes his jealousy would make him um, feel crazy and outside himself. And that uh, he had to so get it over. Um, and that it would cause them to I don't to feel fight. like I'm getting anything new from this. No. But I also have no. missed pieces of it. Um, <clears throat> I don't think he, he missed told anything me about except the fight things. that they had, the time that I went up there. Are you asking for specific instances or are you asking about the nature of their fights? No, I, yeah, I am asking for what he told you about their fights and specific instances, yes. So to continue with what I was saying from before, he told me about the fight um, in the middle of the night. Uh, when I was in the when I, I mentioned that I saw him with a heavy pour of whiskey, I went outside to the pool and spoke to him. Um, and he told me about the argument that they had had and that she gets mean during fights um, and that it really hurts his feelings and that he then lashes out at her um, and that, you know, she called him old. And he then calls her soon to be ugly um, and talentless and that they get really ugly with each other. Um, he told me whew, about a fight that they had. Um, we went to England that September. Um, it was Whitney's birthday, I think. Amber's sister, Whitney. Um, and Amber was stuck working. My birthday, Raquel's birthday, and Whitney's birthday, the three people who she was the closest to um, all have birthdays in September. Raquel's just before the end of August, whatever. We're all Virgos, and um, she couldn't be with any of us on our birthday, so we all went to England to surprise her. And during that trip, Johnny proposed to her, um, and they then... I'm pretty sure that night after the proposal got in a huge fight, um, which he all, they both told me about separately. Um, and he said, I'm pretty sure that he trashed the hotel room. Let's see. I spoke to him after, I went and talked to him after their, their fight on the plane. Um, so t t that's the that's the Boston L.A. plane incident. Is that right? That's correct. So, Mr. Tellerwright, oh. I'm going to ask you about the Boston the L.A. flight uh, incident. You talked about it a little bit earlier, 
and you just said now that you spoke with Mr. Depp about it. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. What do you recall of your discussion with Mr. Depp about the Boston plane incident that happened in May of 2014? And I went upstairs to his bedroom, which was like blocked out. Um, and I, I woke him up. I remember shaking his shoulder and saying to him, hey, buddy, like, wake up, which was not something that a lot of people did to Johnny, wake him from his slumber. Um, and he woke up and we had a conversation about what happened on the plane. And he didn't really remember being on the plane. He didn't really remember getting off the plane. Um, he didn't really remember much detail of anything. And, I, and he swore up and down that he was going to stop and he was going to stop drinking and taking drugs and he was going to never do it again. That was that incident. What, what if any uh, meetings related to alcohol uh, did you and Amber attend in this time frame? I, I understand because we didn't go to many meetings. Um, we, we, I took Amber with me to um, Al-Anon, which is a, it's like a sister program to AA for the family and friends and loved ones of addicts and alcoholics, which I regularly attended. So she came with me to a number of Al-Anon meetings and she also had, um, I think one or two phone calls with my dad's wife about how she dealt with helping him um, get off of his drugs and, and drink less. And um, she read a number of books about it. She was watching documentaries about it. She would listen to any radio show she could get on, like anything, anything she could get her hands on that would give her some tools for how to deal with this, she consumed in that period. What, if any, communications did did Johnny have with you in this time frame about wanting to get back with Amber after the Boston plane incident? We went to New York, and um, remember, we were staying at the Ace Hotel in Midtown. Um... And John started reaching out to me. He went eventually um, back to Boston to start filming again. Would have been in like the next day or two because we weren't there for that long. I know a lot of people. And um, he reached out to me and basically said to the something to the effect of like, you know, I have to fix this. I will do anything that I can. And then uh, while he was in Boston, he let me know. And I think he was trying to reach Amber too, but she didn't. She wasn't ready to talk to him. Um, he let me know that he had um, engaged Dr. Kipper and that he intended with every fiber in his being to get sober. And that the nature of the conversation at that point was that he, he was going to beat this thing. You know? Please describe for me what transpired, what, what you discussed with Johnny and Amber relating to Australia in 2015. After they were, because they were married in February and they went to Australia in the spring. Um, if, if, you know, can I, if, I'm going to interrupt you just for a moment and forgive me, I just want to keep it chronologically there. Um, you, you described earlier that you were present for the wedding, correct, in February of 2015? Yes. Okay. Uh, and you also had discussed uh, about Amber wanting Johnny to be sober for the wedding. What, if any, observations did you make about Johnny uh, at the ceremony and with respect to whether he was sober and clean? You know... I don't actually know whether Johnny was, I don't think Johnny was drinking on the day of their wedding. I really don't actually think he was. Let me rephrase that, before the ceremony on the day of their wedding. Because I was going back and forth between their um, respective like private preparation quarters where they were getting ready because I was technically her best man and his son Jack was his best man, but I wasn't one of the girls and felt more comfortable over there with them. 
but I was helping all the girls. So I was running back and forth on this golf cart between, I was also taking pictures. I was one of two people who had, was friends with them that had worked as a photographer. So I volunteered to take pictures. So I was um, very intimately with Johnny and Jack leading up to the wedding and he wasn't drinking. I don't think, I don't, I don't remember seeing him drink. And then let me ask you this. After the ceremony, as you were walking to the reception, what, if anything, did Johnny Depp say to you about Amber? As we were walking back from the ceremony, um, we were coming into Cafe Los Cabrones, which is the, where the party was happening. And I was walking with Johnny and congratulating him that they pulled it off and that they they did it, you know? And he said, um, we're married. Now I can punch her in the face and nobody can do anything about it. So I'm going to now turn your direction to Australia, uh, roughly a, a month later after the wedding. That was the only bad thing um, you said. That was you, were, bad. you weren't present in Australia with uh, Amber and Johnny, correct? That's correct. That I'm comment sure would have sounded so damaging at the beginning three. of the trial. Do you recognize but at this point, anybody it's like, in this picture? Eh. Yeah. I do. No, I don't matter. Myself and Ms. Heard. I do, yeah. Please describe what you see. I see a number of long, thin cuts. And what, if any, similarity are those to the ones you just described, uh, having seen after Amber returned from Australia? Uh, what, if any? All right. And are they the same? Or are they what if any? Ones? I would have no way of knowing if they're the same or different ones, but they're Just responding to the similarly chat. long, skinny cuts like the ones that I saw after she came back from Australia. I'm going to show, Mr. Tellerite, I'm going to show you what has been marked as exhibit number He wants five. to get out of there. Um, yeah. And yeah. It's a I don't think text he's like to this. Do mm -hmm. you recognize no. uh, this text Especially message this number like here below, Arrow's Arc? A month, literally a month before trial yes. started. Okay, so, mm -hmm. so, so is this, does this represent the text the message the exchange point, between you and Amber Heard? Well, and he describes his friendship as ending the last time they saw each yes, other. Yes, it does. Yeah. Okay. That's and I'm going to start you at the top. Yeah, this guy is blue. Lot it says, I need you. Here, that's for sure. Do you of recognize who is sending that message? We've done yeah. a lot of things. Mr. Tillerite, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as exhibit number six. Do you recognize the person in this photo? Yes, I do. There is nothing Please there. Please describe <laughs> what you see in this <laughs> picture. Absolutely nope. nothing. I Absolutely see, not. Uh, Amber Heard. Mm. I see an yeah. injury to Amber's scalp. No. Where? And no. I see danger. What, if anything, do you recall I see shadows. about seeing I see anything London. similar to that when you arrived in December 2015 at Amber's penthouse? I remember this being one of the injuries that I was shown when I arrived at uh, penthouse three at the Eastern Building. On December sixteenth, what injury? And does this picture that's marked as Exhibit Number Six accurately depict the what you recall seeing? I remember this being one of um, I think this is going to be the last witness scalp of the day. injuries that I remember. Yeah. I remember there was another one yeah, as well, but I could be mistaken. I Not with a bang, but a whimper. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Do you oh recognize? the picture that is set forth as uh, exhibit number seven? Yes, I do. Please describe for me what what is depicted in this picture that you recognize. This was a picture of Amber's scalp. And does it accurate, does this accurately uh, depict what you saw uh, when you were shown it uh, as you testified earlier in December 2015? Yes, it does. Mr. Tillerite, I'm going to show you what has been marked as deposition exhibit number eight. Uh, do you recognize this picture? It is a yes, need for chapstick. Please describe <laughs> what is depicted there. This is Amber Heard's face um, with a very swollen lip. Uh, and does this accurately depict what you observed when you arrived at Amber Heard's penthouse in December 2015? Yes. 
I'm going to show you what has been marked we'll as have deposition to explain it in a number nine. Do you recognize it's hard this to picture? do it at the moment? Yes, I do. Talking over time. Please describe. This is the clump of hair that I was shown, I believe, when I arrived at Penthouse 3 on the night of December 16th, 2015. And does this accurately and genuinely depict the scene that you recall seeing? Yes, it does. Thank you. Now, did what what if any plans was there as of December 16, 17 of 2015 for Amber to be uh, spending Christmas with Mr. Depp and his kids? Do you recall? Getting the pictures down while we talk. Yes, I do recall. Um, there was a plan for um, Johnny and Amber and Billy Rose and Jack and uh, Raquel and her boyfriend or fiance at the time, Josh, um, to go to the Bahamas. Oh, and Raquel's mom and Amber's parents to go to the Bahamas. There were so many families around. Uh, Johnny Depp was saying it was like tribe. You marry the woman and you take over. Mr. Like, Tillman, I'm going to ask you, what if any conversations did you have with Johnny Depp about the December 15 incident? I don't think that he and I, I don't know that he and I had a direct conversation about it. I'm not sure if he and I had a direct So what if any, I'm going to show you, yeah. Mr. Teller, right, what has been marked is deposition exhibit number 16. It's a text message exchange dated 2-10-2016. Do you recognize this document? Yes, I do. It's a text exchange between me and Amber Heard about a video that she sent me. Okay. Now, it starts out, hi, uh, Steve left me a voicemail at 5 a.m. Uh, and that's from you, correct? That's correct. Do you remember what the voicemail message was? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Johnny called me at five in the morning and left me a voicemail in the character of um, some kind of management of like a property manager. Um, and he said something about, yes, hello, this is management. And um, I don't remember what he said, but it was something to do with like, we have a situation that we need to change out the something. And it was just a lengthy, just off the wall, nutbag ramble in the character of management. Mr. Tillerite, I'm going to show you what has been marked as exhibit number 17. And then Alex, I'm going to ask you to play this. Here we go. What's this? This again. Why are we rearranging the <laughs> furniture? What happened? What happened? What happened, darling? What happened? Oh I can't God. wait to hear Super Simp weigh in on this. I love how she's strategically standing there to hide the camera. Nothing happened this morning, you know that? You in here? No. So then nothing happened to you this morning. Yeah, you're right. I just woke up and you were so sweet and nice. We were not even fighting this morning. All I did was say sorry. Did something happen to you this morning? I don't think so. He's basically saying this is not about you. No, exactly. To me. And, and indicating you know that something has happened to me. To me, yeah. 
And what I love is that he, he realizes that she's recording him. And he drops away. He doesn't do anything to her. It's going. Oh, really? Really? He throws it down and he Are they going to show Io the full clip or the, or the not full clip? Smashing shit. All right. Why does Io need to see this? I wasn't there. Yeah, I don't understand why they need Io's impression. Or maybe she sent this to Io? But for what? With that little grin at the end. She, yeah, she got exactly what she wanted. Thank you, Alex. You can take this down now. Mr. Tillett Wright, do you recognize that video? Yes, I do. Was that the video that Amber sent to you on the text message exchange on February 10th, 2016? Yes. Sir. Do you recall watching that video on February 10, 2016? Yes, I recall watching that video at the time that I received those text messages. So I'm going to take you to 21 May, 2016. What do you recall with respect to a telephone call you received from Amber. Sure. Um, I was in New York. Um, I was there visiting family. Um, I was in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. I was walking down Manhattan Avenue and I got, I believe, a text message from Amber that said something to the effect of like, can you talk? And so I called and I was walking down the street as this happened. Um, she put me on speakerphone. So I was talking to both of them. He just stopped by to pick up some of his stuff. <clears throat> and he has a theory that he, um, either he wants to ask you about or I, and I said, okay, sure. Um, hello, Johnny, like, you know. And he, I think it was he said or she said, um, Johnny thinks that you and I together defecated on his pillow. I think the words were. Like, it never ends. Oh, Jesus. On his pillow. Okay, forever. The turn, the turn, the turn. This is a great witness to use. More proof. I was laughing. She was laughing. And, and when I realized that he was serious, I was like, okay, look, you know, first of all, I wasn't there that day. And, and so mm -hmm. he got very agitated by the fact that she and I thought it was funny. And he started to get um, I more and more agitated. And like, if there was shit in his Yeah. Um, the phone he came clomping back down the stairs i heard like a noise and then the phone dropped and um he said to her oh you think i hit you you think i fucking hit you what if i peel your fucking hair back And then I heard the phone drop again, and then I heard her scream. I remember her screaming. And I hung up the phone, and I called Raquel immediately because I know that she lives one door away, and would her and her boyfriend Josh, who's a big dude, would be able to get there the fastest. And um, I I called her, texted her right away, and. I hung up with her and immediately called 911 in New York. And yeah. then I called a friend of mine in LA who I knew had met Amber a number of times. And I think I may have placed a second call to NYPD. Now I'm all frazzled and I don't remember, but I think I called NYPD. Mr. Waldman made some statements in April and June of 2020 that so that's what we get from May that, uh, 16 huh? Well, Amber Heard and her friends in the media used fake sexual violence allegations as both a sword and shield 
depending on their needs. They've selected some for sexual violence hoax facts as the sword, inflicting them on the public and Mr. Depp. That was made on April 8, 2020. What, if any, impact did that have on Amber based on your observations? Amber retreated. Amber became... isolated, um, embattled, extraordinarily uh, distressed. And then on June 24, 2020, Waldman accused Amber Heard of committing a, quote, abuse hoax against Depp. She did what were your observations of how this impacted him? I, I think that my previous statement encompassed during the time that you were friends with John and you were speaking with him up until you, test, you testified December of 2015, what, if anything, did Johnny Depp ever tell you about Amber Heard being physically violent to him? Nothing ever at any point. Do you agree with me that uh, Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard uh, had many verbal arguments? And you were a witness to a lot of those verbal arguments, correct? I was a witness to some verbal arguments. Okay. And did you ever hear Ms. Hurd say anything mean to Mr. Depp in those arguments? Yes. And did you ever hear Ms. Hurd say anything vicious to Mr. Depp in those arguments? Yes. So would you agree with me that when they argued, they were mean and vicious to one another in what they said. I would categorize it very differently, sir. Well, you testified that you heard Ms. Heard say mean and vicious things to Mr. Depp when they argued and vice versa. Is that accurate? Yes. Mm -hmm. And Although you witnessed arguments, verbal arguments between the two of them, where they exchanged mean and vicious statements, you never saw Mr. Depp assault or beat Ms. Heard on any occasion, correct? Judge? No, I never saw either of them physically assault the other one. Did you ever experience him become violent as a result of or because of smoking cigarettes or joints? As I've already explained to you, probably eight times. I've never seen Mr. Depp become physically violent with Ms. Heard. So if that's what you're asking me, if he smoked a cigarette and that made him violent, I think you know that that's ridiculous. And the answer is, again, no. Did you ever witness Mr. Depp become violent in any manner uh, on account of him smoking cigarettes or joints? If you want my honest answer, my honest answer is that Mr. Depp mixed substances constantly. And I keep trying to tell you that he mixed all kinds of things together when he got crazy okay. and violent okay. Did he? So, and upset and paranoid. So, and I never knew what he had taken. When you say, when you say when he got violent, when did it's you kind see of odd you never violent? saw anything then? I, I saw Mr. Depp throw glasses and dishware okay. on at least two occasions, which I would characterize as physically violent. And do I know mm -hmm. if he'd smoked marijuana or cigarettes before that? I don't know. When were those two occasions? Sometime during the time that I was living in Sweet Center. And, and one set at the Eastern Building. And prior to throwing those dishes, did you witness him um, imbibing any drugs or alcohol? I couldn't tell you, but seeing as Mr. Depp always was smoking cigarettes and marijuana, my assumption would be yes. Okay. Made him sound ridiculous. Do you recall um, when Ms. Bredenhoff showed you a picture of a clump of hair on the floor? Yes. Okay. When you saw that, that was more than a day after um, 
it was allegedly pulled from her head by Mr. Depp. Is that right? Well, if you want to get technical, my understanding was that their fight happened uh, very late at night, uh, which is technically the morning of the 16th. And I arrived at her house around midnight, the night of the 16th. So technically, it's not more than a day after. It's in the same 24-hour period. So technically, the answer to your question is no. Okay. So I'm just talking about the hair on the ground that you saw. When you saw it, was it your understanding that it had been there for more than 20 hours? I have no idea what time their fight started or ended. So I don't know if it was 20 hours or 16 hours or 13 hours. But... My understanding, again, was that they had gotten into a fight sometime in the morning of the 16th slash late at night on the 15th. I don't know at what point during the, which that during that fight in which the clump of hair was ripped out of her head. But it happened sometime then and there. So, yeah, sure. My, my understanding was that that clump of hair had not been moved. I don't know if it means anything, but Team Amber sure is represented by hostile people. Yeah. Is that it? That way. Please that let it. that be it. All right. Complete. Today's testimony. All right. Do you, what's your next, who's your next witness? We, we have another uh, video deposition, Raquel Pennington. It, it's mm -hmm. a long one, so we could listen to some of it. All right. Let's probably go ahead and start. Okay. We'll go ahead and start it today. Okay. We're not giving up 45 minutes, minutes in. Okay. That's okay. Fine. So are we are going to 532. Your Honor, just for your benefit and the jury's benefit, the questioning starts with Ms. Vasquez on behalf of Mr. Depp, and then I question Ms. Pennington at some point, which will probably be tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Just real quick, I, I don't think that Io's testimony was anything other than Amber told me these things. I never saw Johnny hit her. Uh, what city yeah. and state do you currently reside? I agree. Los Angeles, California. You've been deposed before, right? Well, Rocky should have seen yes. things, so I'm interested in this one. You were deposed in Ms. Hurd's divorce proceeding for Mr. Depp. Is that correct? Yes. Have you been deposed in any other matter? No. What was the purpose of the declaration that you submitted during Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd's divorce? The purpose of the thing that I wrote, which I don't know if it was technically called a declaration or whatever it was, it was to write down my account of events as fresh in my memory as possible. And Ms. Hurd asked you to, to write down your witness account. Is that correct? I, I do not remember actually. I think, did, I don't know. Did Mr. Depp ask you to write down anything in support of any legal filings? I, I, I don't remember. So it's your testimony sitting here today that you don't remember one way or another, whether it was Mr. Depp or Ms. Ms. Heard that asked you to write down your witness account during their divorce. Is that correct? Um, I wrote down my account. That is the memory that I have. I wrote down everything as clearly as I could remember it as soon as I could. You provided a witness statement in the UK proceedings. Is that correct? I believe so. Do you recall how many witness statements you provided? Just one. And you provided this witness statement to the son's attorneys? Is that the killer, Camille, I'm hearing? Yes. I don't yes. know who it got provided to. Did you testify in the UK trial? Um, yes. And for which party did you testify for the UK trial? I believe it was the um, publication. From the end. And by the publication, you mean the Sun? Yes. When was the last time you spoke to Ms. Heard? Perhaps six months ago, maybe more. What did you and Ms. Heard speak about? Probably 
probably um, it was before her baby was born. So we were mostly speaking about her baby at that point. Do you speak to, when was the last time you spoke to Miss Whitney Bird? Um, around uh, November, October, November of last year. And when you say last year, you mean 2021? Oh. Yes. That too. When did you first meet Ms. Amber Heard? Um, I believe it was 2003. These two when are in 2003 developed a friendship. Is that right? Yes. Would you say you were best friends? Um, we became very close friends. Your friendship with Ms. Heard it persisted through her relationship with Mr. Depp. Is that correct? Yes. And you were friends with Ms. Heard through her divorce from Mr. Depp as well. Is that correct? Yes. Other than when you lived at the Eastern Columbia building, which we'll get to, did you ever live with Ms. Heard? Yes. When was this? 2017? 2017 to 2018. This was the person that yeah. Curry testified Amber Heard punched. Where did you both live? We lived on Holly Drive. Was that a home? Yes. Yes, of the check. And yes, did you pay did your depositions count towards the time? We don't know exactly um, what the split is, though, between no. the two sides. Did Ms. Heard? Yes. Sitting here today, do you still consider Ms. Heard a friend? Um, I wouldn't consider her not a friend. What does that mean? We don't speak. So we are not enemies. Uh, Why don't you speak? Um, we grew apart. Mm -mm -mm. Interesting. Yeah. It happens. Can I just like a question point. right back? Yes. I think they had a falling out of her Raquel uh, stealing or misusing her credit card. Somebody sitting can here me today, you can't give me one reason why you oh, grew wow. apart from Miss Her. No, I wanted to spend more time with other people in my life and prioritize <laughs> other relationships and other yeah, other relationships. Amber doesn't let you do that. <laughs> Amber her. Did you ever see her using illicit drugs? Can you define illicit drugs? Not prescribed. Um, yes. Did you ever see her use cocaine? Mm. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Somebody times. finally tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just popping Molly and shrooms and acid. Okay. Countless? No. Less than 10? Yes. <laughs> Less than five? Yes. If you remember, when was the first time you ever saw Amber Heard use cocaine? I, I don't remember. Hard to remember when she does it all the time. Do you ever do cocaine with your heard? Um, yes. How often? Mm. 
the reason why these are edited not like this often is because they pull out portions of a very long deposition using more to, uh, to admit into evidence. They have to, both sides have to agree uh, on it. No. So that's why. That's convenient though. Did you ever see Ms. Amber Heard use cocaine while she was in a relationship with Mr. Depp? Mm, I don't think so, no. Mm. You know what provisional is? Yes. Are you aware that Ms. Amber Heard has taken a drug called Provigil? Yes. Do you know when she started taking it? Uh, no. Do you know whether Amber Heard continued to take Provigil during her relationship with Mr. Depp? Mm, no. Did she ever tell you that she had stopped taking Provigil? She never told me that. Are you familiar with any of the side effects of Provigil? No. Did Ms. Hurd ever tell you that she was experiencing any side effects as a result of Provigil? She never said anything about that. You testified you saw Ms. Hurd use mushrooms less than five times, yes? Yes. Each of those five times, or less than, was she in a relationship with Mr. Depp? Did you say each of the five times? Right. Not each of the five times. How many times that you observed Amber Heard use mushrooms was she in a relationship with Mr. Depp? Maybe three. You recall the specific occasions when you saw Amber Heard use mushrooms while she was in a relationship with Mr. Depp? Um, the first Coachella that we went to, the second Coachella that we went to, and Um, maybe at Hicksville. Was Mr. Death was Mr. Death at Hicksville? Yes. Around June of 2014, you moved into one of the penthouses in the Eastern Columbia building. Is that correct? I don't remember which month, but I did move into the penthouses. Approximately in 2014? Um, uh, approximately. And Ms. Heard at the time was in a relationship with Mr. Depp, correct? Yes. And it was Mr. Depp who invited you to live in one of the penthouses, right? Uh, they both did. When you say they both did, they both sit you down and invite you to live in the penthouses? I don't remember how the invitation happened, but it came from both of them. This was a penthouse Mr. Depp owned, right? Correct. And specifically, the one you lived in, it was referred to as penthouse one, right? Correct. And when you moved in, Mr. Depp gave you a master key to all the penthouses he owned, right? It could have been um, one of his assistants. When you say one of his assistants, you mean Mr. one of Mr. Depp's assistants? Correct. So one, either Mr. Depp or one of his assistants gave you a master key to all the penthouses that he owned, correct? Mm, yes. Mr. Depp never charged Mr. Group for rent while he lived at Penthouse 1, did he? 
he did not charge uh, him any rent. No. Did either of you get physical? No. And how was this argument resolved? We talked it out. You recalled another argument with Ms. Heard at Holly House, is that correct? Mm-hmm. What was this argument about? She really seems thrilled to be here. I think that we were setting up for Thanksgiving and um, we were looking for uh, maybe some glasses or some dishware. We had just moved in and we couldn't find them anywhere. And then um, she finally found them in a place that I thought I had looked and uh, we started arguing about that. She thought that I wasn't uh, looking hard enough, I think, and I told her that I thought that I looked there. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what their argument was about. Um, was this just a verbal altercation or did you get physical with each other? Um, yeah, I believe that we, I believe that I pushed her. How did Ms. Amber Heard react to that? She, she either pushed or hit me back. Yeah. You know where she, where she hit you? I think it was on my cheek. Do you recall any other physical altercations that you've had with Ms. Amber Heard? Uh, no. Do you recall any specific instances when you saw Amber Heard get into a fight with someone else? Uh, no. In the time you've known Amber Heard, have you ever seen her wear hair extensions? Uh, yeah, yes. Did she have hair extensions in while she was in a relationship with Mr. Death? I, I, I don't know when exactly she had them throughout the time of knowing her. I'm going to mark Ms. Pennington Exhibit 1, Ms. Pennington's witness statement in the UK proceeding, which is dated June 16th, 2020. Ms. Pennington, first and foremost, do you recognize this document? Yes. Ms. Pennington, this is a sworn witness statement that you, you provided okay. in the UK, right? I understand. I wanted to get to the bottom and make sure that this was the one that I signed and saw the date, and that was the full document. I just finished it. Yes, this is the document. Did you write this witness statement yourself? Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Yes. Thank you. Did anyone help you write this? Um, no. Did Amber Heard help you write this? No. Did Amber Heard's counsel help you write this? No. Other than your attorney, did you speak with anyone about the preparation of this witness statement? No. Could please turn to the 10th page of the document where your signature is? Where Amber thought a signature is? the reasoning for asking for 32.5 million. Unless I missed something, I could have. I think Is all we got was she didn't ask for what she was owed, quote unquote. Uh -huh. That is my e-signature, yes. Are all the statements in this document true to the best of your knowledge and recollection? Yes. 
He previously testified that you went on a trip to Hicksville with uh, Ms. Hurd, Mr. Depp, and some other friends. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you for this, Woody. Do you recall when this trip occurred? I appreciate your perspective. It helps to have folks like you talking out or speaking out. I Not say. off the top of my head. Do you recall who else went on that trip? Yes. People are asking, this is Raquel Pennington. So she was, uh, uh, was a good Whitney friend. Who was one of the freeloaders who got an Nathan, from Johnny. Who was, she, um, one of who was Johnny's assistants. She testified towards the beginning of her um, depot that she, that they grew apart because uh, Rocky Brittany wanted to Eustace. prioritize other relationships. Right, exactly. Kelly she didn't get into specifics beyond that. Milano. Nice break of line. Very diplomatic of her. That's fine. Yep. I can't believe uh, Herd's team is offering this. Do you think it's really just lousy? Basically, it, 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 it kicks off with her hitting somebody. Trying to remember. It's ridiculous. And, and a good yeah. friend who chose to leave her. Right. Yeah. Why? Because she's nasty. Because this is the best she's got. Otherwise, they would just have no one testifying for her, right? Oh, I, I, I don't remember anybody else. He was on record with like bruises. Yeah. Where were you all when gave her? It's pretty sad, to be honest. At Hicksville yeah. Trailer Park. What Your we're seeing is the result of the life. That become, quote, well angry and aggressive, end mm -hmm. quote, toward a friend of yours. It's a cautionary tale, really. <laughs> yes. It's unfortunate, but. Relative it's to where being... Mr. Depp was, where were yeah. you when this occurred? Actions have consequences. Um, we were around a campfire. My question is a bit more specific. Relative to where Mr. Depp was when this occurred, where were you sitting or standing? I was at the same campfire. How close were you in to a Mr. Circle. Depp? Uh, six to 10 feet. What time of day did this occur? Evening. Have you consumed any drugs or alcohol at this time? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> what do you recall consuming at that of course time? You did. Um, I don't remember. I'm just like popping by. Through. I don't remember specifically. Do you smoke any weed? No. Did you consume any cocaine? No. Have you consumed any mushrooms? <laughs> uh, That's I a yes. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. If you do shrooms so much you that you're just not sure of that particular day, come on. <laughs> No. Who was the friend that you referenced Mr. Depp became for angry and aggressive towards? Do you remember um, Gay? Kelly. Kelly Sue. <laughs> How did you know her? She was um, married to a work friend of mine. Do you have any independent recollection of how long you had known Kelly Sue Milano by the time Hicksville occurred? More than one year, less than two. What did you witness Kelly Sue Milano doing that evening? before Mr. Depp became, quote, angry and aggressive. I witnessed her hang out with the rest of the group. Did you see her consume any alcohol? Um, not that I remember. Did you see her smoke any weed? No. Consume cocaine? No. Did you see her consume any mushrooms? Um, maybe one. 
Perhaps, so or I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely trying it's to remember. Like a group of people. That's all I have to say. I haven't having good times. It was. I saw. I saw her day. eat some amount. I don't know how much. <laughs> so that's Did a yes. Did you see her consume any MDMA? No. You testified that Mr. Depp said words to the effect of, quote, get off my woman, end quote, to your friend. Is that right? I testified that. Did you personally hear Mr. Depp say that? Yes. Is this the, quote, angry and aggressive, end quote, conduct by Mr. Depp that you testified to? Yes. Other than telling Kelly Sue Milano to, quote, get off his woman, end quote, what did you personally observe Mr. Depp do that was, quote, angry and aggressive, end quote? I must know. That was, that was what happened. Then, whoa, I think Amber, I think they were, Kelly and Amber were hugging on a chair out by the fire. It's a big difference. He came out yeah. of nowhere, said that. And then I think that Amber and Johnny went back to the, um, to their trailer. What happened to trying to break her wrist? Other than hearing Mr. Yeah. Depp say something to the effect of get off my woman, what did you personally observe Mr. Depp do that was, quote, angry and aggressive? She'll know. That's it. Did you hear Amber say anything to Mr. Depp? I don't remember her saying anything. Did you hear Amber so far is the opposite of extrinsic corroboration. Yep. No. Wow. Why is this put on by her team? Remember about Amber reacting to Mr. Depp's behavior? Because it's the best they can do. They had to scrape the bottom of the barrel to get somebody. He's trying to comfort him. This evening, Hicksville, did you ever see Amber Heard consume any drugs? This is their landing point. This is how they stick the landing. This is horrible. It's more like a belly flop. I didn't we, see it. Do we know when the sister Whitney is going to testify? You didn't see Ms. Heard drink any wine? Yes, tomorrow. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember a specific time oh, watching her take a sip of a drink. Was she holding a drink? I don't remember. And this evening in Hicksville, did you see Mr. Depp consume any drugs or alcohol? I, I didn't see any specific image in my mind of him consume. Did you personally witness Mr. Depp, quote, in a rage, end quote, that Ms. Heard described? Did I personally witness the rage in the trailer? Yeah. Anywhere. No. Mm. Wow. Jeez. Did you hear never witness the rage. The wow. No. Well, now she wouldn't have been in the Did you trailer. Hear I mean, heard she, yelling in the trailer. But it's a trailer. No. Did you personally see that the trailer was quote trashed? As Has Ms. anyone described? testified to seeing Johnny hit Amber the no. next morning? No one has. Yes. Yes. This is where the essay happened inside the trailer, the cavity search. What specifically did yeah. you see in the trailer? According to Amber. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The thing I remember specifically was the light fixtures have been knocked off. You love it, Erica. But you didn't see Mr. Depp knock off the light fixtures in the trailer. Is that correct? It wasn't in there. I did not see it. My best bet is so that the only this thing you know about what happened in that trailer is what Ms. Heard told you and your observations of the light fixtures being knocked off. Is that correct? The only thing I know Daniel, about I what happened so. in the trailer is what I she told so. me and what I saw the next morning. And the only thing you saw the next morning was that the light fixtures had been knocked off. Is that correct? That was not the only thing I saw. It is the specific thing I saw. What else do you recall about the trailer? It was in a general disarray. What does that mean? Was... Trash and was torn apart. What besides the light fixtures were 
put on a part. I've already told you specifically, I remember the light fixtures. What the rest is a general disarray. Mm. What is a general disarray to you, Ms. Pennington? Stuff off the counters, uh, cushions thrown around, things strewn about on the floor. Did you see Ms. Hurd shortly after she returned from Australia? All right, why don't we just stop yes. right there? So that'd be a good breaking point, I think. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Oh, the breaking point. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and break for the evening. I Again, do not discuss uh, uh, this case with anybody and don't do any outside research. And we'll see you in the morning at nine o'clock. All right, get some sleep. Okay. Thank you. Get some sleep. <laughs> yeah. That no. means they were getting bored. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th they, probably, they probably are falling asleep yeah. in their chairs. Because she stopped them 15 minutes early and told them to get some sleep. They're bored. Well, it's yeah. such a letdown, too, after Amber Heard's earlier testimony. It's just kind of... <laughs> they should have ended on Amber. They should have done gotten all, right. all this stuff out of the way. I just have a few items. Just for the right. record, I want to make sure to exhibit... All of these uh, people should have been before Amber. 1248 from yesterday actually should be correct in the record to plaintiff's 1248A. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. Thank oh, you. Okay, good. All right. And so the witnesses tomorrow, are they live, remote, or do we need a rem We have webline? one one live witness tomorrow. The rest That's are Whitney. all video. Whitney. So, all, so we don't Whitney. need a webex link. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Other than that, jury witness. instructions and verdict forms. Uh, I have received jury instructions from both parties. Thank you for that. However, I have not received agreed upon jury instructions as requested. Um, so I'm not sure if that has happened or not happened as far as getting an agreed. Your Honor, we have been trying to meet for that for a week. Well, you know, I, that, Your Honor, they're identified in an email to Sammy. Okay, so the ones that you agreed upon? Yes. Okay, that's fine. So if you could do the same and just give me the, which ones you sure. agree upon, sure. I'd appreciate that. Um, if we can get uh, also by Thursday, your objections to the ones that you don't agree upon in writing to me by Thursday morning, okay? Yes, can we Can we get that? just so I know what you're objecting to, because I only have two hours on Friday morning from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. To, to, to deal with this issue. So I want to make sure we're all prepared to get that done at that time frame, okay? Understood, Your Honor. All right, yes. great. Anything? Your Honor, I, I just want to make clear, we we haven't seen what they sent until they sent today. So okay, that, that's fine. To confer about this for a week. And I don't, I'm not interested no in anybody's yeah. finger pointing, but I understand, but we'll just go hmm. forward from here. And if I can get them Thursday morning, that's not interested fast. in anybody's okay. finger pointing. All right, Thank great. You, All right, have a good evening and we'll Thank see you, you in the morning. Okay. He's a move this trial along type of judge. That's the yeah. type of judge she is. That don't bring your problems to me, counsel. Yeah, figure yep. it out. Yeah, figure it out. Um, can I just say that I think Rocky's testimony was devastating to Amber? Absolutely. It yes. Was. Let's go over it. Where, what, what do you think was most crushing? devastating? Uh, where's the wrist crushing story? Do you know how much pounds of pressure it takes to crush a human wrist? It's a very frightening conversation to have in front of a group of people. And that's not what Rocky saw. And that's not what Rocky testified to under oath because that's not what happened. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and I just, I don't know. And also the other person, um, Io, uh, you know, okay, he has a drug problem. That's it. Never right. saw him put his hands on her. He has a right. drug problem. We already knew that. You didn't tell us anything we didn't know. Okay. Yep. Right. That's what's so compelling is that you have these two witnesses who were both best friends with Amber. In fact, they got into a physical fight uh, at her wedding uh, or before her wedding as to who was going to be the, the maid of honor. And, and that's where, in fact, Io Till It Right uh, got the nickname uh, I Slap Rocky because uh, he slapped uh, Rocky Pennington apparently over this dispute. Anyway, my point is that you have these two people who are best friends with Amber Heard, you know, her maids of honor or whatever at her wedding, and they can't testify that they saw any, any abuse. So, yeah. I will say that Io's description of the events in May 2016, at least as he heard them on the phone, differ uh, a bit from what Johnny and his security team offered. I don't think it's important, uh, but it is worth noting uh, that that's at least a little bit more pro Amber Heard based on him hearing a scream and some sound effects. I, I don't think it's very compelling from the phone call from New York, uh, but very I did fair. note that that happened. That's fair. Yes. Yeah, that's that's yeah. Uh, that's 
thin. I, I agree. I agree. That's the only additional information yeah. I, I like. That's it. As, as a factual matter, as a strategic matter, n nothing great. I, yeah. I can't. I literally, unless Rocky gets way better for Herd, I just don't know why they offered it. She, it's for May 2016. She hit me, so she's sort of abusive and aggressive. I, I no longer talk to her because I don't like her. Then, then she moves into, and now I'm going to contradict her version of events at uh, at the trailer park. This mm -hmm. is what we have so far. Right. Yeah. Where yeah. was this? Right. Yeah. I think it's for May 2016. Rocky is supposed to be in the room, and they are fighting that hoax claim from Adam Waldman. I think that is why she is there. Okay. Well, ah. we'll see. Um, I mean, mm. <laughs> So far, and not I, so I good. I'll keep an open mind. I, so I don't, I, she's her, she's terrible. <laughs> she yeah. she gets hit for and, and and not only that, the context of that story is whatever we were doing wasn't that important. Um, and then she, yes, and then you could, see, you could see that Rocky tries to say, "Well, I can't." She we pushed each other, maybe she pushed, and then like a couple questions later, well, you know, in the cheek, it's like, well, that wasn't a push, right? <laughs> um, and, and 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 yeah, she's terrible. I, the, the stories don't line up. No. We, we knew when she pulls like a line from a, a you know a Cinemax thriller that that probably wasn't said by a human being uh, <laughs> at that at that campfire. Sorry. Oh, uh, uh, it's over. Sorry. Sorry. Uh. <laughs> I've been so good about it each day. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's another oh, okay. verification for what we know uh, about about Amber Heard. So. I I also thought it was quite telling when um, Miss Pennington said, you know our relationship is not good. It's not bad, but we're, we're distant or whatever, because I wanted to spend time with other people. And to me, it makes me think about Dr. Curry again, because that's not a possibility with Amber. With Amber, it has to be all about Amber. I mean, look, I, I married this high powered Hollywood guy and now all my friends have to move in with me. Right. All my friends have to move into the complex. That's a little weird. You guys are newlyweds, well, but you bring this whole tribe with you. And now yes. when they want to have their own lives, it's like, well, now we can't be friends, you know, because you want your own life. Yeah. So it's a little weird. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. Yep. Agreed. Oh, the whole so, thing is weird. I mean, the, the testimony that from Io that, that, that he was going to be her best man. I'm sorry, but that that just grates on me like you wouldn't believe. It, it's It's just so whatever it, it, it's it's it, it, he's such a, a simp he's he's so, he's so uh in awe of her and she and just Johnny. runs him around and does whatever he wants to do and he says stuff like that that's insulting to both him and johnny that concept well, i think john I, johnny um, excuse me i think io do we do we four letter words on here uh, uh yeah. do we, do four, we, le four letter words are okay especially at this hour <laughs> i took io as more of a star fucker okay and the reason that I say this is okay. because the way in which he testified was, you know, I built this special relationship out of nowhere with Johnny Depp. I was immediately in love with him and he was immediately in love with me. And Amber and I were like soulmates and I'm a multi hyphenate and I do all yes. these cool things yes. and I write all these things. And I don't even yeah. know how many books I've written. Check out my next project. It's yeah. very much one of those like name checker Hollywood type of people. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say that other parts of IO's testimony were not uh, credible to me. I actually found some of it to be quite credible. Um, however, the intensity of your relationship and the importance which you give yourself in the relationship, I found to be quite suspect because it's kind of like, where did you come from? You met uh, Amber at a party and Johnny at a party. And now all of a sudden you, you have an entree into this celebrity world that you knew nothing about. It seemed like he was inserting himself a bit. He's where opportunistic. He yeah. yeah. Oh, he is opportunistic. We and were all cringing when he's like, well, I'm one of the few people who can check them. Exactly. Well, only, yeah, I can, yeah. Only I can rouse Johnny from sleep. It's like I don't know. I, I, I'm not a, buying that. A, Amber a, would tell me if she was having an affair. There's yeah. a shady history too oh, with Io. With Io and Johnny Johnny Depp's daughter. Did that come up? Because I stepped away for a moment. What happened with Lily Rose Depp and Io? He, he claims he's having a conversation with Johnny Depp, and Johnny's saying, I, "I think Amber's cheating on me." Which, by the way, she does a lot later. I don't know if she is at the time. I don't care. Mm -hmm. But um, he said, I think Amber's cheating him. And he's like, oh, I know her really well. And I just don't think she'd do that. I'm like, dude, nobody respects you. You yeah. wouldn't know. 
she doesn't well, what care about what, what about Jimmy's I mean, daughter oh it was, hard, it was hard to listen to so this came out in the uh in the uk trial that um okay so io is an artist and io was doing this project about uh lgbt um lgbt issues and anyway it was called something like Ten Thousand people or 10,000 faces. And it was supposed to be just getting pictures of, of different subjects um, who were supposed to be kind of across this uh, gender spectrum and fluidity, right? It's supposed to show that. Well, anyway, so in order to help Io out, uh, Lily Rose Depp, Depp's daughter, um, takes, has her picture taken just to, just to show support. And Io takes, takes this picture and, and a picture of her with Lily Rose Depp and posts it to, to Io's Twitter, Instagram, and basically insinuates uh, pretty clearly that, that Lily Rose Depp is bisexual. And Lily Rose Depp at that point was a teenager. I mean, she was underage. And so uh, she apparently becomes really upset about this, not because she, she, there's anything wrong being bi, but that's just not who she, she is. And uh, apparently that's when the falling out occurred between Johnny Depp and Io was after Io did this, uh, basically used Lily Rose Depp in this yeah, way. To get that, and clout. He, he wanted to, he wanted something sort of uh, newsworthy, and he wants yeah. it on his feed. Like, look how look how tight I am with people. It's right. sleazy stuff. Mm -hmm. to, to me, like, that I was the only that. thing that undermined his credibility because when he was saying, you know, there were some lovely things he said about Johnny and some lovely things he said about Amber, which I thought were like, oh, this is fair. If you spend time with these people, you have to like things about right. them in order to spend time with them. And I think, okay, uh, you know, maybe Johnny's not so nice when he's very uh, high or very drunk. I think that's fair, you know, but it was like, he didn't have a lot to save Amber with. So he was just trying his hardest. So I was on the phone and I heard a scream. To me, that one part didn't seem very credible because you could not come out and say, I've ever seen him abuse her. You know, I heard a slap or anything like that. But based on I'm on the phone, I called 911. It, that whole part didn't come across as very credible to me. But again, I could no. be biased, but it just didn't because it's it not. reeked of. I'm trying to hold on to some facet of this, yep. this dream that I had, this relationship that I had, and it's fallen apart, and now I've lost my entree into society. Well, and, and you have to understand that Io had a tremendous amount of access um, through to, to all of these aspects of Hollywood and the entertainment industry that he wouldn't have had without Amber Heard. I mean, there's a picture, you can go online and you can see a picture of Io accompanying Amber Heard to a Vanity Fair Oscars after party um, as Amber's, you know, a date or whatever. And, and so I just think that that's one of the ways, that's the way in which she really held held these people for as long as she did despite being this crazy manipulative person is that everybody was wanting something and then what happens is if people just want you for what you can give them then when things get tough everybody bails and i don't blame them i'd be bailing on amber too that's what that story you just told explains a lot to me though because what he he makes it look like i got upset with johnny and cut this off which it wasn't not, the case no. johnny got upset with him and got rid of him now We're his loyalty his loyalty goes 100 percent to amber heard so he tries to help her in this because that's his only that's his only tether to this lifestyle well, so he, he has to be he has to be extremely loyal to amber under the circumstances because johnny's cut him off yeah, but he can't. Yeah. He can't a hundred percent lie, though. I think that right. was right. it. I, I really did think he exaggerated I, where where he could, and then and then confirmed what yeah. we already knew. Yeah, well, I he think exaggerated so. ways in a predictable pattern, and, and I think that's okay. I thought he was pretty credible on a lot of stuff, as we talked did. about. Natalie, can you can you tell me what you think rung false about what he said about the phone call? Um, because that's the only useful part that I think really impacts the case at this point. And mm -hmm. I, I, I don't, there wasn't a ton of detail. So I don't know that I had any yellow flags raised or anything like that. So I'm curious. I think it was the lack of detail. Okay. Right? Yeah. That's what I think it was. It was a, a, it's kind of like some of, some of Amber's stories have like these unnecessary details, but no actual <laughs> details do. of the actual thing. Right. The superfluous so, ones. Yes, exactly. Dirty carpet, yeah. but. The you unimpeachable know, ones. Exactly. Exactly. It's also uh, clear but, to me that they prepped him. So yeah. they know, like, they know that he doesn't have additional detail because if, if you're trying to say you overheard Amber screaming because he, he was attacking her, you, didn't, you just don't hear, oh, I heard a scream. And then you go, next question. Yeah. No, you say, well, do you think that scream was from Amber? Did you exactly. ever talk about why why that occurred? Well, there were edits all around there. I mean, there were, well, that, was, that was a hugely, he gets very emotional very quickly and there's like six edits. 
throughout, yeah. throughout right. that and, sequence. And, and that's fair, but the the thing, what was she screaming? What was she saying? I'd like to know that. And the other thing was, oh, Johnny gets uh, high and he gets violent. Okay, that's a very generalized statement. Okay, uh-huh. number one, how do you know that he's high? She, Camille was very, or maybe it wasn't Camille, I don't remember, but uh, whoever was questioning him was very specific about saying, okay, well, did you see him smoke cigarettes? Did you see him, see him smoke uh, uh, weed? Did you see him drink? Well, I can't tell you what he was on. He gets very snippy when, you know, he could, I can't tell you what he was taking. Okay, when you say violent, who did he hit? Oh, he threw some dishes? Okay, how many times did he throw dishes? Oh, he threw dishes twice? What did he take when he threw the dishes those two times? So it's like you're trying to characterize things to help her. And sure, it is violent to throw dishes. But when you say the general thing of he was violent in a DV case, people are thinking he's violent towards Amber. And that's right. not the case. So it's kind right. of like yeah. you're kind of fudging the experience to try to make it seem like it's worse well, than what it is. Although, absolutely. again, like I said, to be fair, I think Io was largely consistent with the testimony we already have and largely telling the truth. I just think he was trying to help his then friend. Quick yeah. question though, on that note, do, it's his testimony to me lost those two claims of abuse because he has now some cooperation from a witness who seemed pretty credible to, you know, from my, from my, from what I saw, I think, I think those two abuse claims, are really up for grabs now. The sexual violence, I think Johnny wins on that one, but those two abuse ones, she's thrown a lot of mud at that. And I think that's really in jeopardy. With this witness, if she has any more witnesses who are going to cooperate some violence, then I, I then I think the abuse claim may be, may be lost. I don't think I corroborated anything, Nate. I disagree uh, entirely. No, I disagree. He says, he says, as part of his first answer, I never saw any violence inflicted by Johnny Depp on Amber Heard. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. But again, really it, sure, it, it's like, not—it's not about what he because it's not about the the way the and, and I don't know if it's it's the way they question him because the, that question about Johnny throwing dishes and all that stuff, it corroborates the fact that that's before I didn't think he did that. I thought that was just something that she was making up. By him saying that, it just—it was like okay, that is something that he does. Now, does, does that mean that he throws them at her? Absolutely not. But it's enough to say it's muddy. And just like you said earlier, so does uncivil law. If it really gets really muddy, Amber wins muddy. And I think that's what this is doing. It's just gives, it makes it more muddy for those two claims, particularly. But we've already I think the seen, cross-examination already Amber seen him changed throw, the calculus. We've yeah. already seen Johnny throw a plate. Yeah. We, we saw it. So the, the I kitchen, feel like it didn't matter. It's, it's been, the kitchen tape. Yeah. This would have been much more compelling if it was before Amber Heard's testimony. Mm. Well, I think we're Amber still Heard's concerned about yeah. it in the middle. I agree. Yeah. Un- that's an untouched point. series of. Oh, this photo doesn't show anything. This photo doesn't show anything. This photo doesn't show anything. You have no medical records from this. You didn't take photos of this. He doesn't attack you in this in this kitchen video, does he? You, this is a lie. This is a lie. This is a lie. And then that just ridiculous explosion of a redirect uh, has me saying, okay, I need actual extrinsic evidence. What the moment IO says, I never saw anything. I'm yeah. like, I don't know what use you are, buddy. Next. Right. Uh, because right. I need somebody to say, I saw something happen because I do not trust Amber Heard's testimony. And now I need somebody extrinsic. That's why I'm interested in what Rocky has to say about May 2016. But as it stands right now, I do not think Io saying that he threw some dishes does anything more than that video of him in the kitchen. I, I totally assume agree. I assume that Whitney's testimony is going to be the best that Amber gets. And I just have a question for everybody. So um, if Whitney, when Whitney testifies tomorrow, um, will uh, will they be able to bring in that uh, that video from the reality TV show uh, that was brought into the UK trial, I believe, where she has the bruises and everyone's saying, oh, Amber, beat your sister, Amber, beat you up, huh? You think they could bring that in? Presumably. I don't know it existed, so I don't know. Yeah, I mean, no, no, no. I got my channel. I'll plug my channel here if everybody wants to go to my channel and uh, and look it up. The title of the video is uh, "Did Amber Beat Up Her Sister?" But yeah, so there was a reality TV show that her sister uh, was going to be on, and I think there was only ever a pilot that was shot. Uh, but in in this scene, they're on they're at the pool, and Whitney, her sister, has these bruises, and the bruises are visible to the to the viewer. And everybody around Whitney is saying, oh, my God, why do you let Amber beat you up like that? Why do you let her do that? And Whitney's just kind of shyly sort of like, I don't want to talk about it. I say it goes to bias. That's why I'd be admitting All it. Right, right? I'm going it's like... wait, wait, what's the name of that channel again? What's what's the name uh, of that channel? Colonel, Colonel Kurtz. Kurtz. 
Colonel it's Kurt. In the description. Maybe everybody, maybe everybody should go over there and watch that video, like, and subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 100%. I actually yeah. am going to go over there and take a look everyone at Everyone that has been on this panel today, except for Puffin, um, <laughs> has been... Uh, um, you push the muffin well, channel. I really do. <laughs> Here, getting rid of the muffin. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, everyone who has been on this channel today has a YouTube channel and they are all linked in the description below. So be sure to go and check out everybody. Subscribe to everyone's channels. Um, by the way, Law Talk with Mike, last I checked, uh, was just under 40,000 subscribers. So nice. I feel oh, like we, we can, can get, easily we can get under 40,000. We can yeah, right there. You're way under Thank stuff. You. Mike has still got so much good stuff. Yes. So yeah. Mike, 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 Mike needs, Mike needs some love. You guys like, yeah. come on, come on. Oh, I mean, right Mike now he's right now. He's got a tie, me, I mean, but like, actually came he's, on my he's, channel. A, he's a non, he's a non top button kind of guy. I, I, this is the first Look time I've ever seen Mike. Yeah. All the way Mike is in full regalia right now today. I, What's I, going I, on? I know, Mike? <laughs> Real lawyer work today. I, 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 I was so going to do. I was like going to come on shirtless at some point. I just want to get him. Maybe if you get him to like 60,000 or so, he'll come on shirtless. It's really up to you guys. And I'll come on shirt. Oh, wait, never mind. I actually did. I actually do have a video where I'm shirtless. Okay. Well, something to look forward to. Go check it out, y'all. There it is. It's a joke. In order to entice you to subscribe to my channel, I have no videos where I'm shirtless. There you go. It's a light. It's a light. I'm probably at about this level, but I'm shirtless. And just just to make a joke, I'm making fun of the fact that a bunch of people are showing up to court naked. That's Hey, Mike, when you meet me, if I tell you I love you, don't believe me, right? <laughs> if I just meet you once and then tell you the second time, you know I love you, and then you say, I feel like I love you too. <laughs> no, 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 for you, Nate, I'll give you one freebie. Are we? You give me one freebie? Yeah. I meet you on day two and I love you. It's like, what? Is that? Did he really just say that? I it was you, it was a lot. It was a. I mean, and again, <laughs> if you if you spend any time around these uh, Hollywood types, you know they they do a lot of that with each other, and I get it. A lot of superficial relationships, but it was just a lot and like kind of unnecessary, and I didn't need to hear that, and it made me believe you a little less. Although for the most part, I believe what Io had to say. Oh, oh, the, we, we need to pull Io's man card. I mean, the, all, the, right now, <laughs> man card. There, there's no two ways about it. I see some people in the comments asking, um, why would why would Io a man want to be a maid of honor for Amber Heard? But this was prior to his uh, yeah, his gender yeah, transition. So this one, yeah. he, he was he I think he was yeah. going by they actually, but but he was. I, a I don't think it's unheard of for people to have mixed gender parties no. on their side. Yeah. 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 I had a I had a man of honor. Yeah, at my about wedding, it. So it happened. There you go. Yeah, I had a man of honor. Yeah. yeah. So then, so then, I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm sorry, but I'll see y'all later. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. So, a man of honor is like the guy that's forever stuck in the friend zone. Never no, made it out. No, no, no. He made it he, to the top it, tier of the friend zone. No, in, in my situation, not at all. He, my, my best friend was deployed, and he is my best friend's husband. She was supposed to be my my maid of honor, but she oh. got called to Saudi Arabia oh. like, for my wedding, so her husband stepped in. So no, I love oh, it. That's cool. No friend zoning. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Um, all right. Um, anyhow, long day. Anybody wow. else feel like that was a long day? Uh, yeah, it's been a long forty-eight hours. Yeah, it's been it's been a crazy forty-eight hours. For you, right? How much sleep did something. you get? Oh, night? Rob. Well, I was gonna say, Rob, you had to get excited when you saw the bed come out today. I was like, the bed oh. is out. The bed. I threw my arms up and then someone forwarded uh, Emily D. Baker post on Twitter the picture. So I went back and looked at hers. Her reaction made my week. Like, <laughs> like could you watch her react to that? It was like, oh, I love her. Someone watched it. And then she's like, yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, no, it was great. It was great when it popped up. Uh, I love Camille's question. She's like, do you see that? Did you see that knife or whatever? Did you did you do that damage mm -hmm. with it? I, I'm mm -hmm. like, ooh, that was bold. Yeah, I liked. I mean, I thought she could have gone one more. She could have done the accusation. You know, didn't? Isn't it true that you stuck the knife into the wood and pulled it like a lever to break that piece of the bed off? You know, or but the lead up to it, even saying the the gain purchase, I'm going, huh? Yeah, they're getting tips from us. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, it, it, but it, I, I will say this: it was beautiful 
to watch them play the deposition, the 2016 deposition testimony, and to see her smile. And remember, she, she put her hands up on her face when she said the wrong thing. That was just so horrible, that deposition. And it's funny because, Natalie, you were talking about, you said you guys are sleeping on the transcript from the UK trial, and that really came back to bite her today. It was like Big so time. insane. Big time. It was was anyone else skeptical that they were going to get those videos in? I mean, those were some of the muddiest yeah. depositions yeah. I oh. have ever seen yeah. oh, as yeah. far as sure. objections. Yeah. Yeah. Um, nuts. Nuts, nuts, nuts. And I, and I think Elaine maybe, I hate saying this about someone in the middle of a trial. She seems like she might be a little out of her league because she just doesn't know. Any, like, these objections are really, really throwing her off. Like, even the simplest Whoa. ones. And even her responses just seem, like, so off. Oh, no. I don't know. Uh, the, I think so she has some problems people, with her client. I, oh, you said it. You said it, Kurt. Um, some people here were saying, and it wasn't my idea, but that she's having a, a hard time with Amber, that they they have butt, bumped heads, and so it's making it difficult for her to question her because Amber wants to do her own thing and run all over the place. She doesn't trust her to not follow a leaded question. So mm. it was just jumping into the pool uh, mm. is, is what I think happened, and then she was trying to navigate around it and failing. I don't know. Dr. Curry's diagnosis is looking better and better with every passing day. <laughs> I, I'm getting in that courtroom for rebuttal. Oh, yeah. I am going in that courtroom for rebuttal. I'm not missing that. I didn't expect Elaine to just give up. Yeah, uh, you can't just right. let you can't let DUI get get all the glory. This is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I have only one question for you, Dr. Curry, on uh, read on rebuttal. Uh, any thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> Um, Phil Jones, real quick. Uh, so yeah, I, sorry, you're right. I did, I did close out your super chat a little too fast. He asked, "Do you think a hung jury may be better for JD? He still gets his truth out and becomes more martyr-like. Those neutral will empathize, making him even more endeared. Abusers will have no pushback." I, I, I don't think it's going to be a hung jury. I, I don't think. I, yeah, I, I think Johnny's already won. Let's let's just be yeah. let's just be fair. Yeah. Johnny has yeah. already won this this case. I think hung jury. Is is, a, is still a win, but I think honestly, if that title is re, is republication through Amber, I think yep. Johnny's won that claim. It, it's it, it's going to be a hard for me to for press me that he hasn't won that claim, mm. especially with this disastrous cross. So the other claims, um, you know, it's uh, whatever, but the the top claim of sexual assault, he's got it. He, I, I think I think that's a winner all the way. Yeah. I, I think it, I think he's going to win everything because I think what they were able to establish was that she is a lying liar who lies. Mm -hmm. She is deceptive. She's lied at every turn. Why wouldn't she lie in December 2018? Um, and once you think that about the party, I don't think the specifics matter as much. Yeah, yeah. I think really I right think home. in order for Amber to win a charge, a claim, um, Rocky's going to have to say, "I witnessed Johnny Still got yours. put his hands on Amber in some yeah. way." And that would without be that, great. Yeah. And without yeah. that, uh, he will only win on the SA claims. Um, but as far as uh, physical violence is concerned, he would lose that. But I think if Rocky doesn't testify to that, which I have my suspicions she won't at this point, uh, Amber is sunk all the way. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he said, she said, I, I don't think that, you know, I, I can't believe anything she is saying. <laughs> this is a, he I said, she said, Rocky she said. have to say something good, something. Because if yeah. you, like, where we've gone so far in the testimony, this is only good for Johnny Depp. Yeah. So far in her testimony, and I assume that they are rational, and unless they're, you know, they might have said, hey, we have to take the good with the bad, but I mean, unless that testimony improves, there was, there's no reason for them to offer it whatsoever. Listen, tonight I would be trying to talk about settlement. I'd be like, we, we should be talking about getting out there's, of this, Amber. No, but no, I don't, I don't think, I don't no think she, I don't think no hope, but I'm, but she but has there's no, no chance. As soon as I'm not trial saying started, do there's it. no discussion of settlement. I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's, mm -hmm. I'm not saying it will happen, but I'm saying as, as a, you know, as someone who's representing someone, looking at the best interest of my clients and looking at what's going on and saying, hey, listen, this is a, we may need to consider this now before it gets too late it, you know but, sure, but if, if, you're Johnny if, if she Depp, says no okay but yeah, but, you know it's I, I gotta at least tell her we need to consider this if, it's if not you're johnny Depp, what do you ask mind. for for extraction i would say what full confession yeah right. you know you're not getting that Bare minimum which i'm not gonna get at this point i feel better about trying to negotiate a settlement between ukraine and russia it's like uh -huh. they have more in common than these parties well i, I just think I, I, if you're johnny depp you say yeah sure we'll talk settlement i need a full acknowledgement that you lied um, and then, you know, now, I, hell, these, I don't care about your liability. These right. facts, I, I actually have to agree with Nate, except 
you take these exact facts, facts, every single thing happened, except it wasn't Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. It was John Smith and Jane Doe, right? Like two completely unknown entities, but all the other same things happened in the trial. Then this would not make it to the jury at this point. That's how badly it's going for the defense. The defense would be scrambling to settle just to salvage, like not having to pay the hundreds of thousands of dollars in attorney's fees. However, it's just gotten too much media attention. The parties are too well known. They're going to have to see this whole thing through. But if, Mm -hmm. if she could salvage this by settling it out of uh, stopping the trial right now and settling, that would be a blessing to her because she's, she, she's going down so bad. Natalie, everything you said, I agree with, except one thing. I think we can even simplify it. Just change their genders. If Amber yep. Heard was the guy and Johnny was the was the woman, yep. I think this case would be would easily be over, right? We would be yep. laughing yep. that it would be so funny. But yeah. the fact that she has a, any shot is because the genders are what they are. But if those genders yep. are reversed, then John, then then Amber Heard would be done. That would be that would be a good point to put into closing argument for Johnny Depp's side. Yep. Yeah. yeah no, really good I, point. This wouldn't have gone so far if Amber Heard was the man and John. That audio mm-hmm. recording alone, tell everyone, oh, okay, it's yeah. Johnny Depp on the phone. Amber, sure, tell everyone you're a victim, Amber Heard. <laughs> sure. What do you think the, the jury will think, Amber Heard, when they hear that you're some victim, right? Yeah, and or, or, or like, impromptu hangings outside the courthouse oh, yeah. still a thing because, you know, we're down for that is what they'd be thinking right about that point. It's over. I didn't yeah. hear Amber stop being a baby. Uh, That's not Rob, question for you. Uh, why weren't you in the courtroom today? Why only DUI guys? Sorry, this may have been uh, answered already. Because some line cutters. Um, basically, there were people that donated a great amount of time to standing in that line from, I think, 7 or 8 o'clock at night till till this morning. Um, they had spaces. It's it's informal until the sheriff gets there at like 7. And honestly, it's kind of mob rule. So it's the past the conch, like that the person makes the call. Um, it's that crazy. Uh, so apparently this morning, sometime anywhere between four and five, uh, a bunch of people showed up, uh, wedged their way kind of into a blob at the front of the line. Um, our line standards had lines and numbers 70, 71 and 80. Um, and there was one up ahead that uh, DUI guy got and hit, that was number 30. DUI guy ended up getting the 58th um, bracelet having number 30. And Runkle and I were about 14 outside of the top 100, having numbers 70 and 71. God. So the shenanigans that are happening in that God. line are ridiculous. God, Aww. I'm so sorry. That yeah, sucks. That sucks. That sucks. And it sucks for the people that that took the time to to donate their time to you guys, so you could get some rest for it and everything. And you know, and yeah. that 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 was that ended up being. For nothing. Uh, it if, sucks. If you guys never get back, I still think you probably saw what will turn out to be the best day of the trial. I yeah, think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, think, I think so. I mean, I would have liked to see Cross. Oh, I would have especially liked to see her drop that line going over the cross and the, of the of that issue. But yeah, her direct. And then honestly, I to Nate's someone made the point about does Johnny win? Johnny gets the last word. Johnny gets his rebuttal case. He does. And yeah. based yeah. on what I just saw in her cross examination, she opened up so much that can be brought up in a rebuttal. And I'm going to try to be there for at least one of those days. Uh, yeah. By the way, an update on months, Runkle. Right? Runkle just left my house uh, to go to Fairfax to start waiting in line for tomorrow. That's insane. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah, get him in. Get Thank you guys. Wow. Like and subscribe to Runkle of the Bailey. Yes. I, I want to ask you guys him. Today. Oh yeah, Runkle of the Bailey. I want to ask you guys a hard question. Can we cash app them for coffee or something? Can we can we send him some coffee or something? Like that? <laughs> I really would like. Do you to. have a Venmo or something? I can yeah. Send. The number you can send. People, it to them, right? did I did I mention that people sent people door dashed us food while we were in line? Oh, that was awesome. awesome. Okay. It's awesome. supposed to be uh people people are so amazed at doing doing Just it's now. it's this internet stuff is great. A hey, quick all right for you guys. Um, there, was, there was something that came up. Since we, we, we are all saying they're all in, right? There's no settlement. Mm. Do you pull the trigger and take the risk of, re, of calling Johnny Depp if you're Amber Heard's team? It's a risk, but it's already oh, all the shit. What, so. what risk? I'm not sure it could possibly get any worse. <laughs> I'm not so sure there's risk yes? <laughs> Just Hail Marys for days. Why? Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Oh, so you guys, you guys are going because I, I was thinking about. It. I was like, uh, hell, we, what, what else do we got? Right. That just. Oh, seems I, have, I have a different question. Um, does uh, so I have to clarify one rumor that's been circulating on Twitter like crazy. Mm-hmm. 
the exchange between Elaine Bredhoff and um, Amber Heard, that was overheard by a courtroom onlooker. As the deputy was entering the back room, the door was left ajar as going into that back room. It was an onlooker who overheard that. Whoever is spreading rumors that the deputies are involved in spreading that gossip, mm. please dispel that rumor. That is not the case. The deputies do not spread courtroom gossip, and dragging them into this is a nightmare. What um, what was but, overheard by the person? What was it? The thing that was overheard was that there was a there was a few terse words by Elaine Bredehoff, um, and Amber Heard that resulted in, and I'm I'm trying to get my in-court guy to come and give me as many details as possible, but resulted in a statement that was akin to, if you don't like the way blah, 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 um, then you can go ahead and represent yourself. Woo! And that leads to my next question. How hard is Benjamin Rottenborn trying to convince Amber, uh, Amber Heard to uh, not fire Elaine to make sure that the, the, her appearance keeps happening in that courtroom? Because if she's not there, oh. fire Elaine. To be quite honest, to say to say just like, amp, like the, the whole, whole team, the it. whole team stays except for Elaine. Yeah. I hadn't thought about that. No, I don't think I don't think she can necessarily just fire Elaine. Now she's part of like a team of lawyers. Well, well it, it depends. It's an her. appearance from the firm, or is it an appearance from a specific attorney? I bet you it's an Elaine appearance is from not the from the same the firm written. as Rottenborn. No, they're not. They're oh, not is it not? Either. Okay. Well, I, I bet you they still have agreements anyway. Well, then yeah, Well, then she can can her. Maybe she should. Yeah, if she's not the only lawyer representing her, if it's not going to materially alter her representation, why wouldn't she be Although, able to fire her? I mean, I mean, Elaine her still has to get permission from the court, though. Even if, they were, yeah. if Amber right. fires her, she still has to get permission from the court to it's withdraw. Still too deep. Yeah, yeah, but if I'm sitting on the bench, deep. I'm saying, okay, you got a whole team. Everybody's here. Everyone's familiar with the facts. You guys are you guys are doing There's fine. There's no reason to say have no. Have your next attorney uh, yeah. do this. We're almost done. You guys can figure it out. Yeah, but how many she fires Elaine's? Like, 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 what, what difference is that going to make for the case? I don't think Elaine makes a break anything either. Fire well, Elaine. The jury not Jason hearing Elaine there is probably going to send some kind of message to yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, but she could get sick. Country. She can COVID if she just doesn't show up. One of my right. You know, one of my attorneys is suddenly not here. Yeah, but it could be a COVID, right? She got COVID or something like that. Yeah, she right, hasn't been right. in for 10 days or whatever. I'm, they, 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 yeah, not like, you have to tell them what happened. You think uh, draws yeah, but it still, it still looks very convenient. The timing mm. of it, they will notice. They will notice yeah, the yeah. timing. Even if, you just, if, not... even if you're like, oh, like Look, COVID. No. I would tell you there's no because, I'm not saying tell them it's COVID, but they, they don't. going to Elaine today, but I also would have told you she's not going to bust out of the courtroom before the jury. I also would have told you redirect isn't going to look like that. So what the hell do I know? Maybe Elaine never shows up again. Maybe. Yeah. Guys, <laughs> um, she disappeared. <laughs> uh, any word from DUI guy? He was live tweeting throughout. Well, not live tweeting. He was going out for every break and trying to send out as much tweets as he possibly could. Yeah. Uh, I have not called him because I'm imagining he's probably on his phone streaming. That man loves that phone and that selfie stick more than anything in the world. <laughs> um, I love it. But I'll probably shoot him a text message here, see if I can catch up with him. Um. I would I just like to weigh in on the whole Elaine situation. Uh, no. Um yes. That would be insane for her to let her go in the midst of the trial. Yes. That looks like I'm I'm losing. I'm losing and I'm scrambling yes. and I have a temper, which is what people are saying, and I fly off the handle because I can't even control myself enough to keep my same legal representation. That would be disastrous for her. She really should not do that. And I could think even the judge would be maybe concerned about the prejudice of the optics that she might order Elaine to just sit there, even if she doesn't do a single other thing as, okay, you know what, you want to get rid of her, she won't do anything else, but I'm going to have her sit there because I don't want the jury, you know, to be prejudiced against you because you yeah. can look like an asshole doing something like that. So yeah, uh -huh. I just, I, I, I don't care what Amber Heard does, but that would be very inadvisable. And this is especially oh, yeah. right after hearing from Io Till It Right, Rocky Pennington, both of whom mm -hmm. were her best friends who said, I'm not really friends with her anymore. This is like every single person around her mm -hmm. gets repelled by her at some point. And her mm -hmm. and her publicists and yeah. her publicists, which well, the, 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 the jury probably doesn't know the jury about. Doesn't that. know that, but the, you know, midstream she she cans them because, uh, you know, after after the, what the first few weeks it's a debacle and it's not going well for it. Well, it really it probably wasn't the publicist's fault. <laughs> you well, know, the jury now knows that there were articles about her hitting her former spouse. 
that yeah, her that two was best a, friends oof. are no longer her friends, that she yeah. hit one of her best friends, according to that friend's testimony. Um, but like, this was today. I mean, like, this was today no. for the jury at Amber Heard. You forgot about the making up that that she that the, the other woman said that she stole her story. Remember, she was reading the headlines. Like, she said, oh, that, that, that was facts, not in evidence. But that got in, right? If I'm the jury, she made up. <laughs> she stole this sidebar. I can imagine that sidebar because it what? was like, if you're going to let Rottenborn read all those crap rags against Johnny Depp. Yeah. I'm, I'm allowed to read, read out headlines right I mean, here. How how much that damning was... stuff came out in the last 30 minutes across? It was, oh it was I mean, you talk about death by a thousand cuts. That wasn't even close. That was take a machine gun to the chest. Like, <laughs> You're was, right, Erica. There weren't even no questions. It was that's what the headline reads. Yes. Okay. This is what this headline reads. Yes. This is what this headline. They, I mean, they're 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 just being entered uh, to to just disparage. Um, which yep. I, you know, I fine, <laughs> but. Well, but, she you know, put her wasn't... character at issue. She yeah, put her, her own character at issue when she said that her character was defamed when the attorney said that her allegations were a hoax. So they could yeah. bring in extrinsic evidence to say your character was already in the trash at the time that he said that your yeah. allegations yep. were a hoax. He it's opened the, the door. Yeah. Yep. He's never when character is the, the issue. Yeah. Yeah. We, we have we we act like like she's not even suing Johnny Depp. Like her claim has like yep. no hope at all. <laughs> no, I mean, claim, I think her claim, I, I think her claim, claim is has absurd. Hope, depending on what Rock is saying. <laughs> I do. I I would not be surprised. I'll, I, I, I would not the judge may keep it open until the jury comes back, just in case. But if the judge says, uh, if the judge says dismissed before it goes to the jury, I wouldn't be half surprised. With the counter suit. The counter suit, yeah. Well, we're um, gonna obviously ask, and it's like, let's... well. The idea it's legally tenable is like, meh. Uh, let's get some super chats because we've got a lot to go through. Um, <laughs> uh, is that all right with you guys? Yeah, it's, um, it's more than fine. I'm, I'm going to just jump on and just, just say what's up to Joe before I have to go feed the kids and stuff. So I'll see you sure, guys a little sure. later. All right. I'll see you guys later. I have to do a client visit. See you guys later. Thank you for having me. Yeah, Bye. of course. Of course. Later, guys. Yeah, all right. See you guys. All right, Steve Deacon, we've got a few questions for Nurse Liz. We'll see if, if maybe I can answer them. Um, is uh, Nurse Liz is a master of healthcare. What could she do to resuscitate Amber's case? Necromancy. <laughs> Witchcraft. Yes. Bernard yeah, says, Nurse Liz, yeah. could an MRA validate that AG had a broken nose and damaged tissue at some point? Oh, maybe AH had a broken nose and damaged tissue at some point. I don't know the answer to this. Would you guys know anybody with uh, MRIs? Uh, uh, MRI is better for soft tissue, but it's cartilage, so it, it reforms. So no, you, you, you just do if an you're X-ray. looking for a bone, you want an X-ray. Right. Uh, Whitney Pritchard said, "Nurse, can Nurse Liz speak, explain how a neurodivergent ADHD brain will have a paradoxical response to stimulants cocaine? Is this relevant? I, I think, oh, I don't know if Nurse Liz has said if she can speak to that because she's not a neurologist um, or or a psychologist. I think Dr. Tracy would have been able to answer that. I well, like, did, I like the effort, have... though, Whitney. I, I, you're going to drop a neurodivergent ADHD brain on us at the end of a long day? Well, this is like, this is actually kind of more like the beginning of the day ish. Okay. We're 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 going through these. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, we're getting that caught is, up that here. Is true. That is true. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I think that when, when we're talking about neurodivergent brains, from what Dr. Tracy said earlier, you can have some different kind of effects from what you might expect sometimes. She said that. She did. We can say that. Viking React says, could Child Protective Services take action if she's proven abuser who might snap at her child only if there is some kind of evidence of some kind of aggression towards her child is what Dr. Tracy said earlier. Ken Harris says, question, what do you think of this question? Miss Heard, so you're saying if you win $100 million, you're okay with Johnny just pledging to pay it to you. Okay, that's yeah. funny. I like it. Corbin Garrett says, can Amber Heard recover? Question two, do you collab with Legal Eagle? Hogue well, does. Rick Hogue has. He has. I have not yeah. had the pleasure of, of collaborating with Legal Eagle. I don't think he knows that I exist. But, you know, I've said it. I, he's welcome on the live streams um, if he ever so chooses. Flo Bella says, shouldn't someone ask the owners of the Australian house what phones were on the walls? You all rock. They didn't need to. They had photos. They had people there to testify to that. You don't need the owners for that. Yeah, I, I um, didn't get that either, though. The, so I, I saw that they were saying that that phone didn't exist there. What, what's the deal? I, I, I said the phone doesn't exist at all. <laughs> Camille, yeah. Camille intimated that there was never a phone. Yeah. 
Yep. So just the phones made up out of whole it, cloth. Well, it was it was that it was that the old antique phone supposedly mm -hmm. that that right. Amber was talking about. Although I don't know if she intimated that the phone didn't exist at all, but she just said, "Look, you said that this was something that he used that he smashed to smithereens." Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Her follow-up questions that are oh, so you're standing right in front of where the phone would be. That's convenient, isn't it? And how do you react to Ben King saying there was never a phone on that wall? Like those are her two questions about that. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. So she yeah, she did intimate that. She um, but no then, phone and then ever. she said you have, you have no photos of this other phone, right? No photos of it. So um yeah. And M says can evidence excluded be brought anyway to prove perjury like audio with other people present? That's going to be a different case. Perjury is a criminal a criminal mm -hmm. case that would follow after this litigation anyway. Uh Misty Clark says can someone hold Rob's spot then Rob show up later? We tried this. We tried yeah. this. We had some line holders unfortunately. And they, um, they did. It just didn't yeah. It just didn't work because other it people don't like worked. to follow the rules right outside the place where you enforce rules a the courthouse halls of justice i know my yep. god more like the halls of line injustice, injustice. anyway eric Brad, Warner, you tell your lawn lumber i didn't have to yeah have you not Remember, told they, the they, they, know know yet? There? they knew who we were <laughs> it was weird it was weird like when, did? when, oh, we, that's did awesome. our, when we got that's our bracelets and we walked back to the truck to the car to go change we started walking back up to the courthouse. This is this was yesterday. Started walking back up to the courthouse, and the entire back half of the line, like the other hundred people that are waiting for the rollover and to be told to go home, starts mm -hmm. applauding. That we and they were like, "Go law tube!" And yes. there was oh, other, so cool. There was also there was another media outlet it. there. I just, and the, you know what? You know what? This is oh, this yeah. is okay. this is I'll be right like back. this is once again awesome. like Rob. Rob, like, like having all of these milestones, including being recognized in public as a member of LawTube. I have yet to be recognized in I've public never been recognized as a in member public. of LawTube. It's so funny. Like, Rob, is he, he's, like, accomplished he's just, all of these things that, like, no one else has. Yeah. And, and, like, in, like nobody else yeah. having a channel. With Emily Baker. Yeah. He's just going to be randomly on network TV shows. All right. He's just going to be like, that's the bad guy. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was just funny. It, it really was. And there was, like, media outlets there where – there were people who were covering it and we had been talking to them all night wearing like mesh shorts and t-shirts and we yeah. came back wearing the suits and at least two of them looked up and said, you guys look a little different. And I was like, we do. <laughs> Thank lawyers. You. We're we going up. Amazing. Amazing. Eric Warner says, why CV not strike AH when she ramble on yeses and nos? Because not all of them need to be struck. Not all of them need to be, because sometimes it's helpful when she just rambles, blah, 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 because it looks to the jury like, oh, you're making up excuses. So mm -hmm. sometimes it's better to just let her ramble and then be like, okay, let's get back to the question at hand. Uh, Leah Gatto says, why does AH look at the jury so much? It feels uncomfortable and unnatural. I can't tell you why she does what she does sometimes. Sede AV says... Are there any cases in which the defendants can avoid or are prohibited from cross-examination? Thanks for the awesome live stream. Nope. 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 Never. You are on the hook. That's, yeah, that's just basic process right there. Yvonne De Silva says, so the attorney who, who would be the one cross-examining can choose not to do the cross-examination, but that is up to them, not up to the witness. Yvonne De, De Silva says, why does the transcript cost money? Shouldn't they be part of the court global fees? Can someone else take those and be refereed to? Nope. It's just, it's a, it's a court expense. It's not, uh, there's a, there's all kinds of court fees and stuff that people have to pay when they make filings, when they like parties have to pay all kinds of extra fees for stuff. That's just part of the process. Cause there's no one else to pay for it. Essentially. That's one of the reasons why this stuff gets really expensive. Um, Cypherian says, Legal Bites and Crew, do you think her lawyers coached her to drag out her answers, add in little comments and argue, et cetera, just to run t the time clock out judge set? I think a lot of what she was doing was just Amber being Amber. And my, that's my opinion. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, I don't think they have much control over. Yeah. Richard Freeman says, Runkle, is the wood shop glorious? Oh, I'm so sorry he's not here. Is Rob going to teach you how to make a white powder box? <laughs> Great first project. <laughs> Leanne G says, is AH drinking H2O with the French vitamin tabs? LOL. Yeah, she's, she's got some some colored colored water there, huh? Phoenix Flame says, I keep trying to join your channel slash team and it goes through, but then it keeps refunding it. Any idea about this? My super chats go through fine. I 
don't know. I don't know about that. I'm sorry. This is the first I've heard of, of that particular struggle. Uh, Don, Don Lionheart says, Elaine has been really out of line. Sanctions? Not enough. Not enough. Um, reprimands from, from the judge, probably, during a sidebar. Probably, but not sanctions. I mean, she and got she got her punishment this afternoon, which was yeah. the judge didn't let anything in, made her look like an idiot to the jury, literally called her out for asking leading questions, and then made it clear to the jury that every time she says what if any doesn't automatically make the question not leading. Yep. Yep. Andy the game maker says, as objectionable as they might be, is it to Amber's benefit to be as consistent as possible with her answers? She seems all over the place. Yeah. Hundred percent. Um, yeah, you want to be as consistent as possible for sure. Lone Wolf XUZ says, do you think Amber's people rushed the line to keep out the legal friends? Seemed ominous after the stare. There's been at least <laughs> a few tweets suggesting that. It's kind of interesting. Interesting. I, I don't think that's possible, but it also can be explained by just a bunch of people wanting to get in. So, there, I mean, there are yeah. a lot yeah. of reasons why, yeah. you, you know. There yeah. are also, like, selfish people out there that, that think that they're above everyone else's like rules of society <laughs> essentially Henry Gronard or Gronard uh, says if they could prove she filed that complaint would that be witness tampering this was the complaint against the the nurse oh no it wouldn't be witness tampering because you're not you're not trying to get her to well it's pretty close it's not. I've had it I haven't had yeah. any cases like for sure yeah, yeah no, I was gonna case. say because that's that's intimidation. That's that would be what. But yeah, yeah, could be, could 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 be. I mean, potentially, but, he, but then no, that's really it. It just looks bad. Yeah, Susan Silver says her constant side eye and full on stare at the jury, especially during sidebars. Is this even remotely normal during a case like this? I mean, you get you get witnesses and parties doing weird things, but like I don't know, I I haven't I haven't seen this level in a case i don't know about you guys i'm sure i'm sure I, mike I and rob i'm sure earlier. you guys have seen all kinds of weird things I mean, yeah, yeah. The, she, she's like she's so full of herself she just thinks she can just command the room and everyone's in love with her and all this crap and it's it's not good yeah kaylee says question for hogue what's your percentage for johnny depp winning currently curious 80 all right not bad. That's a pretty high. That's a pretty high that's right, number. That's right, that's right where my, my mind was. It's hard yeah. to ever. I, I mean, I'm. I, even that to me feels like a guarantee. Like that's that's lawyer me guaranteeing because I, you just have to reserve for. I don't know a juror could do. <laughs> yeah. They didn't yeah. bring my client, so so much for that. <laughs> oh man. Well, well, you're 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 back with us. Maybe you can help us with some with some answering some of these super chats. Uh, Lindsay Michelle 93 says, I've never served on a jury before. Do they explain court process like impeachments and objections to jurors before the trial? You all rock. Do they explain no, court processes like impeachments and objections to jury? Okay, so, so the, no. what, what they're told about um, in objections is um, you are to disregard anything that I told you to disregard, right? So don't consider anything that I told you not to consider. Don't consider why I told you not to consider it because that's not a reason. Don't take any of my facial expressions or anything like that as a reason to think one way or the other about the parties. And then as far as impeachments are concerned, if they're based on prior and consistent statements, they're instructed before they go back and deliberate that this witness made a prior and consistent statement and you're allowed to think about whether or not that means this person's being honest or not. That's up to you. So mm -hmm. yes and no. Fair point. Kai says, question, okay, ATP, at this point, I feel bad for Amber Heard's lawyers. She's a nightmare client and gone rogue. What is strategy for dealing with a client who won't listen? <laughs> a lot of um, tough love, love conversations. There's not much you can do sometimes. Or do if, if they get to me, that's, that's frustrating. Say I tried. What, what else can you do? Yeah, yeah. Say, say and I, still, I, I and did they my will best. still blame you in the end. No, oh, of course. Yeah. Well, oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Have have all of your conversations with them, warning them about how things might turn out. Have that in writing uh -huh. <laughs> so that they can't come back and say you made all these promises and professional responsibilities and all that kind of stuff. That's that's when, like, you really want to make sure that you've got your ducks in a row uh, mm -hmm. to make sure that they don't come after you for a, a professional liability kind of situation. CYA. 
cover yes. your ass. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 Um, Lucky Revieza says, hello, what does motion to strike mean? And what are the implications to the testimony for the jurors? Sorry for compound- compounding question. No problem. <laughs> We're not in trial. We're not in trial. It's fine. Um, so motion to strike. So the whole time that they are that the witness is testifying and the whole time that the attorneys are talking in front of the jury, there is a court reporter that is taking down everything that is being said by all of the people that are allowed to talk. Um, and so they're making a record. So a motion to strike is basically an instruction or a request to the judge to make an instruction to the court reporter to basically strike out whatever, what was said that is problematic. So, and then implications to the testimony for the jurors, for the jurors, it doesn't really ma- like mean so much other than signaling to the jury, like, like that should be disregarded, like ignore what they just said, but it's more for maintaining a record for an yeah. appeal. Yeah. Now, losing those motions is another signal to the jury, which is why it's, it's risky to make it. When you move to strike testimony and you lose, the jury is now hyper-focused on what was just said. Yeah, yeah. Either way, so lose you- or win, they'll still fixate on what was said. You can't unring yep. the bell. They still heard it. So it really sure. has more of a impact on the appellate um, record. Yep. Yeah. So dear Al Haidar says somewhat irrelevant, but uh, but what what zodiac signs does everyone have on the panel? That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I think the sign people are so adorable, like the people that are into that type of thing. My brother is. He's big into that stuff, and I just think it's cute. Um, so I'm trying to check and see if maybe they brought my client now. They haven't. Um, so um, for me, I'm a Virgo. Right. Rob just headed for the hills. He's not getting ah, out. He's gone. He's, he's gone. Out, uh... <laughs> um, Aquarian. Libra. Libra. Nice. Scales Libra. Libra. <laughs> nice. Uh, Roz 805 says, question, what should the title of Amber's autobiography be? Mm. Lies and the lying liars who tell them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, fish story. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Big fish. Big yeah. fish. <laughs> I Funny can't think some poop related title, but like maybe everybody poops, something like that. Like there's this yeah. called everybody poops. <laughs> Something like that, <laughs> or maybe, or maybe a, a fishy dump. You could just merge those together. Uh, Funny Farm Texas y'all says question: Why did CV use records with Amber Heard was a male when Amber Heard? What? Uh, oh, uh, with so Amber Heard. Remember the designation says uh, human. That male. was a typo. Yeah, we saw we saw that when it was originally introduced with by Kepper. Yeah, yeah, it was it was just a typo. That's all. Yeah, that happens in medical records. Lamp 007 says, do you think Camille is leading up to yesterday's audio where Amber responds, why would I be when asked about being scared of Johnny? Do you think Camille is leading up to yesterday's audio? Uh, Well, they're not going to replay what she said in court. So that was just, that was in front of the jury that they don't need to revisit that. Um, Bring it up in closing. Yes. They absolutely will. That was electric. They are absolutely going to bring that into closing, I think, in my opinion. Um, Stephanie says, Andrea, is that a Weimaraner? He, she, how old, adorable. That, she said that that was a Vizla. Vizla or Vizla? Vizla, right? That's how you pronounce it. Um, and her name is Buffy. Do you guys um, want and- an update on uh, update on Runkle? Yes. Yeah, Rob. Um, and uh, a shout out to Nurse Liz. There are already wine later, line waiter, line standards. There yeah. at the courthouse, standing in for Ian, he just pulled up to the garage. So Nurse Liz oh. had someone there basically all afternoon. Oh my gosh, she's wonderful. She's seriously the best. That is awesome. Yeah, really. Seriously, Anthony two nineteen ninety three says after the emotional crocodile tears from Amber Heard's legal team questioning, do you think JD's team is provoking with all evidence and questions to bring out her true character for the jury to see as Amber Heard has been agitated? I think that's part of it. Certainly helpful for Johnny's case to bring that out of her Lord Voldemort. O nine Stein says, will they bring up the fact that Warner brothers said they dropped herd of their own accord and specifically not because of Depp or this trial. Well, it didn't come up. Why when you can present 600 headlines (laughs) about why she might've lost the job. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Noelish 2.0 says, don't you think Camille is leaving doors open for the jury to be speculate, to speculate in reply 
to Uncivil's next question would be, I really don't know what you think you all are the best. Um, yeah, there were, there were, there were a lot of doors for, for Camille to, or well, yeah, that she just, she left open for them. And, and that's a good, that's a good thing for a cross examination yeah. because, because you, you want to do that because it leaves them thinking about it. And then, and then you, you don't run the risk of asking the one question too many where you allow the witness to explain things away. So, yeah. Oh, I've done it. Oh, I've done it. Have, have you done it, Natalie? Oh Yeah. Haven't you ever just, yeah, you answer a question, they start answering it, and you're like, I'm the dumbest attorney that ever lived. Yeah, like, oh, absolutely. And you're sitting there thinking in your own, uh, oh, and, and, and then, like, you're trying to, like, like be cool, so you're just, like, you're you're acting like it's cool, but you're dying inside, you know? And usually it's, like, something your client didn't tell you, and so now you've asked that one question too many, and they're like, oh, yeah, like, the first time he beat me up, you know? And I'm like, what? <laughs> oh, no! Yeah. And then oh, you're like, yeah, no. yeah, that's cool. No, we got this. Yeah, you know, but you're like, why did I do that? Why? Philip Whitaker says, how much is the legal team allowed to give Vasquez pointers and support while she is on the stand doing cross? 100%. As much as really they want, as long as they're not disruptive. They did with her as evidenced by her her cross. I mean, that was a lot more scripted than I would have ever planned to cross. Mm -hmm. um, but the script was definitely there for a reason. And she did really well with it. Yeah. Great. And we have to remember, yeah. Camille is not a senior partner in her firm, right? She's she's, she's not a brand new attorney, but she's a, she's a plucky, younger, dedicated, energetic attorney. The older attorneys are going to be there to give her guidance. The younger yeah. ones to give her the research assistance and stuff. That, that I just worked on a team in a case. You want that in your team. You want everyone working together as long as they're not, you know, taking over her objections or anything like that. Exactly. Adventures in Lauren Land says, as a U of I alum and a huge fan of Hogue, can I get him to say, go Illini? Of course you can. I was born in Illinois. Go Illini. My father is an Illini. You can, of course, nice. get me to say go there Illini. Go. No worries. Nice. Awesome. What if any, <laughs> says impersonation by Kristen Wiig, BM Plain Scene. I'm just so excited. I feel relaxed and I'm ready to party. Okay. <laughs> that anyway. was too good. Thank you. <laughs> I have done that maybe too many times. <laughs> um, Matt Pelzer says, Hogue, was Amber Heard in Star Wars? Does she have access to a back to tank? Sure. I mean, uh, it, we've talked about healing factor. We've talked about other things that could definitely do it in a day. <laughs> yep. Yep. That was um, so much. <laughs> what's that? A back to tank uh, and having a back to tank so would explain so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, Raquel says, anyone see Ben Chu's chunky rings yesterday? I've seen a couple times. He's had some chunky rings on, which really I feel like surprises it, me. Just, just like a couple. It looks like one, one is like a maybe like a class ring, and then his oh, wedding no. ring, and maybe maybe like a like a family herald kind of thing. He's like got a, like a sigil ring looking thing. He does. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, no. Ben is ready for prime time, man. Let this case be over <laughs> so Ben can go get his TV show. He's so ready. <laughs> I, I would, I would love, I'd love to have him on the channel. I'd love to have all of all of Johnny Depp's team on the channel, but especially Camille. Really, really, really would love to have like a ladies-in-law interview. That would be so awesome. Um, LB Mesmer says, "Is it customary for a witness to respond to the jury, rather whomever is asking the questions?" Yeah. That wasn't the case when I was on a jury not too long ago. It just seems weird. Thanks. Jury witness to respond to the jury. Uh, They're talking about Amber talking directly to the jury. It yeah. depends. If you can do it naturally, it's it's not weird. Yeah. Um, yeah. The way that she yeah. did it kind of felt creepy. You saw Dr. Curry explaining things to the jury. Yeah, it, it depends on the flow of the situation. Well, and also, like, what is it that they're talking about if you have something that is a very 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 weirdly intimate thing that you're talking about like the the bottle thing in australia making eye contact it, it's like it's like when people talk about like when they take their dog outside to poop and they make eye contact with you it's like oh. people get weirded out by that because it's a very like intimate weird thing people are like why is my dog making eye contact with me when when he or she does this um you know and there's a, there's a reason for it because like they're i've looking never for heard security. it analyzed that way but i don't think i ever want to hear it analyzed any other way than that <laughs> it's right though depending but on it's the because it's a very it's a very intimate thing that she's talking about right like it's something that you wouldn't like normally connect with a stranger over 
So I, I do it as an attorney. I, I would like, depending on the cross, I will just walk up in front of the box and sit there and look literally in their eyes, and and I'll like survey them like this yeah. because I just want them to hear what I'm saying. I don't but even care what the witness is saying. I'll ask them a the, question. That's you as the attorney. It's fine because you're you're mm. a level, uh, you're a degree separated, at least one or two degrees separated. Yeah. But for the witness themselves, it is a very, very, very intimately personal thing. So it feels intrusive to be like making eye contact with them as they're talking about these details. I actually tell my 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 clients to make eye contact with the jury, but not 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 the way Amber Heard is. Like I mean, you know, yeah. make make occasional like you know, like casual, whatever, like. You got to gauge it, but like makes a little bit of eye contact, but answer my questions. And, and in, yeah. And, and, but do you want them to be also kind of like smart about it? Right. Like talk to them when you are just explaining things, but not in those moments that are like super intimate and uncomfortable. Think about it, but don't look like you're thinking about it. (laughs) Yeah. A little bit. I have a little bit of tiny bit of insight on this. Um, I think I'm like on that interesting cusp where like I learned from lawyers when I first started that are like now retired. And then um, there are now younger lawyers behind me and like things, I'm, it's like things are changing as far as the advice on what to do with client interaction and juries. I know that the traditional wisdom was when you're cross-examining someone, meaning it's a witness that you don't want the jury to relate to, you get up next to that witness and you have that witness talk to you, Right. They talk to you, they're not making the connection with the jury. And then when you want your, when you have your client on the stand or a friendly witness, you stand next to the jury to force the person to talk to you, which forces them to talk to the jury, right? Uh I have seen that change a bit in in the past, like maybe five or six years or so, where a lot of the trial skills um, advice is. Your client can come across as creepy if they're staring at the jury. Or if, say, there's, like, graphic imagery up on the screen, like, say, an autopsy, which wouldn't be the situation here, maybe pictures of injuries, and they're staring at something that should be, like, very distressing and hard to look at and, like, say they're the alleged killer or they're the alleged abuser. You really don't want them to be, like, cold-blooded staring at that or cold-blooded staring at the jury. But you do want them to make eye contact from time to time in a natural fashion. That's a very tall order to ask someone when they're a litigant in a case to understand those nuances. So it's just not easy. But in this situation, it did come across as creepy how much she spoke directly to the jury. I really had a problem with her talking to them, not testifying to them, talking to them, being like, oh, it may seem like this, but it's actually that. She's talking to the jury. And I thought that was very bizarre. But I won't lie and say I've advised clients talk to the jury, but I just don't mean it like that, right? So uh-huh. yeah. it's a new You're one. doing it wrong. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Britt Cormier, thank you for this very, very generous super chat. This is for the record, I'm very disappointed in LawTube. Sure. I thought I made it clear I last week that I needed you to stop the best testimony from happening on a Tuesday. The one day I have to be in the office all day in meetings, a simple request that was not followed. JK, you people are best. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Sense. Thank you so much. So we kind tried of to stop the trial. They said no. I know they didn't. They didn't let us. Bram, uh, for Spidey, I'm sorry he's not here. Says, do you think Ah would would fool Penn and Teller? <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, good one. But uh, J Man sucks. Says, do we have an inside man inside the courtroom today? Yes, that was the UI guy. Uh, Wooter K says, might Dr. Hughes have put in a complaint against the nurse as he seems so convinced that these professionals do not process her reports correctly? I don't think Dr. Hughes would have been the one to do it. Yeah, I don't know. Having one professional report another professional, I don't, yeah, I don't see that happening really. Uh, Don Pierce says, Elaine saw the video was new. I thought all evidence had been entered. Did I misunderstand? Thanks. Oh, video. Which video are we talking what, about? What video? Oh, I know yeah. this, is, this is the problem with going through super chats at this hour. Chats in from. Um, I'm sorry. Sorry, Dawn. Um, Kai says, was that a misfire by Camille or will the jury also find AH answer confusing? It happens after the B-Day, but she remembered it happened during the B-Day. <sighs> Which what like what was it that happened? Like what was the thing that happened during the birthday? I, I know that there was about, something that are we happened. Are talking about the exchange in the car where it's um, you need to go 
I need you need to leave. I need you to leave. And it, and it was like I'm going inside, and and this is where Amber was saying that Johnny was going inside to do drugs. Is that where we're no, talking? No, this is earlier in the day where I think it was like, I think this was when she had texted him this like, is, "Hey, can you bring wine and weed or something?" Mm-hmm. There was a this, question about that, but I can't remember. This is no. This is what I said was a misfire. So this is when she makes their go to the testimony from a day ago and says, "You never told anybody about." the very significant assault that you claimed happened on the bed at the birthday. And uh, it's not in your interrogatory. You changed your story from April till now or February until now. Um, Let's go take a look at the, and and she says, no, I didn't. I mentioned it. And then they, Camille goes into the book and then Amber says it's on page 64. It's not tied to the moment of the birthday. It's kind of more generic. Oh Uh, yeah. I, I do think Camille overreached there. Uh, primarily because it wasn't tied like you would have hoped uh, if you're Amber Heard. But I do think it's yeah. an Amber Heard win. I think it's not a big win, uh, but I, I do think that was one area where Camille overreached. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. It was, it was a small enough win that it, for me, it was honestly. <laughs> Lita had nothing. What? When did this happen? Uh, what are we even talking about? <laughs> the dragon's treasure says question. How can people support such a lovely and hardworking lawyer while getting a fine supply of loose leaf tea? Also no more order delays. You guys can go to the dragons Use a uh, promo code Amber turd <laughs> for 10% off. I get a nice little commission from it. And you also support a wonderful, wonderful small tea business that has legitimately delicious teas. Um, so go on ahead and, and order from there. It's really good. Very good. And you'll get 10% off. Uh, link is in the description below. Sam Johnson says, is Amber copying Dr. Curry today? She had the loose hair. Oh, eh, she's had, she's had this hairstyle before. I feel like, I feel like she's, if it, to me, it didn't, it didn't strike me as, as, as mirroring anyone else now. Oh, I, yeah. see. She better, she God, I was just about Kim to mention this. I don't know if yeah. you saw Disney, Disney dropped the trailer today, just cause it was funny for she Hulk attorney at law. <laughs> and I was like, Yep, we saw a She-Hulk attorney at law today, didn't we? <laughs> Wait, really? Like that's a thing? They dropped yeah. it twenty minutes ago. Yeah. Yep. She-Hulk attorney at law. She-Hulk I saw something in the attorney. chat about that. She-Hulk is an attorney. They just named the show attorney at law. Um, I had a so. joke that she looked better than she did yesterday as Kim Jong Amber, but the She-Hulk I think wins. <laughs> Laura Berger says, given that AH appears to have physically abused her sister Whitney, why on earth would AH's legal team call her as a witness? It seems too risky. Thanks for all of your commentary, unless they can count on her to keep her story consistent as before. Because she already testified in the UK case. So uh, she still wants to, has, has an interest in maintaining a relationship with her sister, is my guess. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't, nothing, nothing about anything that I've heard about Whitney would seem to suggest that she would be testifying against her sister. I gotta, you gotta I go, gotta, Mike. Thank you, Alita. I appreciate it, Rick. Of course. Good night. Yes. Rob, thank you, you so much you for hanging out. Tomorrow? No, I'm going to let Runkle handle that one. All right. You're, you're I'm not saving my, oh, oh, you have work. I'm going to save my powder for a rebuttal. All right. There you go. All right. Have a good night. Thank you. you. See you, Mike. Uh, whoa. <laughs> yeah, well, that is that was that was. That was. Oh, every time it goes down to three, I always forget about that. That is, it like like way zooms in, like like uh, yep, that like was uh, shocking. Uh, what's the um? Rob, are you at almost fifty thousand subscribers? Extreme. Cl- uh, anyway, uh, hold was... on, hold on, hold on. I I know you got like seven thousand uh, super chats, so we'll go lightning round or whatever. But if Rob's at almost fifty thousand subscribers, Alita hit two hundred thousand. She can hit more. Rob's at almost 50,000. Yeah. This yeah, is fantastic. That was a lot of Hogue chat. That was too much for me, frankly. 49514. Okay, 49. Let's, let's get another 500. Let's get into 50,000. Subscribe to Law and Lumber. He had a moment in court today. You don't see other also, YouTubers having that moment. Yeah. She says, is that a knife? And you say, ooh, is that a knife, Rob? I'm... I'm- I'm going to do exactly how Vasquez left it. And it's exactly how I left it in that video. You decide. Here's the picture. You, you decide. I want to know go. if Rob Law and Lumber would have fainted in court at that moment in time. That's what I want to know. Just collapsed, slumped against the wall. As Camille Vasquez asks, is that a knife? Might have. <laughs> Wait, hang on. Yeah. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, yeah. Subscribe to Rob. Go, go, go. 
I love it. I love that photo that you are that you're using for your for your 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 the thing. The, I don't even know what, what you call that. The the little window uh, thing. Um, also, subscribe to Rick. Rick, where where are you at in terms of subscribers? I, I, I'm now well clear of 86, closing <gasps> in on 87. Let's get him to 90. Get, you know, we get to 90. We got to we gotta crack at 100 before 100K the end of this 100K by the end of this week. We've got to get your server play button by the end of this week. You're ki- you can't do it by the end of the week, Alita. Yes, we can. Even your powers are not that strong. 14,000 people by the end of the week? I, I, yeah. Mm, yes. Mm. Yes. I'm not Alita. Uh, yeah, but you're, 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 you're second chair in all of this, essentially. Oh. Yes. I think the, I, uh, this, well, that, this I'm, is I'm just an young. insane growth of all of LawTube. Yes, it's insane. Rick, um, or sorry, Nick, Rick, Nick, Nick mm-hmm. hit four hundred thousand a day. I heard that? That's what I heard. Nate hit two hundred. Alita hit two hundred. I think Emily hit another milestone today. Yeah. It's just Emily would have been closed in on four. Crazy. Yeah, no, yeah. everybody's doing great, and I got more articles. We got we got one from Vice about how awful we are. Uh, so uh, yeah, I got I got more to discuss. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Excellent. I get Excellent. them all sent to me now. <laughs> <laughs> excellent the research is easy the law the, the the law tube chat is so fantastic this is this is for headlines okay all right cool perfect <laughs> i love it it minimizes the amount of time that you need to uh that's what uh, i tell people i say look i can't be everywhere so yeah send me what you got and now i have 14 and i you know i have to pick three um but no it's it's yeah it went up like yesterday it went up what is it today's the 17th it went up last night about very similar vein about how we're ruining uh, the world so yeah how we're ruining the world like law yeah. specifically well no 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 just in general uh people, okay. people talking about the trial um okay so you're ooh, not allowed no. to yeah. have your own opinions about trial yeah. proceedings uh, no i'll find that insider article most of them are trying to stay away from referencing law tube i don't think it's a great look for them um hmm. so no it's yeah it's very similar to the um not the guardian piece the other one uh, they're all blending the, oh, the, the cut one the no, the cut one? was god awful, wasn't it? It was like the wired one, though. That's right, wired. Sharon Nayebi says, "Spidey is Amber Heard trying to get Camille to like her?" Uh, nope. I, I'm sorry that Spidey's not here for it, but uh, um, yeah, I don't know. It didn't didn't really seem like it. They seemed kind of combative, actually. Alan V says, "Can Camille ask? Did you testify that there was blood on X random object?" Amber Heard, "Yes, Camille. Miss Heard, you did not. Should this jury believe?" Mm, you don't want to ask, should this jury believe? That would be one of the questions too many. Um, but, uh, and you wouldn't also want her to say, Miss Heard, you did not. You would want to say, you would want to say, uh, you know, I'm going to show you X, Y, Z. Like, show them the, the, the proof of the opposite, um, either through a statement or through a photo or through something else. Um, Emez says, are there transcripts for the audio anywhere? Which audio? You know what? Probably incredibly average would have it, is my guess. He does um, the video breakdown, which is great. Yeah, yeah, but I, I, you know, or or Laura B. Real ask real Laura B. and Jax on Twitter um, if they have anything. I'm sure if they don't, then they know someone that does probably. Brandon Adams says, "Question: Panel poll on Spidey's likeness to Mark Ruffalo." <laughs> nice. Uh, Karathia says, when does it become a hostile witness? When it it becomes a hostile witness, when is it, when it is a witness that is, that has interests that are adverse to your, to your party or to your client. So folks are, I think a lot of people think of a hostile witness as like this Hollywood moment when you're like, I want to declare this witness hostile because they're being really rude or whatever. It's not like that. Um, the only way, the only time when, when you declare a witness hostile is when they, they start off as a friendly witness to your case and then somehow on the stand they've like they're 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 being they've become difficult and they've like you know they're no longer it, it's clear that their interests no longer align with yours or that they i guess never did in the first place or something um but yeah generally speaking you know who's a hostile witness and who's not a hostile witness based on who's calling them um simon Simon Oscarade says, I'm a novice in the trial behavior world, but her turning to the jury when answering Ms. Vasquez's questions has me really cringing. Is it common slash effective or is it yet another of her tactics? If it has you cringing, it means it's not natural, or at least it doesn't feel natural. Um, it can feel natural for some witnesses, but I don't know. It's, it's, 
you feel what you feel, right? The vibes are there or they're not. Um, Robin Hobbin says, why not analyze the journal and mirror handwriting? Wouldn't that confirm who wrote that? Honestly, it's better to just leave it where it is. Yeah. Let the jury connect those dots themselves and piece, put those pieces together rather than trying to force feed it to them because then they might start questioning your feeding. Just another Smith says, question, is anyone else worried that AH has a one-year-old baby given her possible uh, diagnosis of BPD and histrionic personality disorder? The child is just as likely to become a, a target as JD and her former wife. Uh, don't make that conclusion right away because plenty of people have D P uh, BPD uh, and histrionic personality disorder who are able to be effective parents and loving parents as well. Um, that, was, that was very clear to us when we had um, Dr. Tracy along with us on the panel. Um, and we just generally speaking, we don't want to draw broad brush strokes, um, in these cases, um, just because somebody has a diagnosis, right? Um, Bonnie T says, will mommy dearest be Amber Heard only leading role ever? Will that be her only leading role ever? I don't know. Uh, Joe says, question, can they bring up Botox? They can, but the question is whether that's going to be effective for what they actually want to do. Yeah. And I didn't think they have records of it. If they had records of it, I would have brought it up. But if I didn't yeah. have records of it, no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mrs. Zombie says, Andrea is the best addition. I would agree. Jay Craft says, who is taping these conversations? Uh, it depends. Sometimes it's Johnny. Sometimes it's Amber. It, it, it shifts. AN says, everyone deserves fair and adequate legal representation, my friends. This includes Amber. 100% could not agree with you more. Kimberly says, Mr. Chu is a phenomenal leader and team player. I would agree. Uh, Russell Ghoul 01 says, will Look Me Up allow CB to introduce Rob's bed video? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, no, but her denying, but her denying that there was her denying expressly that it was caused by a knife does allow for um, them to go back and have someone say it would be consistent with. Mm-hmm. Tanisha Butler says, I hope they play the audio where she talks about her throwing pots and pans along with the other stuff she says in the video. This audio will be the mic drop. Um, they've already played it in court, so the jury's already heard it. It would have been perhaps good to see her, her reaction to it, but it's not really necessary because the jury already definitely knows about it. Tyler S. says, what are the chances that Camille and Johnny become a couple after this? Probably zero. Is my guess. I, 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 I'm not entertaining any speculation on, on those questions personally. Lego Wednesday says, I feel if I were to be reliving my version of an extremely traumatic and abusive event through recordings, I would not be able to be so nonchalant. I would think so too. Dr. Tracy was talking about Johnny reliving these, these memories through these recordings. Um, and that being like secondhand traumatic. Bear says, guys, this is Amber explaining. If it makes you feel crazy here, imagine between seven and 15 months of this, depending on when she ended the honeymoon. Mike the Dad Crosby says, I'd be super impressed if Spidey's next magic trick is to miraculously make AH believable, especially if it's a reveal trick where he shows us how to do it. Linus Shun says, objection, hearsay, we have no proof AH slash Ela fight. Elaine. Elaine. Okay. Um, Darius Yacobos says, what happens if Johnny wins and age can't afford to pay? Too bad. Involuntary so bankruptcy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, take, take her stuff, basically garnish her wages, maybe end up walking away with less than what you actually got in your judgment. Potentially a doctor says, question for Spidey. I'm sorry. He's not here. Spidey, do you think she will snap by the end of cross? Well, she didn't. Well, I mean, kind of, she, she showed some attitude. She showed some, she showed some spice, but not quite in the way that I think a lot of people were expecting. Marie Loon L says why the people behind the attorneys can give post it to the attorney. Can they take any new info from them? Those are part of the legal team. Legal teams can communicate with one another. Elaine Bredhoff says legal bites. I'm being blackmailed by this tyrant of a woman. I am the victim. Please help me. Thank you. Erica Henderson says, can you catch me up? What's going on right now? I have no idea. Recap. So it's, it's after. Yeah, it's after the. Catch the 4K. recap. Catch the recap. <laughs> T. 
Tana Jellison, thank you so much for your super chat. Wendy's Cafe says, is it my imagination or have AH's legal team slowed down on objections just enough to prevent an appeal based on ineffective counsel? No. No. You can't. No. You, no. Objections preserve your right to appeal. So by not objecting, yeah. No. Uh, no. Not objecting is not a basis for an appeal. Um. Will Roberts 97 says, love the commentary, but the complaints earlier, I believe, were in regards to speaking over testimony specifically. Sometimes you could not hear questions and answers. Uh, you know, we, we do try to avoid the more important stuff. Oftentimes we'll be talking over some of the argument between the attorneys. And realistically, it's because we we understand that it's 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 less juicy and we would rather explain things to one another um, or give our reactions. Um, Diamond Dave's Billiards, Billiards says, here's a couple of bucks for Hoag's empathy and its journey from trying to see AH aside to disbelief to sadness. Hello, darkness, my old friend. People, people were really worried about me in the middle of the day. <laughs> they were. They were. You and Kurt both. Casey says, Law and Lumber, do the people sitting there actually see the published evidence? Yes, there are four monitors that are hanging suspended. You will see the, the people in the gallery look to the left or to the right. They're looking up at the monitors. Nice, 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 nice. Um, Ack Jammer says, hi, hi, you guys are awesome. I'm loving the commentary and Spidey dying inside. I was wondering what the panel's opinion is of testifying the equivalent of do your own research is. Uh, it's gotta be to look me up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Natasha S says, hi from UK. Just finished work, catching up 1.5 X speed. Mega pint in hand. Let's go. Thanks. Legal bites for a great commentary. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, Chris Shaw says, question, what are the chances they bring up the same image, one image doctored from two incidents? Spilled wine. Thanks. You are awesome. Well, I guess I didn't end up bringing it up. Liz Hunt says, how many inconsistencies between testimonies and stories, et cetera, do you think Johnny has compared to Amber? And how do you think the jury will take this into account? It looks like Amber's got inconsistencies with literally every single other witness that has testified, whereas Johnny has inconsistencies with Amber. <laughs> he has little things uh, little things here there. People. normal normal primarily stuff. the drug use stuff right rick the drug use stuff in his sister but but like even even in like descriptions of the security or the sound guy like there's little differences in how they describe the boston flight or there's little differences in how they describe charging into the room in may what i would consider to be normal for eyewitness testimony human experience difference in perspective um, not the same kind of thing we're seeing with Amber. But uh, in order to be fully fair, we do have to acknowledge the stories aren't perfectly aligned. They're not They're not puzzle pieces there. Yeah. Mammy Michaela, I see you in the chat saying that I missed your super chat about the wall phone in the Australia mansion. I I, I personally doubt it because I have 205 left to go over. So it well, probably is in the queue. What's that? I showed 210. 210? I do. Oh, geez. I'm I sorry. How, I don't know how that's happening. Okay, but uh, all right. Well, hopefully, hopefully we can get all of those at some point. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll, follow, I'll follow along. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Liz Hunt. Okay. We got that. All righty. Uh, Mackenzie says, anyone know how long Camille has been doing this? She is stellar. I, we I could, we could look age. up her bio. We could. She's we an could. associate. So she's between like usually one and seven years at the firm. Yeah. Vince Sly says, I have a question. I know sometimes the judge will comment after a decision is made. Would that happen here, or is that just for criminal cases? It depends on the judge. I mean, usually judges are going to try to be mostly neutral, other than saying whether an objection is is sustained or overruled. Oh, after a decision. Oh, you mean you mean after the final verdict? I don't know. I I think it depends on the judge. Uh, Katie Archer says anything from the makeup artist that worked with Amber for the James Corden show. Thought I saw their statement online. No injuries in good lighting. Uh, yeah, that would be one other witness that we would expect to see from. Linda Washington says, could it be that L'Oreal found someone less ravaged looking, someone prettier, healthier? Uh, those could all be things that they look for. Michael Vanderham says, after this trial is over, the Australian federal government would very much like to bring perjury charges against AH. How would that work? Extradition. Good day from Perth, Western Australia. I I don't think the United States is going to extradite someone extradite for, for perjury. perjury. No, no, that's not going to happen. Especially, especially not like 
Yeah, no, no, just no. Yeah, I, I wouldn't expect extradition. It would be more like if she traveled to Australia and the author authorities found that there was a warrant for her arrest and then arrested her. That's how that would happen, probably. That's, that's part of what Oim the passport process does. Yeah. Oima says, the, the articles didn't do anything for me, but do you think CV was just trying to kill time before lunch so she can end stronger after lunch? What I articles were so. before lunch? I yeah I'm I'm trying to think what it was the what bashing articles. on Amber articles. Yeah, but that's the very end of the. the, the oh, the Tati Van Re. Those are the only articles. That's the I can very think. end. Yeah, like she tries to stop testimony and says, and judge says we can't go to lunch yet. It was it was the she was going over the the wasn't your reputation falling before, and it was it was going through the audio and saying the audio was released with the uh, I think it was. I've got to look back at my notes. Yeah, um, yeah. But honestly, everything felt like it was like legitimate that she was bringing up, even if it wasn't the strongest points in the middle. But that seems kind of normal. You want to start and end with your strongest points anyway. She wasn't killing time. I agree. Yeah. And M says, why? Or sorry, is this why expecting the Perry Mason moment is foolish? People confronted with lies on stand will only dig their heels in and maintain the line. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's yeah. Paul says, question. Please compare Amber's testimony, VA, UK, AUS, may help AUS with still open investigation. I can't, I haven't looked closely enough into the UK or the Australian um, statements or, or testimonies um, that she's done. Look at Natalie Lawyer Chick, look at her channel. She does a really good analysis of the comparison between the US testimony and the previous statements in the UK. Boom. There you go. Uh, Lego Wednesday says, is it possible for the, for the case to end early in JD's favor before closing statements? How possible for age to be frustrated enough to confess? No, 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 none of those, none of those. They are going to use up all of the time that they have, uh, for all of their witnesses and it's closing statements are going to be on the 27th. Um, era is. Yuithon says, did AH accuse Chu of throwing something at her? What? <laughs> this was this was the accusation that she was making that um uh johnny depp's attorney in the uk case threw papers at her when it kind of sounded like he just dropped the papers off right in front of her desk oh adam waldman yeah, yeah. that may have been waldman yeah yeah uh next one is from Joe says, can you please explain what happened when she opened the door about Waldman? And how do you think the jury reacted when she kept interrupting Queen Z? <laughs> when she opened the door about Waldman? Well, I don't think there was opening any doors about Waldman because he's he's integral to her case, to Amber Heard's case. She she alleges that he made several statements that were defamatory, and so she has to prove those those statements. So there's no there's no opening the door to it. That's just part of her case in chief. Um and how do you think the jury reacted? I don't know. I, I don't know we won't know, know until we hear from Larry. A funny fact about Queen C. Um, yeah. I tried to look her up on Google. I just Googled her. I'm on now page 16 of Google search results and have not found her firm bio yet. Like for every law firm, your bio is I the found first her on LinkedIn. Up. Oh my gosh. She's, she's on she's, LinkedIn actually. And somebody, somebody also emailed me her, her firm website. She's not at she's not at Brown. No, no what she I is. was saying, no, what I was saying is I just if you type in Camille Vasquez, you have 16 pages of articles, commentary, who is, who is, who is, and her oh, firm bio her. is not anywhere near the top of the list. Nice. Nice. Um, Alice White says, Oh, hey Joe, how's it going? Hey. Awesome. How are you? Doing all right. Just going through super chats. Super chats. Um, super chats. Uh, Alice White says, will they come back to the pictures in Bahamas as she captioned those pictures? Hashtag no makeup, hashtag natural. AH says she was wearing makeup in them. She graduated in, in 2010. She's 12 years out of law school. Okay. Okay. That's a long time for. She's my here. age, like my exact age, like law school wise. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I, Alice White, I don't think anybody's going to be revisiting those. I, as soon as you go through it, usually you don't go back to revisit them unless there's something to correct. Um, B. Price says, regarding the interrogatory and the birthday story, wasn't CV's point that AH earlier attributed the event to a different day? 
Is that the S? Are you referring to the S A issue? I'm not. I'm not sure. I understand fully what exactly it is that you're asking about. Yeah. Okay. So again, they're 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 either yelling at me or they're, we're just trying to get solved on this. I. It didn't sound like Amber Heard attributed that particular story to any particular day. It's in that zone of time around her birthday in the penthouses. And then if anything changed here, it was that she attributed it directly to the birthday day, which we now have testimony on from both of them, where Johnny Depp says he hits her in the face. Uh, 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 She hits him in the face. That's when he grabs her by the shoulders uh, on that birthday. And now she has the exact opposite story. Camille tries to say, you never said this happened on your birthday. Amber Heard says she did. And then it turns out there's a paragraph right around there that says, I did say this kind of thing happened, but I didn't attribute it to that day. That's what happened. Got it. Got it. Um, Green Thumb says, why is volume low? It's higher on other channels because court volume is low and I still haven't found an adequate Chrome plugin to raise the volume of the court stream. I am sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get it fixed. I don't know if it's going to happen by the end of this trial, uh, but we will see. Um, Mindy D says she didn't remind in inter something because lack of evidence. Her memory is not enough. That's why it was NTRD later interrogatory. introduced. Inter- See, it's, it's in the oh, interrogatory. Oh, in the interrogatory. Okay. the same thing we just talked about. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, where Where is the evidence you found between 58 and 64? Uh, okay. So she, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry. Our reasonable yes. minds can differ whether <laughs> that was an own by one side or the other, I, I suppose. Yes. I didn't think Camille overreached just a little. Thank you. Claudia Hardison says, can the defense change their strategy to not guilty because of mental health issues, but then get her help? Nope. Too late. All right. I picked so, up so one there. I picked up one that you passed. Uh, okay. Since I have five more than you. I've okay. got one yeah. from Bree that says, gaslighting is part of manipulation. There's so much to manipulation and abuse tactics than just gaslighting. I love the conversation about this. It's so important to open up discussion about these things. <laughs> Um, so it's a statement. I don't know whether you wanted to pass that because it's not a question, but I just saw it light up and as you went by it. So you let me know what you want to do. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. When you, when you, when you see those flag it for me, just like that, 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 that's, that's perfect. Total Slos Diaz says, can she plead insanity? Nope. Tim Jakob says, could AH be court mandated to have a psych evaluation after the way she acts on the stand? She clearly needs professional help, BPD and HPD. She already had that. That is why Dr. Curry testified was because she was the one that was uh, had a court mandated, uh, court ordered um, psych evaluation. That's what that was all about. Terry Morgan says, will the question or will the jury have to go the whole holiday weekend before finishing their deliberations? Or is it expected that they will give their answer by the end of 27th? It's not expected for them to give their answer by the end of the 27th. They might ask them to stay over the weekend, but I kind of doubt it. Um, they're probably going to come back on Monday. I've, I've heard of some jury deliberations Tuesday? extending over, over. Oh yeah. I guess Tuesday. Yes. They can give a verdict come tomorrow. I'm just saying they give a verdict tomorrow if they want. <laughs> this was this was over. No, I mean, am I, am I wrong? Is this this is this if, if, it feels it feels it feels like Amber's cooked at this point. This, this is I, I you know, there's actually that was that was that was terrible. That was just that was embarrassing. That was embarrassing for everyone. I mean, I was embarrassing for Elaine the way she couldn't even handle the, the redirect. Everything here was just embarrassing. The only only star today is Camille, which I didn't feel she was nearly as strong today as she was yesterday, but I don't think anyone could have kept up that pace. I don't think yes, she needed to be. Right. I mean, I, I felt there were, there, were, there were a few things I was like, eh, okay, I guess that'll work. What I loved is how she peeled. What I really loved about what she did today is that she got in stuff to peel back the, the pretty facade and enable them to actually see the stuff that the rest of the world has seen. Let's take a look at some of that deposition video and, and let's and see the snarkiness as she's eating while the deposition's happening, even though it didn't really even help the questions. I like the way she, yeah. they, she peeled that back. She, they, they, she let them hear the maniacal laugh, laugh like, ha, 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 you got to put it in your book, you got to put it in your book. It's just like creepy and it's controlling yes. and it's and you basically it came across as evil. And that was, yes. the first time I heard that, I was like, I could never like this person because I think that they're a very mean, deep, deeply dark individual. And she got away. She played that for them. 
and you hear that there's no way anyone can be like oh yeah I'm, I'm on team amber you just get you get the chills when you hear it so i don't know i, I thought that's what i really that's what i really liked about her work overall look trust me if she hadn't gone out and done what she done yesterday i probably would have rated what she did say like a 9.8 9.9 .9. It's just that it's just that after I saw what she did yesterday, I was like, where it was just like just pow, 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 one shot after another. She looked like freaking Babe Ruth out there last yesterday. Yeah. So so I thought she was great today. Great. And that's really and that's great. what Rick was saying earlier today too. Was that like you know there there were points that she didn't seem as as on fire today as she was yesterday. But if you had seen today in isolation so yeah you'd be yeah, like wow she's amazing like, this is a really this great is amazing cross. right you would say this is an amazing cross you would say she was phenomenal it's only yes. it's only in the light of what we saw yesterday yeah so that yeah. was that was really my thoughts on that yeah sure. yeah yeah nick says does the court reporter record the objections she has those headphones on how is she supposed to hear elaine when she keeps turning her mic off it's good the, question the point the judge was making yep 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 yep, yep. And I wonder why she was having such a such trouble with that today. Like, I, like for, for a month into this trial of and making yesterday. objections, talking. Yeah, well, yeah, but it's like, but why now? Why is she having this trouble now? I don't understand that. Uh, Queen Queen Bean Queen says, "There's someone in the jury wearing a Johnny shirt. Is that bad? Is that something that would get somebody kicked out, Rob?" Uh, no, that also, wouldn't, because the, 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 the jury is allowed to see public perception of the trial. They're allowed to like perception yeah. that comes into the courtroom. They're just not yeah. supposed to look at outside media. Now, if it said a newspaper article holding up the headline. Fair point. I'm, I'm, yeah, I just I'm, I'm, I might be late on this. I don't know if this, this came out here, but I just want to say to you, Alita, congratulations yeah. on hitting freaking 200 K. Oh, thank you. <laughs> My God, you and Nate hitting on the same day that Nick hits 400 K. I don't know if yeah. you know this. This yeah. is just an insane day. Oh my God. So proud of you. Well earned. You. Well deserved. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you. And the trial, I say three. That's what I'm predicting for you. 300K. For me, by no. The... Yeah. That's what I'm predicting for you. No, I don't trial, think so. 300K. Easy. That would be easy. That would be insane. Um, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it's already insane that I'm at 200. I don't, it's, it's like, I couldn't, I feel like I couldn't really have like a, like a, like a, like a real reaction to it. Cause it easy, th real. easy 300, easy 300, easy. Easy. I mean, Go. Joe did call the 200. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Actually, I think I know he said things. 250. I did. I, when everyone was saying maybe she'll have 200, I said 250. I'm upping the 250 to 300. I'm, I'm also upping Johnny Depp to definitely getting eight, eight figures in this. There's absolutely no question in my mind. I don't see how he doesn't get eight figures. Anyway, that's, I'm, I make crazy predictions. Uh, so I, I was, <laughs> I've was i been proven right so far. Thank God. I feel like I've got, I got a feel well, thank for this. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. But we're, wait, I want to, I want to see everybody else get, get their silver play buttons through this trial too. This is, this is what I want to see really <laughs> for sure. Um, let's see being queen. I got that one. Chris Clements says, if I pledge to give a hundred thousand dollars a year to a 501c3, can I write that off on taxes each year without paying? Didn't Kipper say in audio, it was blue paint. Uh, that's tax advice. We don't do tax advice. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's a little too specific. <laughs> uh, we died. I'm very sorry. But I just I've got five years of net operating losses, Alita, and I have some carry forwards. Uh, would you say I would be best off investing in a self-funded Roth or should I put those into other instruments? No, oh, I'm sweating. Okay. Uh, no. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and I don't know Kipper about Kipper in audio saying it was blue paint. I'm not sure what it's referring to. I think he did say it was blue, the black paint. Right. I think he did say oh. it was blue. Did he say it was blue? I, I missed, I, I missed did. that detail. It's um, been weeks. <laughs> it also, I feel like blue paint. That's funny. I would, I would have thought that that would have jumped out at me because of the, 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 the arrested development meme of like Tobias and the blue paint and like having blue paint all over the house. <laughs> Because he has it all over him. Like, I, I would have thought that that would have, like, stuck out of my mind. Mm. Sure. I, uh, I think Kipper did say blue. But Kipper said a lot of stuff that seems, uh, you know, what, what's the legal term? Sus? So. <laughs> Technical term. Uh, Diz, uh, DL0 Entropy says, can we hear stories of difficult clients? You have all had similar to this. Anyone had their client throw them under the bus? DL0 Entropy. Yeah. I mean, the last question, yes. Like, sure, that's that a service happens. we provide. 
I, I tell my yeah, client, we, we stand, getting we thrown stand under the bus for you. Yeah. 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 I don't know if anybody really wants to share stories of difficult clients though. Because... I don't feel comfortable with it. So I mean, yeah. I, 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 I won't, uh, but yeah, we, I have had conversations with clients that say, no, if you, if, if we need to hurl me under the bus to make this negotiation work, we're going to do it. I, I had a client try to strangle me in a courtroom. My own client. Joe okay. Has you can say that's difficult. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's, I, I call, that's I quite that, difficult. I call that a difficult client. Yeah. 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 But that's, but to be fair, to be fair, I really it was really that he had a crazy, amazing, amazing offer of settlement. And I said to him, if you don't take this offer of settlement, I'm 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 quitting as your lawyer. And he charged at me. And I mean, he basically wow. was he was he was fighting over like a mil over like a million dollars, and I got him a settlement offer, which was like basically like like seven thousand dollars. And I was like, I was like, if you don't take this. I'm quitting. I'm quitting as your lawyer. And he charged at me and lunged for my throat. And a bailiff had to pull him off of me. And I was like, wow. "Okay, okay, I'm done here." Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, okay. you can, sometimes you can't pick your clients. They they pick you. <laughs> so, Jeez. Uh, SM says yesterday, AH were reactive to being called a victim and a liar. Is that part of her personality disorder? I I don't. I I would caution against saying that everything is part of somebody's personality disorder or diagnosis. I think that's just a sensitivity that she may have as a person. Uh, Rahel H says it could be just like her ego is what I would say. Rahel H says, why would someone document stuff to use throughout a relationship? A number of reasons. Maybe you're vindictive. Maybe you are thinking that you might need to use it at a later date. Maybe you are paranoid. Maybe you are anxious. Maybe they're scum. Lot of, yeah, maybe you're scum. Azar Puriamo Frad says, hey, Spidey. Sorry, he's not here. Says, I watched your video about gaslighting a month ago. It helped me to understand what's happening in my life uh, and how to deal with the toxic people in my life. Thank you for that. Oh, I'm so sorry that I couldn't show this to him. Shannon Z says, how do possibly staged issues like the bed fit into the mental health issue or are they separate? Separate. Not everything is, is mental health. Um, in this case, uh, the skeptical atheist says, who picks the final jurors who might be picked? It's it's random, right? It's lottery. Yeah, it's random. Yeah. I don't know what Judge Ascari's method is for that randomization, but it's random. Yeah. George Pepe says, in AH, in response to a line of questioning, said she never assaulted JD. Could an absolute statement like that damning for impeachment? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Especially when we've got other evidence saying elsewhere otherwise um monica rodriguez says hi from portugal which team does the closing arguments first how does that affect the outcome so johnny's team goes first and they reserve a certain amount of their time that they are allotted for afterwards for rebuttal but in between those amber heard's team gets to go um and it's because the plaintiff has the burden of proving their case so that's why they go first and they go last um, it kind of gives a little bit of an advantage, but it's also kind of like equalizing the disadvantage of the fact that they are the ones that have to prove their case. Michael Mud Dragon says regarding her Dr. Evil outfit and in Dr. Evil voice, send in number two. Cue Dr. Evil theme. Da -na -na, da -na -na. <laughs> Stephanie Foucher says, how would you judge this case based on AH putting herself as a victim yet being also the perpetrator? Is it still defamatory? Depends on how the jury perceives it. Good point. Good answer. You are wrong, says the reason I think Uncivil is having such trouble with nuance with female abusers is when you have been a female, a victim of a female and people go out of their way to justify your abuser. Mm. Could be. Uh, Ross Hughes says, what if anything will make AHC how her behavior comes across? Nothing. Apparently Getting a not verdict, a maybe, yeah, yeah, or maybe, maybe a verdict not in her <clears throat> favor. Maybe, no. hopefully. No, no, she'll think they got it wrong. Yeah, probably. Well, her right. PR she'll, team she'll just help smell her at it. That. She'll, she'll smell at it. Hey, on civil law, how's it going? Cool. Well, I was just wondering how many chats she had left. <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, like a lot, a lot of tea. Uh, yeah. Clinton Godet says. What or why are the lawyers allowed to show exhibits to the witnesses that they don't or can't publish to the jury? Why are the lawyers they have to establish allowed? a foundation before they're allowed to show the wit the exhibit to the jury? Also, if it's just for impeachment purpose, it's not evidentiary in nature, it's just to have the witness counter contradict themselves. Thank you. P. 
says, this is related to her notes as attorneys. Would you be using a checklist of items to hit or is it a written script? I am, I am wondering how I can use that method for my finance presentations. Uh, would you use, be using a checklist I mean, of I items could, to hit? I can tell you how I do my presentations. I set uh, key terms and then transitions. Um, and that's that's all I do. But I'm not in trial. I'm doing negotiations and you know virtual legalities. How do the litigators do things? So I would, I normally would have topics that I want to cover and I might, I'll make like a little sort of outline to myself. Mm -hmm. If there's a touchy area that I'm nervous about asking the wrong question, going one question too far, like the Australia story. So there I might script out. But um, as a general rule, I don't want to script because if you script, sometimes you get yeah. locked into that script and you lose, you lose track of it. That actually happened with, with, I felt Camille at one point today where she, she sort of got sideswiped with some objections and changed topics instead of remaining aggressive on it and, and finding new ways to work around it. And that was actually the one disappointing thing out of otherwise stellar work that she did today. So. Mm. Elaine um, Bredehoff, I think had, had come become victim to some of that during one of her cross examinations. I can't remember which one right now, but she, it seemed like she was, was that, the, was that the worst redirect you ever saw in your life? Yes. That was, I mean, it was, it was embarrassing, ineffective. And that was just, it was mind boggling. I would actually, I think I'm going to re-air it tonight. I'm going to, I'm just going to watch that thing again, just the redirect and just, here, I'll give you a masterclass on how to not redirect and why, the, why the, there's so many problems here. Yeah. Simply Simple says, many punish their partner for the sins of a previous one. Is it possible due to age difference in drug use, JD is being punished for her father's abuse? <sighs> Could be. Eddie Manzano says, question, the, uh, when they do sidebars, can the person on the witness stand here and does the stenographer transcribe it? Stenographer, I believe, does transcribe it, right? But the witness yep, can't hear. Getting, you're getting the live transcription to the counsel's tables. Um, but as far as anyone hearing... Um, Having been in that courtroom, that white noise is louder than I've ever heard it. It is pumped so that no one can hear what's going on at that sidebar. Marion Crane says, can the jury decide on different judgment amounts? Yeah. Janice Prefect says, could Elaine spill case beans in the future? Nope. Client confidentiality. Uh, Amber owns that confidentiality. Only she can waive it. Um, RAR Music for Life says, Dr. T, I'm sorry, she's not here. Can BPD symptoms be controlled slash reduced symptoms after trauma? I.e., I was diagnosed BPD at 16. I'm 26 now. Had had son murdered. Now BPD is not as bad. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm, I, I wish you were here to answer that. I, I'm definitely not qualified to do that. Laura Smart says, does Elaine's objections cut into Camille time? No. Objections and discussions are, they don't count against either side. Robert Jones says, do they stop the clock for objections or approaches? Yes. Kevin Horak says, why do they need to redact the transcript? Redact the transcript. Otherwise, an invisible oh. testimony that's included there. For purposes of like, yeah, yeah. When they're showing it to the jury. Yes. Yeah. That, that's exactly why. Um, Alan, one, what's that? Oh, okay. I have another super chat. Dr. Tracy's yeah. perspective is so important here. Dealing with an addict is extremely hard, especially so if you have a mental disorder yourself. I think JD is in the right here, but Amber Heard is not pure evil. And that is from Gerald Hiller. Huh. I could have sworn I, I saw that one. I, I you know, it you went right yeah. by it, but maybe you read that out and that's why I have five extra. I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm down. To, I'm down. To but that's what I'm two, glad. Three, four. Okay. On that note, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go hey, deliver Rob. notepads to Runkle and give him a, uh, a folding chair so he's got company got it. tonight. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right. Thanks, Rob. Yeah. Good luck. Bye. See ya. Um, Alan Aseni says, "Do you know bathroom doors only open to inside?" Makes sense. Rowan Spindle Creek says. Could the lack of objections from Elaine be telling about her and AH's current relationship? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think those the lack of objections just means that Camille is doing a good job on her cross-examination. Mm. The Law Sandwich says, thought the UK trial was versus the son, not AH. It was. Even by US standards, wouldn't they have to prove that the son knew AH was lying and published anyway? Exactly. That's exactly right. 
Brightly Brittany on Instagram says, is Camille or anyone going to ask Amber if the Carly Simon writing in journal writing book looks similar? Just to plant a seed in the jury's minds. I don't think they need to. Just show uh, she they showed them close enough so that the jury can put that together themselves. Can I say that was one of my favorite one-liners from Camille where she she repeats that it's all about Johnny and we wouldn't be here if Johnny didn't think it was about Johnny. And then she says, kind of like Carly Simon, huh? And it's like, oh God. That was a great one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Allie MacArthur says, missed it, but how do they have these recordings? Because they have recorded one another in all kinds of ways at all kinds of times. Uh, Bob White says, sorry if I missed in the answer. Question, Dr. T, can prolonged use of psychedelics like MDMA or magic mushrooms change someone with BPD symptomology? We got that one earlier. We did get that one. She did answer that. Tim Riggs, and she said, yes, it can change things. Tim Riggs says, thoughts on Asmund Gold POV? I think there are more people that believe in the flat earth than believe Amber Heard. I got to do a poll on my Twitter. <laughs> it could be, it could, I don't know, maybe. I don't, I haven't seen any polling on it, but Sure. NM says, can CV recross after redirect? Uh, theoretically, yes, but I think in Virginia, they generally don't. Uh, Marie V. Sands says, why do you think Camille did not ask about her arrest? Wouldn't it have been more powerful hearing her say, yes, I was arrested for DV, but that may have skirted the line into beyond probative. Uh, I don't think it was technically entered at, 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 for for truth, right? It was the headlines were were lowering her value, so that was killing her defamation damages side. Like that's I, I, how they all got in. There was a lot of sidebars around that. I would imagine that there was she was very neatly confined by the judge as to exactly what you could ask and what you cannot ask in order I to think ask. So. But yeah, so at, at about that, it, you have to you you can't fly a field of what the judge is going to allow there. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, Don Lionheart says, question, Rob. Sorry, he just left. Uh, we need local insight on judge reaction to Elaine. Um, I mean, yeah. the judge is, I don't think we need local reaction. I think we can all see that Judge Judge Oscarati is, is reacting to Elaine in uh, some pretty pretty big ways, at least in comparison to before. Marie says, you all jumped, on, you all jumped at A from 2016 at the end of CX. What was it I missed? It sounds important. We all jumped at a question from 2016 at the end of Cross. Oh, sorry. What was it? The end of 2016. At the end of Cross. Oh, it was, um, it was, uh, there was an admission that she made. What was the admission that she made? It was, uh, good Lord. Oh, TMZ, leaking the TMZ photos. Oh, yeah, that was a big deal. That was it. That was it. That she leaked the TMZ photos and sold them. Oh, yeah. Heavily, and folks in the chat. Heavily implied. Heavily uh -huh. implied that she leaked the TMZ photos. She tried to rehabilitate. She, but she, she all but admitted, essentially. She was <laughs> like, it was like. The rehabilitation was awful. Because it was yeah. like, why did you say that? And what did you really mean by it? It was like, well, you know, yeah. like other folks, other folks, you know, they got it. They got the info. It's like, you said. TMZ was alerted. <laughs> yes. And she's like, are you saying that your attorneys leaked images that you gave them that they are obliged yeah, to keep yeah, confidential? Yeah. And she's like, uh, I don't know. No. <laughs> Debbie Collington says, how many girls will be, will be lawyers because of Camille? Probably a lot. I would imagine she's inspirational. Positive Penny says, if the jury thinks Amber's lawyers are incompetent, could they rule in her favor due to thinking she had improper counsel, like a pity judgment? Um, and maybe theoretically it's possible. I don't know how likely it is though. Plato me says question is sidebar being recorded. Uh, well, yeah. by the, the, the transcript, the court transcript, reporter. the court reporter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ann Sorensen says, sorry, bad spelling and language problem. I will try again. Is it really okay that Elaine questions the judge as Elaine do? Uh, you mean like fighting with the judge? No, she's not supposed to do that. It's a bad look in front of the jury and it's also bad for her future cases that she's going to have in front of judge Oscarati. And this is also a very public trial. I would imagine other judges from that courthouse are also kind of paying attention to what's going on here. She's going to develop a reputation for herself as well. Um, so that's the kind of thing that can harm her, her future career in, in the future. So, you know, I, whether or not that's actually going to be something that like kills her career, I don't think so, but it's just something that is not good for anybody to have to deal with afterwards. 
Jackie Joe 15 says, are there medical providers on Amber Heard's witness list? I think there are. Yeah. I mean, all of, all of the nurse Borum was on her, her witness list and like a bunch of others. I think Dr. Kipper was even on her witness list. I want to ask you, this also bothered me. This was another thing. This is, again, is really nitpicking because I, I'm mm -hmm. a huge Camille fan, but I was yeah. very bothered with it when the, the whole doctor testimony came up that the objection, she, she had great objections there, hearsay leading, whatever, when they try getting in the, the nose stuff and the ENT, then how she went to the doctor. I said, the most important objection is relevance because if she's trying to bring in doctor records that are taken a year after she's done with Johnny, and now you want to try and establish that, oh, she had a broken nose, a scar tissue, whatever, that is not relevant to this case because so much could have happened to her nose bef between the, the time that she was with Johnny and when she saw the doctor that it's, not, it's just going to confuse the jury more than anything. It's not something that's probative, and therefore it, it's, some, it's, it's not relevant to this case because it's incorporating a lot of information that's irrelevant. And, that, <clears throat> and that's why it should be completely inadmissible. It's highly more prejudicial than probative. And and that never came from her. She came up with other objections, but some of it started coming in about the no stuff. And I was like, mm, I don't really like that, that 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 got in. It was really bothering me. So I just want to I want to ask you guys if you thought of that that whole relevance issue that came up here on your channel. What, what... I didn't For... Yeah. No, not really. So, but now that I mentioned it, do you think that that's a valid a, a valid objection to say that that should not be admitted? I think once you have the judge going with you on every time you say leading, I, I don't even know that the judge was listening uh, other than when Camille was jumping up at the end. I think you stick with the horse that brung you. Um, and I think that's what Camille ultimately leaned on. Was she, she just said leading a, th a thousand times. And, and then once the judge is saying that in front of the jury, but while Elaine fights, no, that's a le that's leading Elaine. <laughs> you know, is yep. I, I think that's just very, very effective. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Lord Luke M says, if you ask the leading question and then ask an open question about the same thing, is it still, or it is still effing leading, right? I mean, it doesn't make sense. Yes. In context, it is. It is. This is, this has been a big frustration for all of us here. Jessica Canavo says, how do you think Elaine feels that she's getting crushed by an associate? I, I think this uh, 12 years. So, so what happened, I could tell you, she's 12 years out of law school. She didn't get credit for her prior firm work when she moves to Brown. It's not quite the same as green around the gills coming out of law school. She's, she's right. seen a few things. Right. Yeah. She wouldn't have I mean, gotten I this wonder, cross if she was green around the gills. I wonder yeah. if she worked for, I wonder if she did like, like government work. You know, they, I can tell you, they, because to give her a lot of trial experience. Everybody in law firms is never wants to say competitor names. I will say, I will tell you. Prior to Brown, Camille was an attorney at a national firm in Los Angeles, is what we get as a sentence. So she did work at wherever uh, in Los Angeles, and then they didn't give her full credit for her associate years when she transferred to Brown. That, that's what okay. happened. Okay. Becky says, do you think LawTube is going to change the way trials are conducted in the future? No one wants to be seen as an Elaine. We were talking about this around, around Rittenhouse. No one wanted to be seen as a binger. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, maybe it, it could change the way in which, you know, they may have some people that are, that are specifically tasked with watching social media and this kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, as far as, as like changing like the mechanisms in the courtroom, probably not, but it might change a little bit of their strategy and a little bit of their like responding to certain things um, for some people. Um, Batman on a bike says, what, if any, career will either Elaine or H have after this trial concludes? Uh, Elaine, I think, is going to be fine. She's, she's going to be fine. She's been an attorney for a long time. Amber Heard, I have no idea. Uh, Ty DeGemini says, why are all, sorry, says, are all, are we all witnessing the same disaster? This RD seems more damaging to AH. Elaine seems desperate at this point. This is a train wreck. It, it was a train wreck. It was a train wreck. It was. No doubt about it. Diana P says, why do some believe that a jury with a majority of young women would be biased in favor of AH? I would think it would be the opposite since a lot of young men are in fear of false accusations. I agree. I think having women on the jury is much better for Johnny. Um, because they're much more likely to be crit critical of another woman. Uh, Wendy's Cafe says, can they still use Whitney's depot even if it wasn't completed? I'm wondering if they're going to use it next. <sighs> It depends on how much they've 
been able to go through it. I, I don't know. My guess is that is that if they do allow Whitney to testify, there it's going to be because of the fact that she's already testified in the UK on the same facts. Rhonda says, congratulations, question. I was seeing things or did – was I seeing things or did AH leave the, while the jury was still in the room? Is that a big deal or no? It is a big deal. Well, I mean, we saw it as a big deal. I don't know if the jury will see it as a big deal. They probably noticed, though, because they noticed that, that they are the ones to leave first every single time. And if they see – the witness storming off before they leave. That's something that I would pay attention to. Like, Oh, this is different. This is different than the normal proceeding. Um, but yeah, anyway, thank you. Uh, yeah. Agrawal says, can you please explain the subject to recall? Um, if that only works for plaintiff and not for defendant, also congrats on 200 K I'm the first 10%. Yay. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, can you, so can you please explain the subject to recall? I'm not sure if you mean like when, when people say I don't recall, or if you mean subject to recall. Oh, subject to recall. Okay. Yes. So someone, a witness who is subject to recall means that they, that they can be asked to come back to the witness stand at some point to respond to someone else's testimony at some point. Um, yeah, that's basically like what, what we that expect means. from Dr. Curry. Yeah. Exactly. The Jan man says, since the jury does does not have the context we do about the meanings of the objections, how do you think all these objections and sidebars are affecting them? I don't know. We're, it's this, hard to tell. That's really tough for us as lawyers because we, yeah. we look at it and say, yeah, that's all legitimate. And that's, you know, that's combat. That's gladiatorial fighting. Um, and that's normal. J jurors are, are not necessarily going to see it the same way. That's that's why you had commentary while Camille was doing that, saying, you know, in different contexts, this could look like she's trying to keep important information out. I don't think that wound up that way, especially once the judge essentially joined in with Camille um, uh, against Elaine. But jurors can take that as trying to hide the ball. Jurors can take that as Elaine not doing her job and anything in between. Mm -hmm. yep. what, what is Sorry, you're Joe muted. Joe's trying to say things to me. This is the best. No, don't don't unmute him. <laughs> <laughs> Not today. The 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 jury, the gallery, everyone was so far behind Camille, and she was so successful that she was making a clown out of out out of Elaine. That no one is thinking. Oh, you're hiding the ball yeah. today. In general, totally. that what you said is a concern. But the vibe in the courtroom today, you have to be sensitive to the vibe in the room. The vibe in the room is everyone's on Camille's side, and what she's doing to Elaine is hilarious. So mm -hmm. you're making a joke out of her and Amber. I don't think there was mm -hmm. any damage to her at all. If anything, they just like they just like her that much more. It makes her that much more charming. I yeah. tend to agree, yeah. especially when they Elaine looking so flustered. I I, I tend yeah. to agree. I'm I'm just saying that that's a possibility in general. In general, I agree with yeah. you. It's a possibility. Yeah. Noah B says, "Do you think that it, do you think that if AH loses the case, she will publicly claim ineffective counsel, not in the legal sense, but in the public?" I'm sure she I... will. She'll claim anything. She's already thrown her attorneys under the bus. What else is new? Yeah. Uh, so Chris Nagel the says, system is broken. Yeah, probably. That it's, yeah, it's a bunch of misogynists, a bunch of men on that jury. Chris Nagel says, love you guys. Question for Alita. How many times do you get that you look like Nikki Glaser? This might be the second super chat that I've You do look a little like Nikki Glaser. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. that. Yeah. I, I had to Google her, but I saw photos and she's pretty. So she is I very appreciate pretty. That. She is. I like, that the check, I like that the check is, oh, that person's pretty. Okay, cool. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's what I do. With, that's what I do with that Dean guy, that Jeffrey Dean guy, who's from like uh, I, I got. Oh, you do look like Jeffrey Dean, Joe. Oh, shut up! You don't even know who that is. You I don't even know, know his last name. Is. What? Really? Yeah, I do. Yeah, it's the dude from uh, Walking Dead. Yeah, yeah. So I get that yeah. a lot. I get that a lot these days. Twenty twelve. Jameson says, "Nate, say this is Muffin Country." Sorry, I couldn't. <laughs> sorry, he's not here. <laughs> um, uh, Guarad says, Dr. Tracy, I'm sorry, she's not here for it. Is her response indicative of any symptomology? What state of mind might she be in? I'm really sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not qualified to respond for her. Uh, Vicuro says, Lawn Lumber, when can I expect some law related woodworking on your channel? Custom made judges bench complete with gavel. I'm sure that's coming soon. I'm sure. Aiden Hussey says, Thanks everyone for being so entertaining and informative. My grandfather died this morning, and listening to you guys has been a welcome distraction as I go about things I need to do. Congrats on 200,000. Alita. Yes, congrats oh my God. indeed. 
Yes. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And I'm, I'm very sorry. My deepest condolences for the loss of your grandfather. I'm sure that nothing that anyone can say or do will fill the void of losing a loved one, especially a dear loved one. Um, but I really hope that you are able to find solace in the, the happy memories that you shared with him. And I hope that you are able to spend some time with family to remember him in the way that is most, uh, um, most meaningful and most uh, memorable for him as well. And also congratulations to Nate for also hitting 200,000 today. And Amazing. Nick Rakita hit 400,000 today. Oh, and Emily D. Baker, I'm not sure exactly where she is, but at this pace, I'm sure she'll be at 400,000 very, very soon. Tomorrow. So everyone's, <laughs> yeah, tomorrow probably. Yeah. So yes. everyone's crushing it. Yes. Yes. And Karen Richard Hogue, of course, 85, 87. I'm, uh, I'm at 86. Uh, yeah. All right. See? There all right. Go. Let's get them to 90. Let's get, them, let's get all these guys to 100. Let's get silver Please. play buttons for everybody. Please, yes. Karen silver Desai. play buttons for all. Yes. Karen Desai says, do you think Ben R.B. Ruttenborn would have done a better job than Elaine with both direct and redirect? Seems like he's better at controlling witnesses. Yes, he is. I do. I, th I think I think, I think. think overall, he's he's just the he just has greater skills than Elaine, personally. That's just my own personal opinion. Connor says, can Amber request a mistrial on account of her lawyers not representing her well? And congratulations on 200K. Fuck Thank no. you, but no. No. No, 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 no. They can only do so much with bad facts. Aldermere says, is there anything JD's team can do to the excessive leading that then informs the next ostensibly non-leading question? Not really, other than objecting and trying to get. Yeah, so Emily's at 387 today. She was at 360 yesterday, so she'll be at 400 tomorrow. Yep. So, um, a train. Thank you again for this, uh, very generous super chat. It says question. If closing arguments will be May 27th and jury deliberations should take about 15 minutes. Should we expect to see your interview with Camille on Monday, the 30th? Sure. Definitely not Memorial Day. Maybe Friday afternoon. She's got nothing better to do. Yeah. 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 Too much. Never enough says weird question with technology. How it is, how is it that do you ever see a time where the jurors aren't live in the court? but are shown video slash feed with all objections removed. I need help with this question. I was reading it, not comprehending it. Um, how, how is it? Do you ever uh, see? Yeah. It's, uh, do you ever see that they wouldn't, the jurors wouldn't have to congregate in the courtroom. They could be wherever and get. Zoom God, I hope not. Evidence. I hope not. I would never want that. Even, even in the, in the time of COVID, I, I just wouldn't want that. You, it's not the same thing as, as being there in person. Yeah. What about holograms? Um, Maybe holograms. Nice holograms. Some some oculuses, maybe hol maybe holograms. Okay. No, I don't want it. RF says, "Why him talking about what JD said to him is not hearsay? Hearsay is confusing AF. It's because <laughs> what he's saying is he is he, so it's a it's it's an opposing party, right? Like he, so he's represent he's this is against Johnny Depp's interests. The things that he is saying that Johnny Depp said. So this is an exception to the hearsay rule. Um, or I guess in some states it's technically in the federal hearsay, system. But, it's not hearsay to yeah, even make things yeah. more complicated." Yeah, but well, I mean, the depositions that the depositions that they let in, they're not exactly following full yeah. rules of evidence. So I mean, if there's like some depositions. Are, depositions are usually a lot more lax because it's more of a discovery exercise. Because I think yes. this question is about IO because he goes off on yes. talking about what Johnny yes. says. But but basically, like people can say, you know, Amber Heard said this thing that was against her interests. People can say Johnny Depp said this thing that was against his interests um, because that's that's generally. It, it it's not hearsay or it's an exception to hearsay is, yeah. is the thing i know hearsay is very confusing it's it takes it takes law students as it happens while, it. while like, we're speaking i'm actually uploading a video that i made explaining hearsay as it's good. brought up in the context of really the, you explained it, it? yeah i broke it down it i actually got a video editor to like put some graphics in walk you through awesome. exactly how it becomes how something comes here so i'll let you know when it finishes uploading i'm literally, awesome. I'm literally doing it as we speak RJH00 says, so is this witness just to embarrass JD? I think it's also to corroborate some portions of like the May 21st incident. I think that's what they're trying to do there. Snazzy Trinkets Jewelry says, these are things he claims Johnny told him, but he himself didn't witness any of this. Why is this admissible? Because... Statement against interest by opposing party. Exactly. Uh, Rob Schechter says, could elements of knowingly in actual malice be defeated by Herd's incorrect memories or mental issues? This no. is up for the jury to determine. I guess so, this but no. I thought, well, but could, I thought it could have been in a different defense. They when they put Hughes up yeah. and said she has no problems, I think it's yeah, up. I think that's toast. Yeah. 
Um, Shipton Blanken says, question for Spidey. I'm sorry, he's not here. What's your opinion on AH behavior during cross of DV slash SV events versus direct? She doesn't seem triggered. This usual in people accused of lying. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, it doesn't necessarily take a behavioral analyst to, to look at that and say, this is weird. She was super emotional talking about all of this stuff. It was like everything was triggering for her. And now all of a sudden it's not. What changed over the break? <laughs> right? It is it it is a little strange because emotions usually you can't just like turn on and off if they're real. Jillian Smanyoto says, can y'all please explain this isn't hearsay and that all objections in the depots have already been addressed. So many people flooding the chat with the same question. Yes, yes, yes. We, we explained this about the, the statement against a party's interests. Kimberly Stewart says, got busted by boss watching the trial behind my bar at work. Oh, no. Question, do you think AH lawyer was throwing? No, I no. couldn't believe how bad that was. Congrats, 200K. Thank you so I much. I think she's doing the best she can in a very difficult situation with an extremely difficult client. Yeah. I yeah, think she knows that she can't trust Amber Heard to yeah, give her the no, right she's, answer. She's not, because she's already giving like all yeah. these hearsay answers. And I'm sure she's yeah. been coached about it many, many times. Yes. So- she is doing the most rational thing probably possible in this situation. Yeah. It's like, well, the only thing I can do is feed her the answer yeah. and hope that somehow I still get back the right answer. That's what's yeah. funny about Amber Heard, because even being fed the answer, you don't, you're not 100 percent sure you're going to get it back, which is hilarious. Yeah. But yeah. I, I think that's what she's trying to do. And she's trying to see how she, she can get away with. Unfortunately, Camille Vasquez is a freaking ninja and also much more aggressive on objections. Yeah. So, no. All right. Natalie says, can they play the 911 call? He really didn't seem distressed during the call at all. I think that the reason why they kept it up was because of hearsay. Um, Dee Marie says, Dr. Tracy, sorry, she's not here. Um, I have CPTSD and misdiagnosed as BP and BPD in the past. I've been in therapy for 12 years with these diagnoses. Will you always need therapy? Oh, I'm so sorry that she's not here. I, I, I definitely can't answer this. I'm so sorry, Dee Marie. Um, Carly says, why is the whole hearsay allowed for IO's video deposition? It seems he was never present when, uh, something happened. It's not credible. What do you think? Plus tell Nate to not talk when he's muted. Uh, we always, we, all of us forget that from time to time. We all mute ourselves. From, you Your know, mileage time. may vary on whether you like Nate muted or not. I mean, it really depends. Uh, <laughs> um, so, so it, it, it this is for the jury to, to, to evaluate, right? Because they're, they're like, okay, this person wasn't there for anything. So what do you have to add? Right? Like this is, that's, it's the same, same, same. My answer on that would be that they likely agreed to this stuff beforehand because they, for one, one reason or another, they said, let's, let's figure out what parts of the deposition we're going to edit in, edit out. And we're waving hearsay. Hearsay, you can wave hearsay as an objection. And then if both sides wave it, it works. So that's the most likely thing to me. If you guys have other theories, I'll, I'll hear them out. Sure. But. Well, uh, well, we're still going to do a lightning round at this point, but, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I... Oh no, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, no, no, no. It's, am I, I supposed I, to I look have... for stuff in star? I don't know what, what the context is that Hoag's trying to find stuff and he's finding stuff no, and you're he, finding he, stuff. I don't know has, what, has, what am I supposed to different... do? What did no, I do? Nothing, nothing. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. Just, um, you know, what we can do is, is if you, if you have, if you have a super fast response to a super chat, just yep. like throw it in there and then just be like, boom. Done. It sounds too uh, much like a game show. I'm gonna like this too much. All right. How would I yes, know? How it. would I know? How do I throw it in though? How do I show you this one? As soon as I you finish, I, fi I finish reading the question. If you have an answer, throw it down. Okay. Sure. <laughs> uh, Warden Shepard says, "Didn't didn't Amber tell a story about Johnny shoving Io and calling him homophobic slurs? Any reason that wouldn't come up in his depo? Maybe it didn't. They cut it out. We don't know. Could be. Elaine's approach sucks. How do you do it better? Like Camille. That's how I would do it. <laughs> Anyway, other, morph, I would say anyway, other than on the lane's way. So. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like Camille is my answer. Mitomorph says, why does JD's team ask questions first in the deposition if she is Amber Heard's witness? That's because in depositions, usually the witness is being called by the opposing side. So they're the ones that are asking the bulk of the questions and the ones that are doing the cross-examination type questions are usually the friendlier attorney. That's just, it's, it's flipped for depositions. KD says, how long do you guys expect the jury to deliberate? Can we get an answer over MDW? One Not day. over Memorial Day weekend, half a week to a week. One day. Yep. Melissa C says, uh, is it possible both of these witnesses are now no longer friends with age conveniently, so they seem more believable? No, I think I, I don't think that they care so much about the, the outcome of the case. I think they care about their own lives and how it impacts their lives. 
I think that's why they're no longer friends. Uh, Joshua D. Jones says, hello from the UK. Question, this change of rhythm is astonishing. Will this alienate the jury given that this is a video objection leading? Uh, we've dealt with video depositions throughout this trial. I think the jury is kind of used to it. It sucks. Everybody hates it because they're boring. You know, you stop paying attention. But I don't, I don't, I don't know that that's going to alienate them. They just might not pay attention. Lore Zero ILP says, question for Home Law. Thoughts on redirect. Thanks, everyone. Tire fire. Boom. <laughs> Raid says, if Johnny can go back on the stand, can Amber as well? Would Johnny's side even need her to after what they did to her? <sighs> yeah, I guess technically she could be subject to recall. Yeah, but I don't I don't think they would want to. I don't think they need to. She's already been destroyed. Uh, Walter Jar says, greetings. How was A.H. Cross and Redirect? Missed it. Uh, Cross was amazing. Redirect was a dumpster fire. Catch it on the replay. Um, or on the recap as well. Uh, Jennifer Lynn says, what was the judge talking about with the jury instruction that they need to come to an agreement on? All of them. All of them. So what she said is the two sides submitted jury instructions. They're competing. They didn't tell the judge even what they had agreed to. She's asking for each side to tell us what they agreed to. And then they're going to have a Friday hearing to actually fight over whatever they're fighting about that she demanded be described to her by Thursday. Yep. 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 Exactly. Hoya says, why didn't the judge say anything about Amber defying the order of the court to sit next to counsel and walking out before the judge and jury? How will that reflect on the jury slash her counsel? She doesn't want. She didn't say anything her. about it because she probably doesn't want to draw extra attention to it because that's she wants to be as neutral as possible. And because she is a respectable judge who understands her role and her assignment. And she's awesome. Um, my, my respect grows for her every day. Every day, I, I, I think more day. and more of this judge. She's got. She's, she's, she's really good. She's really good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and it, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't, it just doesn't look good for Amber or her team in front of the jury. I, I, and they may not, they may not even think much of it, to be honest, maybe, or they yes, might just goes, think, oh, she's goes from zero to negative. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely not good. It's not going to help. That's, that's for sure. Sue Jossa says, please help. When Amber was done with cross and the judge told her to go sit by her attorney and said she walked out by the court to the jury. Is this allowed? I mean, allowed, not allowed. It's just doesn't look good. Very technically <laughs> contempt, but it's not, it's done. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Daisy Beach 23. Like she's not going to be arrested for it. No. <laughs> Daisy Beach 23 says, did JD do enough to prove defamation? I think so. Personally, that's the I'm core of the case. But that's up to the jury, right? That's the ultimate question or one of the two ultimate questions. Um, Steph Jack UK says, discuss the shirt re short redirect and EB giving up train wreck. Well, redirects are supposed to be short. They're supposed to be pithy. But it was an absolute train wreck. I mean, she did not seem like she was exactly ready to go. And she was kind of flying in unprepared. That's how I felt anyhow. And so she just was trying to sort of swarm in. And everything just got completely mucked up and looks even worse than it already did on Cross, which was already really, really bad, in my opinion, um, for Amber's case anyway. Roberta Alton says, Rob, why weren't you in courtroom today? Why were Oh, okay. We, we already was got stolen. That. Yeah. Yes, his space was stolen. Uh, but I, I, do, I do remember seeing that super chat before. Iron M. Town says, question, will Amber get sanctioned for the storm off? No. No. Uh, objectionable law, Ashley D. Harrison. I'm sorry, but how is the fact that this is that this man is transgender relevant to this case at all? It's not. It's just background not at all. Kev White says, award Johnny $2 plus court costs. Mm, mm. I think he's, I think he should probably get a little bit more, but that's just me. Boo, boo 16, boo 17 says JD lifted his, lifted this tribe of broken, untalented a-holes up to free paradise. What did he get in return? Unbelievable. Tyler Bethauser says, is Elaine as bad as Binger from Rittenhouse? I think they are different. They are different. Uh, different kinds of discussions. We could, we could probably have full discussions about like different kinds of attorneys that we've seen in high profile trials and the different things that we've seen positive and negative from them and what we can learn from them. Is Nicholas uh, last name starting with the letter B a death knell is really the question. That's the, that's the YouTube video you have to make. B <sighs> last name trouble. I think so. I think so. <laughs> Nicholas gone says, do you think Amber's team thought they would have already won the jury over by now that by now that they felt comfortable to allow her testimony? This, this was their home run shot. I don't think I they think feel so. they got it. Here we yeah. are. Yeah, I think so. Marie Sand says, why didn't Camille mention age's actual arrest? Did we did we go over this? I think we did. We went through the concept. So I feel it's answered, yeah. but this was not the question we answered. Okay. Well, I'll 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 I'll, fin I'll finish the super chat out, but I'll say we answered it. Uh, uh, it it would have been better to hear age say, Yes, I was arrested, but 
No, yeah, yeah. We we but we did discuss this issue. Chris mm-hmm. P says, "What would happen to the depots Elaine led on?" No, no, out of there. Um, what would happen to the depots Elaine led on? Uh, I can't make sense of this one. I, I, I so she asked questions during one of the depositions. Mm-hmm. Um, it just they get answers. If there's le- yeah, if there's whatever they agreed to let in. You have to understand this. Whenever it comes to any objections in general, that's something that your adverse side has to raise. If oh, I see what agree, this question is now. They agreed to testimony questions? coming in. If they we agreed talked to about Elaine being in, fired. And we talked about Elaine being fired, and the question is, what would happen to the depots she's the voice on? Uh, they would still, they would still, they would still use them. They would have to. No, but that's the what... question. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. I thought okay. it was leading yeah. questions. All right, go ahead. Okay. Good job. Yeah, much simpler. Thank you. ML says, question, it seems like IO was only talking about stuff he had heard from JD, et cetera. If he had given a live testimony, would it all be hearsay? Mm-hmm. Well, it, it's statements against party, party interest, I think. Um, if it's coming from Amber or it's coming from Johnny, then it's that. Um, Ezido says, can Amber file mistrial after that direct redirect? No, that's not <laughs> enough. It's not enough. It's bad, but it's not that bad. Brian Scacheri says, if they didn't have 10 free days to prepare for cross, would it have been as effective and devastating as it was? Close close to being as effective, probably not as de- devastating because they had the transcripts that it might not have had a time to go through and find all the exact quotes to break it down. But still, I don't know the they overall- could have done it over a weekend. Maybe, but uh, maybe. Okay, over a weekend. But if we had to do it the next morning, I doubt I doubt it would have. Sure. Yeah. Junis Moisio says if Elaine well, also they also have other folks at their firm that can still request these transcripts overnight and all that kind of stuff too. They can have double teaming while they're in the courtroom. Potentially. So they're not, I think, they're not I think by the themselves 10 days here. Help. I think the 10 days really help. Sure. Absolutely. It, it didn't hurt them at all. Junis Moisio says if Elaine gets fired, will Rotten Born get her notes equals a paper that reads what if any? <laughs> That's a good one. Yes, I think so. Triple L, yeah, that all of her notes would stay with the case. Triple L, the great hashtag we go up says, just sad. I'm anti celebrity. They will never change drugs to stay irrelevant. They don't care. We don't care. All they care about is money. LOL drugs. Well, I mean, they're humans. They care about other stuff as well. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far personally. I, I think, I think I've, I've, I have seen enough to see Johnny Depp's humanity in this case. That I feel like I can I can understand him and I can empathize with him, despite the fact that he's a rich celebrity that owns an island, you know, like that's and that has just been part of the effectiveness of his attorneys and also him as a witness. Um, and by the way, he's not perfect. I'm recognizing that as well. He definitely has his things that he needs to take care of. Um, but just like any other human being, Ames says A.H. needs a lane. Runborn won't do the crazy bits. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, Reda Naha says, how the hell did Depp lose the UK trial? And what's your opinion on P- Judge Penny Asgarati? Well, that's easy. I like her a lot every single day. Like Joe said, every day she gets better. Or well, our, our respect for her grows every day. Um, she's amazing. I, I have seen nothing that makes me like, ooh, I don't like this judge. Nothing, nothing, nothing. She's wonderful. Um, and then it's a it's a different case because it was not against Amber. It was against the son. And so they had he had to prove that the son didn't have reason to believe that what she was telling them was the truth. There's all kinds of things. And also he wasn't able to bring in all kinds of evidence. He, they weren't even, they weren't able to bring in any expert witnesses. There's a lot of things that we'll go over at some point on this channel after this trial is over after, after closing at some point, we will go over it for sure um, to talk about it. Uh, but there's a lot of differences between the two cases. Steenerson Stevens says, is it possible they downplay the events in testimony because they are afraid of getting sued by a rich person? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that that could, that can always be, that can always be something. I mean, I assume you're talking about Rocky and IO. That can always be the case, I suppose. Um, Batman on a bike says, good shout. Amber could be investigated in the UK for lying to high court. Source, express.co.uk. I'm seeing that around Twitter um, this evening as well. Celia says, does Amica Cream speed up the healing from this cross and redirect? Of course. We'll, We'll find out, right? Just how miraculous it is. Barbers of BT45 says, did you notice the coffee cup she is holding and drinking from in the video where JD is slamming cabinets is the exact same as the coffee cup that was on the stage breakfast table? Is yes, a it coffee was. Flask? Yes. Exact same thing. Uh, Nick just broke 400K. Congrats. Congrats, Nick. Mommy Makala says, um, there are pics of the Australian mansion online. No phone. Interesting. 
Calvin Wilson says, will anything come of Amber's claim that she turned over evidence that wasn't provided? At one point, she was confronted with a picture of her not having an injury, and she claimed there was a pic of the bruise under her makeup. I don't think so. I I, I, I don't think that that's – I don't think anything more is really going to come up from that. Um, it was a frustrating moment for, for Camille. Um, they might get a jury instruction on that, actually, is, is what I think – so I, I, I'm taking that back. They might get a jury instruction on that for the jury to say, if you didn't see anything in here, it's because it wasn't admitted and you're not to consider that there could be anything more than that. Narek now Nawak says, can we talk about TMZ slip up the way she grabbed her face? Spidey must have a huge take on that. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, great yeah, moment. yeah. 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 Great yeah, moment. Yeah. 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 This whole thing about her, her potentially leaking those photos or the, the video to TMZ and selling it to TMZ. Camille got her. She got her on that 100%, I think. Um, Jem Bay says, consensus among you before was that a defamation case is very hard to win. At what point did you guys decide this case is in the bag for Johnny? I don't know, but I I don't know if you'll ever hear us really saying that it's in the bag because anything, any new evidence can come in that we haven't seen, right? In the bag. All right, Joe. Joe says it's in the back. You made a liar of Alita in ten seconds, Joe. Come on, <laughs> less than that. <laughs> it's in. I mean, but I'm 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 fairly close to saying it's in the back. I mean, because of the fact that Amber's testimony did it for me. Is is that's that's been the the final nail for me. Look, and then 80, not 20. hearing corroboration from other people so far right after her. I said eighty twenty, but that's as close as m- me personally will ever get to saying that felt like Johnny Depp one. Pretty right. damn strong, mm-hmm. if you ask me. Um, Jonathan Lev says, fact, Elaine spent more time on Johnny's looking at AH comment without objection than any part of the redirect. Impressive. Uh, Jonathan Preziosi. Did, did Prezioni. didn't she? What a good yeah. comment. Jonathan Preziosi said, I just recommended you guys to a total stranger. Someone came into my job <laughs> with his phone watching clips of the trial from the mainstream media. Puke. I should, uh, out, you yeah. guys chant. Oh, I shot you guys Go. channel. Yeah. showed you guys channel uh told him you get real lawyers and live stream hey, thank you so much that's awesome uh carl webster says mike Duhin, five times 500 cc wood champion uh owns the house they stayed in in australia ah under investigation for perjury in australia could face 10 years in prison interesting raw zero sugar says number one priority for abusers is to isolate the victims jd invites their whole support network such potential witnesses to live with them ah equals threatened by kids yep uh, X Files Inc. says Shectring to get her B earring on TikTok. Interesting. Uh, Ellen G says, I think H looks at jury because Dr. Curry did. Could be. Uh, to hedge too. She also probably was was said that you know making an making eye contact connection with them is a good thing, but I had since overdone it. Lexi Autumn Stab says, Coke for those of us with neuro spicy brains can be similar to ADHD meds, also stimulants. JD likely clear minded and low aggro. If anything, ADHD equals wild emotion dysregulation, stimulants equals balance. Interesting. Could be. Yeah. That that would that seems logical. Carrie Hennehan says, I, I have ADHD. Prescribed speed slows my head down. Interesting. Angela Asbury says, Are there line holders for tonight? It sounds like it. Based on what Rob said, I am spliff, but contact Nurse Liz if you have questions in case they they need anybody else. I am spliff says, does it matter that it wasn't on a talk show in Denmark where Amber was, but a talk show in the Netherlands? They misspoke yesterday. I don't think it matters. No, it doesn't. But Dutch, mm-hmm. Dutch, Danish. You want to get that right. To, to, I mean, you do want to get They're the same right, place. I think one of them's made up. Ultimately, all that matters is that they saw this clip themselves and they saw what Amber said. That's the only thing that really matters. It could have been in the United States. It could have been on the moon. It That's right. Matter. I said I thought it was in German. I got like six thousand chats about how I'm. That idiot. too. I think they're I'm all. Part of, I think they're all part of Germany. Wasn't? I think at one point they were all part of Germany. Totally I think there was a lot of history about that. <laughs> well, I got someone um, saying, your name is Hogue. How could you not recognize it? I'm sorry. <laughs> something. Something Snore, forthright source, joke. Write your own. Snore, Snore Sorcerer and says, could you sum up the day in fast terms? Win for Johnny. I have been watching on and off today as yeah. it is Norway's national day. Love the stream. Yep. Yeah. I, I think Consider it summed up. Win for Johnny. Win for yeah, Johnny. Ten, 10 million for yeah. Johnny. Yeah. Uh, or you could also say, on the other hand, dumpster fire for Amber Heard. AG says, is this the most publicized case in modern history? I don't know about that. Well, Job it is trial, pretty international. Red in house trial. Uh, OJ. This is more international than the Rittenhouse trial, though. That's OJ true. was the whole summer. Yeah. Whole summer. 
Yeah, but majority, modern yeah. history is that is that close enough to be modern? Don't make me fight for the nineties. It was only modern nineties. It was only twenty I know, years I know. ago. I just, I just, I just wanted this, to see what your reaction would be. This, she just wanted, she just wanted to say the nineties, Rick. Really, with just, those Jurassic just, parks. I was oh. in kindergarten. You guys, Ooh. get out of here. I just <laughs> Alita from her own channel. Is that a thing that's possible? I'm, I'm done. Just to point out to you, just to point out to you that um, as far as this, the mag size and magnitude of this trial. The Rittenhouse trial, trial, statistically by the numbers of viewers, it literally a joke compared to this trial. I think so. Just, just, oh, just, no. to, just to give an example, Emily Baker today had 130,000 at one point watching her channel. LawTube yeah. collectively had over had roughly 250,000 people watching them. Yeah. And and that's just and LawTube. That's, that's just LawTube. Or not TikTok or tw that's, Twitch. And, and I'm not even including the lead attorney who, pro and I'm not, and 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 I don't know if Viva was going today either. I think so Nate could, also was streaming part of it. Yeah, so I'm saying is it probably was over three hundred thousand between LawTube, and and we were killed by by um, Law and Cux. So yeah, that's for comparison's sake. There's there's like a, literally a million people watching at one time. For comparison's sake, on the final day when the verdict was being delivered. At, at the written house, finally trial. got to 100,000. We finally got to 130th at that point on, on Nick's yeah. channel, we which was far away. And that was the biggest. That was the biggest crime. That was yeah. the biggest. This trial is literally three times the size, if not more, what written house was, as far as the yeah. interest by the public at large. That's how significant yeah. it is because yeah. it's, there's, no there's no politics in it. It's just this is That's just true. drama and theater. And, and, and a lot of people started to feel like this is good versus evil and like, and, yeah. and justice coming. So yeah. yeah, 2012 Jameson says, "What was the worst part for AH today?" Well, I don't know. Yes, Take your pick. Take your pick. Waking Honestly. up. Waking up. Uh, Serana Ham says, "Love the coverage, guys." Off topic question: I'm a big wrist fan, wrist wrist watch fan. Just curious if you guys are too, and what you guys are wearing. Thanks. We yes. got this question yesterday. Still a Garmin, same as yesterday. And I'm wearing an Invicta. I've got some Seikos, a Rolex, some Timex, and I think uh, I got a pocket watch in there somewhere too. Oh, nice. Yeah. To hedge two says why Elaine didn't show the medical record about the broken nose during redirect and just pointed that Johnny's team have it probably because it doesn't it's not exist. Very good. Yeah, it doesn't exist. Or if it does, yeah, no, it doesn't exist because Amber heard it said that it doesn't exist. Um, it's like the limit in Mean Girls. The limit does not exist. Anyway, Nicholas Cardio says JD and Camille. <laughs> I saw your facial reaction, Rick. Uh, JD and Camille hung twice inside kiss when a h walks out i ship them when you guys think well I, i'm kiss. i'm interested Side in kiss. reading your shipping i'm interested in reading all the shipping attempts because those sound like promising so i'm sure that's on a subreddit send somewhere your fanfic to kurt send your fanfic they are, they send your fanfic just like shipping Indian homes right now or to uncivil kissing. law on twitter Actually, they're, they're getting just, into they're, it. They're, they're getting into they're, it. Back, they're playing. Yeah, this is them playing. They're they're best friends. I'll read out the best ones on stream. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Batman on the back says, "I'm a Pisces, and my type doesn't believe in star signs." Yep. Zara Seifert says, "How does cross work for pre-recorded hostile witnesses?" Same way. The way that before. we saw. Yeah. Yeah. Same way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lady Dingo says, Hogue, the real question is, when is R2-D2 online going to allow us to make money easier? It's BS. Sort it out, will you? What's this rumor about Take Two? I just love that you read Red Dead Redemption 2 is R2-D2. <laughs> I, I, just, I, I can't add to the value of that particular text. Uh, <laughs> they're never going to get let you get money easier. It is not in Take Two's long-term plans. Don't believe in Red Dead Redemption 2 online. Get excited for Shark Cards and Grand Theft Auto 6. That's my answer. There okay. you go. Sorry, puppy. Lee's getting attacked by all sorts of animals up in that. A little corner. bit, yes. a little bit. So let's uh, let's lightning round it. We've got a little bit over a hundred left. Okay, I can, can see this. fifty-one just incidentally. So I've got. I see one. In case you need me to carry over. Dealy Moo says, "I actually have a serious question. Will there be cross X during rebuttal? Flabber, flabber. Yes, yes. yes. Oh, I have yes. another same, one. Same procedure. Uh, uh, I have another one, Alita. Okay, okay. Go I have ahead. A state of Brett. Wait, wait, wait. Did anyone see the TV in the court? Ah, yes, I did see that one before. It's interesting that that it still has. I, they're just you. sitting here. Okay, so if we already did that, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Chris P says A H book title objection too much foundation. I like it. Vicky says in Australia, one woman per week and one man per month is killed by DV. Rarely, if any, will there be a witness to these a dead bodies found. DV and SV occurs behind closed doors. Listen True. to Dr. Tracy, hundred percent. True Absolutely. enough. In general, but of course, these people are in the very in the public eye, so. Not so true, maybe for them in particular, but 
fair enough in general. Right, 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 right. Um, Mildly Sober says, AH Autobiography, how I shit the bed with my lies. Nice. Tails DM says, how will AH leaving before the jury and turning her back to the jury affect her with the judge and jury? Yeah, I I just, I don't know. I I don't know, but it doesn't look good. Regular 30 says, whoops. Uh, Regulator 30 says, I just have more empathy for JD after Iowa's testimony supported JD being troubled, hurting, isolated, and this impacted his whole life and relationships. I agree. Uh, Samir P says, didn't Amber make financial demands? Oh, this, I just realized this is sh- shadowing me. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> I was like, okay. Anyway. Uh, didn't Amber make financial demands of Johnny before she went public with her allegation? Did Johnny's team use that in order to prove her motives? I was surprised it didn't pop in that divorce attorney settlement request letter was not introduced in lacrosse but yeah. we did see it yeah 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 yeah. michelle says what parts of the trial are left and what do you think will happen on what days ej cross for amber johnny closing arguments well it sounds like we're gonna have whitney testify tomorrow um so we have two days and then we have four days right yeah yeah so we're gonna have whitney and we're gonna have Wh- rocky finish uh, it, yeah, Rocky's gonna finish. Whitney is gonna Johnny Depp, I guess, testify. for be two days for some reason. Yeah, Maybe Johnny's gonna get called for Maybe. two. Could be. I mean, it'll take at least that long if they do it. That's well, two three days. I would think. No, I don't, I don't think it'll take that long because it's it's a rebuttal. It's very limited in scope. I well, no, I strictly speaking, they can go into further depth if they're calling him as a witness. They can open the scope again. So, um, okay, Nate. So, Taylor says, guys, what's the over under? Amber wears a white power suit tomorrow. <laughs> Congrats on joining Kaylita. Thank Decent. you. Oh, yeah. I think I think there's a, there's a chance of it. And Elle says, question if JD wins, could he request 50 million pledge to charity of his choice fulfilled by X percent of all future AH's contracts? Coverage, lightning. Congrats for subs. Thank you. Uh, no. Yeah, I don't think so. I think no. he, just, he gets what he gets and that's it. Um. Uncle of Bailey, how's it going? Uncle. Oh, it's going all right. Um, we are here at the Proto line, although we've been chased away from the actual courthouse. But um, <laughs> somebody sent us pizza. Oh, nice. Little Caesars <laughs> bonus. Nope. I uh, there's people following all of this on the internet, so there is pizza here. So Excellent. nice, amazing. Awesome. Ian's the most popular person in the line. Yes. <laughs> um, maybe not. He's like, all of you save me a spot. Don't let anybody cut in front of me. <laughs> oh, we're uh, we're all banding together because we're all here. You know, we got uh, we got stickers. I got number twenty eight here, and um, we're not gonna put up with uh, stickers. Sort of... Is that BS from yesterday? What's it? yeah? That was some well, BS. I, I don't know why they put up with the BS yesterday. So I don't know if you know the details, but when when the people showed up and just tried to hijack the line, what happened? Uh the sheriffs just let it happen, like the deputies. Their their position is basically that it's not their job to enforce the line. We figure that out. Their job is just to tell us where we can and can't be. Fair enough. Um, the problem is, is that if you know that's the sort of thing that can turn into a fist fight, and I don't want to be a witness to a fist fight at a courthouse in a foreign country. Well, the sheriffs so, are there, so they got that going for them. Yeah, but still, like. <sighs> It would be much better if this was organized in a way that uh, minimized conflict instead of maximizing it. Because when you're just saying, oh, well, somebody can show up five minutes before and wedge themselves into the line, and the only remedy you have is to, you know, like nobody's in- able to enforce it, what else is going to happen? Well, I believe Virginia might is a constitutional carry state. So, you know, someone could be packing. Shoot them. It is not constitutional carry. Okay. Uh, it is, uh, open it's carry. open carry, though, without a license. Open carry without a license. Uh, they honor all 50 states. You can still carry licenses. However, you cannot carry in a courthouse. You can't carry in and the I courthouse. Just, That's true. I just, does that also apply to the courthouse grounds? No. Uh, I did not see signs. I saw signs on the doors. I did not see signs anywhere else. So you yeah. can open carry in Virginia without a permit. So if as long as you have the firearm visible, it's legal. Um, yeah, it's just inside the courthouse. From, from Virginia yeah i mean but that is a potential problem is that somebody might be sitting there and you know gets their wristband and then uh you know or waits for a wristband and decides they're really really upset 
I don't want to see that, but I'm concerned that, you know, if they're not managing the line and managing things that, you know, there's all sorts of possibility for people to get real upset with each other. Arian Fowler, so kind of you. Yes. Uh, thank you. Else. Yeah, um, there is a giant stack of pizza. I cannot eat all of this, so I hope other people are hungry. I'm sure uh, they will be. I'm sure they will be. You'll make fast friends. I think this is my body weight in pizza. <laughs> Excellent. You need, you need to get out of here. She is like going through trash. She's being a trash dog. Um. Anyhow, uh, let me let let me get some let me get some super chats here because we're we're trying to do some lightning round before I hit twelve hours. Um, got a Please, little over hundred. Try to Sorry. find my headphones. Alive. I'm on the oh, live. <laughs> Are you? Well, here. Um, I just what's your name? Core TV Hi. and Core TV and LawTube. Hey, how's it going? Hello. Hi, I'm a body language expert at Core TV, and I'm doing a Nancy Grace special Friday. Excellent. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, you're on Legal Bites. Uh, Legal Bites. And also Hi. here, I'm Runkle of the Bailey. Uh, we've got Hogue Law of Virtual Legality. Uh, good logic and uncivil law. Well, sort of the well, group. I'm here. at Body Language Institute on TikTok. Cool. Awesome. Um, awesome. I will look awesome. you up. Um, yeah, I'm the author of a book called You Can't Lie to Me. Oh, I saw that book. I saw that. Uh, yeah, I know who you are now. Yeah, I used to work for ACF, and then uh, I weigh in on all the this. My, it's not just body language statement analysis. Like yeah. I say, Amber says the word like. It felt like he hit yeah. my head, or it seemed yeah. like, or yeah. you know. Stuff like that. So I weigh in on both body language and the word. She Excellent. uses kinda. It kinda <laughs> felt like he hit my head. I said, yeah. when there's a kinda, there's more to find. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. But it should, yes, it should yes. be when there's a like or a kinda, there's more to find. She does that. And then when she talked about the phone hitting her face, I don't know if you noticed, but she gestured with her left hand, the phone hitting yes. her face, yeah, but yeah, the yeah, bruise yeah. was on the right side yeah. of her face. Oh, yeah. It's a subtle detail. I'm sure she forgot what side of her face it was. It's no problem. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's fine. Anyhow. And she said she would never hurt, would never hurt Johnny when asked if uh, she beat him. And you may know this as lawyers. They, uh, criminals will often use our lies. We use minimizing language. Um, Jerry Sandusky, who molested a bunch of kids out of Penn State, said he would never hurt kids when asked if he molested them. Yeah. R. Kelly, when asked if he kidnapped the girls, young girls, and held them caught hostage, he said he would never do something like that. And Johnny came out and said, everyone's saying I'm a wife beater. And if, in fact, he was a wife beater, he would have said instead, everyone's coming out saying I abuse women or I hurt women. He didn't minimize, but Amber did yesterday on the stand. So, yep. There you go. Yep. Yep. Cool. Yep. Let's get some super chats here. Thematic says, uh, Hogla, how much DPS was AH hit by hit with by CV? And do you think a dot was applied to AH character in the eyes of the jury? Can AH get a lucky proc def or a tank? It's all video games. Games. The answer is I'm uh, just reading she's words. A, it's a big hit. She's not going to be able to come back from it. I don't think that's what happened in video game terms and the law. Yeah. Just, just to let you know, my video finished uploading. So if you're conf- still confused about what hearsay is, check a video go. that I just dropped. I dropped the link in the private chat here. I don't know if you could like post it in there. All right, so, we're doing lightning round. We got and then we, lightning, and then lightning, 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 lightning. Because I gotta, I gotta get yeah, out of here in thirty minutes because I, then I hit the twelve hour mark. Uh, Phil Jones says, but can we get Alita to say schmo schmooners because best Texans money can buy? Not, Not gonna get me money. to say it. Not even for money. Ha! Hook them. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <Pretty fun. laughs> And AG says best moment today, 2016 depot of Amber's TMZ comment and resulting age covering her mouth is mine. That was a good moment. Uh, ZKFSU says, what should we expect from Whitney's testimony? Johnny punched me. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Uh, S painkiller says, was sad. How mean, how mean she mad fun, made fun of Johnny's movie career. He is J freaking D lady demeaning. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, Cynthia Roberts says, I think when age loses, she will appeal for inadequate and incompetent representation thoughts. Okay, yeah. Works. Okay. She might, but I don't think she's going to win. Carrie Baronado says if Amber's t- sister testifies stairs in the same manner, what's the over under on them calling Kate Moss? Well, I think, I think already there's, there's a strong over under on calling Kate Moss regardless. <clears throat> Lauren Klepper says, what are DUI guys observations of jury when Elaine gave up and Amber stormed out? Don't know. Um, also age book title would be turds and loathing in los angeles uh yeah yeah we haven't heard from him yet but hopefully we will soon uh rolando lopez says would it be enough 
just to hear they saw JD hit AH at this point from AH witness. To me, she has lost credibility. That's a jury question. We don't know what what, what they're going to consider abuse. So. Thank you. 2012 Jameson says, DUI guy, what was jury reaction when AH left? I don't know. We haven't seen him yet. Um, hopefully we'll hear. Maybe tomorrow we'll hear from him. Ilya Z says, what is your price to represent her as of now? Oof. <laughs> I'm never, 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 One never, million. never. <laughs> never. Uh, how good are you? $100 think? million. Dollars. Everybody needs a zealous advocate. Everyone needs one, but you need to make sure that you are the right one for that client. I am not the right one for Amber Heard. For $100 Nina's million, dollars, I'll be the right one for the client. I'll tell you what. Uh, you're I'm get licensed that in Virginia. Kurt? I'm ready to go. Let's do it. You're going to get that Ina. escrow, Kurt? <laughs> um, Ina says, Alita, do you do you have rep to contact JD team? Chat, get on it. Uh, uh, we'll make communications after trial is over. Right now, they don't have time for communications. We don't want to flood them with stuff Mm -hmm. because that they don't have time for it right now um but we could talk about it after trial is over after her testimony and cross in hindsight how do you think the cross of hughes seem now i'm going to tell you right now i don't i don't like the cross of hughes but i will tell you tonight on my stream i'm going to explain why it is specifically that hughes career as a as testifying witness is done cooked forever yeah there we go jjm says please can you explain the rebuttal process who gets last word why does recorded deposition have less hearsay challenges because depositions are meant for discovery they're meant for getting information so they are much more loose in their rules but the rebuttal process it's the same uh, same thing i mean except that the the witnesses are usually usually limited in scope because they're responding to something in amber Heard's case in chief that wouldn't have come up in johnny's case in chief um but same thing uh direct cross-examination redirect Tori Zvorak says y'all made my day hi from minnesota hashtag go camille awesome mm-hmm. um rebecca horton says rn here says uh to answer the mri question yes you can see healed injuries on an mri and it will give you a better estimate on how old the injury is help that helps that does help thank you what if anything says kurt remember when you believed ah at first i sent in a super chat to ask what your history with women is she might be like girls you've dated in the past and triggered you well they necessarily believed her i just had difficulty reading her which is a slightly different proposition sure Spike 1252 says, does Amber get a say in the final jury members? And if so, is that why she keeps looking at them? Thanks. No, it's random. Random, random. Cray Cray 444 says, the difference between age and other people who suffer from PD is that age is a predator. I have compassion for people who suffer these issues, but I have zero compassion for a predator. Makes sense. Mick Knit 05, and the jury might feel the same way, by the way. Mick Knit 05 says, last time I saw a defendant hurt their own case so bad, I was a baby lawyer doing court appointment on a minor possession case, and they literally came to court while intoxicated. Oh, God. Nice. Coffee Crisp says, how much weight will will Whitney's testimony have as a Amber Heard's sister? It'll be discounted. It'll be discounted, and it'll depend on how she comes across, honestly. Tattooed Birdie says, I didn't take all the was a misfire, the sexual assault. Um, I took it as she can't keep her stories together in sequence. Plus, I think it was still new to that date in devil advocate spirit. She's saying yeah, Camille no. didn't screw up there. I just said it wasn't as clean as it should have been. Yeah. Uh, Charlie Harris says, what did the judge mean when she asked at the end of, uh, when they, at the end for counsel to submit their objections for her That was for the judge instructions. That's going to happen this week. Yep. Uh, Janie Kennedy says, please do in the style of Crocodile Dundee, give him your wallet. Why? Because he's got a knife. If you go watch no, the stream, I say not a knife. This is a knife. knife. <laughs> if you go watch the stream, I do that while it happens when the knife comes out. Hey Brie, we're doing lightning round Hello. super chats. Cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, because I'm I'm trying to end this stream within 30 minutes, and I've got 81 super chats left. So we're doing we're doing lightning round. If you want to answer, roll, roll. like roll, run in and like answer in super fast to like like lay it down. This is we're we're, we're gamifying it. Santa okay. says. <laughs> after the case is over would it be possible to get ben chu or camille vasquez for legal bites interview that's what i want make, awesome. let's make it happen please i would love that desperately winged paragon says age stormed out once on redirect once redirect was over is that not disrespectful any reprimand yes. on a scale of yep. 10 yes. one being lowest how brutal was cross overall it was brutal, brutal. 10 not a nine <laughs> 10 nine and a half 10 i refuse 10 no. yes yeah uh <laughs> Uh, it was it was this one goes to 11 um seriously it was bad it was disrespectful not not sanctions or anything like that though it's just bad sierra says i may have missed it but did anyone notice the single gucci b earring the age wore in her left ear yesterday troll move hashtag my dog stepped on a b maybe could be 
<laughs> uh, could be. Uh, Samuel Chan says, if the Sun publishes another article calling JD a wife beater in the future, will they be liable in light of new evidence? We have we can have a whole discussion about that. Maybe, maybe not, because the UK judgment still stands. It's a different judgment, so probably they probably are going to be okay. Actually, um, <clears throat> uh, Michelle says, why has AH's counsel asked so many questions that were objectionable by 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 JD's team? Bad at their job, or just genuinely difficult to avoid? They don't trust. Difficult Amber. situation, and they suck. So <laughs> difficult to trust Amber. I think I think trust is is an ultimate thing here that is that is gone. Rinkit seventy seven says, LOL, DUI guys, lawyer ad pinned on his Twitter looks like. A Tim and Eric style parody. What's up with American lawyer ads? So cringe. Hi from Europe. Hire me as your lawyer. <laughs> I'll fight for you. <laughs> Sahil Naran says, is Elaine allowed to mock slash impersonate Johnny? That was <laughs> bullshit. Good comment. Yeah. Next. That was, yes. Yes, it was. It was, yeah. It, it, that was bad. Especially <laughs> being an officer of the court. It was very disrespectful. Not someone that, not something that is a proper decorum. Heather Brand is right. that people with, pers with personality disorders is to have no insight. They have no concept of how they contribute to their problems. That's exactly what we're seeing with AH. I wouldn't do broad brush strokes quite like that, though, considering what we've heard from Dr. Honda and Dr. Tracy about BPD. But I, I, I think I get your point. Obi-Wan Classic says, can you inquire DUI guy about the jury's court's reactions to the disturbing age taunting video? I can't imagine that went down well. But, yeah, when, when we get a chance, when he when he can come around at some point. Absolutely. I'm dying to know myself. And Lu Amanda Lucero Serenity says, if Whitney takes a stand, could she be a possible hostile witness? Not to Amber. Well, she would be a hostile witness to Johnny's case. So that's, it's just because it means that she's adverse to one of the sides. So to mm -hmm. them, she's hostile. Um, Piper's Muse says, question for the full panel. Please discuss the possible effects of this case on DV victims' fear of reporting given the current woke, social, political, and medical psychiatric climate. Oh, I, I don't think we can there. get into a robust yeah. discussion at this point, uh, but it, it could have some impact for, for some. I think that ultimately, you know, uh, making reports to the police, maybe not so much of an impact, but I think that we, mm -hmm. on a broader scale, as far as men, male DV cases, I think that there, a lot of people's eyes have been opened um, in order to accept those kinds of cases without as much ridicule, um, hopefully without ridicule at all. Um, I, I would like to think that a lot of people's eyes have been, have been opened quite a bit. Um, B says, I'll help find sound add on. Am I able to DM you? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. DM me for sure. Uh, hopefully I can uh, start your message with like Chrome plugin or something. So I can hopefully see it. Cause I, I get a lot of DMS. You are wrong. Says always had makeup, but Franco touched her face. He did mm. in the elevator a little bit. Debbie Vincent says, I saw somewhere a juror was dismissed today. Haven't seen her that. Brian Blevin says, did it feel like Elaine just threw in the towel for that redirect? Thanks to all of you for helping us make sense of all this. Go law tube. Uh, it felt like she gave up. In the moment, it at felt the, like she at gave the, up. At, at the very end, yes. But I when think she that, sat down on redirect. I was like, she gave up. She threw up. Yeah, she yeah, yeah, she did. She did. She did. Um, but I think that ultimately she did still make her her best effort before that point. And I think that it just was a disaster for her to just step into anyway from the beginning. Steve asks, is Amber's book shitting in the bed why everyone else is a liar, especially the dogs? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Law School Grit says, question one out of two. Um, AH's mental health issues really showed. Queen C had to have some calm moments so the jury didn't feel so uncomfortable. Get to 300K, Alita. Thank you. And then two out of two. What one question would you have asked today? What are you doing right now if you're Elaine? If I'm Elaine, I'm having a big mega pint of wine um big mega pint big mega pint and then what's the one question that i would ask uh, uh, I the, the question that i would ask is about the medical records for every single injury that you have zero zero medical records for any of these injuries that you say you my god my god why have you forsaken me can i can i be relieved of <laughs> counsel <Sure. laughs> oh so it's asking us as, as elaine's counsel yes, oh, yes. that's what uh, elaine should ask that's her dude, question oh, geez, may yeah. i be relieved this counsel yeah. Cam Thompson says Rob's logo should be Rob as Paul Bunyan with giant gavel over the shoulder and legal blue ox as companion auction of my prize and give the money to a local abuse help society love law tube. Oh my God. I love that. That's awesome. That's a great idea. Somebody, somebody draw that up and, and put it on like the legal bites, Reddit or something credit or crystal says, can we revisit right before lunch? CV was able to push a H to say, I didn't feel I needed to where CV asked about the op-ed title on the tweet. I don't remember her saying I didn't feel I needed to, but that, but she did, she did get, I think what she needed out of Amber for that 
the, the, the title as, as it relates to the tweet. Um, Kay Mallory says, is an appeal by the losing side expected following this trial? What, if anything, are we to do with our time when this is over? Watch we'll more law tube. More yeah, law yeah. tube. We, we're still talking about cases. It might not be this case, but yeah. we're talking about all kinds of cases. Um, and throw articles at us for stuff to talk about. When you when you see a case in the news that is interesting, toss them at us. We'll talk Greg about Hudson it. Greg Hudson says, I'm digging all of you law tube guys. You're changing the landscape of citizen involvement in a much needed way. Thank you for your nice Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Kay Stewart says, could... AH concede and try to settle to avoid further embarrassment. No, it's done. Not She's done. Point. She's cooked. Yeah. Claudia Hart Hardison says, if Amber wants peace and to be left alone, can she explain why she wrote the op-ed? Also, why the full <laughs> amount wasn't donated by the end of 2018? She did donate the full amount. <laughs> Great return. <laughs> Yes, she yes. donated. Yeah. Earn says bummed Stevie didn't show video of AH leaving courthouse after getting TRO, then pick of her next day with nothing on her face. Wouldn't that have helped? Yeah, but she had so much that was helpful. She didn't need it. She honestly didn't need it, in my opinion. Tanner Belfer says, Do you put Amber storming out today by disrespecting the judge, jury, and counsel mm, in your closing? No. Petty. Not, it seems and petty. you can do it subtly. Leave it. Leave it. Probably leave it, is leave better it where answer. it is. Leave it where it is. Ruby Rudy says, I do tax advice, licensed tax preparer here. The answer is donations are limited to 30 or 60% of AGI, depending on the 501c3. CTEC number A152872. Love you guys. Thank you. Uh, not my advice. Not, not an not official my... opinion of the Legal Bites YouTube channel. Yeah, Thank you. Definitely. That's my D, uh, Johnny. Was AH the husband JD never had? <laughs> oh, no. Thank you, Bob Sinclair. That's funny. Uh, Kathy at 40 says, Doesn't AH's admission that she screamed when JD spilled wine on her make the scream that IO heard over the phone less impactful? Could be. Mm -hmm. She screams a lot from what it sounds like. Mm. Uh, Kika Rojas says, as lawyers, do y'all feel bad for Elaine? I mean, she's nope. trying, but I Amber do. is just an awful person. I do a little bit, a little yeah. bit, a little bit. Uh, Cynthia do. Joe doesn't have sympathy. <laughs> Joe is a robot. I wanna, Cynthia I Habinga crush says, my enemies. <laughs> Cynthia, Cynthia Habinga says, I thought the ENT was discussed yesterday that an age stated that she had not seen an ENT. Am I missing misremembering a the question then got redirected to dentistry? Yeah, she's indicated no. she got one in the interim period and then she tried to enter it, and then she tried to enter it again and she lost all the times. Yep. Gerard Hitler or Gerald Hitler. Sorry. Oh my god, I'm so, I'm so very sorry. Gerald Hitler. <laughs> god. I, yeah, says Alita deserves big credit for inventing the panel stream. Way more entertaining than solo streams. To ho love to hug for the most rational commentary. I didn't invent it. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna claim that. No, no. I no, give no, you a lot no. of credit, Alita. You didn't invent. We have the panel, had. I don't think. We have had many panels on on Law Two for a long time. It's it's been a long time. I, I'm never gonna claim any of that. The Written House trial was the first one to do a full gavel to gavel live stream with panels. So, so no, no, no. I, I appreciate it. I, I, I love you to death for, for that, for those accolades, but I, I will not claim them ever. Lisa Kaufman yeah. says, um, I so wish I'd had your analysis during OH, the Dr. Husel spring 2022 thoughts on Jose Baez. I have I no know. thoughts on any of those words. Yep. <laughs> I think, I think you might be talking about the baseball player Baez. Um, I'm sorry. Could be. Um, later date correct, ruby rudy 30, says slight correct 30 50 or 60 percent okay all right S still not my statement uh but yes <laughs> um me amina says now i know why i get mike and rick so well libra's rock my daughter is a virgo still love you all question if johnny wins how much of a chance does amber have for an appeal approaching zero nothing. yeah yep Rochelle Hurenkamp says, my first super chat to anyone ever because of the amount of work you're doing is wild. How? You must be exhausted. Hope you can get some sleep soon. That's what weekends are for, honestly. Sleep is for the end of the trial. Cynthia Roberts says, if AH loses, do you think she will file an appeal based on incompetent or inadequate representation? Maybe I, that I never wins. That never, ever might, works. She might file it, but she's not going to win it. never, ever works. It never works. No. Her, counsel, no. her counsel's awake. Yeah. Yeah. So. L yeah. LS says, why no. is it IOS? <laughs> Why isn't IO's testimony objected to for hearsay? Well, because it's it's, they it's proper to use it. Yes. They consented. Okay. consented deposition statement against interest. Next. Yes. Uh, Betty M says, can you review Markle FSU law professor murder murder trial? I'm Maybe. going to screenshot. I know a little it. bit about it. It's pretty fucked up. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't know, but I'm screenshotting it to, for yeah. for later. It's Bernhard says. Killer. What options? Or, yeah. What options does AH have for a potential appeal? Presuming Johnny wins, zero. At this point, yep. at this point, zero. Arvin says, given the long history of questionable sexual assault allegations by white women resulting in bad outcomes, often lynchings of non-white men, how does the jury's demographics play into AH's narrative? Well, that's a lot of uh, assumptions in your question, man. Jeez, man. Yeah, I, I, 
Well, that's for I mean, sociologists, really. That question is okay, really for sociologists. That's for, that's for sociologists, but also this is a different kind of case because that doesn't really apply to this case because it's white and white. So I would say mm -hmm. that this is a different situation than that. I think if it were white and black, you know, or white or any person of color, I think that we could have probably a dialogue on that, but it doesn't seem to, to Smart. be relevant here. Smart answer. Um, Jax Perro says, uh, at this point, would a, even one I saw him hit her be enough? Anything... Everything AH has touched is now in the shadow of doubt. We have to be believable, they but we can't guess it. They, they we should have. Seen. They should have started with those with those other witnesses to give them some credence. Honestly, if they yeah. exist, if they exist, all played Push the game. Says, did you see AH said? I don't know when he came over. And in redirect, Elaine said he lived on the same floor. I just noticed that. Also, what up, roomies? Hmm. Um. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, I hadn't noticed that. Um, mostly dad says, do you think anything is going to happen with that photo of the wine that was used twice? No. I don't think so. James Franco says, if I changed my mind, but I still be able to testify. That's hilarious. Get in there. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Matt S says, did you guys notice that Johnny was loved so much? He turned IO back to it. <laughs> oh my goodness. No, 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 no. Allison Becca says, question why depots instead of live from Amber. They don't Her want to come side. in. They're embarrassed to be associated with her. She's humiliation to the world. And or to just not available for all friend. kinds of reasons. Oh, Barbara I'm is... sure it's because they're not available. Lightning, lightning round, Kurt. So we lighting, saw lighting, Amber lighting, Whitney Rock. No, Kurt. And they're making a new friend in the hey, elevator. Kurt, then Kurt, she has Kurt is gonna Kurt is gonna go live after this. You can you can discuss it afterwards. What if all JB's team members show up to court with Joe? Joe. On their cheek? Joe. Oh, he's, oh, he's reading the super chat. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just Sorry. read the super chat. What if all JD's team members show up to court with bruises on their cheeks? That would be very sleazy. That would probably be they. That yeah. would no, don't do that. Tacky. That's bullshit. Yeah, that's yeah. tacky. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. Uh, Daniela, for the, I know. Sorry, sorry, Joe. Sorry. I'm helping, and you're screaming. Did you guys hear about Core TV that was inappropriate? No, no. JD hug Camille, and that looks bad for women lawyers. I'm so disgusted. No, I didn't. I'm sure she's doing a great professional job. Next. Yeah, no, yeah. JD hugging Camille is fine. They're on the same legal team. No, wrong. Elaine's impersonation was terrible. Terribly inappropriate. Bad look. Bad job. Oh, Elaine's impersonation. Oh, I thought, oh, yeah. I thought it was. Yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm answering, answering the super, super chat. chat. I'm answering oh, this super one. Chat. Oh, I, yes, gotta, yes, I don't perfect. know. I, I'm just Okay, kidding. yes, thank you. We are, this is, this is really. Think Ellen Barkin expected to cross, to go until tomorrow? Probably. Oh. what she was told, but yeah. Elaine Bredehoff, I think. Bredehoff, yeah. yeah, yeah. Barkin, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know. There's no punishment for asking a thousand leading questions. Even with the objection sustained, she has already fed age the answer to the next question. It doesn't seem to be helping in any event. She's Something concerning from Iot's testimony I wanted to add. If Amber went to al where people share their personal stories, plus reading books on the topics, did she study and steal personal stories? Could be. We had Completely world. speculative. If I only have and one more live witness, can it hurt AH's cases more? Yes, it can always go downhill. Why is the Rest judge softballing Elaine, i.e. arguing? Well, the judge doesn't want to have an appealable basis. So basically, I missed everything after AH flounced out of the courtroom. Did anything happen for a disrespect? Not overtly. I'm sure the jury noticed. Legal Bites reached 200K. Woo! Objection. Accepts, exception for prior consistent statement. Have to say Twitter law take. Woot. David Hamilton for $20. Who's the woman sitting next to Camille during the objection magaton or redirect? Looks like she's feeding CV info and deserves quite a bit of credit herself. He has Probably one of the uh, assistant the lawyers for uh, was, the giant up team. That was objection Just joined the session. Have you discussed the fact that AH walked out before the jury left following Elaine's questions ended this afternoon? Yes, we did. We did. Mm -hmm. Bad look. DC, DMCD, 999 McDonald. $5. You guys need some input from recovering Ed, alcoholic addict. You really do. Thank you. Sure. Oh my All God, Camille Vasquez is a goddess. This was she a massacre. Is. Loved every minute of the cross. Love this panel, especially Joe Nierman. Massive shout out to everyone. Please subscribe to them <laughs> all chat, especially Good Logic. Go. This was a massacre. Loved every minute of cross. Love this panel. Massive shout out to everyone. Please subscribe to all of them in the chat. VK, VK says, says, why do you think about Elon and AH cuddling in the penthouse, penthouse elevator? Not to make it across. Only Franco. Okay, congratulations, $200,000. Yeah, I think nothing of her particular. They <laughs> crucified every other possible way. If you step in for Amber Heard's counsel, as of today, what is your strategy to salvage this case for her? Oh, my Lock God. White Light flag. it on fire. White flag. Help. Professor Chaos, you guys should look into allegations against Marilyn Manson. Started to look like Evelyn Rachel Wood is worse than Amber Hood, including use of a forged FBI letter against him. We may stream that trial because it's in state court. Some, I've got, I've got I heard videos. that there was another gal who went and told that I, it was actually Amber who had tried to push her down the stairs. Can she be called on? Ooh, maybe. It was, it was Whitney's she's on boss. The witness list. Possibly. Possibly. Yeah, yeah, I think she, Mickey Van der Wilden said, I thought Elaine imitating JD was respectful. I didn't notice, but it would be. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, it was. It was the Law Tube Logistics Corps needs to commission the Guardian Angels or the Hells Angels to deliver free coffee, free muffins, and guarantee good fellowship to court cues. Indeed. 
Jennifer Bryce says, do you think JD Sai will bring in the pick of AH the day after game of the hero? Walking, laughing with Rocky, no makeup and no mark. Also love CV, emphasizing the mark every time AH said bruise. She crossed What's... it every possible way. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, she, she didn't, they didn't, they didn't do it. So uh, it's what happens if Amber Heard owes do. 50 million with the $7 million net worth? Well, she never, she never pays and you never collect it. That happens to most judgments. Shem Pasta says, Mr. Hug, your thoughts on the game Star Citizen? There is no game star set it's a Ponzi scheme. Fantastic. Should someone someone should put together epic segments of law tube? Someone should. That's law nerd clicks. In fact, that's also legal bites clips. And it's also sometimes I put those things also. Everyone does. We do. You should check for it. My favorite's one bites and nick during gauge cross. Yeah, that's five million views at least already. Second, Joe, Kurt, Andrew, and Ty doing unbreaded with Nick on late night show, pure gold. Indeed. Check do out not recommend. Now Brazil says, why aren't AH's exposed lies treated as perjury? Well, it might be in uh, the UK. We're heading that direction. Why are these types of why are these oh go 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 why are these type of psych evals allowed in court since they are easy to manipulate and not conclusive like lie detectors should they be lie detectors are not admissible in court because they are considered junk science by the court um, same thing with uh, with a lot of other stuff uh, can you comment on the effectiveness of highlighting the love book entries earlier today they were not effective to me didn't do anything for me. Yeah, uh, they showed that. handwriting. They showed hand, her effective handwriting, and it also showed her effusive love for him. That doesn't seem to indicate any kind of fear or anger. There was some, or there was some else. talk of tearing his heart out, also, which shows maybe some violence. We lost his panelists. Law school Violin, Griff, language, Casey yeah. Anthony, impeachment. Clinton, Michael Jackson, Martha Stewart, S. Peterson, G. Zimmerman, uh, A. Yates, Saddam Hussein, and Kevorkian. Yes, these all were notable trials. High profile trials. Yes, J. Janie Kennedy says glow from Runkle's locks equals aura from C. H. Today. <laughs> Professor Heather, uncivil, what may what you may have experienced today is being triggered. Many survivors encounter these moments and take them back and stir crazy emotion. Was Jonathan it just Boss me or did the judge take a jab at Amber Heard about throwing each other under the bus? I didn't notice I that. I remember that. Yeah, I didn't Sergi notice says, the sister confirmed for tomorrow. If not, I expect witnesses live tomorrow regarding finger injury. Not sure about the sister still. AH yeah. case better without AH testimony? Arguably. <laughs> it it was. Robinson, what did what Amber think she could get away with editing pictures? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Hogue, uh, question. H&H &H tomorrow morning? I don't know if the 5 a.m. videos are going 5 a.m., let's go. <laughs> have Robert you ever Herb, seen a heard... meltdown as, as bad as Ellen did? No. I ne I No. No. That Mo says, terrible. once the trial is done, there are no longer any attorneys that are ethical for Ellen or Camille to come over here and talk, assuming no NDA. There can't be an NDA because of the nature of their relationship, and no, it wouldn't be unethical. I want to hear a lot too about Roe v. Wade. I've covered it. Go to Kurt's channel. Videos, I'm going to offend you if I talk about it. Same is there any way to it? make a barrier for the line with a rope or makeshift gate, maybe? It should That's be, you would court. think. He Haley says, where's Ronkel? Has he given the scoop? Yes, he has. It was great. Hmm. It looks like a lady was abused by Amber. <laughs> it does. I, I actually Gerald thought that Heller. Amber was abused by by Elaine, but Gerald Hiller butches my Alita butches my name by saying Hitler to us. I am so nice. sorry. I am terribly sorry. Renoid seventy nine says, I'm so embarrassed by that, honestly. Thank you all for making law interesting and fun. I've got a new obsession. Congrats on two hundred K plus. Thank you. And congrats on demonetizing yourself. And we'll keep track of twelve hundred times Amber's been impeached for the whole trial. Lots. Yes. The answer yes. is no. Yes. Jose Baez was the attorney for Casey Anthony's trial and trial for OHV Husser. Husser was acquitted on 14 counts of murder. Ooh, oh, I was job. thinking of Baez, the pitcher, who is super frustrating on the Dodgers. Because we thought it was a baseball player. Franco never lived that. in that building. A long-time resident refuted that. Lie. Kind of overkill, but like a security clearance, can't there be poly and behavioral analysis questions prior to trial? These cases make new future lawyers. Yeah, I suppose before trial they can. They just can't be admitted. Mm -hmm. It's not useful. To the I think ever heard we'll run out of time. Um, <laughs> Maybe left. there's a there's a good chance of that actually. Daniela Fazana says no. I said Court TV said that it was inappropriate and looks bad for women lawyers. I was disgusted. They said that on Who said TV that? about Amber about Vasquez. Mm. Oh, it it looks TV. bad for women lawyers for her to hug her client. No, 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 TV. no, yeah, no, yeah, losers, yeah. I, I say I say Court TV is wrong. Show you wrong, that. wrong, Court, wrong. Never, ever, ever, ever watch Court TV or Law and or Crime because they stink. They're awful. Check yeah. out Law Tube anywhere. Any Law Tube is better. Any. What if anything says age behavior is because she has untreated BPD? Key. Ah, yes. Yes, good distinction. Can we, can we get around says, the horn style mute button for Hogue to control, please? No, no, yes. no, 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 no. This segment. Mr. Hogue, I'll buy an account in Super Chats to eat your words. Love your guys, except for Hogue. Just kidding. Sure, I'll take your money either way. Oh my God, we're going to beat the 12-hour mark. Dwayne Aldson says, Hogue, your silence and good judgment while Joe and Kurt are screaming is impressive. <laughs> I've got practice. 
Bringing Jason, our photo shoot with LR, uh, LRD into things. Interested in what you all think. I don't know what LRD is. IO photo shoot. LRD with LRD. Uh, is that the photographer's name? Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm so sorry. I don't have Hulster thoughts. says, look at all you giving lawyers a good name. We had good names the whole time. We're just letting people know. <laughs> yeah. Could Steve, testimony Steve today be downplayed by them because they're worried might be sued by a rich person? Seems doubtful. Yeah. Seems doubtful. I think, yeah, yeah. Okay, that and that's the last one. That's it. Bit behind. We're just want to say, I'm seriously impressed that you guys know that gaslighting comes from a play. Indeed. Yeah. I'm well read. I'm well read. I know okay. my things. Okay, okay. Yeah. Any more? Oh. Wait, 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 wait. Did wait, anyone wait, wait. see the court TV in the court? <laughs> uh, we did that one. I do have another one here. 